What is up, YouTube? Welcome in to another edition of Bucky and BK, live on Texas Sports Unfiltered and on the free Texas Sports Unfiltered app. Today is Wednesday, April 17th, 2024, and the Buck and I are with you for the next two hours. Live from Sue Patrick, 5222 Burnett Road. Come out and see us. Don't see us right now. They don't open until 930. But once 930 rolls around, come out to Sue Patrick and shop the best selection of Texas Longhorn gear in the world. We'll tell you more about what Sue Patrick has in a second. But we are here for the next two hours talking Texas football. Of course, we are three days away from the orange-white scrimmage. We got some NBA playoffs to get into. Is this the end of the Golden State Warriors dynasty? We'll discuss that. And was last night rock bottom for Texas baseball. All of that and more from now until 10 o'clock. What's going on this morning, Buck? It is a beautiful morning here in Austin, Texas. I'm, I'm not in the, in the dripping, but when I left this morning, it was a little drizzly. Uh -huh. There was some precipitation, which I did not call for. I called for that this weekend. But uh, just a little bit. But here in the city, it is absolutely fantastic. You know, getting up early and coming down. I came, of course, Capital Texas Highway that way. Boy, there's a lot of construction going on near ACC and over the bridge, the Pennybacker Bridge there. Oh, yeah. Man, there's a lot going on there in the mornings. I'm glad I don't have to make that kind of drive anymore. I, lo I love walking up my 18 flights of stairs at home, but it's always great to be here at Sue Patrick and see Jay and Sue and the whole gang here. This is always a fun place to be, and good to be here with you this morning. Feeling good. You know, my third eye is starting. I know people are wondering, is that the spot where you got shot? Well, it's starting. To, the wound is starting to heal up a little bit, and, of course, Eventually, just like a little kid, I'll start messing with it. It'll start bleeding all over the place. But mm. it's starting to heal up. I'm feeling good. Uh, did not bring my relax the bag chair with me. I didn't bring my roadie. I should have today. You never bring the roadie. I have a roadie, though. You don't have to make the announcement that you didn't bring the roadie because you never bring the roadie. But I have one. I don't even know if I believe you. It's in the garage there. It's right there, right by the, where the car is. You just sit in it? You get out of your car and you go sit in a chair <laughs> yeah. before you walk before in your walk house? In the house, yes. <laughs> That's incredibly efficient right yes, there. Yeah, but, but it does get some use when I'm in the garage just looking out. Uh -huh. Open up the garage door, look out to the neighbors. I'm sitting in the rolling chair rolling around in the garage, yes. And they're looking at you like you're an idiot. Yes, yes, yes indeed. What is this 68-year-old man doing wheeling around wheeling in a chair around in like a six-year-old? Yes. Yeah, very confusing. I kind of hope that third eye sticks around for a while. It's a good look, man. It's unique. It's awful. And everyone else has two eyes. It'd be pretty cool if you were the one guy in the world who had a third one. No, I'm not Indian. I don't, I'm not that kind of Indian. No. It's not right in the middle. It's you're more of a feather than a dot. Yes. Yeah, so Is that I'm what you're saying? Tilted to the side a little bit. Sorry about that. Next time I fall, I'll make sure I get a dead square in the middle. Mm. Although I've been told your falling days needs to end. I've been ridiculed by my wife. She's now not thinking this is, I don't think it's funny either. Let me tell me some, let me tell you when you fall, the guy who falls doesn't think it's a joke either. She tends to think this is cool, me falling every once in a while. I don't think it's funny when I fall because there's, you know, your life kind of flashes in front of you. What are you going to do? Thank goodness I have a fall school where I know how to fall except for this particular time. One Mississippi. Bang. Mm. Sorry, didn't get to two Mississippis there, but I'm going to reenact. She doesn't want to reenact this, and I'm really down about that. I can't believe it. We can't throw a mattress out there. And I reenact what just happened to me. Okay, you're sitting here Sunday. telling us that you don't find this funny, and then you're sitting here telling us that you're trying to reenact the fall. You want to do it again. I want to do it so that I can help others not do it the way I did it. I don't know if anyone's going to subscribe to your fall school anymore, right? No one's going to sign up for that after what just happened to you. And the evidence is there. People can see that, hey, you didn't do a great job falling last week. I could have broke my neck. I did not. Uh, yeah, you so could have not fallen. Yeah, I could have walked around. That would have helped. Yeah, see, that's just. That should be the number one <laughs> tip <laughs> don't at fall, fall school. Don't, don't fall in the first place. Yeah, that's true. That's what I'm getting from my from my lovely wife is, hey, dude, don't fall. If it takes another couple minutes, do something different, but don't fall. Don't fall. But I know this. I am going to be active until the day I'm dead. I'm going to be moving around. I'm going to be doing stuff. Now, taking my time, I have to do that. And I, I suggest that to older men, women and children. If mm. there's a way to do something and it may take you another minute or two, go ahead and take the time. There's yeah. no, there's no reason to hurt yourself. Amen. There really isn't any reason that, and that's, that's, I, I just don't have the same. It's not the flexibility. I don't have the same balance I had. Like you said, I, if I knock a ball into a little ravine and I want to go over to the other side and retrieve the ball, 
I'm not jumping over the – I'm crossing the bridge, okay? Just leave the ball. And that's what my son said. He goes, you got enough golf balls. Why do you need that? I have to retrieve that ball. Why? That's my ball. I'm in the group after you. I need it. <laughs> I need some free golf balls. Leave no, it there for no. me. I'm going to retrieve it. If I don't have a ball getter, I'm going to get on my belly and put my hand in the water uh, and get to that ball. You're going to have a Chubbs moment, <laughs> like Happy Gilmore. Rattlesnake. Some gator, some rattlesnake. Something's going to get to you. No doubt about it. Good morning to the soldiers at Fort Cavazos, Texas. The soldiers in the state of Texas and all those that fight for us each and every day, thank you so very much for what you do. It is appreciated. And do be safe out there to you and your families. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well said, as always. And uh, we got a YouTube comment from Michael C. asking if you look like this woman trying to board the boat. Did you fall like this? You know, it was it was very similar to that. It was it was a shocker for me. Dang. Well, that was those two dudes fault right there. If I would have had any help, I probably would have landed on the back of my head instead of, you know, my frontal lobe is pretty hard. The back of my head is where the problem, when you jam it back like that, that's, yep. where, that's where you, when the lights go out, when you hit the back of your head, I mean, football players know that concussions and stuff, the frontal lobe, I mean, my melon is really hard in the front and, you know, and I got that big old knot that came up there, that contusion, uh -huh. but it's hard, but the back of your head is where the problems start when you jam your back, the back of your head. Yep. Plus, you know, I've had, I've had back and neck surgery, which I had to tell my wife, how do you like that surgery I had on my neck years ago where they took the bone from my hip and put it in the, in the back of my neck to secure and strengthen my neck? Yeah. You landing face first could have been a – that could have been a neck problem. Sure. But you know what? The old man has got – yes. Uh, the fall school. There you go. It worked. Yeah. You were the felt, first ever graduate of the Bucky Godbolt fall school. I fell probably through. on my face. Oh, my God. Except for the stone that stuck into my face. You know, if you were wearing this hat. That would have protected you. I know. Your I like these lids. These the, are nice. These are awesome. I'll hold one of these up to the camera so you all can see what we're rocking here. This is a brand new Sue Patrick exclusive, a five-time national champion volleyball hat. This thing turned out great. We were talking to Jay before the show. He loves the look. We love the look. We're rocking them this morning. We'll be rocking them on future shows Absolutely. as well. Yes, you I've got to only find these right here at Sue Patrick or online at suepatrick.com. Yeah, I've got to send one of these back to my friends in Pennsylvania that love Texas Longhorn uh, volleyball. They just love it. Yeah. So I've got to send a couple of those back. And they've got uh, all five years that Texas has won the NCAA championship in volleyball, including. 2022 and 2023, of that course, the Longhorns, back-to-back oh. -back champs. Not quite, but, hey, you know, if Texas goes and wins it again, you know, Jay will have some three-peat gear oh, ready to roll. There is so much gear in here. You know, this is this is like heaven for me as I'm about three weeks away from the 23rd annual Mullet Open, and I'm bringing in some little trinkets, of course, from Sue Patrick and some of the, the wonderful shirts that we always get, the polos, the golf polos. And as I said, I was at the doctor's office last week, and a gentleman said, Hey, where'd you get that shirt from? And I told him he got right online, right on his phone, Just right like there that. in the doctor's office and start ordering online. And their online service is absolutely fantastic. Ask your mom. She spent thousands yep. online from I think, Sue Patrick. I think you're rounding down. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think it's more than that. Yes. By the way, happy birthday to my mother. Yes, happy birthday. Uh, she usually tunes in. So uh, there's a good chance she's tuned in this morning. Want to give her nice a, birthday to her. A birthday shout out. I'll be uh, headed home tonight to spend a few there days with the fam. I'll be doing the shows this week from down on the coast, but looking forward to uh, spending some of her birthday. Be in week. your sister's room again? And weekend. Yes, I will be. Mm. I will be. Yeah, she's going to be pissed that I'm down there. But absolutely. She's on there. She's down there too. She's Everybody's together. Too. Yep, yep. Should be, uh, should be a good time. Should be a good weekend as well. Looking forward to that. And uh, Grant asks, does Jay have dog stuff? Oh, we got some yeah, dog yeah. gear. Oh, yeah. They've got dog gear. I saw the, uh, the little vest for dogs. You know, when you take them for a walk, they got Longhorn vest for the dog. And uh, they've got leashes. They have the whole works in here. And they've got jelly cats. So if your dog wants a chew toy, there oh, you boy. go. I See, you had to say that word <laughs> jelly cat. I, was, I didn't even have that on my mind. I was thinking. No, Bark, you saw the grown men with their jelly cat pillows mm. on the on American Airlines. That's right. I said it. American Airlines, not Delta. But uh, I saw those. I don't think they were jelly cats or some other kind of brand. But let me tell you something. If you get a jelly cat that size, that's going to be like a small Volkswagen that you're paying for because those were huge. Those things were they were like sleeping bags these grown guys had laying on top like of. Like full body pillows? Yes. That was their, you know, instead of bringing a dog with them, they were, service dog or whatever security dog uh, they brought these big pillows with them that had eyeballs and things like that i'm like this is a little too much there you're talking about men 
men, yes. And I'm not talking about the men's servants on the flights. I'm talking about mm. men who are traveling. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Yeah, two dudes right beside me. Would they bring their tray down, put their pillow down, and start snoring? I mean, mm. then I said, hey, I got to get one of those. Oh, now I, you need one I of those. Need, I, yeah, that looks like a lot of fun. Uh, I guess that's better than the emotional support pet. Yeah, I, you know, BK, the first thing that hit my eye when I came into Sue Patrick's Day, everything hits my eye when I come in here, sure. including the snow globes, which are all round, all year round. That's not just a Christmas deal. They've got they've they've got that, but they've got some luggage here now that if you're a, a, a longhorn traveler and you're getting ready to go, you know, with the, with the SEC and, you know, for your first trip, you're going to go to, to places like Athens and, I mean, anywhere, Columbia, South Carolina, when the, when the, when the time comes. Did I say South Carolina? Are they in the, they're in the they're, that's right, they're in the SEC. Sure. When you start making these trips, you want to have your longhorn luggage. They have beautiful longhorn luggage. They've got carry bags, big bags, you know, for national championships and championship play. Oh, yeah. They got the mid-sized ones. I do like the little carry bag. I'm hoping we get to take those bags to Atlanta twice. There you go. This year, because Absolutely. that's where the SEC championship game is. Absolutely. That's also where the national championship game is in college football. So, Boy, is that good-looking gear right there? And it looks gear. like the and, and it's sturdy looking. And I picked it up. It is sturdy stuff because the bag apes, you know, they tend to just sling that stuff around. The and bag I, apes? Yeah, at the airport. Yeah, it's all right. What is a bag ape? Those are people like from Planet of the Apes to get to work at the luggage department. At, you know, it's a carryover. So they uh. get to work there. And you know how they chuck your, you see those dudes chuck your stuff? Yeah. They're just like fling it. It's the worst. It, it's absolutely. You think it's, it's like I'm so gentle putting the bag on the absolutely. scale. And the, and the way you take it and you zip it up and you're like, this zipper will break if there's too much right. push on it. And these dudes are fl- just it's, gra- the women too. They'll yes. just pick it up and grab it and throw it on the conveyor belt. This stuff can take it right here. Oh my god! Yeah, You've I forgot about how out. the last five times I've checked the bag. It's like they're so nice to you too. Like the agents are like, "Oh, can I get your name?" And I always try to have a conversation with them in hopes that it will lead to them not throwing my bag. And they have the conversation. They're like, "Have a great day." I'm like, "You too." And then they just grab the bag and then chunk it as hard as they can. Yeah. So I always wonder when people go out and they spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on nice luggage. I'm like, dude, I don't know why you're spending that much. They're about to tear this thing up at the airport. Yeah. It's gonna be. It's like a car when you take it off the lot. It depreciates like nobody's business. And it, now they go through bags too. Have you seen that? They're, they're not going through my bags. They go underneath. Yeah. They're like literally two of the last, I'd say, six or seven times that I've checked a bag. When I've opened said bag at my destination, there's been a note in there that says, we looked at your bag. What? Yeah, they can do that now. I think it's random, but it seems to happen more often to me. Than, and they're leaving little sticky notes in there, yeah, too? just like little uh, notifications that say, hey, we looked through your bag. Wow. I'm like, oh, thank God he didn't find the weed in yeah, there. Yeah, my goodness. Could have been real bad for me. Good Lord, glad it was in my shoe. <laughs> yeah. My goodness. And I carried it on today. Wow. Yeah, so, I didn't realize they were going through the, I understand if there's, you know, if there's something in there in plastic or, you know, wrapped in aluminum foil, I got that part. But just randos going through your bags now? The randos. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, no, I, you know, I like this luggage and I like, especially the carry on. It's good. I don't need a big bag. If I go big bag, I still have stuff from, from UT football and Boston college football where you put your shoulder pads, those long things like that. Yeah. That look like uh, hockey, you know, when the guys from hockey team go, I have about four of those. Do you? I I have one from Ricky Williams when he played for like the Argonauts or something. How about that? And I've got one of his bags from the, the Philadelphia Phillies organization. And dude, you can put people in those and zip them up and take them with you. If you want to take a kid with you on a trip, just stick them in the bag and throw them underneath. I don't know if that's legal, but I guess it's good to know that uh, the bag of, is big enough for that. It's unbelievable, and I don't care what bagger under or, there, and I don't care what they do to that thing. Yeah, can, it's you know that kid or the as bag. Long as, as long as they don't screw up the zipper, everything's good. Because if that bad boy comes open, everything's coming out. I didn't realize. I just know how how mean they can be with a bag. Oh, yeah. Sort of like Texas baseball oh, on a man. baseball diamond, how mean they can be. Well, we'll do our QVC slash HSN segment mm. with Jay a little bit later in the show, and we'll let you see what uh, some of these suitcases look like. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, look, we've been putting it off as long as we can. We can't put it off any longer. Texas baseball. Maybe hit rock bottom last night, and some are calling last night's loss to UT Rio Grande Valley the most embarrassing loss in Texas baseball history. Not only did they lose to UT RGV for the first time since 1971, Buck, and it's not like, ah, they've only played two or three times since then. Texas had beaten the Vaqueros Cafe and Cantinas of UT RGV 48 straight times 
48 straight. And they lost to them last night. They couldn't even take it to 50. Not only did they lose, they lost 17 to 9. And that's closer than it was. At one point, it was 15 to 1. At one point, Texas was trailing UTRGV 15 to 1 at home last night. The pitching staff walked 11 batters. They hit nine guys. They had three wild pitches. And, well, needless to say, they gave up 17 runs and they were oh, awful goodness. last night. So, you know, we went into yesterday when we talked about them starting their center fielder as their starting pitcher. We, we talked about that, and I said that's a risky that's a risky maneuver for a couple things. It's telling me that you've got no faith in the people that you've recruited or whatever. Nobody's pitching well enough that you could even throw them out there on a Tuesday. You're using a kid who's played really well, and and what are you going to do to his psyche? If he's having a good season, or he could just shake that off and say, you know what, it's the first time I pitched since I was in high school. What the hell? Mm. You know, it depends on how his psyche is. But I was worried about him maybe hurting his arm. He must have not lasted very long. Well, the plan for Jared Thomas was for him to only throw one to two innings. Okay, right? I, that's what I was thinking yesterday. David also. Pierce said that during his pregame interview, and Jared Thomas was throwing a lot of strikes, actually, for a while. Uh, I think the first seven batters he faced, he threw first pitch strikes to. Mm-hmm. In the first inning, he got two quick outs. He gave up a solo homer uh, with two outs in the first inning, but then it was pretty funny. He actually hit a leadoff homer. So not only did he start the game as the pitcher for Texas, but he, how often does that happen? Per usual was the leadoff man for the Longhorns in the batting order. And yeah, he gave up a homer and then boom, he got it right back in the bottom of the first inning with a solo dinger of his own. But then the second inning, he got a couple of quick outs, but then, uh, walked slash hit battered the bases loaded and ended up leaving before he got out of the second inning, uh, which wasn't great. And then the pitcher who came in after him gave up a, a few runs. I mean, the real pitchers. Yeah, they, like Jared Thomas might have been the best pitcher for Texas last night. And he's the guy who's not even a pitcher. He's the outfielder who pitched because Texas's regular pitchers have been so bad this year. So, yeah, Jared Thomas, I mean, he, he I think, gave up three runs officially. You know how embarrassing last night's loss is for Texas? I'm on the texassports.com website right now. And I'm on the baseball schedule. And, of course, they have the upcoming games, but they also show the results for games that have already been played. They have not updated with last night's score. You mean like it never really happened? Like it never really happened. They are still showing last night's game against UTRGV as an upcoming game. So I can't look at the box score right now to give the exact numbers of anything. And that's how embarrassing it was. Like TexasSports.com isn't even willing to update their website to show the score of this eight-run loss to UTRGV. Well, it seemed like a desperation move yesterday when we first talked about it. It just, it seemed like, hey, somebody's on scholarship or somebody that's a walk-on can pitch the ball. Why are you using a guy who's having a really nice season to put that person on the mound? Now, I know the kid probably went out last night and said, you know what? I didn't do bad. When I I think about it, I'm better than the guys on my team. Yeah, that's the thing, right? I mean, you're right. It did sort of reek of desperation. But once again, Jared Thomas was one of, if not the best pitcher Texas threw out there last night. That's not good. That's a that's a desperate kind of move by David Pierce that I I didn't think it was going to backfire to this extent. I, I thought I, I'm thinking, OK, he gets out there, he pitches an inning and a half and he gets out of there. He doesn't hurt his arm. Texas goes on to throttle this group yep. and we move right along to the weekend. And now it's like desperation move. Kid goes out there. Hope he doesn't do anything to his psyche. But the rest of the pitching staff psyche is like, man, we stink. It was 15 to one. At one point. I mean, every kid on UTRGV would walk on glass for the opportunity to play baseball at the University of Texas. And they came into Austin and were up 14 at one point in last night's game. 14, dude. Like, oh my, like losing to them four to three would have been disastrous. But they were down 14 at one point in the game. Holy crap. And now you've got this weekend coming up. Now you've got TCU, who is very much in the mix to win the Big 12 this year. They were the favorites to win the Big 12 going into the season. Yeah, now they're coming to town, and I'm well, here to tell you they're a little bit more talented than UTRGV. Yeah, we, we, we like David Pierce an awful lot, but he is going to be on a seat that's going to be on fire. Oh, I think he's done. Like, if you ask me right now if David Pierce is the head coach of Texas baseball in 2025, I would tell you no. He would have to win the Big 12 championship. I don't one, know if one it, of them. I don't know what it what it would take. It would take it would take a championship. Uh, maybe maybe or it's get that. into the championship, play for a championship. I mean, they might not make the tournament this year. Like, it's not only look, they're two games out of first place in the Big 12 with five. And conference that's how bad series the Big 12 left. is. Yeah, that's more of a testament to how bad this conference is right now than how good Texas has played. So look, they they could win the Big 12. 
But right I now, think he has to do that. I almost thought that way in the beginning of the season. Yeah, actually. Yeah, I mean they're they're a bubble team for the NCAA tournament. The University of Texas is a bubble team right now, and I'm not sure if the season ended today if they would be in the field of 64. And the SEC and teams in the SEC will be, and those coaches will be licking their chops oh. to have them welcome them in if Dave Pierce is the head coach. That's that's the thing to see. You know, CDC's got to look at and go. Do I or don't I? Yeah. Well, you you got to win the championship now. Yeah, yeah. Seriously, you do. I think this team, this group has to win the Big 12 championship like others that are on their way out winning. You have to do that in order to give yourself a year at the next at the next level. They have, no, the, they have no chance. How do they have a shot to win the Big 12? Dude, they, it's, the Big 12 stinks. I know. I know. But like just looking at what happened last night and the fact that they've lost to A&M Corpus Christi and the fact that they've lost two out of three to Texas State this year, like they still have most of the good teams in the Big 12 ahead of them. And plus you're making desperate moves like you did last night. Right. That just that compounds what's going on with your baseball team when you're when you're when you're doing those things. And well, it all started when he became the pitching coach. Yeah, that didn't help. No, that didn't help. And once again, he increased the size of the target on his back by making himself the pitching coach. He didn't have yes. to do that. Right. No. Like he's obviously been very involved with the pitching staff Correct. in his first seven years at Texas. So it's not like, oh, David Pierce had no part in the good seasons that the Texas pitching staffs have had. But he got w- uh, rid of Woody Williams after last season. He decided to make himself the only pitching coach. And this pitching staff is as bad as it's been around here in a long, long wow. time. So let's hear from David Pierce. Uh, after the game last night, he met with the uh, members of the media on the field. And well, he was asked about his pitching staff's inability to throw strikes. Once again, 11 walks, nine hit batters, and three wild pitches in the loss. Here's Coach Pierce. I coached the high school baseball for 11 years and never seen it. So, you know, winning is contagious. Uh, attacking the strike zone is contagious. And, you know, right now, um, you know, pitching behind in counts and giving up hits, giving up the long ball and giving up free passes has become contagious. So we got to do something about it. It's not even college baseball, even – not even we're not even talking about power five. We're talking about college baseball of not being able to throw strikes. And you know, at the end of the day, it's it's on me. I mean, we got to figure this out because it's going to be a long rest of the season if we don't. I'm glad you didn't say the word losing is contagious because that's the one that'll get you fired. Mm. If you if you brought up all the things he said, he didn't bring in. You know, and losing is contagious because that one gets you fired the next day. That's when the that's when the athletic director comes in and said, "So you've lost a couple." So are you thinking that you're going to continue to lose? Because I can change everything right now. Uh-huh. I can get somebody else to coach the team the rest of the way if that's how you feel. So I'm, I'm, I'm really glad you didn't say the word losing is contagious, although it is. I'm getting serious winning is hard vibes from David Pierce there. Yes. And look, David Pierce is – Well, a, he's, he's thinking his team is not as good as a high school team right uh, now. He's had much more success at Texas than winning is hard Tom Herman did. True. He's also a much better guy than winning is hard Tom Herman is. But – I got a lot of winning is hard from that audio that we just played. And it's a problem. Look, people don't care what the coaches say when the teams are winning. But when the teams are losing, people really care what the coaches say. And once again, he's talking about how the pitching staff sucks. There's only one person you could point to to blame for the pitching staff being as bad as it's been. And that's the pitching coach. Yes. Who's also the head coach. Once again, if he hired somebody else to be the pitching coach, he could point fingers. People would still be mad at David Pierce because this team is underachieving this year. So he would still be on the hot seat. But But like you said, he made that target much larger. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And he's the only guy who can fix it right now. So, uh, man, I I don't have a lot of confidence. I said last week, once again, I stuck a fork in this baseball team last week. So I don't think this is me just overreacting to one game. We've seen enough of this team this season. I mean, they're now 22 and 16 on the year. They've lost. Uh, it's six games, maybe seven, to teams with losing records on the year. I mean, it's just so un-Texas baseball, it's not even funny. And Chris Del Conte always talks about wanting his teams to compete in the top ten, right? In every sport, he expects Texas to be around the top ten. Texas baseball right now is nowhere close to that. And uh, I don't know if Chris Del Conte, despite what David Pierce did in his first seven seasons in Austin, I don't know if he's going to have the patience. I don't know if he's going to be allowed to have the patience to let David Pierce try to figure things out in year one in the SEC. He, he's going into a baseball conference. Yeah, they, I mean, eight best. teams in the top 25 in the SEC, wow. including AM, who's number one in the country right now. So to compound the issues, not only do you suck, but your biggest rival is the number one team in the sport right now. 
man. Yeah. That hurt last night. That was, that was, I, I didn't like the move. I didn't like bringing in, bringing in a young guy who's having a fantastic year and putting him on the mound with the possibility of hurting his arm and screwing up his psyche as a, as a batter. But like you said, he gets up there in the first inning and slam ones over the fence, you know, yeah. which is kind of cool. ETRGV scored 17 runs. Seven of those 17 runs came by a bases loaded a walk. So they would walk guys to put them Freebies. on, and then they would give out free passes to let guys score. I mean, it, it was unlike anything that I've ever seen from the University of Texas. There's got to be some high schoolers around here who can pitch like this. Right. We could, mean, we could talk about the NIL issue, right, like the overarching no. problem with Texas baseball, but the, last night is not NIL. Like, you've got way more talent than UTRGV. Yeah, no I mean, business losing When your head guys. coach is talking about he's been around high school teams that are – he said they don't even do this in high school. You know, they don't do this in, in, in pony leagues and in, in leagues that are past little league. They throw strikes. Yeah. And that's that's what he's talking about. But once again, you're in charge of those guys throwing the strikes and balls. Yep. And he's giving the free passes. Oh, man. We got a text on the code of text line saying basketball grab players from Indiana State. Maybe baseball can grab studs from the powerhouse UTRGV XYZ. <sighs> Listen to the damn alphabet last night. And yeah, it's, I mean, I saw some Texas players voice their frustrations, not Texas, former Texas players, I should say. I don't think anybody on the current team posted anything about or hell, this, those but, guys will all be spring game. They'll all be back in town this weekend for, for baseball and football. Yeah, so. there, there were some former players who were saying it was the wow. worst loss for Texas baseball ever. And I know we're often prisoners of the moment in this society. And I'm sure there are some other losses that are close to as bad as what happened last night, but man, losing 17 to nine to a team that you had beaten 48 times in a row, a team that you hadn't lost to at home since the 60s. I don't even know if you were alive the And even last your time. desperation move should have worked. And the desperation <laughs> move didn't work. Uh, it was bad. I mean, uh, folks folks have compared last night's loss to Kansas football for Charlie Strong in 2016. Sure. I'd argue it's worse than that, but sort of just as the moment where it's like, okay, uh, it feels like the coach is done. It feels like things need to change. Now, the good news for David Pierce is he's got a lot of time to turn things around, right? Charlie Strong had one game after Kansas, and it felt like he was already done even before that TCU game right after Thanksgiving. David Pierce, once again, five conference series left. This team has is, is just two games out of first place in the Big 12. They could still make it to the postseason. They could still do something in the postseason. So he's got a chance got to, to win this conference. You think you so? Yeah, you know, when, when, when football team played, I said, it just get me to a championship game, yeah. and anything can happen in a championship game, and and you can understand that. <clears throat> I know you were of the beliefs. No, it's – and I think we all got to the beliefs of, no, no, it's not just get to the championship, Big 12 championship game, mm -hmm. win that game. That's, what's in, that's what you have to do, and the football team did it. I believe David Pierce is in the same situation, BK, in order to keep his gig, and I don't know if that does it, but I, you, you very seldom does Texas fire some guy that wins a championship. Right. You don't then tell him, he can't coach for you any longer. Right. You, need, you at least give him a year or two in the next conference or wh whatever it is, even if it's in the same conference, if you win a championship, you don't very seldom do, do teams fire guys and win championships. So, no. But I think that's what he has to do. If this can't be a, a get close. And if he doesn't make it to the big dance, dude, he, that's, that for sure will be it. Nail in the coffin. Yeah, yes. I'm with you. If Texas baseball wins the Big 12, even though it's a down year sure. in this league, then David Pierce should get another year. Cause Correct. He's done enough. He's done enough over his Texas career to tell you that, okay, he, he can actually get this program right again. For sure. But, yeah, like you said, if they miss the tournament altogether and they really falter down the stretch of this season, then I think that's it. Like, I don't think what he's done uh, in the last seven seasons is going to matter at no, all. You want to make sure that you are ready to go in every sport going into the SEC. And Texas is one of the biggest, if not the biggest, embarrassments in college baseball right now. I mean, everyone is hoping David Pierce gets a contract extension. Everyone who roots against Texas. Sure. Like every I mean, SEC, SEC fan base is like, oh, keep him around. Give him a new deal. Let him coach. And everyone at Texas is like, dude, this it's bad. We've got a lot of egg on our face this morning. Well, the so. best thing that can happen for, for David is he wins a Big 12 championship. And he gets out of being the pitching coach. Yeah. And says, I okay, I did it for a year. I think I got things stable, which you don't, but at least you can say that if you win a championship. You can say a lot of things if you win a championship. Sure. How we fought back, you know, the adversity that we had to go through early in the season, but the last five series, we got it together. It, it doesn't matter if you win. It it matters if you lose. It does. That's that's the thing. And that's why I'm glad he didn't say, you know, losing is contagious. I'm glad he didn't say that word because 
lot of coaches will say losing is contagious too, but and nobody wants to hear that from any coach. Well, everybody Period. who attended that game last night should get their money back. I know Texas won't do that, and I know David Pierce won't do that, but like I legitimately feel like everybody who had to witness that in person, even if you left early, even if you didn't stay for all nine innings of 17-9, you should get your money back because that, that that's that's bad. You, you don't deserve that as a fan. And I do wonder what the attendance is going to be this weekend. It's a big series. It's TCU. It's the last time you're going to play oh, them you'll in have baseball. a lot of TCU fans from around here that will be there. I'm sure TCU fans will show up. I, how many Texas fans are going to show well, up? I mean, you got the spring game. I think this thing will work out okay. I mean, they'll – They'll be there to support the team uh, one more time. This is it? Oh, no. If they get shellacked this weekend, I don't know who's showing up to the games from this point on. Well, I'll tell you what. You know who comes to town next Tuesday? Who's that? UT Arlington. Who the hell are they? Oh, what do you I'm, think they are, Texas State? I'm worried about. Well, I didn't think UT Rio Grande Valley was Texas State, but they might be better than Texas State. Wow. I don't know. I'm worried about every midweek game Texas plays. I'm worried the Mavericks of UTA are going to come to town and beat us next Tuesday. I'm more worried about that than I am TCU. And you're putting center fielders to pitch on a Tuesday. Oh, man. I mean, there's got, like I said, there's got to be some Go get guys. someone from the crowd to pitch. Okay, I could throw more strikes than those guys. I give up about 50 homers, but I can cross the plate. But they've got to be guys on that team that are, that are pitching that aren't getting an opportunity. Give them the opportunity on a Tuesday. Don't bring your center fielder and screw with him. Screw with his mind. Thank goodness you did. No way. I, I disagree with you. I'd bring in the first baseman next week. Bring in the shortstop. Bring in the second baseman. Uh, try Let something else. You do, if you do that, you're going to get fired. You know that. <laughs> you realize that if you, your next move is to bring another position player onto that mound now after what just happened, if you bring the second baseman in there to be the pitcher on next Tuesday and you lose, hell, if you win, you may get fired. Oh He's going to get fired either way, so why not have some fun? Why not do some bits on your way out the door, huh? No, no bits. No bits? Win. Win the championship, Coach. Yeah. I like David Pierce. I, 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 I want him too, man. I'd like to see him win. I'd like, I'd like to see them win these games. I don't know. I, well, I'll just say this. Obviously, this team is as, not as talented. I mean, they're missing some key guys from last year's offensive nightmare, which they were. They just were incredible. But the pitching is always have to be key at Texas. Yeah. It just always has been. And for guys not to be able to throw strikes, especially when the head coach felt like he had to get rid of the pitching coach to make himself the pitching coach, and now he's still not getting it done, yeah, that's that's asking for a problem right there. Yeah, it is. I mean, I, I can say all kinds of things and make up, try to make up all kinds of excuses about the pitching and the coaching. But when you put yourself in that position, I mean – BK, that's the last on the that's the la that's the one. That's the last one on the stop. That's it. When you do that, you're right. <sighs> but you haven't been, you haven't been, you know, you've just, as you said, you've been driving by the stadium, but you haven't been there to stop, stop in to buy a ticket. You've seen it. You could feel the way it is. I you don't know? even want to drive by the stadium anymore. Are you taking a roundabout way now? I'm I'm going around. Going Mopac? Yeah, I'll take Mopac. Wow. I'm avoiding 35 and Sorry, Dr. King. I'm avoiding MLK Jeez. as well. Yep. I'm not going in the Comal River anytime soon. I'm switching rivers. Next time I'm floating, I ain't going there. I'm boycotting the river, the street, everything. What about the Yeti Park over there and stuff? The Yeti Yard? Yeah, what about the yard? Uh, that's, you can get in there pretty easy now. It's part of the stage. Of, yeah. yeah, it used to be tough. You used to have to wait a long time to get into that uh, first come, first served Yeti Yard. No, maybe not. Maybe. Well, not. they'll rally this weekend. How about beating TCU? How about winning this series? Because we're only looking for series wins, right? We're not looking for, we're not looking to just out now win every game, right? Can they win three of their next four games? And one of those four is UT Arlington. I'm not sure that they can. Wow. I'm not sure that they can. But you're right. If they win this series this weekend, that'd be a step in the right direction. And that would have them closer to contending for that Big 12 championship that you've been talking about. Win the championship. That's all you need to do. Win the championship. You buy yourself. A year in the new conference. You just make it sound so easy. I, I know, but and but it's it, it's a way to keep it's a way to keep your job. It it's is. a way to keep people keeping the faith. If you have a championship under your belt, even going in the next year, because who knows? You know, you maybe pick up two miracle pitchers, maybe get in that transfer portal, and and you get a couple guys that can transfer. Because right now, it doesn't look like the starting pitching is any good. I mean, no. one, two, or three right now. It's, it's all a problem right now. So we'll take your thoughts. The code of text line 512-222-9328. Uh, you can hit us up, of course, on the YouTube live chat as well. I don't think I've ever been around Texas baseball when it's been in this dire straight. I mean, I, I've been around when, you know, Augie's struggled a little bit. But 
I'm, I've not been around where they're making moves like this and bringing position guys in unless it's Kiesnick who would come in and he'd play every position on the damn field yeah. and then pitch the ball and still or catch or do whatever he needed to do. That guy's an all-American caliber pitcher and right. hitter. So yeah, you don't have any but of I've that. Never, I've never heard of it being this dire where Longhorn fans, baseball fans who are, are diehards when it comes to that sport. You know what I mean? Yeah. They can go through some struggles because they figure by the end of the season you get it back together. Have already saying it's not getting back together. They've had worse seasons than this. Hell, David Pierce has had a worse season than this, right? One of his teams finished under 500. And once again, right now, uh, this team is still six games over. I guess they could hypothetically finish below 500. And this mm-hmm. could become the worst season that David Pierce has had, which would make it one of the worst seasons. But that's one of the worst games ever. But yeah, that's there's no doubt. That's one of the worst games ever uh, that Texas baseball has ever played. Not just the David Pierce era. Uh, it's incredibly embarrassing. Incredibly embarrassing and i'm glad a lot of folks don't have the longhorn network so not a lot of people had to watch that wow that was tough all right uh we will shift gears here and talk about things that are a little bit more exciting and uplifting than the current state of texas baseball we'll get into texas football and we'll let you hear from steve sarkeesian who met with the media yesterday in advance of this weekend's orange white scrimmage weather permitting but before we do that buck how about some sponsor shout outs how about our friends over at clean cause the beverage brand that gives you 50 percent of their profits to support individuals in recovery from drug and alcohol addiction half of these profits uh, do something good in the austin area and around this country clean cause Drinks are organic, sparkling yerba mate and flavors like cherry lime and orange ginger. That'll get your day going with 160 milligrams of better caffeine. And it won't cause all those crashes and jitters that you have from coffee or some of those energy drinks. Every sip makes a difference in the fight against addiction. Believe me. Love these folks. They're in HEBs, Whole Foods, 7-Elevens, 34 Wine and Spirits will soon be carrying it. I mean, it's all over the place. It's one of those drinks that when I first came to Texas years ago, I mean, this company's been around for a while. When I first came to Texas, I, was, I remember when, when the energy drinks first started coming out, and that was the big thing. Got to have this. Got to have this. All these different Red Bulls and all this other stuff. I used to see this clean cause drink. I'm looking at them like, that's everywhere. That place, that's everywhere. Is this? Is it an energy drink? What, what really is it? And I started to drink some of it, and it was, that was good stuff. It really, really was. And it doesn't give you, that, it doesn't give you that, that crazy boost where your eyeballs are popping out of your head, and then in the middle of the day, you need six more of them. It's really good, tasty stuff. That uh, I like the cause, clean cause. And believe me, I know about clean causes. And as I said, to get 50% of your profits back to addiction, drug addiction, or alcohol addiction is very, very important. And I love the folks there. I really do. 50% is 50% incredible. is huge. If it was 5%, that'd be a good thing. Absolutely. But they're doing 50%. So, yeah, it's a great drink. See it down at the coast. If you go down the coast at HEBs, you'll see the clean cause drinks down the coast. Yeah. So they're everywhere. I'll look out for them this weekend for sure. And they taste great as well. You can get them at 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven, baby. The best convenience store in the world. Shout out to our guy, Ashish. Shout out to our gal, Wendy. Wendy. We were texting Ashish last night. He'll be at the spring game on Saturday, weather permitting. Yeah, if I find out Ashish quits going to baseball, now I'm worried. Yeah, that could be an issue. If, yes. If Ashish stops sewing up. But huge Longhorn fan, huge TSU fan. And uh, we're huge 7-Eleven fans. Absolutely. The best convenience store in the world. The Buck said he went out and got some got, pizza over the weekend. Got a little Debbie's yesterday. No way. I did it. Which, I did it. Which one? I did it right down at your place. I went through there, grabbed a hold of that little Debbie's before I before I headed out to um, – I, I was deep south yesterday. So I said, I'm going to stop by. Didn't dump anything in the dumpster. Went in there, grabbed me a little Debbie's. I thought it was going to last a while. It didn't. Which little Debbie did you get? The double cake. Double cake. The double cake little Debbie oatmeal. Oh, the oatmeal cream pie. Oatmeal cream. The double decker mm, cream pie. Double decker. Dude, you love your cream pies, man. I was thinking that that bad boy was going to last me for about an hour and a half. Yeah. You know, in the car, the car ride, did not. A couple bites gone. I was hungry. <laughs> I haven't had many sweets, man. That was tasty. Oh man. Yeah, those are good. Oh. Those little Debbie snacks are dangerous. And they've got them at 7-Eleven. They've got the hot food. They've got the prepackaged snacks, the drinks, the coffee. If you're on your way to work this morning, you need a little pick-me-up. They've got the hot coffee. They've got the iced coffee, too. And they've got everything you need. Make sure you all download that 7-Eleven app to cash in on the Yeah, not, not everybody program. can do the little Debbie's. I know you people with prediabetes and all that. Then again, we all have prediabetes because every time I go to a doctor, oh, you're pre-diabetic. I'm like, well, when do I get the real thing? I've been doing this. is going on for like 30 years. Can we get this over with? Quit messing around. Mm. So 
you like your ankles and your knees and your legs and stuff? I'm like, yeah. Be careful of the little Debbies. Like, no, man. Careful no, of the little on. Debbies. No way. Oh, man. No. All right. Uh, some more sponsor shout-outs. <laughs> Centextickets.com. Hey, yes. uh, if you want to be in the building this weekend at the Dish, you can get tickets at Centextickets.com. A 281 number says – uh, the games are sold out. Yeah, I don't think they're going to be at full capacity this weekend. You can have sellouts but not have a full crowd. I, I hope I'm wrong. I hope people still go out to support Absolutely. this team. It is a huge series in the Big 12 race, but there are going to be some folks who are pretty turned off by what has happened all season long and especially by what happened last night. But, hey, SentexTickets.com. If you want to get to any sporting event in the city, in the state, in the world, they've got tickets for you at SentexTickets.com. How about a Mavs playoff game? How about a go. Dallas Stars playoff game? Stars about to be the one seed in the Western Conference. They've got a shot to make some noise. If you want to uh, get up to Big D for a big game, SendTextTickets.com has you covered. If you want to watch the Astros play, the Rangers play, they've got them there, SendTextTickets.com. And, of course, when we get closer to football season, there's only one place you need to shop for those Longhorn football tickets. That is SendTextTickets.com. Calm. But if you need your Longhorn gear, you need to head over to Sue Patrick. Oh, man. And at 930, they, the doors will open. and. Man, these hats are sharp. Every time I look up, I'm looking at the Bahama Joe hats up there. That's what I call them. Bahama I don't know the, Joe. I don't know if that's the name of You're them. Talking about like Tommy Bahama style? Tommy Bahama style. The, the hats up and they there. they got the straw hat. They've yes. got the bucket hats. They've got just the regular baseball caps. Old dudes, get those bucket hats. Don't be afraid to wear them. They got visors. Cover your ears. What is this? It's like a little visor thing. A little half visor. Yeah, a little Joey Freshwater half visor Come deal. Come on, man. That's for pickleball, pickleballers. Is this a woman's hat? Yeah, it is. That's a woman's hat. That's for pickleball. A clip visor? Should yes. I? I'm going to throw that'll this keep, on. That'll keep your hair in line. I don't have to worry about that. But that's to keep your hair back. There you go. Put there. Keep your, keep your hair back. That's a pickleball hat right there. Oh, my God. I look like a lesbian right now. <laughs> you want to drive my car? <laughs> You're super. <laughs> Oh man, uh, they've I got saw all... pickleball. Jay says there's pickleball rackets over here, like UT. Yes, no UT, way. Yes, pickleball oh my stuff. God, that is awesome. Yep, Sue Patrick, the best selection of Longhorn gear. There's hardly been people walking around the front I know. door, like, like kids it, trying to get in. It's like Black Friday here, I know. trying to get some new Jordans or something. You got to get that bucket hat. I'm telling you guys, for your ears. I mean, this summer, you can all these wonderful hats that we have, but these things don't protect your ears. You need a bucket hat if you even have a hint of melanoma please get a bucket hat yep. cover your ears i get yelled at about i get yelled at about everything as you notice there folks because i tell you every morning I get yelled at but i just been told you know i know this black don't crack and all that stuff but you can get melanoma black people can get melanoma and cancer and all that stuff that's out there that everybody else gets yeah if you don't protect your ears that's a problem it is in the sun out here Absolutely. I don't wear sunscreen, BK. CB says I look like Steve Spurrier with this uh, clip-on there you visor go. right now. I do not wear sunscreen. You don't wear sunscreen? No. Ever? No. Okay, you just gave a soapbox about how you need to wear sunscreen and how other people need to wear sunscreen and protect their face, and I, now you're saying you don't? I'll do the cap and the hat and all that stuff. I just, I, I can, I have not found, and somebody can tell us, one of our, one of our wonderful listeners, what sunscreen is not greasy and makes me sweat? They all make me over, you know what I mean? They cover your pores. Whatever it is, they clog up your pores. Yeah. It's like your skin doesn't breathe. I mean, if there's a spray that's good, I, I would I would love to try it. Yeah, they've got the sport spray sunscreen. I may try that. But the other stuff, the, the ones where, where it makes your face all really, really white and patchy and stuff, Ugh. I can't do it. It makes me sweat like mad. You don't want the cream on your face. I don't want cream all over my face. Okay, no. no, you just want that spray stuff. Yeah, give me the spray. But I need to find out which one it is. Is it a sports cream or sports spray? Mm. LG 37 RV, uh, you know, Rio Grande Valley R, whatever it is. Are you thinking Keep of those rays? SPF? Yeah, that's what, yeah, that's the LG, one. that's like AV consultations. That's yes. what Tom McKay sells. Okay, I'm just trying to make sure I don't get those, all those sun rays into my skin. Yeah, yeah, we don't need those. By the way, the sun is good for your skin, too. Sure, you got to get that vitamin D. Thank you. That's That's important. I'm not a huge fan of the D, but some people are. And that's yeah, you fine. get you get out there. You do get out there. You get in the sun for a guy that's kind of pale. That's you get out there in the sun, and you're not always. You don't always have the cream on. You just go out there and play, don't you? Oh, I have to put sunscreen on. Oh, you do? Yeah, I, I get two colors, man. I'm white or I'm red. That's it. I don't get Those tan. Are the two. No tan. People think I like spend all my time inside, and I I do spend a ton of time inside. But even if I I could like go spend a whole week at the beach, and it'll I'll be white. 
if I put sunscreen on, if I don't put sunscreen on, I'll be red. And That's then I'll just how it goes, go, huh? go back to white. How about that D, baby? Thank you, Coach. How about that vitamin D, baby? All right, let's hear from uh, the head coach of Texas. We just heard from the head coach of the Kansas City Chiefs. Now let's hear from Steve Sarkeesian, who had a uh, media availability down on campus yesterday. Of course, we are three days away from the orange-white scrimmage, weather permitting. And uh, Sark talked a lot about last weekend's closed-door scrimmage that Texas had, but also talked about what to expect this weekend for those of you who plan on attending the game at DKR or for those of you who plan on watching the game on Longhorn Network. So here's just a generic thought. This was part of Sark's opening statement. He just talked about kind of where the team is right now in the final week of spring practice. Yeah, we're, we're, we're definitely still a work in progress, but I like the fact that the majority of the guys are improving, right? And, and that's the goal in this thing is we go through spring practice. I, I don't expect anybody to be a finished product um, after 15 practices of spring ball but it should give us a really good snapshot of the things that each guy needs to focus on and work on throughout the summer to get himself prepared for fall camp. Um, and that not only individual players, but I think for us on offense, defense, and special teams from a schematic standpoint, so that we're playing to the strengths of our team. Um, it's not just about having a big old playbook and trying to run every play. It's about putting our players in the best position to be successful. And I think we're starting to get some real information now of what, what we might look, start to look like here when the fall rolls around. I like it, meaning who can play and who can't play. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what he's trying to say. Who's a player and who's not a player? And when I say who's not a player, how far down are they away from being a player? And as long as he continues, as he says, guys are improving, that's important to them. As long as they continue to improve, even the ones that won't be starters, even the guy who's the third string or fourth string guy who's improving, trying to push the guy that's ahead of him, that's what he wants his team to be like. He wants everybody always pushing each other. He knows who the really good players are. They all know. We all know who the good players are. Yeah. Uh, and, but although they're good, they still need to continue to improve. It's the other guys that may get into games that, that really, really matter right now. This is where you want to find out when the lights come on Will they be able to shine too? Or are they still going to be the same? Are they the same kids you saw two years ago that haven't really, you know, got to the big time? Now, not everybody's, even though you get recruited by Texas and you say, well, it's big time, but not everybody is at the big time level. It takes improving and it takes coaching like these guys have done over the last couple of years here. Uh, and, and you see that. But he's, he's wondering, he's saying that the majority of guys are still improving, which is good to hear. I mean, that is, that's, that's great to hear. That's why I don't like gimmicky, spring games bk that's why as a fan i want to see i want to see football i don't yeah. i don't see tug of wars and and, sh and shit like that i really don't i want to see i want to see what it's like for guys in front of forty five thousand, sixty thousand, because they're soon going to be in front of a hundred thousand give me an idea as a fan can i trust this guy or is, is the ball that just hit him in the hands and went on the ground is that if it's happening in front of 40 and he misses two passes like that I want to know that I can trust in that guy with 100000 that he's going to make that catch. Bingo. Or he's going to make that block or make that tackle. So that's why I don't like gimmicky spring games. Give us, give us something that's spring game-like. I, I mean, I don't expect kickoff returns and have full-speed guys going down there and bludgeoning dudes. I don't, I don't want to see that. You don't have to even have to do that. Just kick it out, out of the end zone for the kicker. We want to see that your kicker can still kick it out of the end zone. Sure. That helps, too. Or that your guy – doesn't have a club on his hand to return the kickoff. <laughs> that helps. That that helps us all as fans. But um, I, I, you know, we talked about it yesterday. I don't like. I don't like. You know, every year coaches will get into their spring meetings and try. How can we make this interesting for the fans? Just play football. Play coach. football. Play football. They don't care about your score. Who scored this? The white team beat beat the the orange by by thirty. Nobody cares that because that means something's wrong with your teams. Right. That's that's what that's what fans come out with. They just want to see a decent display of football we don't watch these guys for tug of war no we don't watch these guys for, for dunk slam contests. no i don't i could care less or for hot dog eating contests no. now if you want to give me if you want to give me a 15 minute goal line scrimmage versus your your ones versus your ones yeah i'm, I'm fine with that sure. if, if you have a, if you have a scoring zone scrimmage and say this is our segment of the scoring zone you know we're going to have three or four drives to try to get in from the 20 or the scoring zone or wherever we call the scoring zone i'm fine with that but don't stop me and then start doing tug of wars. I mean, who cares? Just play eleven on eleven tackle yes, football. Absolutely, that's what we want to see, right? Yeah, there are some gimmicks, right? Sometimes. Well, you know, they have scoring gimmicks all the time. Of course, you know, you know because the players want to know 
did did my team win? Did my team lose? Well, it's your team. I mean, if your team loses, that other side loses, you lose too. Yeah, and the coach will blow the whistle. He'll pick up the ball. He'll move it 40 yeah, yards down the field. Oh, yeah, and you tell him, hey, I had that guy. Yeah. The coach looks at you, no, you would have never got him. I mean, those things, just just play 11-on-11, 11 11, whatever you have to do. Just play football. You, yeah. You got to wet our palate too. We need this, man. I mean, it's yes. already – long enough off season as it is having to go from January 1st to August 31st without a real game. Let us see something close to a real game so do in your, between then. Do your gimmicks and winter workouts. You know, Tom Herman, here's some bad toast for you or something like burnt toast or bad biscuits or something. Yeah. Do all that stuff then. Don't do it at, don't do it in the springtime. This is where you're where you where your guys mature, where we want to see football, where we want to see who can who can not fumble the ball at the goal line. Who can give a good handoff? You know, you're gonna you're gonna have to see your you're gonna have to see your backup quarterback gets a lot of snaps. You're gonna have to see your third stream quarterback that could end up being your backup at any given time during the football season. So I want to know what the third quarterback is like. Yeah, I do what, too. What, yeah. Who is that? Trey Owens, I believe. Not Billy Owens, Jesse Owens. I don't think Jesse Trey, Owens has any uh, eligibility. Trey Owens. Trey okay. Owens. Got to see him, too, don't we? Yeah, I think so. We'll see Cole Lord as well. He's the four-string quarterback. He's been a part of this program My for Lord? a few years. Uh, I don't know if it's God, if that's what you're asking. Oh, okay. uh, Adonai Mitchell is no longer a part of this program. <laughs> but uh, Cole Lord, I think, is QB4. And, and okay. Sark actually talked about him yesterday and was like, he's he's gotten a lot better. Like, he has made the most of his reps at spring ball. Now, it goes without saying, you don't want to see Cole Lord in any regular season games this fall. But, um, yeah, that's uh, – I like it's the word improving. Right? I, I like the word improving. Yeah, you yeah, want to see what the coach is talking about, right? right? Like the coach has done a bunch of these media availabilities, and he's talking about how these guys are playing well and how these guys are getting better. We want to see that firsthand. Sure. You know, it's a spring game. It's still like a glimpse of us to get to see what these players actually look like, and we'll not we'll, we'll be able to tell if Quinn Ewers looks better. Yeah, and once, once again, for me, it's the receiving core that, you know, we talk about the depth that they have right now, but – when when you start running patterns and stuff against, you know, your secondary and against your defense, that's the stuff that I that's the stuff I want to see. What's the coordination of the quarterback with some of the new receivers? Yeah, that's how, a, how does that look? That's a great point, right? Because you know Xavier Worthy. We talked about this yesterday. Xavier wow. Worthy was the security blanket for Quinn Ewers, and he's obviously gone. And you lose A.D. Mitchell, and you lose Jordan Whittington. So you've got talented NFL receivers. players. Yeah. Oh yeah, you've got talented receivers. I I've gone out and said I think this year's wide receiver room is deeper than last year's wide receiver room. I don't know if it's quite as top heavy. It's not as experienced. We know that. That's for sure. And it's definitely not as experienced at the University of Texas. But uh, you've got a number of supremely talented cats sure. in that wide receiver room. What does the chemistry look like? Obviously, Quinn is going to have all summer and all fall to build up that rapport. And with your head coach's specialty is just that. Bingo. And, yeah, they'll be able to build up rapport after Saturday, between Saturday and August 31st when Colorado State comes to town. And they play the catchy catch. Yeah, they'll play some catchy catch this summer, summer yeah. as you like to call it. So, But what does it look like right now with Isaiah Bond, with Matthew Golden? Uh, we won't see Silas Bolden. The Oregon State transfer is not until coming the until the summer, right? So, yeah, he'll be here for fall. But what about Ryan Wingo? What about Jonte Cook, right? Uh, that's that's a huge thing that Texas fans are going to be watching. People are going to be wanting to know how Cook is when where does he fit in. Yep. And what do they do? What is his specialty? Is his specialty just going running past people? Is, his, is it a catch and run? Is it quick screens? I want to know what the specialty is. I didn't get a chance to see it except for one bomb, I think, last year. That was about it. Yeah. Yeah, I only had eight catches last season. Wow. Had that nice uh, touchdown, that long touchdown against Baylor, if memory serves. I think that's the play that you were talking about. Yeah, it, it's just – it's unusual when you have a kid that talented that you actually – his year is gone, correct? I mean, he used they – used, they used him up. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking and that's all he had was eight catches, and there wasn't any real specialty things that – he really, really did during the course. Eight catches. Eight catches for 136 yards wow. for John Day Cook last so, year. So, yeah, yeah, one of them had to be a bomb, obviously. So, I'm thinking you th there must be really something. What is his specialty? He has to have something that's really, really special because I, I know it can't be go down there and curl at 12 yards. It's got to be something different. Uh, out of all the wide receivers who are back for Texas, nobody had more catches than John Day Cook. Now, C.J. Baxter had more receptions than Jonte Cook. Sure. Gunnar Helm had more receptions than Jonte Cook. Jaden Blue did as well. So you've got, uh, I guess, more prominent pass catchers returning from last season. But at the wide receiver position, uh, nobody at Texas. It seems like you won a lot of games to, ha to not have that guy have more than eight catches. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. You know, he, he played in 14 games. 
Uh, but a lot of the times when he did get into games, they were games that were already in hand. So Texas was just running out the clock. Or there were games where they needed to make big plays, and he wasn't a part of the big play because they had these other dudes that are getting ready to go to the NFL. Right. Yeah. Close games, obviously, sure. you'd have your starters out there. And in blowout games, you're usually running the football uh, as much as you can. And look, there were, there were too many games last year where Texas had big leads, and it's like, okay, we should be able to get John Tay Cook some more playing time. But they let him go. I mean, yeah. Houston, right? They had that big lead against Houston, and they slipped up and had to hold on for That's dear life. True. TCU had that big lead uh, against the Horny Toads in Fort Worth and uh, had to yeah, hold the timing on for just, dear life. The timing just wasn't there. Yeah. And plus, they just had a, a a short rotation. They just didn't use a lot of players. Yep. At wide receiver. And Sark doesn't generally have eight or nine guys. He's rotating. He's not going to do that. So what does that look like this year? Right. What does that rotate? Because you don't have Xavier Worthy, who was a three year starter. You don't have Alan I. Mitchell. Was and that's a... what they're finding out right now. Yep. 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 It yep. has to be. And we'll see some of it on Saturday, but everyone's going to play on Saturday. So sure. you won't get a great feel of what. But the... you'll, know who, you'll find out who the primary guy is, by the way, the quarterback, who he throws to. You would think. And who he feels comfortable with. Yes. Agreed. Agreed. All right. Let's hear more from uh, Steve Sarkeesian. Boy, I loved hearing this. This might have been my favorite thing that I heard Sark say during his press conference yesterday. Here's Sark talking about uh, something that has been looking really, really good for Texas thus far in the spring. Um, but in the red area, I thought the offense performed really well, which for me, I was pleased with uh, knowing that we had struggled in the red area a year ago. And it's been a point of emphasis of ours offensively that the execution in the red area all spring long has been high, which has been encouraging. I know we've been an excellent red area defensive team, so I don't want to fall too far away from that. But the fact that in that phase of the scrimmage, I thought the offense did some really good things. Love hearing that. Absolutely. Because like Sark said, the red zone offense was a problem last year, and it was something we talked about all the time. Sark got asked about it about 10 different times during the course of the year, and he actually was getting pissed, and it's like, no, coach, your red zone offense sucks. We've got to ask it. Like, why is this as bad as it is? You have too much talent to be one of the worst red zone touchdown offenses in the country. You know, for a lot of folks, it might be, okay, let's see it in the fall, but I, I at least like hearing Sark say that that sure. red area offense is looking better than what Which it did last year. Which lets me know that his quarterback has taken what they're giving him. Yes. And his, his offensive team has taken what's given to him. And that includes his play calling, you know, he's, yep. he's, he's a part of this offense too. I mean, he calls a damn play. So he's starting to take what the defense gives him, whether it's his own defense or anybody that he plays, his quarterback has enough patience, his running backs and offensive line, has, they all have enough patience to take what the defense gives them and just continues to move the ball forward. So that that's a good thing uh, that he's talking about right there. It is, yeah. you know, and I, and Gary, you know, this guy, He's gone to study where there's NFL or other colleges. He's gone to study what they do in the red zone too. I'm once again, I'm I'm of the Kirby Smart theory. I don't give a rat's ass about the red zone. If I score from a 40, that's the way we play football. We try to score on every play, and we don't worry about all the red zone stuff because we'll score from 40 on you. We'll score from 25 on you. We don't get to the red zone. We score long touchdowns. Yeah, that's cool too. That's fine with me. Yeah, I don't care if they get to the red zone one time this me season, score, as long as they score. win all their games. That's and, right. And get into the end zone somehow, some way, then I'll sign up for it. But we know that's not how football works. Yeah, because this group, uh, as methodical as they are with the run game and the passing game, uh, they're in the red zone a lot. Sure. And they have to be able to be efficient when they're in the red zone. They can't be kicking field goals when they need to be scoring touchdowns. And that may be an area where the in-helmet communication is going to really help yes. Quinn Ewers, right? Letting Steve hey, Sarkeesian. You, dumbass, over there, yeah, not over there. <laughs> you know, Sark uh, just can see what the defense looks like, and he can maybe tell Quinn, all right, I like this matchup right here, or look at this guy first, and if he's not there, look at this guy. Uh, that could be another Dude, benefit I, for I, that. I, that is really – that is special, that, that head gear now. Because yeah. Hey, by the way, that guy's ankle is bothering him. Coach tells you, some other coach goes over to Sark and says, that dude just jacked up his ankle. Go after him. Mm, somebody I mean, on defense. A, yeah, I mean, yeah. there's a lot of there's a lot of things that, that that will come into play when you can get to your quarterback that way. Sure. And speaking to him. Now, what is, the, what is the limitations on that? Does he get to talk to him the whole time, or does it shut off sort of like the NFL? Shuts off like the NFL. It does? I believe it's 15 seconds on the play clock. I know that's what it is in the NFL. I think that's what it's going to be in college, too. Just imagine Sarge just going nuts on the sideline, screaming like he can get into his head still. Yeah. That is going to drive coaches nuts. It will. It will. And coaches are going to be real pissed when oh, the headset oh. stops working on the road. Did you hear me? Didn't you hear me, Coach? No, it shuts off. Yeah. We're playing at College Station, yes. Coach. You think the headset's going to work? No. no they're having technical difficulties here. No. Only for us, though, not for the 
the other team. Right. Oh, man. All right, more from Sark. Uh, before we get more into this Saturday's game, I know we've been talking about it a lot, mm-hmm. but let's let's go back to last Saturday's scrimmage. It was a closed-door scrimmage, but um, the media asked Sark about who stood out during the second scrimmage of the spring. Here's what the coach had to say. Just a quick snapshot of Saturday um, that, that – kind of poured into today. I thought Quinn was played excellent Saturday, had a very good practice again today, um, which was encouraging because I think that part of that is rapport with the receivers, that the timing and things of that nature are really starting to come into the fold here now, um, which is what spring practice is for. You know, we, we can't, we can only do so much of that prior to spring ball. So to work on those things has been good. Um, you know, I, I thought, uh, I thought Saturday, you know, Manny Muhammad definitely made some plays uh, Saturday, Dre Bledsoe made some plays up front. Um, you, know, you could you could kind of feel, um, especially in the second half and some of the more passing things that we were doing, Trey Moore and Colin Simmons effect, uh, getting to the quarterback. Um, thought Andrew Makuba played a really physical scrimmage Saturday, which was good to see. You know, we don't get to be live uh, all the time in practice, and so when it went live, you know, he definitely showed up in that aspect of it. So, very nice for, for for him talking about his his uh, his quarterback because this is a huge year for the quarterback. The quarterback understands what's at stake for him too. Yeah, the team wins, he wins. It's a contract you know? year for Quinn Ewers. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And we're talking about Heisman Trophy. We're talking about you know number one pick, number two pick. This is this is a big year for him. So in a way, some of the the stuff that people may call selfish is if that guy's selfish enough to do all the things he needs to do, this team can win a lot of games. Yeah, because he's really multi talented. He really. He really is. I thought we saw that last year. I thought we saw that on display of, of leadership, what he had to do, running the ball, throwing the ball, making good decisions, having talent around him. Um, once again, I think he'll have talent around him, but his decision-making will be more more evident, I think, this year than last year's talent. I think he, he got away with some throws because A.D. Mitchell makes some great catches. He was just consistent. He's going to have to make really consistent throws with this young group, I think. Yeah, if Quinn Ewers hits his potential and yes. Texas hits its potential, then Quinn Ewers is going to go down as one of the best quarterbacks in the history of this program. Sure. Uh, it's a big if. It's a Rosie O'Donnell-sized if, if you will. But, uh, I mean, he's one of the Heisman favorites. If he goes out there and wins the Heisman, and Texas is one of the favorites to win sure. the national championship this season, if both of those things happen, that, yeah, Quinn is going to – Oh, maybe get his number retired by the end of his Texas career, and he's got a legitimate shot to be one of the top picks in next year's NFL draft. Obviously, everything has to go right for all of that to happen. But, man, I love hearing good things about Quinn, and I'm excited to get to watch him on Saturday. And I've said this a million times, but I'll keep saying it. If he takes the same size leap, he took from year one to year two, Sure. from year two to year three. He'll at least be in New York. I, yeah. don't, I don't know if he's going to win the Heisman, but he will at least be one of the Heisman finalists. Yeah, and, and, I, and I, I I love when, when Carl, I'm waiting to hear him, or the more quiet about the offensive line, the better it is for me. Sometimes when you don't hear about people, it's a good thing too. You know what I'm saying? When the coach doesn't have to say anything about it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. When the coach doesn't have to say anything about the offensive line, and we can just take it for granted that three years with this group together, they're going to be good. So he doesn't have to say, well, our offensive line is really playing well. Well, I think we all expect this offensive line after three years. That's to be that's almost like a given that they're going to be good. So you don't have to keep you don't have to heap praise on even individuals because as a group, it should be one of the better offensive lines in the country. Yeah, tough that's, scene right there. We just had a guy try to get in to Sue Patrick, but And he truly wanted to get in here, didn't he? Oh man, he was ready to roll. He had his checkbook in hand. Too. Jay got his checkbook with him. <laughs> Come on back. Not open until nine thirty. So hopefully, yeah, there's nobody. To, there's nobody at the cash register unless you want me to deal with your cash, because I don't have change. I don't think Jay wants you dealing with. Oh, really? Their cash? Yeah, because that's going straight into your pocket. That ain't going. Don't to... much time. Get a cup of coffee, sir. Yeah, and then come back. Come on back. Yeah, but uh, yeah, you're right. I like hearing Quinn Ewers. Also, some of those other names, right? I mean, Jare Bledsoe at Makuba, defensive tackle. Uh, yeah. Andrew Makuba. More praise for him. But yeah, three three defensive linemen, right? I mean, Trey Moore and college, uh, Colin Simmons, those are edge guys, obviously, but I'll throw them into defensive linemen for the sake of this. And then Jare Bledsoe, like, love, love hearing that. And I can't wait. Like, that's that's one of the one-on-one matchups that I'm really excited to watch on Saturday is Cam Williams at right tackle. I assume he'll be running with the ones going up against Trey Moore, the UTSA transfer. Yeah, because on the other Colin side, Simmons. you're not going to beat that other kid. That kid's that kid's all everything. Yeah, Calvin Banks is – You're uh, not getting by him. No, nah, he's a first-round pick in 2025. Hell, if he could have left 
for the NFL this year. Sure. He would have been a first round pick this year. He's that good. So, yeah, I mean, look, four of the five offensive line positions feel solidified for this team. They're still trying to figure out who the right tackle is. Cam Williams is the leader in the clubhouse. He's the Vegas favorite to win that job. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, Texas has a really good edge room with Trey Moore, with Colin Simmons, with Baron Sorrell, with Ethan Burke, with Colton Vosick. So how does Cam Williams look? We saw him a little bit in game action last year, but this is the most really we're going to That's see right. him. How does he look going up against what I think is going to be one of the most uh, talented pass rushing rooms in college football? Well, I hope it is. Yeah, I hope I, it is too. I, I, they have numbers. I hope it is, but I also hope Cam Williams wins a lot, right? Like, yeah, I, I hope win. the edge rushers win, of course. It's like, oh, shoot, yeah, these guys look really good, and they're living up to the billing. But I also hope that the right tackle doesn't get Well, he'll have a lot of different play. type of players coming at him, which is a good thing. Yeah. During this, whole, during this whole spring, different types of moves, different types of players, length of players, you know, guys, different strength levels. So this is, this is, all of this is good for him. It is. It is indeed. And yeah, Colin Simmons, man, I cannot wait. And I also like to hear about the wide receivers. I mean, guys that are, you know, this is, although this is a group that has played at other places, mm -hmm. it's also a new system for them all too. It is. You know, and Sark is going to, you know, he's going to be very picky about where your ass needs to be on the field when it comes to the wide receiver group. No, you can't do it. I know you did it this way where you were before, but we can't have you there. This is what, these are the reads that we have. You know, head head coaches that are involved in not only just the quarterback room, but involved in the receiver room, they're really picky on yardage, where you should be. I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, I, I was around a dude, John Magovic. That dude was picky about, you know what? He's a yard and a half in the spot that he shouldn't be. And I'm like, a what? <laughs> a yard and a half? No, he needs to be just about, I mean, I had to learn that. That guy needs to be right there. Here's the spot. You start you start thinking on your own and start being three or four yards from where you're supposed to be, and the quarterback throws it behind you. That ends up being on you, and the head coach doesn't like that. This is this is his offense. This is what he's used to. This is where he wants you, and you've got a fantastic wide receiver coach that's been in the NFL, so he knows about where where guys need to be. So this is this is the group. When he starts talking about having this group together, that's the one I really want to see in the spring game. Sure. How, how are these guys? How do how are the fits? At wide receiver right now. Well, it's a game of inches, Buck. Boy. We know that. Yes, it is. This life is a game of inches, too. Absolutely. Every inch matters. It's as simple as that. All right, more from Sark in a second. I want uh, you to hear from Steve Sarkeesian talking about running back carries, right? We're trying to figure out who the starting running back is going to be and how carries will be split both this weekend and when we get to the actual games in August and September and beyond. But before that, how about uh, some more sponsor Our shout outs? Good friends at Texas Orthopedics. So if you're seeking that specialized patient focused orthopedic care, contact the experts and our friends at Texas Orthopedics. Their physicians offer surgical and non surgical orthopedic care for children and adults, spinal care, trauma care, sports medicine, joint replacement, rheumatology, and even more. Dr. Christopher Danny's there, Dr. Christopher Stockton are there, and they are dedicated orthopedic surgeons, and their goal is to get you back into good health, and the great quality of life that you definitely deserve. Texas Orthopedics is the largest independent orthopedic practice in the state of Texas. Folks, for more information about it, give them a, a look up at TXOrtho.com. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How about a word now from our buddy Tom McKay over at Audiovisual Consultations? <laughs> Hi, this is Tom McKay with Audiovisual Consultations. Today's home electronics can be a bit daunting. My company has spent the last 36 years making sure they are not. For those of you who have not experienced our services yet, we'd like to invite you to give us a try for all your home electronics needs. We carry all the major brands of televisions and stereo equipment at prices you can't find in stores. And we come to you. There's no need to leave your home to find great pricing and incomparable service. No traffic and experienced sales geeks or pushy showroom tactics. We believe in having some fun and dreaming big. Do you have a dream for your home entertainment? Let us know. We can make it come true. And we are always there to help after the job is done. We cultivate clients for a lifetime by treating everyone like their family. No, not those family members. I'm talking about the ones you actually like. So relax, hug your kids, make love to your wife, and smile. Then, when you have a moment, give us a call at 255-8678. It's 512-255-8678 or online at avconsultations.com. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate that. I'm eyeballing those khakis over there. You know, I've been, I'm not a khaki wearer. See those khakis right there, BK? The ones for golf right there? Those are khaki shorts. Khaki shorts. Are you a khaki pant wearer? Not really. I'm a jean wearer. Okay. 
What about like if you're dressing up? You ever dress up for anything? I dress up. You know, I just was at a wedding a couple weeks ago. I guess you were in a suit for that. I was wearing a nice suit. I looked good. Okay. I looked good. What if you got like? I looked like Donovan Don McNabb looked good too, but he's a big one now. I was about to say, dude, that dude is huge. I don't know if you want to be looking like Donovan McNabb because he's uh, put on a few lbs. Left tackle right now. That big. Oh, he was that big. Can he I'm play s- right tackle for Texas? He could play right tackle, too. Can he pitch for Texas? He could do that. Yeah, he we would could be use in, some pitchers. Let me tell you something. He'd be intimidating on the mound for sure. But, yeah, those khakis, I'd be looking good in a pair of those khakis for golf. Yeah. Except for I get those little skinny legs. I'm not quite the big man in the leg area. Do you ever wear shorts when you golf? No, because I'm in the woods too much. <laughs> and if you got to go chase your ball in the woods, you know, because I always think of it, it's the only ball I have and the last ball I have in the world. Right. So I got to go find that ball, even there with the rattlesnakes and the moccasins. Even when it's 100 degrees, you're rocking pants out there. I rock pants. I, I, I just don't. Like I said, the, the heat, you know, through stuff, the heat for me is I'm fine with the heat. It doesn't really, really bother me except for dehydration. But I don't I don't need that tan on my legs. Mm. And my legs don't look that hot anyway. So I wear, I wear you know, we on the PGA Tour don't wear shorts. This is not live. No, this is not the live tour. By the way, my son called me yesterday, and he's telling me that Rory may take the cash. No way. I, I saw yesterday that he had an offer of $850 million. Wow. And my son was talking to me. AJ was talking to me as if he was taking the money. I'm like, wait a minute. There's no definitive yes that he's taking that money. Can you turn down that money? Oh, I'm looking. I just searched Roy McElroy on Twitter. And What's the first an, thing that jumped up? There's an interview he did with Golf Central, part of NBC, and he said that the live rumors are false and added, quote, I will play the PGA Tour for the rest of my career. Thank you. End quote. So we'll see. Although the, the, the famous last words. I was about to say. I mean, Rory's kind of changed his tone. You know, at times he's like, live golf sucks. And at other times he's like, ah, no, we should all be friends. We well, should all get along. Well, he and Tiger are trying to get this thing together. They're, they're, yeah. trying to, they're trying to get the system where they can all make a lot of money and pretend they're not livers. That's all they want. They want that money, too. Of they, course. They can pretend like they don't want that money. If, they're, if that was true, $850 million. Oh, it's all a moral thing, right? It's morals versus money. It's PGA versus I'm the I'm about live. the morals. I am, too, which is why I'm a live guy. <laughs> yeah. For me, it's morals and money are together with live golf. But for other people, the morals are with the PGA Tour and the I, money's with the I was the thinking live. if that was true yesterday, I'm thinking, as I as I talked to my son, I said, well, do you think Tiger would, would roll over to that? He said, Tiger already has billions. He doesn't, that, it's not a money thing with him any longer. Well, let me ask you this. If Rory's getting offered 800 mil, what is Tiger getting offered? I'm just going to say he wouldn't do it. He would. There's no chance he does it. But he would go down with the ship. Is he getting offered billion? Oh yeah, easy. I think he's already <sighs> been offered that, and he's already he's already gone. No. Think about it. Like if Tiger just plays the 11 or 12 live events every year, which he's probably not going to probably not going to play that much on the PGA Tour, right? He might no. just be a majors guy at this point. Maybe play Jack's tournament. But um, what if he just does like the 11 or 12 live tournaments, 54 holes, and he gets a billion dollars for that. Yeah, but they don't let the women drive there. You know, they have to cover their face and stuff. That's wrong. Oh, yeah, Tiger Woods is all about the women, huh? Yeah, come on, man. He's morals. Always very pro women. He's he's changed. Things happen. Things people change. But eighty hundred and fifty million dollars doesn't change. That's well, still the same, we, isn't it? We need Tiger having sex again because if he plans on not doing that, then Liv's not going to offer him any money because he's going to be terrible. The guy finished last place. In the Masters. Now, he didn't make the cut. Good for him. But he did also finish last of everybody who did make the cut. Hey, somebody has to be last. Yeah. And if Tiger Woods was banging it out, it wouldn't have been him. No, he would have been He would have, He would. have been just before that. Yeah, man. he would have finished, like, right behind Scotty and Ludwig Oberg. He would have been right there. <laughs> Come on. You think he let Oberg beat him? No. Uh, you're right. What if they let Tiger ride in the cart? They're not going to do that because he's not going to do these things. Okay. He's not going to take the shortcut. Anything that Jack did, Tiger wants to do. Jack now is Tiger's. It's not, you know, guys like Lee Elder used to be Tiger's mentor growing up with his dad and stuff. Mentors like Lee Elder, you know, Roy Siffer. I mean, older guys. Now it's Jack. Jack is his guy. Sure. And if Jack says Tiger, no, you can't ever get in a cart. You know, he's not going to do that. No. He's not going to do it. Now, he may be at opening ceremonies at the Masters here soon. Yeah, I keep I keep hearing you say that. Yeah. Tiger's going to be a starter. He's going to be a starter here eventually. Yeah, eventually, yes, but we're not talking Over the next soon. couple of years. Yes. No. Yes, when he hits 50, 
it's time 50. for him. Yes. He's yeah. like 40. What is he, 46? No, he's 48, I, I think believe. he's 48. But Jack is in his, what, 80s? I know we talked about this yesterday or last week, and, of course, I can't remember. Yeah, Tiger Woods is 48. His ankle doesn't, his left ankle doesn't move. Jack is 84. Flip the numbers around. He's not doing what Jack is doing. Come on. Yep, he's going to be the starter soon. Oh, my God. I know he's in bad shape, and he ain't the guy that he used to be, but he's not that level, I know, he's, he? work, I know he's working that upper body. My goodness. Tiger? Yeah. No, he can't work out the legs. They don't work. Look like a tight end out there the other day. Yeah, we could use him in Texas, I think. I don't even know how we got there. Or you can use him on the mound. Once again, we can use anybody in the mound. We might as well go back to that at any given time. We can say anybody can pitch at Texas now. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm getting close to starting my search for future head coaches, right? Like, who who could Texas be looking at this offseason if David Pierce is no longer the answer? Aaron Boone. Uh, oh, yeah? You think he'd leave the Yankees? You think he's going to get fired from the Yankees? He's getting close. Well, you not... guys are playing well this year. Are we still only – what, do you got three losses we're in there? I think it's more than that, but still one of the best records in baseball. You are twelve and six right now. That's I mean, remember they were hot. They only had two losses there for a while. Yeah, it's the second best record in the American League behind the Guardians of the Galaxy, Cleveland. They're twelve and five right now. It's been a weird baseball year. The Astros are awful. The Rangers are five hundred, but somehow in first place in the American League West. And yeah, it's been all sorts of weird to open Where, up. Where's the year. Wags group from the that group that? Acts like Ravens down there in Baltimore. They're right behind you. They're half they? game back of the Yankees right now for first place in the East. Just treading water as they always do. Yeah. They won't be around. They were the number one seed in the uh, AL playoffs last year before they got swept by the world champion Texas Rangers. There you go. Yeah, nice nice playoff run at Orioles. You had your best season in decades, and you couldn't win one playoff game against the lowly Rangers. Nice going, jabronis. All right. Uh, more sponsors. I don't know. Oh, yeah, we were it. talking about the khakis from Sue Patrick. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I love everything here. Because yeah, of course. I come in here, it's like Christmas. You know what else I love? What's that? And I know you love it, too. Olipop. Yes. Yeah, we got to get Olipop at Sue Patrick somehow. We need a cooler up in here. Yeah, we can make that happen. Olipop, great tasting soda that's actually good for you. So you can enjoy the taste of soda like you always have. But you can also enjoy the added health benefits of Olipop. Nine grams of fiber in every can. They've got a unique blend of ingredients that will help support your digestive system. Not only is this stuff not bad for you, it's actually good for you. Every time you drink a can of Olipop, you're helping your gut. We're all trying to be a little healthier here in 2024. So make it easy on yourself. A great tasting soda that's good for you. It's Olipop. It's easy to find, too. Wherever you buy your groceries, you can find Olipop, H-E-B, Whole Foods, Target, Walmart, Costco, wherever you go, they've got it. It is Ollie Pop. Yes, indeed. Love Ollie Pop. Still stuck on the grape, though. Sorry about good. that. Oh, no need to apologize. It's one yeah. of my favorite flavors, too. Tastes just like a grape soda because it is a grape soda. Also, shout out to our friends at Woods Comfort Systems. Yes, sir. Almost 70 years of providing the best HVAC and plumbing services in Central Texas. See their TV commercials. I see those trucks rolling trucks around. Trucks are rolling around, is for sure. They're not messing around. They are dedicated to keeping you comfortable and keeping your family comfortable in your home all year long. 512-842-5066. The Buck has a Woods Comfort System. And they're checking them out. I see them rolling around right now. They've got some specials on, on air conditioning, you know, uh, going and checking out the air conditioning, making sure that it's getting ready because it's going to start getting up into those – not mid 80s, but it's going to be high 80s here coming up very soon. Here, it very got, short. It got to 90 over the weekend, didn't yes. it? Yes, oh, it, it's going to start getting hot. So you want to make sure that air conditioning system is working to its best because I think we're going to need it this summer. Why do, like, why do I say summer? We're going to need it in May. That's the same. just around May, getting ready to hit May as as it is. I feel like we've been lucky so far we have. with spring lasting as long as it has, but uh, we all know at some point it it will. Plus, go they away. do plumbing now. I do plumbing. I mean, Woods, oh, Woods Comfort, Comfort Systems, Systems does, does plumbing. plumbing. Yeah. yeah, that's for Wags House. Yeah, it is for Wags House. WoodsComfortSystems.com, the website. Once again, 512-842-5066. Tell me heard about it right here on Texas Sports Unfiltered, and they will take care of you. Um, breaking Texas football news, Jamon Tapp is in the portal. So we've seen a couple of 
Longhorns enter the transfer portal uh, already. I'm sure we'll see a few more after the spring game because well, that's the end of spring football. And of course, sure. Sark and the coaching staff will have those exit interviews with the players once we get through the weekend. And I'm sure we'll see a few more. I don't want to say casualties. That feels it's mean. a brutally honest time with players that are, you know, guys that are going into their sophomore and junior years. The head coach is going to let you know where you where you stand. And yeah, you know, he doesn't. It's not like you're. You know, they're, they're the ones that chose you to come to Texas. You want to play, you probably would need to probably go somewhere else at times, but they chose you. If you want to get a degree from the University of Texas, then you stay. But they let you know that you're playing time. You know, keep fighting, keep fighting, keep trying to get better, but most likely you won't be playing. Right. And you Jamon know, Tapp, we talked about the edge room, Buck. Sure. I mean, we, we brought up six or seven names earlier, and Jamon Tapp was not right. one of them. So. Uh, yeah, it sort of felt like the writing was on the wall for him that uh, there wasn't going to be a lot of snaps in 2023 or 2024, whatever year it is. And uh, yeah, I, I, I think Steve Sarkeesian is a genuine dude. I think he's an honest guy sure. with just about everything he does. But it sure feels like to me that he is honest and upfront with his players about what their situations are. Well, I mean, that's 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 exactly what you want from your coach. You want that from your position coach. You want that definitely from your head coach because he, he ends up making the final decisions. He'll ask the assistant, what do you think? Does this kid have an opportunity to play? I mean, if somebody got hurt, would he be the first, second guy in there? And you as a position coach said, uh, Coach, uh, no. He would he would be down the line. We need to find a better player. I mean, that's being brutally honest. Mm -hmm. We need to find a better player. Because at his peak performance, it's not going to be good enough at this level. I mean, coaches make mistakes too. You know, when they recruit, they're not getting – those the guys that they recruit, you know, every once in a while, you can't make a lot of mistakes. But there are times when you make a mistake on a player. Yeah. You know, I've, I mean, I've made plenty of mistakes in my years of coaching running backs that I thought that I saw the kid in high school that I thought was going to be, he was going to be special. And he got to the level and all of a sudden you're like, damn, it happens. not even I can make him better. Right. Right. You know, it's just, it's just not, it's just not there. So you make mistakes in recruiting, but you can't compound a mistake by keeping that guy, keeping that guy. If he wants to go somewhere else and play, you just open up the door and say, listen, if you have an opportunity to play someplace else, I would suggest you go do that. Yeah, yeah the recruiting your services side. do a good job for the most part, but they can't hit on every single right. one. And, right. uh, yeah, sometimes just guys you know, aren't what you thought they would be. Plus, you want them to have an opportunity to play, too. You want them to yeah. fulfill some of the things that they want to in college. You know, yeah, it's nice to be on the University of Campus, on that campus, the University of Texas, and loving what they do, but you also want to play the game. Yep, Tap, you know? a former top 150 recruit. He was a four-star coming out of high school. He wow. signed with Texas as a part of that 2022 class. Uh, just nine tackles, though, in two seasons on the 40 acres. So you go someplace, Texas State or someplace like that, yeah. or TCU, that they may need, have an opening at a position like that they may be able to fulfill. Sure, 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 sure. So we'll see more attrition uh, over the next. Real Grand Valley Technical Institute. Oh, man, I don't think UTRGV is a football team, but if they did, let's not schedule them. Wow. Nah, I'm not worried about football. I'm worried about baseball. Uh, like, uh, Could baseball lose to Westlake right now? I'm not sure. Baseball. By the way, the head coach is talking. He's talking about they don't look like they can play. That That's not a good high school team like, right now. I haven't kept up with Westlake baseball this year, but uh, I can't imagine they've had too many games where they've had 11 walks and nine hit batters as a pitching staff. Like that, that is unacceptably bad for college players at the University of Texas to do that. Goodness gracious, nobody could. Throw How many strikes. hit batters? Nine. Hit nine batters. Hit nine dudes in a game. Really? They hit the entire. Yeah. Offensive. I mean, group? it wasn't everybody who got hit once. There are a few guys who wow. got hit multiple times, but they hit nine. Vaqueros, cafes, and cantinas last man, night. Oh are you man. kidding me? Nine of them, dude. And 11 walks and three wild pitches. I would hate to be in those post-game deals as a team sitting there and the coaches talking. You think David Pierce went full Augie Garrido? Oh, of course he does. With the post-game. Uh... His frustration has got to be at a very high level. Yeah. And so is his assistants. So is mine. So is his fan base. Yeah, that's that's the deal. When you keep talking, you keep talking about this fan base, they're used to really good baseball. There's another woman trying to get in here. Jay, they got their purses out yeah. with them. She just uh, checked her phone to see what time it is. She's like, I got five minutes to kill. And the credit cards are out. I'm going to walk around this parking lot like an old lady and make it look like I'm <laughs> killing time here. You know, just stumble around here for a little bit. Uh, man, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, uh, more from Sark because I promised you this cut. I want to get your thoughts. You're the running back coach here. Okay. And I trust you talking running backs more than just about anybody in the world. So, um, you know, right now, Texas has a couple of talented running backs. They're obviously replacing Jonathan Brooks, who is off 
to the NFL. You've got C.J. Baxter. You've got Jaden Blue. You've got Trey Wisner. You've got a couple of freshman phenoms coming in here as well. Somebody asked Steve Sarkeesian yesterday about how running back carries will be split when we get to the fall. And here was Sark's response. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not too overly concerned with that right now. Um, what I do know is, you know, I, I think that that there's a there's a nice combination of CJ and, and Jaden right now of those two working together. I think Trey Wisner has been a has been a really nice addition to in to getting at that him in that rotation with those two because he can play both spots. Um, he can he can be a backfield guy, he can be a move guy, and he's got enough pass receiving skills and things. So that that's been helpful. And then though all those other three guys are really on the come, you know. I mean, what Savion has shown because of what he did at receiver and that, and last year at running back. Um, but then the two young backs, uh, probably today, I would say was today is Jarrett Gibson's best day. And 13 practices in, which is kind of what you'd hope for. I thought Saturday, Christian Clark had a really good day. Um, so those guys are coming too, and and they're both versatile guys. And so front line wise, when the, when, the, when the season rolls around, I think we'll have a pretty good idea when we get there. But we're comfortable right now of you know, if a guy's rolling and, and we can feed him, we're more than ready to feed whoever that guy is. Yeah, I mean, that's just a hard question. I mean, you as the question question dude ought to know better than that. I mean, if you've seen football, you understand he can't tell you how the how the carries are going to be split up right now in the spring. You have two guys that one guy who was a starter, one guy who played a lot of football, you know, to that to that starter one, once Jonathan Brooks got hurt. That's kind of a goofy question to even ask. I mean, you know, you'll see how the games go. Sark can't give you the answer to that, you know, you know, 40, 60, he's not going to give you the answer to that right now. Anyway, doesn't have the answer to that. Yeah. He doesn't know what's going to happen from this point on. Some guy may screw up an ankle and not be as effective when the fall camp comes. You know, the ankle injuries, he's got to just got to wait and see. Yeah, that'd be a tough question to answer. Yes. During yeah. game week of right. Colorado Absolutely. State, right? I mean, like, I don't know exactly what the Who's hot? Which dude is, is hot? Exactly. Some guy's running off some big plays. That guy's probably going to get the majority of the snaps in the game. I'm not bringing in a guy who's just – who's rushing for 170 yards before halftime. I'm not all of a sudden saying, oh, I got this other guy who needs to catch up and carries in the third quarter. That's probably not going to happen. Yeah, that's what I like you most know? about that answer, right? He kind of listed out the depth chart. Right? Sure. He talked about Baxter and Blue first. Then he talked about Wisner. Then he got into Savion Red. Then he mentioned, you know, the freshman. Yeah, he talked about them all. With Gibson and Clark. And then he's like, yeah, we're just going to ride the hot hands. Like, that. that's what you should do, right? That's I would what they... say this. You're not going to see a lot of those two freshmen playing. I don't think so. No. I don't think you want to. No disrespect to them, but you just have more Wisner experienced will play guys. If, if one of the first two gets banged up in a game where he can go in and do some things. But he's not going to get a lot of reps either as the third. Right. You know, it'll be one and two, and they'll, they'll figure it out who's hot at the present time. I know a lot of folks like Blue, but, you know, they thought the other kid was good enough to be the starter last year to start at Texas, so I presume that he'll be the starter again, mm -hmm. and then they'll work from there. Yeah, Keelan Robinson last year got 12 carries for 134 yards Jeez. and three touchdowns plus eight catches, but he was a huge part of special teams. Sure. I can see Trey Wisner having a similar stat line Absolutely. to that, assuming that starting guys stay healthy, right? Obviously, if something happens to Baxter or Blue and all of a sudden Wisner is your number two, right. I'm a poet and I didn't even realize it, uh, then yeah, Wisner's workload is going to increase, but like right now, it sure feels like that. Yeah, it's going to be Baxter and Blue sp uh, splitting the carries. Yeah, and if he's doing games. and if Weiser's doing all those wonderful things, then he can be a special teams, you know, standout. Yeah, yeah. and some of his teammates, when they've spoken to the media here in the spring, have talked about Trey Weisner improving a ton, also as a special teamer, right? Not just as a running back, but somebody who helps out in that third facet of the game. And, and it sounds like he's physical enough to play two positions, yeah. which is a good thing. And coaches love that, right? Absolutely. Coaches love guys who are versatile, and coaches love guys who can show make, up. You can make room for guys that have a specialty. Absolutely, and special teams, too. Right. And coaches love guys who are willing to go that extra mile, because not a lot of guys want to do special teams. No. So you're willing to be like, hey, coach, I will volunteer to be on special teams. If and you're also, not a return guy, they don't like to go down and make tackles. Right. I don't, That's not in a lot of guys. I don't they, blame no. them. I don't want to do that. No. I don't want to be blocking guys. I don't want to be a gunner. No. I don't want to be tackling dudes. No. Uh, I'm out on all of that as our man Jay. There you go. He's going open it up. The man with all the power in the world. There you go. Flips on the light switch for the sign. Now we got the door. Numerous being ladies walking around with their, with their credit cards out. I saw that. Oh, my gosh. They're ready to spend. They're ready to roll. Well, they got a lot to spend on in here today. I'm telling you. There's yeah. some good looking stuff. And you know, we were talking to Jay. We're trying to figure out when our next show here is going to be. Absolutely. Of course, we'll be back. This is our home away from home. 
And he's like, we need y'all out here the week of Mother's Day. Mother's Day is a couple of weeks away. It certainly is. So make sure you, uh, uh-oh. All the stuff is coming up. Uh-oh. Speak of the devil. He's coming up, bringing in his stuff. We're about ready for our QVC segment here nice. on TS. Let's talk about this luggage. The HSN shopping network. I love it, man. Right here. Yeah, and Jay's about to join us here momentarily. I brought a jelly cat with him. Why? Of course he did, because he knows you're going to buy one. What I'm do you mean, why? Those things. You buy at least one of those things every time you're at the store. You can't resist. You, you always somebody... say they're for your grandkids or your wife, but we know they're for you. I do. I'm a collectible. What's going on, Jay? Okay. Hold on. We got to get the, the mic a little closer. To, uh, a little closer. Uh, is that good? Can you hear me? You know what? You, you, wouldn't this, you wouldn't do this, Ed Clemens. I know you would. You'd be all prepared and ready to go. You, you know, Michael. After Eddie, <laughs> after Eddie told me, that, <laughs> after Eddie, <laughs> after Eddie told me, all your dear friends call you Michael. Yes, it's Michael from here out. You know, my mother the, called me Michael. The, the Opie and Michael show. There you go. There it is. We got to change our name. A there you go. Bit. Yes. And uh, how's your little crush on uh, Kim coming along? You know what? I saw a picture of her the other day at the uh, WNBA. Uh, the, she was at the draft. She looked fantastic. Oh, come <laughs> on. And oh, she didn't. She looked fantastic. Look she, at it. She is worse than vile. <laughs> she worse. Worse. Can't Way wait to worse. get the same conference and see a lot of uh, her. Yeah, no, I know. I got away from her. Now I have her back. Yeah. <laughs> That's the worst part of going to the SEC <laughs> yes, is. is we got to deal with Cruella de Mulkey again. Yeah. Come on now. I don't want any part of that. But uh, Vic Schaefer will get her, I promise. <laughs> I feel good about it. Let me let me show you a picture, Jay. Jay, you haven't seen this latest. I mean, she is. Hold on, let me uh, let me pull it up here. This is what Kim Mulkey was looking like on draft night. I'll share it our screen so our uh, listeners can get a look at it too. Oh what, yes. do you, what do you think of that? Is that yeah. a, is her eyes shining or is that that devil look? That's, That's the that's... devil. See her eyes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. She's the devil reincarnated. I'd rather I'd rather walk into uh, the devil at a dark alley than walk into Kim Mulkey. I think between her and Madonna. Yeah. Who see, knows? see, my problem when I watch her coach is I spend the whole entire game yelling at her to shut up, which mm. is terrible. You shouldn't she's go. Just to coaching. Her. She's just coaching. That's the way she no, coaches. She doesn't. She's coach. very all verbal. She, all she does is 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 beat down the referees yeah, she, and make them call what she wants to be she called. She pouts like a little kid yes. at Target who yes. gets told by his mom that One he can't get the toy he wants. the best coaches in the world, you two. Is. Look <laughs> oh, at how you're treating with the best coaches in the oh, world. Absolutely. So I picked this jelly cat, yes. Brad, because it's your mama's birthday. Oh, yeah, that's is. right. And see, it's a little birthday jelly cat. Let's see his little face. A little birthday cake. They all that have little awesome. faces. Isn't that awesome? Get the real real close up to the camera here. Oh, that's great. And what's fabulous about this jelly cat is, besides the peanut, it's, okay. it's number one. Really? Yes, because think about it. What what would be a better birthday present? You give that to your mama, she'll love you forever. Uh, I might be doing that. I'll definitely <laughs> buy some go. for moms today yes, while we're here. Absolutely. This is fantastic. <laughs> no, it's great. Jay, the hats we have on, how about these bad boys? They're these, special, these, aren't they? These are special. And you wear this hat and drink your iced tea out of the matching mug. There it is. Yes. Championship mug, too? Championship mug. The stainless steel tumbler. Yeah, these hats are incredible, Jay. So, Michael, before you got here, I was telling Opie, <laughs> yep. I was telling Opie that I'm going to give this hat to the volleyball team and the coaches. Right. And, you know, you can't just go over to UT and give it to them. It, it there's procedures. Of course. So I'm on my so I'm on my fifth email about getting this to them. How you get it to them? Yeah. Absolutely. I'm gonna I have I'm gonna UPS it because I don't want to go park down there. Mm. Right. But anyway, it's gonna be great. I, and bunches of the family members already shop here. Grandma and mama. Oh, I love dad it. I love the look. Bit. I love the look of that hat. It is yeah. a good looking hat. It, it's um it's a it's one of the best things I've ever been a part of. Right. And it's, it's exclusive to Sue Patrick. Exclusive to us. You can only That's get like, these here. You can't get it at the other place. Yeah, you know, you know, you know, the place with the big parking garage where you yes. have to hassle that and then walk over the homeless people. You right. can't get it there. And you and you can't <laughs> and you can't get it at the real new evil empire. Okay, you can't get right. it there either. You can't get it there either. Okay. The people that have more money than God. There you go. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I saw you post pictures of these on Facebook and Instagram a couple of days ago. Yeah, they look even better in person. Like yeah, I thought they looked so clean they online, but they look awesome. Yeah, it's it's a beautiful patch and all and all embroidered. It's really wonderful. You can see on the back when you pull this out. Well, you can't because it has the embroidery lining on, but it's truly embroidered. Mm -hmm. It's a really really great hat. It is. Sure, we got a lot of new things. I mean, I you know, I, I was telling BK when I when I walked in, I always something always catches my eye in the window. And yeah. of course I did see that no, luggage. No one would ever accuse you, Michael, of not being a good shopper. I am I'm a fabulous oh. shopper. And I and you know we, we gotta get out the jumbo yes. bags when you come in. Let me just say this that that luggage, 
you know, oh, for yes. that luggage yes. is absolutely. Yes. I don't know if they can see the luggage, but let we'll me tell you something. Here. There you go. Can That's they see the, that? Let me get the sound. Block Bucky's face. He's a radio guy. We don't yeah. need to oh. see him. <laughs> Just hearing me is plenty. But that is, luggage is beautiful. Yeah, this is the small, small that you can. That's carry, the carry bag you could carry on, and it's at two nineteen. Okay, and then that the small carry. Oh no, bag. this is the small carry. That, yeah. I'm sorry, this is the two nineteen one. Little small carry. There you bag. go. Oh, that's yeah. perfect. Get the whole set. And I was telling, I was telling them the bag apes can throw that stuff Do around. We, that uh, stuff is really good. You guys are all material. knowing where's the national championship game at this year? Atlanta. 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 So you need this luggage. You need right. that. Right. We're hoping we're there twice because the SEC championship is also in Atlanta. Oh, how fun! So we're hoping we got. Uh, well, I know Mama's going to gonna need that a big bag right there. Yeah, that's right. No, uh, for being in bag. Atlanta. Pack the whole family for that. Yeah, that right is there. gorgeous, yeah. man. That's good looking yeah. stuff. These bags came in and. and in one box and i lifted the box and i said gosh this luggage is heavy <laughs> and yeah. all three bags were in the one box but it's not a set inside. you can buy them individually individually yes very and nice. like this big one is uh 349 so not too bad and that's all. that's strong too yeah, like it is it, absolutely you call them the bag apes buck if yeah. they throw that around at the <laughs> airport it's going to last and your yes. stuff's going to be okay yeah, yeah uh, just got them in and uh, we're we're very very excited about that and then i got restocked on this hat this is the austin skyline Oh, I'll with show a you little, first, Buck. About that? that is sweet. With, with a little longhorn on it. Let's get that get that real close yeah, up I, for the folks. Yeah, I got some in right before we did Incredible in football, and they lasted mm -hmm. like three days. Was that about the time we sold out of these shirts that you, yes. you and BK are wearing? Yes, yes. How many did we sell? That, 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 this is number one on the hip parade. The best, Still? The best polo I've ever had in, in my 42-year career. And you know why? I know why. It's yeah. Because... Opie and Michael are saying it's great. <laughs> the Opie and Michael show. Let me tell you, these those shirts are still. Yes. People yes. see me with them and they want to know how do you get them. Yes. Get them online too. You know, you know what's interesting? Somebody will be looking at you when you wear this out in the world and then they look some more and they, and they said, that's the longhorns all over. That's yeah. exactly what <laughs> they do. Are those little longhorns on there? Little, are those little longhorns? <laughs> yeah. 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 No, it's great. It's great. And then um, graduation is coming. That's true. Right. And mama and dad's day. And I got in new cross pins. Which have the UT? Ooh. They have the UT logo on them. I don't know if you'll be able to see this on the screen, but it's got a beautiful University oh, look of at Texas. These. Right. That is great. That's a great and looking. And those pen. are at sixty nine. It shows up a little more on this. It says the University of Texas at Austin and genuine cross pins. And put it on their desk once they get a job after graduating. After yes, mom and dad get yes, through paying for that yes. that education. And you know, there's a bunch of people that collect pins. Right. It's a big deal. I do too. Yeah. Generally, there's somebody else's, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are you still yeah. You're yeah. the guy, oh, can I borrow a pin? I'll yeah. give it back. And then you never yeah. give it no, back. Oh, this one needs to stay in the desk drawer. Yeah. Back in the it's day, nice. when, the, when the Texas used to have the, the foundation, the Longhorn yeah, Foundation, sure. they used to oh, have yeah. foundation pins, Jay right. back in the day. Remember right. those? Right. Those things would work for about a week and then they stopped with the ink. The ink stopped <laughs> going. The old foundation pins. These are wonderful cross pins. These look great. Yeah. It's a beautiful pin. It is. And yeah, they got the crest too, the UT crest with yeah, the, the writing. The little, the, the UT seal that they put on that. Craig Westermeyer, the, the most fabulous person in the world because he's in charge of licensing. Yeah, I was about to say, be nice that's to right, him. That's yep. right. Oh, I'm always nice to Craig <laughs> Westermeyer. And he'll be the first person to tell you. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I had to go through his office to um, get the volleyball caps to the volleyball team. Sure. Because he's, he is Mr. Licensing there. He's a great. But I spend most of my time with Craig Westermeyer turning in people that aren't selling officially licensed Longhorn merchandise. Like Are there I people am. like that? Are they out there? They're thousands. Right. Really? Yeah. There's a there's a T-shirt on Instagram I saw last night that that talks about the Longhorns. It's got a Longhorn logo and it's got the Snoopy gang on it. And Vic Schaefer is holding it up. So they pissed off Vic Schaefer. They pissed off whoever has the Snoopy license, and they picked off, wow. pissed off Craig Westermeyer. All three at the same time. Mm, that's impressive. That's the <laughs> trifecta <laughs> right there. Might as well get them all. Might as well get them all. Yeah. Get it. <laughs> Might as well. Absolutely. And I and I'm pretty sure that. Uh, thank you, sir. I'm pretty sure that the and, and this on-field hat that man just bought. Mm -hmm. Even with our team not doing as great as I like them to do. Right. Right. A three or four a day. How about that? I was like, right. we we haven't been promoting those this morning. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if anyone yeah. wants to wear what the no, baseball team is wearing yes, anymore. Absolutely on field, and uh, I think guys really like fitted hats. Those come every yes. quarter, yep. every quarter inch. They look great. Right. Yeah, and and, and uh, you don't have to only wear those to baseball. Like you can wear that right. around the city. You can wear that yes. to a football yes. game. Like those yes. are perfect. You know, it's it's funny. Last baseball season, last year. We did okay. I didn't sell hardly any baseball jerseys. Football season runs or comes along in the summer. I sell out of baseball jerseys. So they're obviously wearing baseball jerseys to sure. football games. There you go. Right. And then I thought I would bring this out. Um, 
Oh, now we have that. That's ma- great. Mama is watching. Uh, El Arroyo. Nothing is truly lost until your mom can't find it. Nah, yes. Yeah. True words have never been spoken. And, and sorry Absolutely. to be blocking your face, but <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I know. Keep doing that. That's great. <laughs> now we've got candy. And then I brought in Land's candy. Nice. And my favorite, my favorite, uh, Longhorns and dark chocolate. How about that? Yes. Yes. Dark chocolate longhorns. So lambs is lambs. a part of? Lambs is a part of the store now. Wow. Pecans yeah. And, yeah. and caramel. Is that how you say them? Uh, I would say pecans. Mm. Right. There's no O in there. It's pecans. Yeah. Hmm. You know, it's, it's in progress instead of progress. Right. Oh, nice. my God. And weren't you born in, in Texas? He uh, was. Kansas City. Kansas City? Close. Not, close to Canada. <laughs> I think we'll count it. I yeah. think that works. Yeah. No, that's uh, that would be... Um, um, it's sort of like Shelby Lynn, who works here, we uh-huh. put ketchup on her hot dog. Right. Wow. Yes, yeah, so very much in Ohio. Lamb's thing. candy has been around indeed. longer than yeah. you guys have been around. Well, Shelby's <laughs> controlling the camera here, so I got to be nice. I don't want her to, to post anything bad oh, about oh, us. Oh, she's used to it. Let me ask you this, Jay, because my, my mom has already told me she's like, surprise me. Give, give me something. It's her birthday today. I'm going to see her later today, so I want to get her something. This is what would make she, for. You think she's watching? Oh yeah, it's my. She started be, out watching. Have to be a surprise like thing. Look at that! Oh, that is wow! That That's is a gorgeous a, shirt. A, an all over, all over, state of Texas Longhorn. Mm-hmm. Great right. for this time of the year. Some, even for summertime cotton, and, it's nice. And next football season. And uh, what's fabulous about this is a local artist from Cedar Park, Kathleen McElwain, designed this. Really? Yes, it's her art, and I'm using it. I uh, got a license with her to use it, and it's just wonderful, front and back, and super soft. I like that. Michael, feel how soft that is. It is good. Good Isn't that great? Michael. I have all of your, I have all the stuff that's, I've got all your cotton stuff. I love, I love that cotton. Yes. It's great. And I got, I have a tank and a short sleeve and a dress is coming soon. There you go. A dress like that? A dress like that. That's nice. Yeah, it's going to be wonderful. Mom, if you're listening or watching, please comment. I don't want to screw up your gift. I don't care if it's a surprise. Tell me what you want (laughs) so I don't mess this up. You know, I've been walking around my little jammies on my Kiss Me I'm Irish jammies. You know, (laughs) he's worn that on the show a couple of times, Jay. I love those. You like stand up too, and it's like a family program. I need the longhorn. Right. I need the longhorns. Yeah, the longhorn one is by far the absolute best. So we're going to have rain on Saturday, I think. Yes. Oh, look at that. Little, That's good little stuff. Columbia zip front, mm-hmm. uh, windbreaker, unlined, hard to keep these in stock. This is at 70 from Columbia. It's got a hood too, right? Yes, yeah. it does. It's great. Perfect. Great it's job wonderful. for golf right there too, Jay. Yes. Yeah. This won't interfere Missed with it. your swing. Fun. Oh, no, it, it's fine. Okay. It's fine. It's it's good. It's lightweight. So if it, if you get a little drizzle, because we don't get rain, we get lots of crazy drizzle. Yes. That's perfect. Sure. And do you ever golf with uh, Eddie? Has it never invited me to play golf in all this really? 30, 30 years. He's never... Well, he wow. goes to really high quality, you know, he goes to big events. He goes like Austin Country. Austin I never, he, country. I'm not going to get an invite to a place like that. Oh, I don't know. I don't, I know. don't know. No. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then uh, another, i get all mixed up here. Another little windbreaker. I've uh, got that one. Yeah. The gray. One I have. Is that uh, Columbia as well? That is Columbia as clean. well. Clean. Very clean. Yeah. It's a, it's really good. Looking. And when July 1st comes, we're going to have a little bit of everything, right? With some different types of logos. We are, we are going to have a whole bunch of welcome to the new event. Um, yeah, really? Yes. Yes. We'll, it, we'll be out here on that day. I'm yeah. Sure. Yes. Yes. Or a little Can't bit wait. after it, 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 the merchandise might have to roll in a little bit after July 1st. Oh, so they tell you that you're joining on the first, but they're not letting you know the merchandise will get here after the first. Is that yeah, how that's, that's going to work? How that's probably going to ah, work. I see. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, back to Craig Westermeyer. Right. right. Yes. We'll, we'll be nice. Yes. We'll continue yes. to be nice yes. on your behalf, too. Oh, thank you. A uh, number of comments. Our guy Glenn says, love me some QVC soup, Patrick. <laughs> oh, isn't that sweet? And Sam Good with the stuff. comment, super yeah. great store. Wife yeah. loves this place. Yes. Oh, yeah. If y'all have never been to Soup it's, Patrick, it's, um, you're missing out. Yeah, it's uh, it's crazy how, how many followers y'all have that come in and talk to me about it. Good. Yeah, I had a run on Diva Wash after we told them it was our number one item. I've got it now. I've got it in my house. <laughs> Tyler Campbell's. Uh, Tyler Campbell, right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Earl's son making uh, laundry to turn. And it's funny that you say that. I, you know, I have vendors when I receive stuff, and invariably I type in Tyler Campbell instead Every of Tyler time. Campbell. Every <laughs> time. And my system won't let you put a vendor's product in that doesn't belong to that vendor. And I said, oh, darn. Here yeah. we go. But we need to have him over here one morning. Sure. Wouldn't that yeah. be fun? We can get him out. He's a great guy. No, I was here for his book signing. Yes. Yes. Right. Great guy. I'm sorry I missed that day, Bucky. It would have been. You're long. busy. Yeah. No, I had a little tummy ache that day. There you go. Mm-hmm. And I was so sad because y'all brought him in. 
Yeah, he um, was he was fabulous. He's a fabulous young guy. Because they probably came to see him, and then of course they came to see world famous Bucky. Could be. Right, oh, right. you called Could him Bucky. Be. That's yes, good. Yes. Yeah, he's back to and, Bucky. And you know, I've been I've been listening to y'all's show for the last couple of weeks, and uh, I, I have learned one thing for sure, Bucky. What's that? Don't eat your baked potato. <laughs> oh, oh Jay. God. <laughs> Jay, God. it was a mistake. I was young. Yes, yes. it was Absolutely. young, but it was a great look. Even yeah. Jay gets a kick out oh. of that. Oh. That was a surprise, uh, Jay. I told Corbin that, <laughs> and Corbin says, "I can't believe Bucky oh. would do that." I'm, <laughs> I believe it. It's right. the grossest story of all time. Yeah, it, it is. It is. It's, it's, a, grossest it's a great story. I'm sorry that I did that. My friend is no longer with us, and yeah. I know that had nothing to do with uh, it. You sure? <laughs> it could have been 50 years after yeah. the yeah. fact. Yeah. The effect. And uh, are you guys thinking we're going to have an orange and white game on Saturday? Uh, oh, we're going to get some, we're going to get some precipitation. I mean, it's going to mm-hmm. rain, but as long as there's no lightning, sure. they'll do it. And the head coach is not going to put if it's too slick, too slippery. He's not going to put gas. In. It'll just speed up. It'll, the game itself will speed up. Yes, yeah. that's all. It won't be as long. And the worst part about the spring game is they usually like they won't delay it. It's like I'll oh, just postpone it to Sunday. The weather's supposed no. to be nice. Like oh, no. with the spring game, if if they have an excuse to cancel it, they'll cancel it. And I heard that Alabama had seventy two thousand people at there. Yeah, I was wow. expecting if if this was going to be a really nice sunny day, this would be the biggest that Texas ever had entering oh, the and, SEC and open the upper deck and the whole bit. I would think the whole thing would wow. be opened up. So if yeah. If, if it well, we know the weather can change. It's only Wednesday. I mean, all of a sudden, if they have a beautiful day, that place will be packed yes. to get ready for the SEC. And, and the, it starts at one thirty, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, so, uh, one o'clock, one one thirty. So they have two or three hours to come shop before they. There go. you go. Oh yes, right. right. You got a couple of days. That's why we're here on Wednesday. That's yes, right. And uh, the out of towner people will probably be here Friday. That's and true. if it does, and if it does get to be really sunny. Jay's got numerous bucket hats to protect those oh, ears. Th- there's a wonderful Nike bucket hat over there that's on yes. sale for $19.95. Comes small, medium, medium, large, and large, extra large, which is is fabulous because you don't want your ears to get some. No, mm-hmm. no. My doctor told me that for sure. Got to protect the yeah, ears. Will show it. Oh, there you go. My executive producer is doing such a good job today. Always. Look at yeah. that. That's that's what you need. The Nike too. The official branding. Yes. The- that's a great hat. I just got triple chipped accidentally. Did you? Yeah, I did. But I, but but that'll go. This is this is the golf season. This is just before. It's a wonderful hat. And you know whose hat whose favorite hat that is? Eddie. He loves it. Ed right. protects his ears. Yes, yes. I thought it was his age. He wouldn't give a rat's ass about his. He would, <laughs> no, what does he no, care no, about he, his ears? Well, you're saying he's gonna die soon. <laughs> no, so I just, need to protect I'm, him. I'm saying, why oh. is he doing all that protection oh, stuff now? Oh. It's like me. Why am I protecting my ears? Oh. Yeah. These no. are great. And uh, those are great. And Let Mikey, me tell you. Aren't you and Ed the same age? <laughs> I'm going to venture to say that I may be even older than. Oh that. no! Yes, I think I may be just uh, a couple years older than that. Right. Well, you look good, Bucky. I feel good. Be careful. Don't fall down. Yeah, yeah. I'm right. trying my best at that. I'm so, getting screamed uh, at every day about falling. I bet. I bet. You know, I work on Miss Patrick about that too, using her cane which she won't use. Mm-hmm. Right. Yes. Well, right. I'm going to be having to use that if I continue to go mm-hmm. face first into yes. things. Yes. You know, Jay, I have a fall school where I teach older older folks how to fall. Really? Yes. And did you take your own advice when you fell? Uh, not <laughs> on this particular occasion. This is the first time I've ever gone face first. Uh-huh. This was like a, a, a one of those episodes of Naked and Afraid when people just get totally exhausted and they just go down mm-hmm. and their faces. This is what happened to me the other day when I fell off the ledge of my garden. I hit my head. The, the stone stuck in between my eyes. I got up. I walked in the house and I got yelled at for bleeding in the house. That was the problem. <laughs> it wasn't the fact yeah, that bleed I bleed outside. <laughs> yeah, why you get bleeding? it on my carpet? Why are you bleeding on the floor in here? I mean, we can wipe that up. I said I'm injured. Well, yeah. if you were to take, if I'd have taken two minutes to go around and walk up the garden instead of over the top of it, right? Gotta be careful, man. This, yes, the balance is not quite the same right. anymore. Yeah, when you get to a certain, but I still age, can take a hit, and a, and a fall could be bad, but you break a hip. That's right. that's what I went to get fixed in my neck a week before that yes. in Tampa. We yes. fixed that bone. And congratulations on that going so good. That is that was wonderful, yes. well, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, well, I appreciate you guys coming. I wish it was more often. I know it's only once a month, All right. but man, I could see you all once a week. It'd be great. Thank you for that. Thank you, Jay. Thank you for having us. We yeah. always appreciate no, coming. And, um, we love it. And, and thank uh, you for your support of us and the 23rd annual mullet open May 10th out at the you, uh, Lost Pines you, you are, Golf Course. You are quite welcome. And on, and on Saturday, also a rain problem. We have the Hill Country Ride for AIDS, which I do every year. 
and uh, raise money for Are we going the distance here? What is it? How many miles is that? Uh, I think they're going to shorten it. You can do as many as 75 in this ride. Yeah, I for think, sure. Let's shorten that, right? Uh, yes, yes. So the one I usually do is 45, right? But they've re they've reversed the, the, the um, route. So now the first five miles is uphill. So by the time I get to that, <laughs> oh, 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 man. Old Come and on, tired. Man. there better be a cold beer at the top <laughs> of that hill. Yeah, there's a, I can't remember who does the, uh, I know it might be Pine House does the beer, nice. which is, and you know, after you've done 75 miles, which I did once, and you have one beer, it's it's the high of all highs. Oh, Very bad. nice. Right, right, which is great. Bad. But listen, guys, I appreciate y'all. Thank you. Do such a good job. And, and, best, and I think y'all are growing and, and the world is listening to you. And Well, yes. we're, we're, we're looking forward to giving what we have to and, the world. For and sure. before I started all this, Bucky, I had I had no idea of you and, and Eddie's connection that you mentored him and taught him everything he knows and all that. <laughs> Ed is still right. telling everybody how he got me into radio. Yes, yes. Yes. He did. He gave me all of a minute and a half every Monday when the head coach didn't want to do the show. Right. I would do it. And Ed would say, hey, we'll talk to you next week. I'm like, wait a minute. I just started, Ed. Right. He was wonderful. Yeah. He's, he's still wonderful. That sounds... It's always good to hear him. Yes, yes. I'm a big fan. Yes, me too. We, we do a Facebook Live every Saturday around noonish. Right. Mm -hmm. So if I came in and walked in on that, I could. You can, can I move you, him aside or just join come, him? You can come join. It would be perfect. okay. And yeah. any, anytime you guys are in the neighborhood, we'll do a Facebook live. Very good. Yes, we have we have the best time with those. We do for too. Sure. All, All right, right, guys, I'll let y'all talk about and online, Jay. Your online yeah. sales doing well? Unbelievable. And and after I started, you know, I was already doing great. But mm -hmm. after I started advertising with you, the UT sales are out the roof. There you right, go. Right yeah. on cue. Magic Man ATX. Buying Longhorn Bucket Hat now. There you go. Get in that. all caps. Yeah. So you know yeah. it's real. Yes. yes. Yes, that, that absolutely. Great. Not one of your relatives. Right? No, yeah. At least <laughs> right. I don't think. Shoot, right. my mom may have burner accounts. Right. Right. Know right. It's all perfect. Well, yeah, well thank you a bunch. Thank you, guys. Thanks, I'll let Jay. Thank you, Jay. Appreciate yeah. that. All right, y'all come see Jay and the whole gang here at Sue Patrick, fifty-two twenty-two Burnett Road. They're officially open. They are officially open. The store is amazing. Also, the fact that they have free parking. Yes. In Austin is amazing. Skip the parking That's garage, right. come out here. And, uh, of course, if you can't make it here, just go online, suepatrick.com. For sure. They, they ship stuff so quick. I mean, it will be at your door in the blink of an eye. Uh, they're the best. Great people. Uh, they sell great products, and they will take care of you every step of the way. Love being out here. This is really our home away from home it is. right now. So, it has been, and it's been fun. Yes, indeed. And I will leave with something in hand here today. I will, too. And my mom was not watching, at least, so I got I to gotta get it shirt or something for her on my own which is a scary thought but we'll figure that out that's okay point. that little travel bag is that's about the right size because you know when i when i when i fly it's got the little wheelies there can, yeah. I, can I sit on that and ride like the little kids i see at the airport can you sit there? who's gonna push you Man, i mean, can push my little legs look i mean i see kids doing these things with these little bags right i think i could sit on that bag so you won't get a wheelchair but you'll get a suitcase and go through the airport you'll wheel around oh, hell yeah that. oh man you know, this last trip to Tampa, I almost got one of those, not the wheelchair push, but got on the cart where the people go from, you know, section to section. Mm -hmm. I was getting ready to get on there. And I said, no, dude, you're walking. You're doing fine. You got that bag. You can get through this airport. But I'm getting there. I'm getting to the point where I'm almost, you know, the beep, beep cart where the guy's screaming, get the hell out yeah. of the way. I was almost going to get on one. I've never gotten on one of those before. Oh, I'm getting close. That's a sign of you being old. Yeah, it is. I, I, mean, I, I want to use those things now. They look awesome. I know. But, and that guy's yelling at people, get the hell out of the way. Look out for your kid. I'm going to run your kid over. Yeah, so you get the hell out of the way. Yeah, and, and they're the worst at DFW, by the way. They are mean on theirs. Yes, I was there for the quick at stop. At the airport? At the airport. Yeah. Boy, a little <laughs> testy there up in that area. What, what are they saying? Dude, get your ass out of the way. I've blown this horn five times. Move over. Well, yeah, but, but he's talking to you and you're 25 yards in front of him. You know, like yeah. I'm going to move when you get up on my heels. I get out of the way. But he's yelling at people, up, you know, to have a football feel. Right. Well, he's yeah. honking, man. He's yeah. honking. He's ready for it. you to move. I'm going to get on that next time. Oh, man, that is great. All right. Love Sue Patrick as uh, this place continues to fill up here this morning. A couple of other sponsor shout outs. How about Covert BK? Love it. If you're in the market for a newer pre-owned car, truck, or SUV, you got to go out and see our friends at Covert BK, the best car dealership in the world. And we're lucky enough to have it right here in Central Texas. Of course, the Covert Auto Group, they've been around Austin since 1909. Covert BK, three state-of-the-art dealerships, all in one spot, seven different brands. They have something for everybody and yes, every budget. Great service, great selection. 
What do they say about the pricing, Buck? Nobody beats a covert deal. Not now, not ever. Amen. Love our friends at covert. Love PK. them an awful lot. Let me say hello to my friends over at Relax the Back, the mm. gang over there, Jason, the gang. They have all, got all kinds of zero gravity chairs available for you right now. Office chairs, couches, the whole works. Uh, and if you like Tempur-Pedic mattresses, that's the place that you want to get one. And Tempur-Pedic pillows and all the accessories you need. If you've got a bad back, shoulders, hip, anything that you anything that can take care of your body, they have it at Relax the Back. Believe me, I've been going there for years. I've got the Relax the Back chair at my home, at my home office. Two locations, the B Caves at the Hill Country Gallery across from Whole Foods. And up here where we are, up north at the Gateway Shopping Center, across from wherever the container store is, because everybody knows, except for me, where the container store is. <laughs> Live pain-free like the buck at Relax the Bat. Absolutely. Absolutely. And shout out to Leaf Landscape Supply oh, as yes. well. Two locations down south off Monterey Oaks and 290, the location up north off of Pond Springs. I may go to Pond Springs today since I'm up this area. There you go. They've got some fertilizer. Oh. I do. I need to fertilize some plants that I put in that are going to go from probably one footers. They said it will get to be 10 feet. That means a little less of the neighbors that I see if they get up to be 10 feet. That's great. I might have to get an indoor plant soon. Now I'm a plant right. guy. Now you're a plant I guy. I kept it alive for a couple of weeks. Oh, my God. Now I know I can do it. He's got a desert plant that stayed alive. <laughs> yeah, I just had to stop the... watering it. Yes. I just had to let it be. Yeah, Leaf Lands, uh, Landscape and Supplies do the best job. Yes. And they are wonderful folks over there, and they will help you. If you need a contractor to come out and check out the landscape of your yard, believe me, they have those for you. But if you want to do it yourself, make sure you go to the experts at LEAF for sure. Absolutely. Buck, I got to apologize to you. What have I done? You know, we only have a few minutes left in today's program before we hand things off to WAGS and Boy, that was R. Quick. I'm telling you, man, these shows, all shows fly by, but the ones out here at Sue Patrick really wow. fly by. Um, I have not congratulated you on going two for two on your gold star locks last night. I'm still on fire from the NFL. You put 7,000 units on the line for those two NBA play-in games last night, and you went two for two. You had 5,000 units on the, the Kings. Sacramento Kings. Yes, I knew they'd beat that group. They killed Golden State last night. The Kings were actually two-and-a-half-point dogs, and they dominated Golden State. Yeah, that's the end of that reign. And you also had the Lakers, 2,000 units on the Lakers, who were underdogs going on the road and beating the Pelicans. And they did that. So congrats to you, my yes. friend. Up 7,000 units. I don't know if I can keep that going, folks, but we'll try. We're up 7,000. Like so. I was say, you got the Eastern Conference playing games tonight. Any thoughts on those? What do we got? What do we have for that? We've got your Sixers are in action, hosting the Miami Heat. It's a five-and-a-half-point line in favor of Philadelphia. Joel Embiid going to play or Embi not? Embiid is playing. And you've got the Hawks and the Bulls, a matchup of two below 500 teams. That is your Nine versus ten game. Chicago, the home team, they are three and a half point favorites. Okay, I will take the Bulls for five thousand units. Okay, and I will take. You said Embiid will play. Embiid will play. And that's five. That is five and a half. I will take the Philadelphia 76ers for five thousand. You're going units. with the two favorites. Yes, I am. Even though the Heat have been great in the playoffs in recent years, huh? I get it No. Is this one and done for the Heat on this one? No. If they lose, they will get a shot at redemption. They will play the winner of the Bulls-Hawks game. Okay. So uh, even though the Pelicans lost last night, they still have redemption. They'll have to beat the Kings. The winner of that game will be the eight seed in okay. the West. And, uh, yeah, that's how it works in the East. Well, everything's so screwed up. You know, they play some tournament during the year now in the NBA. Yeah, it some... doesn't, that doesn't mean anything. Yes. On this. I mean, it, okay. I, I guess it was cool. I don't even know if it was cool. The Lakers put up a I almost forgot banner. it happened. Remember the Lakers put up a banner. The Lakers, the most like historic franchise in the NBA. They, they actually a, put up a banner for that. A banner. Yeah. Nope. Mid-year deal. It wasn't even mid-year. I know. Yeah, the in-season tournament that was, uh, you're right, it was like at the start of the yes. season. It's ridiculous. So it wasn't like a standalone banner like they have for their actual championships, but it was uh, – a banner where they can add all of the years for the in-season tournaments Jeez. that they win. It, it's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Uh, let me ask you this. The Warriors got blown out last night, 118-94. to 94. They lose to Sacramento. Is Golden State done? Klay Thompson is a free agent. Um, like It sure feels like the dynasty is over in terms of winning championships, but do you think like they're going to break up this year? I don't think Steph Curry's going anywhere. I think he's a lifer there. I mean, that's just – they're not going to let him – They'll pay him enough money to stay, period. He's the he's the only thing that will stay around. Draymond will be done. 
Clay will be done. Mm. You know, they've got a couple of young guys that may stick around, but I think the dynasty's over with. Yeah. I mean, Steph Curry, it's not like he couldn't if he he couldn't go somewhere else and get a championship, which he could, but they're not gonna let him. They're they're gonna pay him enough that he can't leave. Right. You know? Yeah, it'd be weird. It's, it would be. It's like a Kim Olajuwon going to sure. the Raptors at the end of his career. If Steph right. Curry goes and plays somewhere else. So I think they're done. He's still the best of those three. He's always been the best of those three. I uh, mean, Clay Thompson has just fallen apart and he was 0 for 10 last night. Uh, he's just not the same player. Obviously, no, and he strings it together during the course of the season. He'll have, you know, five or six games where he looks, you know, he'll he'll lead the month. Yeah. And in, in off the bench scoring or whatever it is. But then he just can't keep it consistently now. He's too many injuries. Too many injuries. And yes. Draymond, the Warriors made a huge mistake paying Draymond the last they off did. season. Uh, I know they wanted to keep their core together. I know they wanted to try to make another run and another championship. But uh, I think they kind of set themselves Too many back. head games for, for, for all these older players, right? They don't yeah. need the head games no. with that guy right now. So I tend to think they're done. I think last night was the last game those three guys played together in Golden State. Uh, yeah, disappointing out for the Warriors and give the Lakers some credit. There are a lot of folks who are like, oh, the Lakers are going to try to lose this game so they don't have to play Denver. And they're like, dude, we don't want to risk that. If we lose this no. game, then we might lose the next game and then we're no. out of the playoffs altogether. We don't want to take our chances there. Uh, they go out, beat New Orleans. Zion Williamson was amazing. He got hurt with three minutes left and had to leave. It was a tie game at the time and the Lakers ended up winning. So, you know, Pels fans are always going to have One that. One more slice. What if? Yeah, he actually... One. He didn't get hurt. He just had to go eat a slice of cake back in the locker room. Yeah, or pizza or whatever. I think that's what it was. Another slice. Just give me one more slice to get me through this next three minutes. <laughs> and he just never came back never out came there. Back <laughs> out. Too much pepperoni. Oh, my gosh. Sorry about that, Zion. So the Lakers get the win. They will take on the defending champion Nuggets. That's a rematch of last year's conference finals. We'll get it in round one. I'm sure Wags and Double R will be talking about this. But, uh, yeah, there's your NBA from last night. We're at 10 o'clock. You know, I can't wait to get back here. I know we'll be back here before July 1st, but on July 1st, when we are here, it will be oh, dude. the new conference. We will be officially in the SEC. And really, I can't wait for all sports to be in the SEC. Yep. You know, I'm really looking forward to. I can wait for baseball. We're, well, not, we're well, not ready for that. Yeah, well, not quite, at least. No. But we'll see who's on the mound this weekend yeah. for the baseball <laughs> They team. might call you. They might call Jay to see if Jay can pitch for My goodness. Texas. What a mess. That is a mess. That I, I feel bad. You know, once again, David Pierce is a is a good guy. He's a and he's a good friend of this show, and he's always been a good uh, a, a good person. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And I feel bad for him. But when you put yourself right in the middle of things, I just think that's that was a tough decision. I mean, it was a decision that he felt like you know he was best suited to do. Yep. But it's just it's not working out for him. It's not I hate to see I, I hate to see that happen to him. I'm with you. Hey, look who it is. We got Wags and we've got Double R. Wags, we're in the place. Yo. Yeah, What's up, my guys? I got the David Pierce classes going today. See, see, it's going to be about David Pierce today, but it should be about the Jelly Cats. Yeah, yeah, you man. Some, you got some cake right there, huh? There well, it is. Hey, let me tell you, my friends. Come on down here to Sue Patrick and then you get one of these special. Cakes. Doing the old Bob look Cole. Like here we go. Cake. Yeah. Perfect for a birthday gift or uh, maybe for your special someone. I'll tell you. Mm, get the mood right. Yeah. Get all open, the mood yeah, right. Yeah, all the mood right. Yeah. Oh, my God. Wax, they got some great luggage here. I I know. I, I know. Made of leather skin. Yes. Alligator leather. No, no. This is this is the good. This is the stuff that when I say. And, Rod, you know when you travel, the bag apes that are throwing your stuff around at the airport. No. This stuff is waiting for one of them to chuck onto the tarmac. Hey, they, this 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 luggage can take it. Yeah, the the trip we took the other day, my wife had to check. Well, we both had to check a bag, the the carry on oh. bag, and she got hers back, and it had like the the top corner was just like mashed in. <laughs> was, <laughs> they don't even try to be gentle with your stuff. I know man, they're, they're man. trying to break it at this point, man. That's why you got to get those like like Kevlar suitcases and stuff. That's going to go through a damn war zone or whatnot. BK's Something. telling me they leave notes in your bag now when they go through it. Like, hey, was I was here. Sorry you're missing your drawers, but I needed a pair. They took my oh, vibrator. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. The toys weren't there when yep. you landed. Definitely oh, gone. Definitely gone. And I had myself a good one, too. I had one of those uh, double headers. One of those coveted ones that you can't find. <laughs> one of those discontinued ones that you can't find anymore. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, yeah, the ladies at Super Patrick love that. Oh, thank and God that, they can't hear them. Oh, no, they can't hear that. Can they, they can't hear that. Oh. No, well, that's a bad thing when they, when they do oh, that. Bob Cole anyways, ladies. 
when, when they do that, I mean, they sit there and they pull everything out of there. You know, it's like the way they do that, you know, putting gloves on and they're just taking shit out. And I'm like, man, come on. What are you looking for? The, I had bought, I bought some like general dollar or dollar general eyewash there one time go. on a trip, uh, contact lens shit. And yeah. um, they took that out and they were like having to test it. They said one of the, one of the ingredients in, in here is, I, I don't know what I'm like, they put in cocaine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I was like, well, shit. I said, let me drink some of that stuff. <laughs> I mean, if it's that good. Um, let me take a shot. Oh my Jeez, goodness. Please. Yeah, when oh. I was coming back from Florida this time, they went through my entire uh like and it was a carry-on too. And if, for some reason it didn't pass through the damn checkpoint or whatnot, and it was my damn old spice deodorant. And I only had like one of those little vials, you know what I mean? The travel vials. I'm not stupid. I was just like, Well, what let me ask you a question. What set that off? She goes, It was just your time. I was like, obviously, clearly, yeah, obviously. Well, well that, going to Tampa, you know, take your belt off. Because my wife gets the deal where she goes right through, you know. Oh, she yeah, gets, she, 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 that she, oh, yeah, she, she gets the express lane. Yeah, I go have to take off my shoes. I took my belt off, and since I'm I'm down to 149 pounds, my pants went down just before I. You know how they tell you to raise your hands up? I put my hands up. My pants went down. I'm like oh. grabbing on my pants. It was all, all the way. At the, no, they went to down to the clips to the to the on part. rappel. He's on rappel right there. Like one of the cholos walking around there I'm in, like, in the airport. I'm like, dude, why do I have to keep taking my belt off? There's nothing in my belt. I don't. I I don't have any explosives in my belt. Please. Don't make me take uh, my belt off. Sir, I told you to take your belt off. I didn't take your belt. Oh, that's not your belt. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh hey, this, this, last, this last trip also, we were, we were going through, uh, I think, where where did we have? We, we ended up in Nashville. I mean, it was just flights all over the place. And so we're, we're going through to come back, and there's an uh, older lady behind me, you know, and I'm putting everything on the carrier thing or whatever. Oh, yeah. And, and, and the old country boy asked uh, the, the older lady, do you got any metal in your body at all right now? <laughs> and uh, the, the lady's like, well, no. Why didn't you ask him? <laughs> like, uh, maybe this is all skin, right? Hey, let me, I know no you guys have been there at Sue Patrick for a while, but let me ask you guys a question before you guys get out of there. Um, sure. Did you guys, you guys see the the Caps Phillies game last night, or Caps Phillies Caps Flyers game last night? I did. So, can I ask, like, have you seen anything like that where it's a tie ball or a tie ball, a tie game, and? Tor not tor it's not just torts but I, it's just mind blown where the a, co a coach of any team pulls the goalie three minutes in in a tie game in in overtime i have yeah. I, I, I like i don't even i got so many questions like are you on the payroll like what's going on here torts in a tie game in overtime it wasn't I even game. overtime it, it was, was three minutes left in regulation but oh, yeah the, correct yeah, yeah thank you very much yeah it wasn't even over thank you very I much i wouldn't no, even, it was weird. do that in overtime they, they needed they needed to win to keep their playoff hopes alive. And they were so desperate to win. Like, they they needed the extra player? They thought that they, yeah, their best strategy was to empty the net. And How'd it work? It didn't work. Oh. Yeah, it didn't they, work. Sort of like David Pierce putting the center fielder on the mound. But I will say this, Wags. No. Like, if the game went to overtime, the, the Flyers were screwed. They had to win that right. game in regulation. So it's getting destroyed because it didn't work. But, like, they had to win that game in regulation. They, they had three win. minutes to do it, and so they, okay, it wasn't that that crazy. I, I don't know if I've seen anything like it, but I don't think it. Uh, it wasn't was just that about crazy. they had to win it in regulation. Is that what you're I saying? Just thought it, I, I thought it was a crazy move to do it with three minutes left in the game. That's all. Yeah, or or yeah. a little a little over three, a little over three. I couldn't believe what I saw. Didn't work. All right, guys. Hey, hey, you guys but before you go, before you go, I got, I got to tell you this. Too many before I, you goes. What are we doing here? One, one more. One more. So I get they a text pee, last Rodney. night. They got to pee. You, you know, with that baseball game last night. So I get a text last night from from my man, Jack Lopez, uh, alumni of, uh, of Lake Travis High School, covered his games for years. Now a pitcher for uh, RGV. Uh, he texted me last night and said, hey, brother, you're going to talk about our game tomorrow? Jesus. <laughs> uh, yeah. He really? pitched an inning last night. So I'm like, uh, yeah, I, I'm sure that will come up. That sucks. All right. All well, right. You guys get out of here. I know Bucky's got to go to the bathroom. He can't even slam it down because he's out of reach right <laughs> yeah. there. He's relying yeah. on you. Newpatrick.com is the website. Y'all come to the store too, 5222 Burnett Road. We will be back here soon and we will talk to y'all soon. You guys have a great See show. See you guys. You guys be good. And there they go there. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Chaos Theory here with Rodney and Wags.
you know, my friends there from Sue Patrick there. Anyway, nah, for real, welcome to uh, Chaos Theory on this wonderful hump day Wednesday. Um, whip it out Wednesday, Ass Master Wednesday, Ass Lead of the Week Wednesday, whatever you want to call it. It's a Wednesday, baby. We're halfway through the week. Uh, we got a lot to get you through. Uh, we got some playoff basketball to talk about. Um, the Stanley Cup playoffs has taken shape and has formed. Um, we got a little bit of that to talk about. We got some baseball to talk about. We got some college baseball to talk about. We don't want to talk about it, but we got to talk about it. Uh, welcome to Chaos Theory. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, not the fake wags. You can find Rodney there on Twitter at the Rodney R, and then on Instagram at the underscore Rodney R. I'm on the Instagram at the Wagner Wire. That's where you can send us all the uh, candidates for athlete of the week. We usually roll those out around 1030. Um, but yeah, be that as it may, if you're out there out and about on that, you know, mobile, um, you know, if you're mobile or whatnot and hit us up on that damn code of text line, 512-222-9328, Rodney, we are in some serious trouble in terms of collegiate baseball here, my guy. Um, you, you kind of flirted with disaster just a minute ago talking about it. Um, yeah, RGV, um, what 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 what's their program ranked to 20 uh, not even that like worse than that i think they're uh almost 250 or some something like that man they're uh not a not a not a club to write home about you know what i mean definitely not a club to write home about and it was a we thought it was going to be an experiment going in um and if you were at the dish last night uh you were I'm probably sorry. threw up on yourself you're disgusted and we got a lot of questions i'm sure people are calling for the head of david pierce but um hey man it's gonna be some ups and downs and this is a down one and I, if i could be a little bit like dan hurley here get us while you can now <laughs> that's uh, the only thing i can think of man that's the only thing i can think of to say is to give anybody hope is get us while you can now and that's not even hopeful it's just like damn dude what the hell is going on oh do we push the, the panics button been pushed clearly it's been bashed a few times um it, there's 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 no answer it or no. there appears no. not to be an answer we and, suck. yeah I mean, it's there's your answer. Like, you can't like you can't even hide the hide the sign anymore it's this is not the longhorns not going to omaha not even wishful thinking the longhorns are awful yeah um rgv is now 18 and 15 after that uh, win last night texas is 22 and 16 and i i had a friend in the valley that that posted uh she posted that that result and she was like wow look at that win you know she lives down there in the rio grande valley and and i said and it wasn't that close i mean it was 14 to nothing at one point i mean what what in the hell is going on here i mean these pitchers are like it's like they're afraid to pitch i mean it's, a, it's just so much apprehension right here you hit nine batters dude you hit nine batters you, you walk 11 I mean, what free bases and no, you're, yeah. no, you're, you're, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're, you're, you're walking. I mean, you're intentionally walking people. And then the next thing you know, you're just walking runs in, you know, hit batter, hit batters to, uh, oh, with bases goodness. loaded. It, I um, mean, have you ever seen the Augie Garrido, um, rant? No, oh, yeah. um, I mean, who hasn't like that's, oh my God. I, I think it's, it's a, like, I think it's a damn prerequisite to what, to being on the air, right. Then, or to being able to talk about college baseball or Texas yeah. baseball. It, um, um this, this, I don't is, know if David Pierce has a rant in him like that to kind of turn this thing so. around. I mean, that, that was after that, I think they racked off what I can't even, I can't even remember the wins, but they went on the, to win the championship or whatnot. But I mean, yeah. God, that's not going to happen. You know, it's I, not, mean, I mean, that's that's very wishful thinking. Um, that's a that's a different dream. You're in a you're in yeah. a nightmare scenario that you're not coming out of until yeah. 2000. You, hopefully, hopefully you come out of it in 2025. You know, we, it's, we talk, it's going to be a long year. We, we talked about this yesterday, uh, yesterday morning on, on the show that, you know, bringing bringing the kid out, uh, bringing Thomas in, you, you know, to pitch. It seemed like a desperate move. Uh, I mean, it would be one thing, you know, if you're experimenting with things, if things were going in a better direction or whatever. Hey, the, the, he did all right. No, I and mean, you know yes. what? I'll be honest with you. Like, I didn't mind it against RGV or, or yeah. against, you know, to, to find. And I'm sure that's what Pierce was thinking. Like, all right, hey, you know, it's a team that's that's uh, what just a, just over. 500 right i mean i and I, I really do think their their ball club or their program is is nationally ranked around 250 something like that um yeah uh, I, I saw i saw a tweet or a text from jeff earlier or uh last last night you know with with that stat on there so i'm pretty sure it's like 250 or whatnot yeah um, 
But still, like that, it's, it's a ball club that you shouldn't be losing to, and it's a ball club that if you have any type of, I guess, experiment or you want to play around with your bullpen or your roster or throw some guys in the, the rotation to see if they still got something that they had in high school, maybe that's the, the team to do it or the program to do it against. Um, but, yeah, it did not – did not work out the way I'm, but like you said, I mean, he wasn't that bad last night. Um, but I mean, it's just that, you know, he didn't get to go that far. And then, um, uh, every, all the other arms that came in, it was just a catastrophe. Uh, 20 free bases. Like that's, that's outrageous. That's just outrageous, man. 20 free bases. Yeah. The, the fact that on a Tuesday night game that, that you're using 10 pitchers, um, and then you have the stat line, the, the, the box score that you cannot find on, on the Texas athletic website. Um, I have it pulled up on the RGV site. Um, and it's, um, yeah, it's very telling, uh, where you see it right there, but you know, the concerning part about this is, you know, so much of what we're seeing, I mean, we're seeing fundamental mistakes. I mean, errors and I mean, things that, that, I mean, mistakes that you shouldn't be making at this level of baseball. I mean, th these are, these are prospects that come in, you, you know, I mean, imagine these are RGV kids that that given the opportunity to play at Texas. I yeah, mean, that's what I'm left, say. Left it's their world, you know? world Series, is it not? It's got to be right. their World Series. And, and this is huge for them. And it, it's very telling. And I think, you know, they talk about all the time to where when, when things are happening like this, at a, that a team or whatever, you, you bottom out. I mean, you have bottomed out right here. I mean, you have bottomed out here. Oh, I, God, I hope this is bottom. I really do hope. That, I hope it can't get worse. I don't think it can get worse. But I hope this is bottom. Well, uh, you know, you hadn't lost to this bunch since <laughs> yeah, 1971. Yeah, TB, yeah, we 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 got it. It's 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 the worst. Like that's why we're saying bottom. But I we're saying that we hope it doesn't get any worse than this. CB, yeah, uh, yeah, you are absolutely right. It is pretty terrible. Pretty yeah. terrible. Pretty pretty bad. Pretty yeah, ni bad. 1971 since you lost to this group, and that 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 tells you. And then the manner that you lose to this group. I mean, if this was a five to six ball game, yeah, or something, this was an was onslaught, man. This was throttling. Even, this, throttling. this looked like you went out there and you didn't even give a shit, honestly. Like it, yeah, yeah. It's gonna raise some eyebrows, that's for sure. And I'm sure that, like, not it's not just us that are talking about it. I'm sure the Longhorns are the talk of college baseball. Well, one, it's probably shock. It there's probably a lot of um, fan bases out there that are. Uh, kind of chuckling at this i mean hell if if you're if you're the aggies or little brother would you not be chuckling at this i mean right when they become number one when they right. become the number one team in the land right you do this yeah like <laughs> i'm sure they're having a lot of fun with this just, i haven't looked it, at it it's ways. just it's polar ends at this point man and um yeah, yeah man when it rains it pours that's the only thing i can say not to be a book of cliches but i mean damn it's Texas baseball seems like a, a bad book of cliches. You know, isn't it isn't it kind of odd right now? You know, just kind of in the in the recent past, the, the, where where football's kind of been the one struggling, and basketball has been somewhat. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, there's some hope there, and and then of course uh, baseball is always what it is, and it's like a total flip. Baseball right is now. usually like the continuity, right? Like <laughs> yeah. baseball is usually like the you know at least the consistent piece that's going to give us somewhat of a, of a smile on our face yeah. right now. It's just yeah. like, you're, you're, you're searching for smiles and you're coming up dry, man. I mean, yeah, dude, it's, 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 a, it's like, it's like you football. Can't be, you can't show up and play. Like we talk about it all the time and you can't show up and make unforced errors and beat yourselves. You just can't, yeah. you're yeah. going to lose, like, you're going to lose ball games. Yeah. It's like, it's like football breaks your heart. Basketball disappoints you and underachieves, but yet there's baseball. <laughs> and this year it's, Football, that's it. I mean, other than the women's sports, because Lord knows they got their shit together. Hey, man, and you know we like talking women's sports here. That's right. That's, on that's, that's exactly what we do around here. Wednesday is Women's Sports Day. You see Caitlin Clark getting drafted broke all kinds of records on TV. I did, man. She was wearing a uh, wearing Prada too, dude. And then um thousand dollar outfit, dude. And then what? Like her her teammate, uh, Kate Martin, or. Caitlin uh, Martin or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember her first name, but I, th I think it's, I, I know her last name's Martin. I think it's Katie. Um, anyways, she was in the crowd supporting her or whatnot. And then she gets called uh, and drafted herself. So, I mean, Hey, shout out to, to, you know, uh, the Iowa Hawkeyes out there, the, the lady Iowa Hawkeyes for having a couple of their players getting drafted. I saw Angel Reese getting drafted as well yeah. to Chicago. Shout out to charm city as well. Um, yeah, man, I, I, I'm not gonna lie. I, I tuned into it. I tuned into I a little bit of the draft. I had it on one of the TVs. Yeah, 
Hey, d- did you hear? Uh, so I saw this yesterday. I was going to bring it up yesterday, but I figured I'd wait till Wednesday because it's Women's Sports Day and stuff. <laughs> no, look, uh, all right, hold on. We got to get out of this because BK hit me up with that shit too when we were at this uh, event with Pick Sports. Yeah, yeah. He's just like, hey, you know, um, you know, this is Wags, and then for it, it's like, it's I guess it's just like a. Uh, just like a vibe or like a personal vibe that I'm getting, or maybe it's just like a damn, I, the, the, the words eluding me right now at the moment, like a damn, uh, what's the, what's the word that you have, or what's the damn thing that you have? I can't think of it. Anyways, he talked, he was talking to his girl and I, all of a sudden it came over me like, Oh my God, please. I hope you don't think that I'm a chauvinist if you watch the show. So anyways, man, I'm having like a, a, a personal uh, vendetta against myself or whatnot. When I think of the word, you know, I'm having word slippage or, uh, word association problems at the moment. But, pig? Huh? I'm not a pig. <laughs> I know. I'm just asshole. <laughs> so uh <laughs> complex. I'm having a I'm having my own, I'm creating my own self. Oh, I got I, I got you. So, I got you. Um I saw that the uh the commissioner or uh the WNBA commissioner, her herself a very attractive woman. Um now I'm the pig. It's not about attraction, Rodney. No, that's right. It's about leadership. About uh, brains. That, that that she said that coming up here uh maybe within a year. They're going to add another franchise, which would be 13. How about Austin? Bring a WNBA team to Austin. That would fit in well I'd, here. I'd be down with that. I'd get Don't down with that. Uh, I think kind of with the Austin vibe and the Austin field, uh, field, feel and mindset and so forth, I think that would be great here. I, I think that would be great here. Just something I'd be else. Down, um, we, cause we, like, we don't have any women's professional sports. So we had we had that lingerie football league that played at the H E B Center. Now, that? Hey, let me tell you something. That's an actual like the the lingerie. Um, I forget what the, is it the L is it actually the LFL? I think it was. I went to a couple of. I mean, I went to. A well, I know Baltimore had a club too. One of my friends that I played high school with was one of the coaches. Yeah, I mean, I yo yo. yo. Dude, <laughs> I um, yeah, I, I went to I went to a couple of those games. Shit, I I was beating them up to be the PA guy. <laughs> it was like when I was doing a lot of PA. I'm like, hey, do y'all need a PA announcer? Um, I can do it. And they never called. So, yeah, the Andre Football League. Yeah, um, story of my life. The 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 women's league never called me. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think it'd be a great fit around here. I mean, I think it I think it would do extremely well here. Um, I don't know. You never know. You never know. I didn't hear of any possible city. I don't, I don't even know if the if lingerie or uh, I think it's lingerie football league. I think that's what it's called. I don't even know that's still going on. They can't I even call lingerie, right? It's not lingerie. They're not even wearing. They're not wearing lace. No, I mean they're they're, they're like they're wearing biker shorts. They're wearing like Nike biker shorts or whatnot. They're, they're everything, wearing everything's kept together. Yeah, it's it's like biker shorts. They're wearing biker shorts. They're in not the like real coming type. out like that and lace what? and shit like that. Like that's what? the thing. And they hit each other. I mean, they hit each other really they good. I mean, yeah, they pop. They can definitely yeah, and it's pop. All, it's all tucked in there because some of those hits, I mean, you'd have stuff popping out and flying around and exposing, and, and there's kids there, for crying out loud. So you can't be having uh, that kind of stuff. But, yeah, I'd, uh, yeah, I wonder if they still have that. I need to. We need to do some investigating. That'd be, that'd be another TSU night. Nice. Rick Vaughn, Ricky Wild thing, Vaughn. Oh, <laughs> nice. Yeah. I th- that's what Texas, long, that Texas needs – Talk about arms, talk about pitchers. They could use themselves one hell. Not even, uh, you know, just another starter to compliment OBJ and, and Ace Whitehead or whatnot. Or hell, um, are we are, are we saying those names backwards? Um, <laughs> no, I'm so like o, OBJ is still king, man, until, look, pitchers go through shit. You know what I mean? And hopefully yeah. uh, it, it looks like every pitcher is going through something there, you know, for Texas. But. I mean, hopefully, you know, another arm can emerge and something can rise. I saw somebody, you know, text something uh, in the chat line if if um, Texas needs NIL money or whatever, if they can use that NIL money to get more pitchers to come to Texas. Um, guys, it, it's 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 rough and it's going to be rough for a while. So it's not going to be an immediate fix. I don't think any amount of money is going to turn it around. I think it's going to be a two-year fix. I mean, maybe when, when the talent's gone, man, um, and, you know, it's hard to it, – and you'd think – it wouldn't be hard to supplement talent coming to the, you know, this program or whatnot, but it, it just doesn't look like all the talents come together. That's the thing. The talent, there, you see the talent on the squad. It's just got to come together, guys. Yeah. And here's something that's very concerning to me that I thought about yesterday. We are doomed. It. I mean, we're doomsday in for a good reason, Rodney. Oh, yeah. But I mean, yeah. we, we yeah. got to light, we got to lighten up a little bit. I think the well, ship's going to be right in, in due time. And, and burnt, 
Bruno Orangietti brings up something really cool, or not cool, but a very, very valid point on the code of text line, 2229328. How about blowing the confidence of the entire pitching staff by throwing Snake Farm out there? And, and it's like, you know, I thought about that yesterday. It's like, man, if I... Or Again, maybe that, 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 I was thinking that, but also maybe I was thinking that Pierce is trying to get the rotational way, the bullpen yeah. or the in the rotation to answer and in the in the to own up to some things, right? Like, hey man, if we're struggling this bad, maybe I'm searching for answers. Maybe it's on you to kind of rise up and, and you know play a little ball here, right? I'm yeah. You yeah. use the word motivation. Um, locate locate your you know locate your cojones there, and let's go look go back to the ballpark and get to work, man. That's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, hoop dog also um, kind of back to the WNBA thing, and and I, this is my thought as well, um, and I see it in the in the YouTube chat line as well. I mean, let it, WNBA play at the HEB Center. Uh, I mean, I, I think that's the perfect venue for that. I mean, you you fill that thing up. I mean, the mood is big. The mood is expensive for one thing. Um, I would imagine you know to get in contract to play there with all the regulatory stuff of the university and so forth. So yeah, let them play at the HEB Center. Do the Austin Spurs still play? I, I mean, and pardon my. Yeah, negligence for not knowing that. Yeah, okay. Also personal play. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do something like that. I mean, I think that would be really cool. So hopefully, uh, they are listening to Texas Sports Unfiltered, and they'll bring them. Uh, CB, I agree. Cameron Brink, I had no idea who that was. Dude, did you see the story? Did you see the story on Cameron Brink's mom? How she uh, was a part of the marketing deal with uh, Don Staley's the first production of Don Staley's shoe. No, no, I did not. Yeah. Dude, no. Cameron Brink's been in the in the game for a while, man. She's been around the WNBA scene for uh, well, she hasn't been playing in WNBA, obviously, but she's yeah, won, yeah. she's been around that scene since she was a little girl. Yeah, that Crazy, uh, that tall drink of water stood up, and I said, "Hell, hello there." Um, <laughs> in, Good girl. In, well, hello there. Uh, well, hello there, little lady. She ain't a little. No, yeah, tall, tall really. drink of water, like you just mentioned, man. Tall drink of water. Uh, Ike. Uh, Ike. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, yeah, What's yeah. Wrong? <laughs> yeah, it, uh, yeah, very, uh, now that's a nice, uh, attractive woman, or what did, what did well, we got? We got a nice, attractive woman that you sent out. I mean, I don't know what she does, Rodney. You didn't give me a, a synopsis on your athlete of the week candidate, but you're gonna have to break that down and, and give me what she does, or did you, or was that just an admirer that you sent me? Uh, man, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I sent a few things. Uh, so we'll, we'll see who it is. We'll see who it is. Um, if there's a name, hopefully I'll remember what she does. Or Key, what, Alves, what, Key Alves? Uh, I think, I think, that, well, yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out when she pops up. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, we, uh, she's got, I, I hope you know the requirements to where they have to be an athlete. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. She okay. is. She is. Okay. She is. Okay. Uh, yes, Jake. Uh, every limb, <laughs> uh, every branch. Um, hey, we had some basketball last night. Yeah, yeah, we did. You want to talk about that? You want to get into it? Hey, man, I thought the Lakers were going to throw the game, but um, immediately I saw, well, I guess. How about they... in Zion getting hurt, too? Yeah, How about that? Man. That, um, yeah, that's pretty rough, dude. That That is pretty rough right there. But, um, I mean, the, the, the more that I sat and watched that, you know, I thought, well, if you're the Lakers, I mean, do you take a chance? And again, they're not going to throw the game. But but is it one of those things where you kind of give a half-hearted effort uh, to avoid Denver um, and then you lose last night and then, hell, you lose again. And it's like uh, you're out like Golden State. <laughs> so, yeah, that, uh, I'm, I'm shocked. I'm shocked that Golden State, you know, bowed out last night. I thought they'd be able to, to kind of galvanize and be able to make a, a run and get into this thing. I I don't know how far they would have gone, you know, especially with Clay not being able to to be the third guy that that the Warriors I can't believe I'm saying that Clay is the third guy. Uh, crazy? Yeah. It's time father time, man. Father time gets everybody, dude. They and so it's going to get that. It's going to get Are they done? Too. Are they done? Cuz that, that, No, that's... I think I I I mean, clearly they got to supplement Clay. Yeah. Like that's Clay's just your three guy. He's not even a three and D guy anymore. I mean, I love the I mean, he, the efforts there. It's just the the speed's not there. Like the lateral movement that Clay used to have. Um, uh, like people used to, like he didn't dribble much. He didn't have to dribble, but dude, on on defense, he he could lock you down on D. He was pretty good on, at being up on the perimeter, man. Um, I think they got a year left. I do. Um, of course, it all falls on on Steph, right? Like as long as Steph is on that roster and, is, and as long as he can keep going, I think the Warriors are are in contention. But the problem is that 
they could be falling into the the purgatory that the Wizards were in for the past couple of years to where you're just you're around, you know, the the 9, 10, 11 spot and you're not even really, you know, you're kind of just flirting with the playoffs and you're not even really getting in. You, you don't even have, you know, a bad enough season to acquire lottery picks. So, yeah. Um, yeah. It, you know, you got to you kind of got to shit or get off the pot in terms when you're in that position in basketball, because it is it's it's the land of purgatory, man. You either. You got to make moves to beefing up and strengthen up your roster, or you got to understand the fact that you're probably in, you know, in rebuild mode and tank a little bit and get that lottery pick and then start to rebuild yeah. that way. Yeah, it's like we've talked about, um, you know, with a lot of the NFL teams to where it's like you get to a certain point and, you know, if you're drafting in the late, late teens into the 20s, I mean, that, that, you know, you're, I mean, you're going to get a quality player, but you're not going to get something that's going to be a, a franchise changer that, that that's going to take you to the next. It's not like a, a Wimby, you know, what the Spurs have done to where do it's we, like. Do we look at that? Do we look at that wrong? Do we do we do we use that value? Like when we try and quantify that value and evaluate, you know, that that high draft pick. Yeah. Do we look at that wrong? Or are we evaluating it wrong? Like just because they're drafted in the high, you know, the high first round or whatnot, to, and we expect we expect them to perform immediately, instant gratification. Yeah. yeah. Whereas you're seeing, well, hell, I mean, I, you know, I also agree. Like if you're getting a quarterback within the first five picks, I think that that they should be that good, or or the potential should be there within the first quarter of the season to yeah. get them on the pro level. Like, see, like I I, I didn't think C.J. Stroud would turn out the way he did in the pros, but damn, like, like that, that should be the yeah. damn prototype, right? That should be the standard from here on out. Yeah. Of course, it's on the skill set of CJ Stroud, you know, a lot of people aren't, aren't on that same level or don't have that same mentality. But again, like our, if I'm wondering if we are using a method of evaluation to, uh, you know, to, to kind of evaluate these first round draft picks um, unfairly, you know what I mean? Well, why not let them sit? Why not let them, you know, kind of learn a little bit from from the veterans or whatnot, and then hell craft their craft their skill set. I mean, I don't know. You gotta have a little a little bit of of you know accumulation or acclimatize, right? You gotta acclimatize a little bit to the damn league or adapt to the damn league because the speed we talk about it all the time. The speed that you're coming from with college, it's just not the same level of speed that's there in the NFL. It's all over speed. It's all NFL speed all the time, man college you got one or two guys that can fly everybody mm -hmm. in the nfl can fly yeah i mean it's like the difference between high school yeah, and i'm and, with and you college. like I'm, I'm jay like look at this ronnie i'm with jake here dude that is super weak it's a it's a wide receiver draft it's a wide receiver draft in a line in an offensive line draft they're making these quarterbacks out to be quarterbacks that they're not he it's, might be talking about basketball. it's all for selling days on draft or yeah. uh you know marketing days on draft well yeah. and i think a lot of it is I mean, I think a lot of it is because you do see like when you go like, like we've talked about in the past, when you when you're a high draft pick, you, you know, you you pick whoever, like all these quarterbacks that we're talking about, you're going to go to a system like Washington or New England or, or some somewhere that is in desperate need, that's in rebuild, that is in uh, total chaos or new coaching staffs or new GMs. You're going you're going into rebuild. Like, you know, when we talk about Jaden Daniels going to Washington, I think the, I, I think Daniels is. I personally think Daniels is the better quarterback than the guy that's going to go number one, but he's going to go into a system to where it, it is totally revamped. So I don't know what's going to happen there with him. Uh, you know, Michael Penix keeps coming up. If Michael Penix goes later in the draft to a Seattle, even to a Dallas, because I've heard him thrown into the Dallas conversation, something like that. I mean, it's a much better fit because, and that's like with the NBA like we're talking about with the NBA, if you go deeper, you're going somewhere that's more established. Right. If you go early, you're going to a shit show. It's going to be all on if you, it's going to be all on you to to save the program or That's save right. the franchise, probably. That's too, right. right. That's right. I mean, and then, and then, are you're going to be the scapegoat. You know, what right? I mean? as, as as excited as as people are to get you on draft day, they're probably going to be as excited to get rid of you if you don't perform. So then, yep. Um, then you become Justin Fields, Mac Jones, <laughs> Johnny Manziel. Go down the list. I mean, well, I wouldn't put Johnny Manziel and, and Justin well, Fields in the yeah, same well, damn no, sense. You know. Like they're they're two completely different quarterbacks. No, I'm, um, I'm with Rob here, really hoping that the Pats don't get May, but instead uh, go at the top with a wide receiver, no line, um, or maybe get a good QB in I round agree. two. So, Rob, here's what I think about your Pats, my guy. Um, something strikes me to where 
I don't think they're going to utilize their pick in the first round. I do feel like they're going to – if if Mayo learned anything from Belichick in that front office, it's a it's acquire picks, right? It's not all about, you know, the early round picks. It's about getting as many picks as possible because that, that way you get to evaluate your talent. You get more talent than everybody else is getting, right? Yeah. Um, here's the thing about that. If, if you – if you drop Daniels, right, if you trade Daniels, and I would allow Oakland to come up and get Daniels because, one, Antonio Pierce, he flirted that little carrot out there with him. He, uh, he, you know, had – I believe he had Daniels in high school as well as a coach, but I know he had uh, – he worked with Daniels at Arizona State when Arizona – or, excuse me, when um, Daniels was at Arizona State before he transferred to, to LSU. I think maybe there's a move there for the Raiders to jump up and get the Patriots and the Patriots to come back after they acquire, you know, more draft picks from the Raiders or whatnot. And then maybe take a quarterback like a Bo Nix in the latter round of the first. Uh, I've, if, if J.J. McCarthy's going projected in the top five, guys, I'd like to tell you that I had this this draft mapped out. I don't know what the hell's going on anymore. Like, I, I don't. Yeah. Like, I had J.J. McCarthy in the second round. It, if, you know mid second round not like not like the giants taking him in the second round you know what i mean like i had jj mccarthy going back a little further but hey look if bo nix is still available um in in the early second round and the giants don't pull the trigger on that i think they're kind of foolish because that's the best yeah i'm saying it bo nix the best quarterback in this draft um not that it's a, a highly touted qb draft anyways i think it's masked with um a lot of marketing and a lot of uh um, you know, hype and hoopla just to sell a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of commercials and a lot of merch and a lot of, you know, deals or, com- you know, NIL deals. Well, it ain't going to be NIL deals, but a lot of uh, yeah. deals outside deal. of their contract yeah. or whatnot. It's, yeah. these these are not good quarterbacks, guys. Yeah, I, um, and you know, I, I and I'm still a firm believer in Penix. Uh, I, I mean, I know that he's, uh, I mean, I, I get it. I totally get it. But this isn't, I, I haven't been on the, on the Penix bandwagon since, you know, since the Sugar Bowl. I mean, th- this goes back. I mean, this goes back to. What's I, making I just, you, what's making you hot on Penix again? I, I, to, to me, he just seems like he, like he's. Had cool a good pro be, day. He did. He, yeah, he had, he had a, a great pro day. Pro day. I mean, he showed some speed that I, I didn't think that that we'd see from him. But I think what, the thing is, four six. Yeah, yeah, four, four and a half, four six. I don't I, know. I, think, if it, I don't know if the speed was ever the question. It's the durability, right? The durability. Yeah, and and I think the thing is that that's where I keep going back to him as a great example, where he's going to go later. And he's going to wind up in a situation to where there's not offensive line issues. Uh, he's going to have weapons on the outside, probably going to have a halfway decent running game. You, you know, it, it's not going to be solely on him. It's these it's these first guys that we're talking about that there's going to be this immense pressure on them. And and I'm here to tell you, I mean, it is going to be it is going to be a Penix. It is going to be a Knicks. It's going to be one of these guys that well, comes and, out of this class and, and is going to be the better, the better quarterback than all these top the one, two, three guys. I'm with you too, and it's and there. It's one. It's what you said just not too long, not just a minute ago. How they're falling into a better situation, right? And it's also this here with Rob. Like, if if Mayo does what, um, what I think he'll do, it it's he'll roll out Brissett, right? And then and then have these guys learn from Brissett. Patriots aren't in a win now mode. No, they're not. No, no. They're, they're that's- trying to acquire. They're, they're trying to acquire good personnel, establish good roster movement, and try and build back to the AFC crown or the AFC East crown, right? They don't have that much. They don't have that much further to go when you're looking at the, you know, the Jets and well, hell the Dolphins are the, the new Kings, I would guess. Um, yeah. they're, the fish are pretty damn good, but um, they can still, they can, they can reach the fish within what? Three seasons for two, maybe oh, two. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like the, I, the window for the fish isn't exactly huge either man like they're built for like win now right now too because those contracts for Tyree Kill Jalen Waddle's gonna want a lot of money as well um Tua after Tua's deal like it's there's a really good chance that it could fall apart for the fish pretty quick exactly and and that's and like that just that right there talking about you know some folks may say well Brissett I mean he he's no good or, or whatever look a lot of this is and when you say sit behind a lot of this is to me when one of these young guys comes in and they're going to sit behind a guy like Jacoby Brissett. I mean, it's not, you're not, he, Brissett is not going to hone those guys game. 
Those guys play their own game. They have their oh, own he's style. Teach the little things. That's They're all. They're going to learn the business. They're going to learn the yeah. business. They're going to learn how to be a, prof- a paid, well, extremely high paid professional in the NFL. They're going to learn the NFL life. They're going to learn the locker room. They're going to learn all of that shit. And that's, that's huge. Because if you don't figure that learn how part to lead out, a team. learn how to lead yeah, a team. Like yeah, that might yeah. not be the greatest quarterback, but he knows how to lead a team. I say, I mean, the, the best two examples. I mean, look, look, when Pat Mahomes got to sit, I mean, look at him. I mean, he said he sat behind uh, Alex Smith and look how well he did. The late, great Steve McNair, when he goes to the Oilers slash Titans, he sits for a couple of years. They were shit. They were no good. And then by the time he got to go, I mean, he wound up, he let him do a Super Bowl. I mean, they didn't win. I, mean, he, I he agree with everything that you said there, Rodney, but I mean, Patrick Mahomes is on a well, different, a different level. I mean, he. I think Patrick Mahomes maybe could have. I don't think he would have had the success that he had. Um, you know, coming else. in at, right after Alex Smith, but I think if you would have inserted him in into the lineup his rookie season, I think he would have done all right. Well, but if he'd have gone, I mean, I don't remember when he got drafted. I don't remember who had the number one draft pick or who was the the worst team the season. I, I know, I know the Bears moved up to take um, Trubisky ahead of him. I know yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, and again, a lot of it is kind of back to what we're talking about. It's got to be the right spot. I mean, it's got to be the right spot. And that's like talking about these Texas wide receivers. You know, it's like one of these guys, I have a feeling, is going to get to catch passes from that guy. Great fit. Good situation. That's a hell of a lot better than going to play for the Redskins. <laughs> <laughs> so so that's that's a big part of it where, where this draft gets so intriguing. And that's looking at the looking at the mocks. I mean, like your Giants, for example. I, I'm oh. seeing Malik Neighbors now, and it's. I mean, what? put him head to head, him and Harrison. I mean, who's better? Probably it's Harrison. Not even that. Like I know you that don't throw that dude the ball. The whole gripe has been Daniel Jones not having a top tier wide receiver or whatnot, or tier one wide receiver. Um, you think that you think his problems are going to be solved and fixed by one one Malik Neighbors? No, he can't stand upright. He can't stand upright because his line's too weak. There's too many holes in his line. I say you fix the line first, and then you go get him some toys. Um, and how? And you know how? How much longer is Daniel Jones going to be there? Like, well, at least three more years with that contract. You're not going to be able to get rid of him. Hopefully, well, hopefully, you get him something where he can just soar, flourish, and you can have that golden turd polished and sell it because it's, it's exactly you what it is. And you let your best player go play for somebody else yeah. in the district. Not only is somebody else, not division. just somebody else, Rodney. You didn't let him go play for somebody them. else. Them. You let, you let him go play for them. You let him go play them. for them. The yeah. Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah. Um, I agree. I mean, I've said it, Gabe. Uh, I mean, Gabe, my man, back home. Um, I'm telling you. It's like, and I hope I'm wrong for the kid's sake. I'm just not bought in on that guy. Um, so we'll see. We're getting close to the draft, man. Oh, we are. Man. Uh, we're about a week. Draft's draft on man. next Thursday, I believe. It's on the 25th. So. Oh, yeah, you're right. Damn, yeah. we are close, man. Jeez, Absolutely. Man. Hey, everybody out there, all you pickleball players, if you're ready to gear up with the gear that's made right here, crafted in Austin, look no further than Pick Sports Gear. You guys seen the video of me falling down on my ass? Well, look, I didn't have Pick Sports Gear on. That's the reason. If I would have had those excellent crafted uh, clothing, the apparel line that they have, I would have had breathable gear. I would have been able to stretch. I would have been able to move, and I wouldn't have fallen on my ass. From the top of the line paddles to the premium accessories, they have everything you need to dominate the court in style. Plus, keep an eye out for the demo days that just happened right down there um, at at Baldwin South. Um, They're also going to have some more demo days popping up in the next week, so make sure you're keeping your eye out there. Check out the website for the locations and details, and then gear up with Pick Sports Gear today because you got to get ready. Their their clothing line drops this summer. Uh, More, or they already got their hats out now, but they're going to have even more shirts come out. A new line coming out. Show off your Austin made excellence on the pickleball court. Now go play some picks. Learn more at www.picksportsgear.com. That's p-i-x sportsgear.com. Absolutely. Good stuff right there. How about a quick word from our wonderful friends over at Covert B Cave? It's Wednesday. Uh, It's Ladies Day here, so you people be nice to Hayden. Hi, I'm Dan Covert with my wife, Hayden. Welcome to Covert B Cave. Our newest location in the gorgeous Hill Country includes Buick, GMC, Cadillac, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram, and hundreds of pre-owned and certified vehicles for you to choose from. We have three service departments that are ready to take care of your car, truck, or SUV with 86 service bays to accommodate any repair and get you in and out quickly. Come visit us today to select the vehicle you've been dreaming about. 
Covert, born and raised in Austin. Covert family serving generations of Central Texans and beyond since 1909. Nobody beats a covert deal. Not now. Sure as hell. Not ever, my man, Wags. <laughs> Doing some work here, my guy. Oh, okay. I was like, I saw it go dark. I'm like, did his power go out? Uh, what happened right there? No, it, um, yeah, the, the draft, I mean, I mean, it's still, I don't know. I mean, the first three, I mean, I still like Daniels. I like Daniels, but I know it's going to be Caleb. But I think what's going to be more intriguing and and just looking at it, you know, from the from the Texas standpoint is where do those guys end up? I mean, I keep hearing Jonathan Brooks to Dallas. That one seems to be uh, something that's that's going to continue to happen. With the Cowboys, you hear of, of maybe the Cowboys taking a quarterback somewhere in this draft. That'll be something to follow. I've heard that the Texans are planning to make some moves in the draft and, and shit. It's like what do the, the Texans mean? I feel like the Texans got everybody everything they needed. That's, maybe that's maybe stir up thought. a little bit of on defense and maybe get get a piece of the offensive line. But well, I, I think I, I think that's the thing about it that they're in, in such a great position, Wags, where they can stockpile, you know, with these rookie contracts and stuff that they have. You can really build this thing up. And geez Louise, man, when you look at the AFC South, it's like Houston, you gotta. I mean, do you think Houston is Kansas City? Obviously, is the benchmark. I'm, I mean, I'm hoping Diggs doesn't doesn't ruin what Houston has going. Me too. Um, me too. Because it feels yeah. like it feels, and maybe it's unfair, you know, to put this on Diggs, but it does feel like he had a little bit of a fallout with Kirk Cousins and, yep. and the Minnesota Vikings, yep. and it feels like it wasn't exactly working out well for him and Josh Allen towards the latter portion of the season last year. Um, again, it's it's. Uh, I'm, I'm speculating i don't have any any concrete solid information that i've read to make me feel that way i'm again it's just it's what i observed during the game and of course anybody that's played football you know your emotions get the best of you everybody's an alpha and you want to win you want to win as passionately as 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 you know just as much as the next guy um we all just go about different ways of doing it you know what i mean um anyways i i i, I hope i'm i hope i'm not being un too unfair against stefan diggs i just I really hope he's able to control his ego or whatnot and understands that hell man, that he's not just you, you know the only person on this in this wide receiver yeah. room. There's some there's some dudes that there's some dudes that's that CJ Stroud can work with, man. That's, he's that's he's thing. part of the arsenal now. He's not the arsenal. It, it is, you know. I hope that that you know, when the move was made to get Stefan Diggs in there, that it was a very clear cut conversation, exactly right. alluding to what you're saying. It's like, dude, you are, you are one of several, you are one of several right now. Um, great point, Jake chargers are the AFC Cowboys. And now with Jim Harbaugh there, they're really going to be the AFC Cowboys because it's like a lot of focus, um, th that's going to be on them there for the uh, uh, Chargers of Los Angeles, as they are now called. But yeah, yeah, the Diggs thing, and, and you know how that goes. I mean, we saw it so many times with the, with Terrell Owens, you know, on his many travels that he made throughout the NFL to where it's like he, he was the locker room, sorry to use the word, but he was the locker room cancer that really brought, I mean, he destroyed Donovan McNabb and the Eagles. I mean, the 49ers, Romo and Dallas. I mean, it was like, I mean, there was Gorilla a guys. bad teammate or was he just, did he just do antics outside of the locker room? I think he was just more about him. I, I think he just, okay. and, and a lot of these guys, it just seems like they draw attention, you know, with the, I love how you talk about it on the Wagner wire. Like when you guys are doing fantasy football and, and you're, you're, you're about to rate the receivers, you say, okay, let's go to the divas. Cause that, that's really what they are. I mean, that's, that's <laughs> I mean, what that's, they are. I, I feel like everybody calls them that. Um, Hey, we do got a nasty lead of the week to present, right? Right. We also got some basketball to talk about, too. We got we got some playing games that are happening tonight that we got to get in. So it's athlete of the week. Rodney, I'm going to pull this up. I believe my Portuguese is a little stale. Um, I, I need to polish up on it just a bit, but I believe this is saying that she is a Brazilian soccer player. volleyball player. Oh, yeah. Volleyball. I'm sorry. I believe yeah. she's a Brazilian volleyball player. And this is our athlete of the athlete of the week. Um, do you have a name for her, Rodney? Um, Key is all that I could find. Key is Key. all that you could find. Key was all that I can find. I don't know if that's a nickname or what it is, but but I can tell you she does have she does some work for Modelo. <laughs> so she endorses beer. Um, 
And I'll tell you something else. I, I think she does something for Playboy. I don't know if she's some sort of model right there, but uh, I haven't seen any nude shots of her. Uh, however, what sport, I, I really haven't what looked. What sport that does far. she play, Rodney? Oh, no, sorry. She uh, she plays volleyball. She for is what a team? Volleyball what team? player. Uh, Big Brother Brazil. Big, Big Brother, Brother Brazil. Brazil is a show. It's a oh. show. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, let's Big see Big Brother. It's a uh, show. No, man. That that's a team. That's also a team. That's also a it's team. It's not. I can guarantee you it is not a team. <laughs> All right, hold on here. Uh what is this? What is this? I team love here? it. I love it. Um yeah, she's I don't know well, what she, she qualifies is. for athlete of the week. I don't know if she's a with athlete. The, with the emphasis on ass. Yeah. <laughs> right? Okay, my guy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll take it. Uh let me follow her thing here. Yes, yeah, you follow she, her. You figure it all out. She, um, she plays let me volleyball. Share this. She plays volleyball. Um, she also endorses sports betting in Brazil, so uh, she does that as well. Um, she also does have an OF. I haven't gone there yet, but uh, says, that is sorry. A, so it says that she's an athlete. She played volleyball in two thousand. She's playing volleyball in two thousand twenty-five. Yeah. Um, she does not. She does not belong to a club. She is an OnlyFans model, Rodney. She's a Playboy model. She is not an athlete. You slipped one by me here, sir. Oh, damn it. Yeah. Man, I just Googled female athletes, attractive female athletes, and she popped up. Yeah, well, well, I saw one do, picture. Due with- diligence, if, go to sportsbook, go to you know sportsreference.com. Look, there, oh, look well, them up there. If they're not in there, then they're probably not a professional athlete. Wags, I, I saw a picture of her with uh, with uh, volleyball, but then again, you know, I hold a golf club. I guess that doesn't mean that I play on the on the live tour or the PGA, right? <laughs> I could take a picture. I mean, no, I'm on, the, I'm on the PGA tour. I'm on the Pro-Am. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I qualified. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, man. I'm on. Are you serious? Well, I wouldn't be here, Rodney. Are you serious? <laughs> no, dude. No, man. Uh, oh, we got some man. basketball to talk about. Um, we were, we already talked a little bit. We flirted a little bit with the Lakers and Pelicans last night. Um, Sacramento getting the win. We mentioned that as well. Now Sacramento and the Pelicans will play. Um, yeah, uh, the Lake Show. Uh, we, we talked about maybe you know flirting with the the tactic and strategy to lose, uh, come in and be seated as the eighth hopefully yeah. to play Oklahoma. Um, but now, I mean, I, I think you, you did what you needed to do. You you did the right move. You, you had to solidify your spot regardless. You can't flirt around that much. It, disaster could happen, and you couldn't, you know, you wouldn't even be in the damn playoffs if you tried to get too cute with it. Um, be that as it may, Denver will play the Lakers. Uh, we'll break that down when we get, in, you know, to the first round of the playoffs there. Yeah. And then now tonight, um, oh, yeah, uh, Kings continue to go on against the Pelicans. Um, and then tonight, uh, we have the Heat versus 76ers. Um, my bid's in on the 76ers, especially with Embiid. You Embiid. kind of alluded to it two weeks ago. You know, if Embiid comes back, the Sixers can make a run at this thing. I was kind of on the fence with, you know, why chance it? If he's if he's not 100%, don't even allow him to come back. Yeah. Don't, don't even, you know, entertain the playoff game here. Take a dive a little bit. Maybe you... You know, you've tanked before. Hell, that's kind of how you acquired Joel Embiid in the first place, man. Sure. You tanked before. Go back to that scene just a little bit. Maybe you acquire a little bit of a draft pick to come in there and help out Maxi in the, you know, in the perimeter. Um, and, but now, I mean, since Embiid's one hundred percent, yeah, maybe this two man game can work between he and Maxi, and they can make a run at this thing. Um, they're kind of my sleeper pick for the East to get in. I, I still. I feel the East is absolutely irrelevant. I got, I've seen a lot of pros out there that actually think that Boston can upset any team out of the West. And it, maybe it's because of what we were talking about last week, how Boston should kind of be able to cruise, right? And not mm-hmm. have that much wear and tear on, you know, on, yeah. on the personnel or whatnot. And then also, you know, the West just beaten down by all the brutality that they're going to go through, you know, with, with the studs and the stalwarts of the West. So, yeah. Again, man, maybe the opposition is going to be too much uh, in the West, and you know they'll beat each other down for Boston to actually capitalize and, and poach this thing and kind of hoist the Larry O'Brien. Yeah, I mean, it really could be because the West is is going to be a fight. I mean, the West is going to be a fight. I mean, you know, even like the 
you know, I know the Lakers are 0 and 3 against Denver this year, but I mean, let's get to the playoffs and it's a totally different scenario. That that shit doesn't matter anymore. I mean, it's like you start looking at that stuff and you get to playoff basketball and it's like, yeah, you may have lost a season series to them, but I mean, so what? I mean, it goes back to uh, it goes back to you got to win the series, but the 76ers, uh, I mean, like, like we were talking about when MB come, came back and the and the thought of him coming back, I mean, you can go into that two-man game. And I happen to think that, that the 76ers, like you're saying, I think they could sneak up on people in the East. I mean, I really think that they can. Yeah, the East uh, isn't that yeah. the East isn't that fruitful. They're, no, it's really no. not. It, it can be it can be taken, man. Um yeah. and it, we we I talked to Keenan, you know, a couple of days ago. He's got a buddy yeah. that that does writing that writes for the Miami Heat or whatnot. Yeah. Um, and he doesn't believe that the the talents there and the magic can happen like it like no. it was made last year, right? It's, obviously, it's a completely different roster. Um, and you're going up against you know one of the best big, if not the best big. I know there's still an argument between one A and one B between uh Embiid and, and Jokic. Yeah. Uh, but look, I mean, this dude, this dude is is one of the best. You can't deny that, man. And when he's on the floor, the 76ers are are. Yeah. are or one hell of a, a threat, one hell of a, a feat, that's for sure, man. So, look, they can make a run. I, I feel like they will make this run. I got them over the heat tonight. I also have the Bulls. The yeah. Bulls running over the Hawks as well, my guy. Yeah, they're, they're at minus three and a half, uh, they being the Bulls. Uh, like Rob says here with, with uh, about Boston, and I think a lot of that is talking about grit. I mean, I think a lot of it is they're playing the East, and, and like you're talking well, about. No, I mean – it's more than just playing in the East. I mean, you got to look. You got Jason Tatum. He's arguably one of the, arguably one of the best players, uh, top ten players in the NBA. Maybe, maybe, no, oh, man, top five's top five's tough. That's that's tough. That's you're talking about Rushmore of the NBA right now. Yeah, um, yeah. He's he's close though. He's definitely top ten. Um, Brown, I I feel like Brown's you know top fifteen. He's or 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 maybe top twenty. Maybe I'm just giving him too many roses. And then yeah, I mean Zinger. Like uh, they, they got rid of of smart, you know, they lost a little bit of good of perimeter defense, but I mean they acquired you know Christoph Porzingis, and he's been you know fantastic protecting the rim. He's also um you know he, he's not the unicorn that he was when he yeah, was drafted yeah, yeah. or whatnot, but then with that wingspan that he has, um and he's you know the perimeter shooting that he can still be able to pull off, he's a mess, he's a mismatch nightmare. Um, yeah, the, Boston Boston's got it figured out. Uh, it's not just it's not just that they play in a watered down East. They got the talent to actually beat and, and topple. They're they're the only team. They are the only team that can go seven games with Denver. I believe. Yeah. Well, and it's like you said. I mean, the thing about it is they're, they're going to come in fresher. I mean, they're going to still have gone through this. They're they're probably going to have played less games. Yeah. Um, you can yeah. you can expect maybe maybe sweeps or gentlemen sweep. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so, so they're going to come in uh, crisper, but I mean, maybe it works the opposite direction. That's why I look at some of these teams, like talking about Philadelphia, it's like, okay, they're, they're in the play-ins here. I mean, everybody else is off. You know, it's like, I mean, they come in like, like we talk about with, with baseball. It's like when you have to go through the wild card, when you have like the Rangers, when you have to go through all that, I mean, you come in and you've got all of that momentum. Um, maybe that plays in for, I would say the 76ers. Because Chicago, they're going to get in, but I just don't. Can you say momentum in baseball, or do you just say focused? Like usually, I just go with the ball club's focus right now. Like I don't, I can't really say that there's momentum except for, and hell, I think it's because I heard Cal Ripken say it. Um, yeah, when I was a, a little kid or whatnot, he was the only the only momentum is next, day, you know, the next day starting pitcher in baseball. That's the only momentum. Yeah, in baseball, right? yeah. yeah, I think momentum is hard in baseball because it's so slow. I mean, it's, it's, uh, well, also, it's, 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 it's a different game each is, day, man. right? Like it really, like in basketball, it's all about the stars and yeah, baseball, it's, it's usually all about the arms. Yeah. You know? and baseball is so That's streaky. Perfect. Baseball is yeah. so streaky. You know what I mean? It's, it's a game like of run. A, it's a game yeah. of run. Yeah. That's it. I mean, I mean, it really is. And then you got Texas baseball. They're on a streak. They're on a streak. All right. Like that streak on your tidy whities when you forget that to wipe. Good. They look that, that good bad. here. Hey man, what's uh what's Gabe talking about? You know, with Cardosa here. What do you what do you want? You want us to bring her in on as athlete of the week? What are you <laughs> talking about? I know she got drafted. Hey, it's gonna be her and Angel Reese in Chicago though. Yeah, talk about the Twin Towers, man. That's gonna be a dynamic duo. Mm-hmm. That's for sure. Instead of those two banging up against each other, they're gonna be banging everybody else. That's for. Um, it, and you know, I, I gotta bad, say, a bad choice of words right there. But still, you guys, <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about. Banging around in the paint, banging around in the paint. 
I, I see what the with Miss Brink. I mean, Miss Brink, a very, very. Hey, but, but look, I, I don't. Th- I, I think Caitlin Clark's attractive. Uh, I mean, I think she's an attractive girl, lady, okay. woman. Okay, whatever. I'm going to talk about audiovisual consultations because we got to talk about a little bit of hockey before we get into the next. Uh, um, it's only an hour of the next show. Um, audiovisual consultations. If you're watching Stanley Cup playoffs that have just taken shape and formed, you're going to get a lot of hockey talk coming up in the. Uh, you know, the midday show, I believe Tom McKay is coming on there with PK. I kind of hope, don't make me a liar, but I believe I read something about that yesterday. So anyways, be hopefully you're staying tuned to that. Get your, uh, you know, get your notepads out because, you know, make sure you're taking down some notes with this dude's picks. He's the, hot, the hottest thing. He melts the ice with his picks, man. He's that good. Um, he's got an algorithm. I, I don't know how he does it. He finds a way to pick winners every year. He usually goes with the, the net miners and, that's probably going to be a good recipe for success. But whether you're watching NHL or NFL or NBA, we got the draft coming up for NFL next week. Um, you got to be doing with audiovisual consultations. 512-255-8678. That's avconsultations.com. The very best in audiovisual automation been setting the standard in the Austin Central Texas area in the past for the past 35 years. Make sure you guys give them a call right now or go to the website and see the gallery of projects that the gallery of projects that they've done over the past 35 years and you will get an idea of what you want in your house whether it's the two tvs that i have or the four that bk has it's all deadly man you get it done with avconsultations.com that's right before hockey don't forget friends if you want to get rewarded for listening to texas sports unfiltered of course you do not only the great content but you might as well check in with our friends at autograph co-founded by the congressman soon to be once again for the third time nfl quarterback tom brady they are redefining the fan experience by letting users earn points for the acts of fandom like listening to us right here on TSU. The Autograph app gives you access to your favorite Longhorn content in one place and offers you rewards like tickets, exclusive merch, and a whole lot more. You're already listening to TSU. You might as well get rewarded for it. Really cool stuff that you can find on that app. Head over to your app store on your mobile device. Search there. Search Autograph. (laughs) Search Autograph. Download it for free, and you can start using that app and you got to use the promo code tsu tsu like texas sports unfiltered once again and that link is in the youtube uh, description as well autograph <laughs> download it today and start getting rewarded i don't think we can use the the line or the actual nugget that tom brady is going to the nfl i don't think we are allowed to say that do you have do you have facts do you have proof that he's going back to the nfl he said he would he said he would. He's not going back. You said soon to be quarterback. Well, that that's a bold prediction. Bold prediction. I went here, Wags. Like every life decision I ever have to make of any kind of value, I went right here, and it said most certainly. To the eight ball. To the eight ball that does nothing for you. You know what? I actually asked that eight ball if I would be a millionaire when I was about 13. How'd that work? What'd it say? It said, it could, it said could not determine. Oh, well. well. Then I shook it again and said, Outlook, not so good. <laughs> said, you're going to wind up doing a, a show with a Mexican dude. <laughs> hey, man, that's, don't throw me a good time. <laughs> don't, I never thought I'd be in Texas, to be honest with you, my guy. I, I thought I'd be in Maryland for you know eternity. Uh, but here I am down here in, in the well, land of God's we're country. Glad you were they, is this, this guy, do they call Texas God's country? Or is that you know up there the... The uncharted range of Montana. I think I think Texas calls itself a lot of things, and I'm a lifelong Texan. And it's like we call ourselves a lot of things down here. You know what I mean? And it's like uh, okay, and it's like as I travel, I meet people, and I'm like, I'm from Texas, and some people are like, oh, that's really cool, and then other people are like, oh, sorry. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I know. Apparently, we're full of ourselves. <laughs> it seems like that. Uh, some people I've never met a Texan that I didn't like. I'll say that. Well, that's a that's a lie. I've, I I've met a say. few people. I've met a few people that I I really can't stand, honestly. Yeah. Um, that that you kind of mentioned. It's not about being the geolocation where they're at. It's about just being the asshole that you are. Uh, if you're full of yourself, uh, I'm probably not going to like you. Anyways, the guy that I do like is Tom McKay. He's going to be on in about an hour. After it's only an hour, talking a little bit of hockey. Um, but yeah, my caps got in last night um wild wild fashion um yeah it was it was gonna go into overtime it was supposed to go into overtime uh but instead uh torts uh john tortoletta um pulls uh pulls the goalie pulls philadelphia's goalie uh with about three minutes a little over three minutes left to play in the game and 
sure as shit, Oshie nets, you know, the empty netter there. Give him the second one of the night. Um, and, and, <laughs> and, and Caps get in. I uh, See, I, I just, I understand the strat. I just don't play. I mean, and it's an aggressive move. And, you know, and to hear what BK said, you know, it, it made sense, you know, in the in the cross talk, it made sense. Yeah. Um, but I still like I, I don't know for sure that that Philly would have lost in overtime. I still I, I still think you gotta play for oh man, you gotta play for survivability wow. at that time. I mean, and you know, honestly, you want to try and get the extra skater to to go up on watch. And I mean that that is I guess that's the move. I didn't. I didn't really think about it until that time came. So, mm-hmm. or until well, we, we talked about it this morning. Well, it's like we were talking about with the Lakers. I, I mean, yeah, ideally you don't want to play Denver, but you know, do you take the chance of of losing again? I mean, and it's the same situation right there. I mean, it it is very much. I mean, you got to play to win the game. I mean, that's the bottom line. You I play mean, to win the game. You play to win the game. That's hey, can I get a, can I get some picks from you for hockey before we get into this? Before we get into the playoffs next week. Absolutely. Give me time to start. I mean, in a, in a couple of days, I mean, I'm, I think we're going to take a, a night or two off and then get, get into Lord Stanley here. Um, I've, I've actually like already started. West? Look here. Oh, hold on. I'm not, re- I'm not ready to tell you that yet, but I've, I've already started. I've already started. So my guy taking notes. I like it, man. I let, like it. Let me formulate. Let me formulate my man. Let me formulate learning, learning hockey, learning hockey, my man. So the well, object uh, is to put it in the net, right? One hundred percent. The object is to <laughs> okay. Pot, okay. Pot Just making goal. sure that's Jordan and the and to be able to outskate the you know outskate everybody else or to outskate the opposition. Uh, who you liking from the West? I mean, clearly the Dallas Dallas Stars are are one of the favorite teams of the top team. Um, I'm actually going to be in the minority here, and a lot of team thinks a, a lot of people think that the Dallas Stars can actually take this thing. I'm until you prove me wrong, I, I'm yeah, going to go with Colorado here. I think the Avalanche are, are one of the top teams as well, and I think they're going to be able to to shock the world. Not shock the world. Mm-hmm. They're going to be able to take down the Stars when it's all said and done with them, represent the West as the uh, – um, as the as as going to the finals. Excuse right, me. right, right. Yeah. No, I, I – I I actually think Dallas. I mean the two the two teams that that I follow when I follow hockey are Dallas and Charlotte. And and it's I follow Charlotte because I got a lot of friends over there that that send me hockey stuff about their club, you know. So, but uh, no, I, I think Dallas. I think Dallas is going to come out of the West, dude. That's solid, solid. And, Dallas out of the West, and a lot of people probably think Boston out of the East, uh, but Florida is the top team out of there. Hey, look, man, the blue shirts got to. I don't want to give them too much credit, but you got to. Sal's Rangers are looking pretty damn good. They can skate with some of the best of them out there. I like the Rangers to represent the East, um, and uh, not just to represent the Metropolitan, but yeah, uh, yeah, I think it will be um, Colorado versus the Rangers when it's all said and done. With uh, we'll hear what Tom has to say yeah. about those picks. Well, obviously Tom's got probably some of the best picks out there, so make sure you're tuning in to um, midday with uh, with BK and Tom today. I believe yeah. that's the lineup. That's, that's Anyways, it fun. is time for it's only an hour. I got to get ready to scoot here too. I got a meeting that usually my meetings happen on Monday. It got canceled yesterday and it got moved to today. So I got to get ready to fly. And there's the boys as we speak about it. Speaking of the devils when they appear. What's up, Jordan? What's up, How Jeff? Doing, How man? are you doing? I've got Jeff, I can't believe you're alive. I thought you were going to, I thought you tortured yourself to death last night at the dish. Oh, man. That was sorry. I was blowing you guys up on the, on the, no. <laughs> you're good, man. Hey, you were saying what I was thinking. I, yeah. it, it's better yeah. to text us than jump off the ledge, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, you know it, when, when I'm when I'm ready to throw in the towel on Texas baseball, stuff has gotten serious. You've reached a critical point. Hey, yeah. my Stanley Cup Finals predictions, if you want them, I've got the Hartford Whalers and the Quebec Nordiques. How's that the, sound? The best, the best sweaters in the game, right there. The yeah, Hartford there Whalers, <laughs> the yeah. best sweaters in the game. I kind of dug those Quebec Nordiques jerseys back in the day. Yeah, they, were, too. they were tough too, dude. They were tough oh. too. But the Whalers, man, with the green and yeah. you had the you had the 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 stale fish there, the tail. That was hot. That was really yeah. oh my god, my northeast just came out of me. <laughs> who's that was who's, hot. The team, who's the team that Emilio Estevez plays for? Oh, those are the the ducks. That's the ducks. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's the, ducks. <laughs> the Anaheim. They need to go back to that old school Mighty Ducks logo. Yeah. They don't need to be messing with the. the um, is that, does Disney do. have copyrights on that? I don't know if Disney has. You know what? I think they do. Oh, actually, sure they do. there's got to be something they can work out, though. 
got to be yeah. a nice throwback. Sorry, I had to send the email out. Um, the Ottawa Senators, are they still a team? Yeah. Okay. I, don't, I think so. Man, because I every no, time. No, they're not. No, they're not. They're not? No. So who 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 became the who did the Ottawa Senators become? The Washington is, Football Team. No, I, is it, <laughs> yeah, is it, I, I don't know. See, I don't at, know. At, the only time I and no disrespect to Tom McKay, oh, Yeah, no, I'm was, sorry. Ottawa was in the Ottawa was in the East. I'm a, I'm okay. a moron. Ottawa, I'm yeah, a moron. Ottawa. The Senators are still a team. Okay, good, good. It's good to know. Good I'm to a know. moron. Yeah, I'm sitting here thinking that the Senators uh, moved out of the West, but no, they're they're in the damn East. <laughs> okay. Good to know. It's good to know. Jeff, do you good need the uh, box score from yeah, last Jeff. night? I found it. Uh, um, I've got the box score. Wags, you, Wags, you got to run? Yeah, yeah. I've got to get ready to bail. Uh, what were you going to ask? Did you have one more question? No. no I had something for me. Yeah, I was asking uh, Jeff. If you need that box score, I found it. Dude, uh, I know it's not up for Texas uh, on Texas Athletics. 20, uh, 20 free passes. Mm. 20. Mm. Nine hit by pitch, 11 walks. Dude, that's it's a four-hour four game. Yeah. And yeah, man, I watched most of it. Um, you, you know, I, I've got, I've got, I've got Augie queued up. I, I didn't play it on our show because it's probably a little too rough, but man, this, uh, this team's not good enough to no. get the Augie rant. No, no, no. You, you only get to use that like maybe once a year. Yeah. And, Dude, look, it's one thing if you go to Minute Maid and you lose to LSU and Vanderbilt. And even, hey, even if you lose a game every now and then to Texas State, did you get your. You got fucking you, destroyed. You get, you get your pud smacked in by UTRGV. And, dude, that is. There's no excuse for that. That's and in, I was, indefensible. And I was telling Wags. It has to happen when A and M becomes the number one team in the nation. Yeah, that's not going to help David Pierce at all. No, that's from a perception no. standpoint. That's no. you lose the RGV on a time on a night when A uh, and M run rules Air Force, yeah. and and is the number one team in the country. Looks like they've that's got a really good, good chance to go win a national championship. Jim Schlossnagel's team does. That was a damn good team, and when they came Great. through Dishfalk earlier this year, and I try to tell people. AM's probably got one of the best offensive teams in the country. If Agreed. they pitch with any level of consistency, yes, dude, they're they going to be in that thing. They are. But man, for Texas, and man, but the, th the thing is, Rodney, the Big 12 is, I know Texas is not great, but the Big 12 is so bad. Yeah. And they're only two games out of first place. Yeah. With as yeah. up and down as this team has been this year, would it shock anybody if they actually went out and won that series or swept mm -hmm. TCU this weekend? I don't know. No. No. Because TCU's been terrible this year, yeah, by their standards. Yep. So yeah, it's yep. it's uh, man, yep. yeah. CB points it out. It's fifteen to fifteen to one at one point. It's yep. one thing. It's one thing to be two and barbecued in Omaha. It's another thing when UTRGV is just yeah beating you like they like you stole something. Yeah, so seventeen to nine, and it wasn't that close. No, I'm telling you, it's, no it's ass whooping. All right. Um, where is this? I'm trying to figure I'm, out how I can. No, I'm not going to share my screen. I actually have too much stuff pulled up. But oh, um, I don't think we can share our screens, Jordan. But no, Mister Mister Kellner gave me privileges. Oh, he did. So I can't. Yeah, I got a bunch of buttons and shit now on my stream yard, but I don't know what any of them do. <laughs> I, it's kind of intimidating. I don't really want to fuck yeah. with it. It's uh, a lot. There's a lot on there. I got to go, but, boys. Y'all have a good show. Right. I'll see you. Um, but Fozzie, I don't have I don't have my hot board going yet for baseball coaches. That's that's a tough search, man, because there's no look. I know that the names that are going to get thrown out there if there is a coaching search, uh, like Dan Hefner is not leaving DBU to to go to Texas. If, if Dan Hefner, Dan Hefner's too, from my understanding, is from a religious standpoint, like was a little too extreme for Baylor. I don't think I don't think Texas is a place for Dan Hefner. Yeah, it's that's just what I've heard. You want to you want to draw lines? You want to win ball games? No, I'm saying I don't think Hefner would come to Texas. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, no, for sure. I'm just, um, fuck with you know, but but by the way, just listen to this real quick. This is from um, I guess friend of the show. I know he was 
Uh, and we cross talked with him at some point, but it's from Nash Talks Texas on Twitter. Yeah. From last night, Texas was a single hit batter away from being the NCAA D1 record, record, as well as being one hit batter away for the most hit by pitch in a single game, both teams combined. And the record for hit by pitch in an inning is seven. The record for hit by pitch in a game is 10. And the record for hit by pitch in a game, both teams, is 14. So Texas was – they had um, – Nine. Nine hit batters, and then they're one away nine. from tying for single teams both combined. So, Jordan, um, they yeah. threw – as a staff, Texas threw 100, 253 pitches last night. Were any of them at least like close to the dome or something where it's like, okay, now I'm kind of scared getting back in the box, or was it just no. like straight to the hip? Because you know way, damn well I didn't watch. <laughs> ten pitchers. They used ten pitchers in a midweek game against UTRGV. Damn. Uh, dude, it's guys just guys just can't hit the strike zone, and like the the pro of all the guys we saw last night, um, the the guy I feel worse for is, is Dre Duplantier because he had been pitching so well. And then gives up the home run against Houston in the Sunday game, and then it's like he just imploded last night. Yeah. Uh, so, so Jeff, I'm not sorry to cut you off. No, uh, go ahead. And I'm not sure how comfortable you are with potentially maybe speaking on this because I know um, you do have a relationship there. But like, I was hanging out with a friend of the show, Nick Harris, last night, mm -hmm. um, and he was who was keeping. He follows Texas baseball pretty closely. Um, you know Guy Frazier, him and Guy. I was going to say, I was they, about to they, name drop Guy. Nick Harris and Guy Frazier, uh, they're they're Texas baseball loyalists to the core. Yeah, Love so baseball. So I was I was hanging out with Nick, and he just kept giving me updates on the game. And what was the final? Because like uh, like whoever said in the comments, I remember it was like thirteen one or fifteen. Seventeen to nine. Okay, <laughs> so. Once it got to, I think it was nine to one or ten to one or something like that. That's when I first found out about it when he first brought it up. He was like, "So is Pierce gonna get fired?" And I was like, "You're asking like you couldn't ask the wrong, <laughs> a more wrong guy." Um, but he was like, "Well, like they, there's no way he doesn't, right?" And I was like, "I don't know. I guess I'll ask Jeff tomorrow." So like, what what do you think based off where things are? Obviously, for me. As soon as he told me it was 10 and 1, guess where I ran to? Uh, the live updates thread on our board, baby. <laughs> and, it was the, and it was the uh, just show you probably expected it to be, right? Yeah, just because, like, I mean, our, our board is, uh, I, I love it that it's this way, but our, our board is pretty G rated compared to a lot of other boards, right? Yeah. But it was still funny seeing all the meltdowns. Like, I, I live for that type of stuff. Like, whenever. Whenever like Miami did that dumbass shit with kneeling the ball, the first thing I ran to was the Miami twenty four seven. Yeah, so like I I'm on our board, just thinking like, hope we're not a message board geniuses. But I even see Jeff just kind of not going outside your lane, but just like this is really really bad. It's embarrassing, man. It's so, embarrassing. It, it's it's. So, I I said it's. I called it what it is, man. It's it's one of the worst nights in the history of this baseball program. Like you, yeah. You, you, <laughs> you think about you think about this. Whole, the great storied history of the University of Texas baseball. Been to the College World Series more than anybody. Uh, yeah. you know, you've got the national championships on the wall. You look at the retired numbers, and it's some of the greatest players that ever play in college baseball. It's and you know David Pierce will tell you, man, he's only the you know, the fifth head coach that this program's had. You can talk about full time head coaches. Some of the fifth full time head coaches programs had in the last hundred years. Man, that's the 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 bar for excellence is pretty freaking high and that right there look man did did coach gus have some some bad years yeah had a couple did augie have some bad years certainly uh i don't know they they might finish with a winning record but stuff like that it's just it's 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 not all that different, Jordan, than like Tom Herman's last season with football. Like if you look at it on the surface, you'd say, hey, you, you know, in a in a ten game season, you know, you finish you finish seven and three, you won a bowl game, you finished in the top twenty five. You know that's that's pretty good by by most standards. But you got to look beneath the surface, and when you look beneath the surface at where Texas is right now, I, I've said this about David Pierce for a long time. 
his philosophy on recruiting pitchers is they wanted to recruit, you know, throwers or guys that had stuff and basically teach them how to pitch, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But you better be damn good at player development. But for every, you know, you have to give them credit for Bryce Elder and Pete Hansen and you know, even last year, LeBaron Johnson, guys that they've kind of found. You know, Bryce Elder was a late ad. Uh, you know, they, they've found some guys that have been really good. You know, they rejuvenated Cole Quintanilla. They, they've done some really good things, what they got out of Tristan Stevens. But then there's a whole list of guys that came to Texas with good stuff that either transferred out or never put it together. And I think that's why you've seen the pitching situation be just kind of wonky like it is. You know, the, the unfortunate thing for them, I, I you talk about missed opportunities, and I'm just talking about the David Pierce tenure as a whole. You talk about missed opportunities, man. That 2021 team, I their mean, only fault. Like, again, sorry to cut you off, but, like, you want to talk about missed opportunities, like, didn't their season end last year because the dude lost the ball in the light? Yeah, and you can't – they're – And, like, yeah. I know that's kind of a weird thing, but it's like, yeah. you know, and that's not, what I think of. I saw some of the casuals, like, you know, blowing up Dylan Campbell – after dude, Texas isn't even in the, they're not, they might not even be in the NCAA tournament last year if it's not for Dylan Campbell. So you can I'll tell you where you can shove that opinion if you really faulted Dylan Campbell for that and blamed him for the whole thing. But man, I think about missed opportunities, Jordan. I just think about that 2021 team, and that, that team's only fault was they just they couldn't beat Mississippi State. They did it the one time with the rain delay game, the weather delay game when Ivan Melendez hit the big home run. And then lost on a walk off in a semifinal game, and you know Mississippi State ends up winning the national championship. That was that was that team's only fault was they they were they were good enough to go win it all. CB mentions twenty twenty. I mean the twenty twenty team was basically a couple positional pieces. Like you take out Melendez, you take out Mike Antico, which that's two really huge freaking pieces. Uh, but you have Bryce Elder on that team. Like your your rotation when the COVID shutdown happened, your weekend rotation was about to be Bryce Elder, Ty Madden, and Pete Hansen. Good luck beating that team in a weekend series, a regional or a super regional with that pitching staff. For sure. Um, before we get away from baseball, I want to ask you about this. Why or how did this happen? Because if uh, if I'm not mistaken, at some point this college baseball season, um, there's someone who reports in college athletics that I think came out. Not not that it was necessarily kind of like one of those like uh, ex- exposing articles, but it, mm-hmm. it was just a story about how apparently LSU has the highest, uh, I don't want to say payroll, but <laughs> they have more money. In yeah. NIL attributed to men's, yeah, to baseball. I almost said men's baseball yeah. than any other school in, in America. So, how did they end up being so bad? Because again, I'm such well, a casual baseball fan. Uh, I'm yeah, not even I, a baseball fan. I don't, I don't know if it's there as bad as you look at last year. You lose two of the top picks in the draft. You lose Dylan Cruz and you know Paul Skeens. Shoot, I I don't know what Paul Skeens got paid at LSU but I know people at Texas were give dropping me pretty significant hits about what the NIL figure was going to be to sign Paul Skeens and it was in the neighborhood of what you talk about like a big time football transfer that's that's what it takes when you can get the number one pick in the major league draft in the portal that's the kind of money you're going to pay for a frontline pitcher is it over 400 yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm just I'm I'm very that's curious. That's what I was told. That's what the, I was led to believe. It might baseball, not have been that. But that's what I was led to believe. The baseball uh, NIL market what that looks like and like another thing that well, not LSU, only LSU too. They've got the they've got the Marucci relationship which I think the Marucci factory is in Baton Rouge. I think the the guy who owns it's an LSU alum. So I'm kind of wishy why I'm kind of I'm a little out of my depth on that relationship but yeah, baseball money for LSU is is no it's no problem. They've got they just they can pay. and you look at what you know what they paid Paul Skeens, what they paid Tommy Tanks to come over from NC State. I mean, yeah, that team that team is kind of what you envision uh a port in the portal era 
being a national championship team. You recruit, you you inherit a good team, and and credit Jay Johnson. You know he got some transfers coming over from Arizona, uh, some leftover pieces from Paul Maneri, and then you add some pieces from the portal. That's kind of in the portal era. You know you hired the what you feel you feel is the best coach available. Get some transfers, get some portal guys in the portal era. That's kind of what you figure a national championship team should be. Yeah, and you think that could potentially be the best move for Texas this offseason, maybe you think or um I you know I think I think a lot of it's gonna depend on it uh, like you know, like let Jeff let's say you're CDC right now right? right okay and you will have 12 angry probably old white men knocking at your door being like hey we're boosters you need to fix this what are you doing Wait, who are you calling and yeah like I mean I, I was gonna say you have like basically unlimited funds. Um, but you know, that's not really, really realistic, but well, at the same time, like Texas, you know what I mean? You got the, and like another thing I want to talk about, I think we've actually talked about this on the show, but Texas getting good at football again, puts pressure on all the other sports, like yeah. immense pressure. And not only does it do that because everyone knows that Texas being back to where it should be uh, with their football program, because everyone knows that that was kind of sped up by NL and the transfer portal. How far away are we from seeing like some of the coaches for the other sports being like, hey, we need more money or we need a bigger cut of the NIL distribution? Football is getting too much. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think you, you've you seen. But you but know, sorry, let's say you're CDC and you're told to fix this. What what are you well, doing? Just, hey, just hang on, because I want to address what you just said. I think you've already mm -hmm. seen that with volleyball when you add somebody like Maddie Skinner. Uh, women's basketball we've seen it with you know they've added Shaylee gonzalez uh, taylor jones some of those girls were were portal entries um so yeah you're for sure you're you're seeing it in some of the other sports softball you know mike white when mike white got the job that his first couple softball teams were big time portal teams it's kind of leveled out now and softball is a little bit different than some of the other sports but yeah no it's it's uh yeah, you're seeing it in the other sports, and again, like we, like I talked about with, uh, I think you were you were already on. For for Texas to be having this ish, these issues at a time when A and M's that got the number one team in the country, and a legit chance to go into national championship, and you're about to go into the league with them, that doesn't help. Um, so if I'm CDC, I think you look at the way CDC's handled the last couple of searches, Jordan. Like you look at, you know, I. He's gone big game hunting for the most part. Like, look, they for football, they tried the Urban Meyer thing, right? And it didn't work out. But they ended up with Sark. And I I'm very happy with the hire and the direction the football program's going. I think anybody would be happy with the direction football's going. Uh the time he had a basketball search, it, it was a one man search. It was Chris Beard, and that was it. That was CDC's guy, and he hired him, and we all know how, how that turned out. Uh, women's bat. I would compare the women's basketball hire, kind of women's basketball, softball track with Edric Floreal. He's He kind of went out and under the radar, went out and got the best coach he could find. Like when I was floored when Vic Schaefer got the Texas job. Because I didn't think he would leave Mississippi State. You know, they, his family, they just finished building that house on the lake. Like, they got plenty of support in Starkville. Like, there was really no reason for him to leave Mississippi State. But the pull, the pull to come back to Texas and, and try to win a championship, really resurrect that program. Um, and not that Karen Aston did that, that, that terrible job. But, yeah, that, I, I think that CDC has shown he can, he can go big game hunting and – and land something uh i think it would depend on it's totally different man because with baseball it's i feel like with the way the major league system is currently set up you still need to have some attachment to the high school coaches in texas and some of the travel teams in texas but you got to have somebody that really understands roster management and understand i think for a coach roster management's got to be the most important thing you do i don't even think it's player development i think it's hey i've got to allocate x number of scholarships and really treating the portal like a waiver wire i think that's what the next coach has to has to have yeah so um in college football we're seeing this 
I mean, it's pretty new within the last year or two. Um, and it's the general manager title. Yeah. Obviously, in, in baseball, the, the general manager is, you know, effectively the, the head coach. But do you see Texas or college baseball or if, if it hasn't already pivoting to like having those type of roles? Because football is the first to do it. But like eventually every basketball program, every every uh, sports, every major sports program is going to have someone who oversees the program like Brandon Harris is doing for football. That's what Chris Ogden does for men's basketball. He's the, okay. He's, it's his title. He's the general manager. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But for for baseball, do you think? Because I mean, I like this is just the way I look at it. Seeing everyone on socials, everyone in our comments, and just hearing you talk about it, it seems like the writing is on the wall that David Pierce is probably gonna. It's not looking good. I mean, to not yeah. look. I, I've I've got to separate. I got yeah. for me, I've got to separate personal from business. Mm -hmm. I, I like David Pierce. I understand that there's some people that don't, but David Pierce has been nothing but good to me since I've been covering this baseball program. So I've got nothing personal at all against David Pierce. I really don't. But mm -hmm. you know, he, he put on himself last night. Like he he knows. He knows. He knows what the deal is. He's not dumb. Like he when I when I sat down with him before the season started to write some preview stuff. I mean, he told me, he's like, you know, the guys, he's like, players around here talk about pressure. He's like, you want to talk about pressure? He's like, I got to come to this stadium and I got to walk by pictures and statues of Bib Falk, Billy Dish, Coach Gus, and, and Augie Garrido every day. And you get reminded, hey, in the last hundred years, you're only the fifth full-time coach this program has had. It's a hell of a lot of pressure. And, you know, it's kind of like it's Texas baseball is not all that different from what I was talking about with, with Kentucky basketball, you know. Like I compared it to, you know, Scott Drew. Like if Schloss wins a national championship at A and M, dude, they 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 might rename the stadium after him. Like I, you know, like it would be he would have a lifetime contract. Uh, you win a nat if if David Pierce won a national championship at Texas, it'd be like, all right, cool. What's next? It's kind of like the Scott Drew Baylor Kentucky thing. Like Scott Drew can retire and you know. He's basically king of Waco until he leaves this mortal world. If he won a national championship in Kentucky, he'd be like, cool, go do it, go do it again. So yeah. you've you got to have somebody. And I, I applaud David Pierce for taking the job because, man, there were a lot of really damn good baseball coaches that turned it down for one reason or another. Uh, you know, and so, some of it, some of those discussions didn't even get beyond like the preliminary level of just kind of, putting feelers out whether it was so, brian o'connor kevin o'sullivan john savage pat casey tim corbin uh and it ended up with pierce and so yeah go ahead jordan um you know you, you said it was turned down by a lot of people how much of it like how, how many of those people that turned it down do you think it was because of money like could do you, do you think maybe texas not that they're trying to lowball people but like because you know obviously money isn't a problem but almost like hey uh we offer all these other things that coaching any other program wouldn't give you. Yeah. Like well, you, you know, I think, I think you got to remember where, where the baseball program was at the time and where the athletic department was at the time, mm -hmm. the baseball program didn't have the facility they have now with the, the Brown family development center, which is the, in the Clemens pitching lab. Like it's, it's top notch. Mm -hmm. Somebody, somebody tried to argue with me earlier this season about facilities. Oh, we need a pitching lab. I'm like, the Clemens family paid for the pitching lab. It's one of the best freaking pitching labs in the country. Like, and no, no, I don't think it, you, you'd be, you'd be splitting hairs to compare someone that has better facilities than Texas does right now in terms of player development stuff. Uh, but they didn't have that at the time. And Mike Perrin was an interim athletic director. So it wasn't like a slam dunk type thing. And plus dude, who the hell would want to follow Aki Garrido? Like, <laughs> It, it was already a daunting enough task for Augie to follow Coach Gus. And now you're going to follow Gus and Augie. You want to be the third guy? You you really want to deal with that? So I applaud for David Pierce. Like, he knew what he was getting into, so I applaud him for that. But I, I do feel like you'd be able to maybe attract a, a higher-profile candidate. I think people understand that with CDC, he's going to be there a while. Uh, you know he's going to raise money for facilities. Basically – the vibe I get from CDC and chip can probably speak to this better than I can. CDC is the type of athletic director. He's not going to meddle in the day to day. He's basically going to tell you, Hey, tell me what you need and I'll go get it. 
But understand, if I get you everything you need and the, the return on investment isn't great, ask Tom Herman what happens when that happens. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, has – am I blanking on names? But, like, it, is CDC not the, the second best athletic director, like, in school history behind the lost odds? You know what I mean? Because didn't it go like Dodds interim, Steve Patterson, CDC, right? Yeah. Because I was gonna say like CDC is easily the best uh, AD yeah. since the loss of Dodds, but like that doesn't mean shit. You <laughs> yeah, know what you're I mean? Compared to Steve Patterson, yeah, Dodd, yeah. that's not that's a pretty freaking <laughs> yeah. And, that's and a the interim low bar. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and and the interim doesn't count either. And then it was, like, it, was I, Coach, it was Coach Royal before it was uh, before it was the loss. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> I'm yeah, like, it's pretty, a, he's pretty a, easy number two, right? Yeah, because the the athletic director it, it used to be you just make the football coach would be the AD, right? It's only been really in the last I don't know probably thirty years, forty years that you've had like ADs that weren't the head football coach. So yeah, it's just it's just a different deal now. Yeah, no, they're doing that that high school shit where it's like, yeah, we're gonna give you this title, yet we know you're not actually gonna do anything with it. Yeah, pretty much. So, pretty much. That's now, how now those guys have to work. <laughs> there, there's some now high schools in Texas where they actually have someone who's like the designated athletic director, and mm-hmm. like that's their only job. And it's always fun because like you you'll pull up to a practice. And most of the time, coach is like, all right, man, I got to run like whenever you're done or whatever at the school. And it's funny. There's some coaches that are just like, yo, I don't have shit the rest of the day. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> and I'm like, what? And they're like, man. And I remember I, I, one of them I asked, I'm like, you're not like you're not the AD. And he's like, no, no. And I was like, oh, wow. Like, that's what's up. Like, so what? You got to like teach history or something? And he's like, no, I just coach football. I was like, hell yeah. yeah. Like, like I've gotten lunch with like a high school head coach before. Yeah. Yeah. Uh what blew me like away during was, the school day. Yeah. No, for real. What <laughs> blew what blew me away was um I went to car the first time I went to Carthage. Yeah, uh, man. No, we, nobody can even go to no one yeah. even goes to Carthage anymore. Unless your name starts with Gabe and ends with Brooks. <laughs> you're not hey, Brooks. Yeah, you're not getting in, getting in in the doors at Carthage. That's that's honestly how I got in. I had Gabe vouch for me with Coach Surratt, but it was when Texas was recruiting Kendall Thompson back in the day, and uh, I go chop it up with Coach Surratt, and then uh, you know, the defensive coordinator wants to show me some film, and uh, Coach Surratt's like, "Hey, I got to run, I got a meeting, but uh, you know, Coach Morgan, my defensive coordinator, you know, he'll he'll, he'll watch the film with you." And I'm like, coach, don't you have class? He's like, no. He's like, I just hang on the football office. I was like, you telling me like your coordinators don't teach? He's like, no, no, we don't teach. I'm like, dude, what the hell? Like that blew me away. Like the coordinators don't even teach. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, don't even I... have like a like the you know. And, and you find some. Tell me, tell me if this is still the case because I remember the first time I ran across this was with uh, our guy R.J. Bond when he was at Skyline. The recruiting coordinator usually has he, he's usually going to be like the ISS teacher. Like he's going to have some some BS job where it's like you maybe needed like part of the day. Uh, uh yeah. I mean, I, I I don't know. I don't ask these guys a ton what they actually are doing outside of coaching. Um, but but yeah, no, I, that's I, I have seen that's I that's what seen. fascinates me, Jordan. Yeah, I have seen court coordinators and stuff too, though that that don't even have teaching roles. But man, I, I like Travis when I was there. Hank Carter was the AD, and he actually was pretty involved with the other sports. Like he, I don't think he really falls under the category of the other guys who were just getting the AD title. Um, but man, I, I like Travis. Like every single coach that's on the football staff outside of like two, it makes up who coaches PE. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the two guys who don't like one of them does health, which is a, a semester course only. Yeah. And then uh, <laughs> one of them did like geometry and math. He's actually still there. He was my D line coach and I was there, Coach Hoffman. Oh, um, nice. But yeah, Hank Carter's not the AD anymore, though, right? He doesn't have the AD title. Unless they took it away from him. Because I, I, thought, I thought they hired like a, an actual athletic director. They might have. I, I didn't notice that. I mean, Lake Travis is opening a second high school in the next five years. They're going to need a superintendent. That's what I thought, yeah. So, 
Yeah, and I, I guess you know it, it is probably time we should get into some football. Um, no, uh, well, Coach Carter. Or, Coach Carter is still the uh, according to the Lake Travis website. He's still yeah the, uh, athletic. It, director. It, I he yeah, I was gonna say because I didn't think I'd, I'd seen that, but um, I mean, yeah, that, that's how he's the highest paid coach, or I think he is. He was at some point. Todd Dodd is probably raking it in. I love Joy. Um, Man, I remember. I remember the Statesman did a story. Uh, in two, this was like 2006, 2007, where they looked at high school football coaches' salaries. There were like maybe a half dozen to 10 coaches in the state who made over 100 grand a year. It was like Jack Welch at Coppers Cove, uh, Sam Harrell at Ennis. Like, there was very, very, very few coaches that made 100 grand a year, dude. Tell me a big time, you know, five A, six A, hell, some four A's that aren't making a hundred grand a year now. Yeah, no, I know Hank was the highest paid coach at like one fifty six or one fifty two yeah. or something like that, and like Todd Dodge was the number two, and his salary was only like five hundred less per year or something <laughs> like that. And I'm like, this is like the most petty bullshit of all time, but, um, but yeah, so Jamon yeah, Tapp. Hey, real quick, Paxton, or, that's not that's not like breaking news. Sark said that uh Sark said that at the beginning of spring ball about Jade Barron might be the guy that gets the headset. They were they were doing they were kicking it around still, and I think they might still be kicking it around. Um I, I don't know if it'll be Jade because if Jade if Jade plays corner, if I'm PK, I don't necessarily want a corner being the guy passing along signals. So, yeah, uh, you know, it, it, it probably my guess is it'll probably end up being Anthony Hill. My dark horse to where the communication device, my dark horse for that is is Drew Makuba just because he's a, he's an older guy. He's going to be either at safety or nickel. He's not going to play corner. So he'll be kind of in the middle of the field traffic cop type guy. So, yeah, I I he's my dark horse, but I think it's going to end up being Anthony Hill. Another guy who could be a dark horse would uh, David Benda. You know, it's kind of same thing. Yeah. He's been around forever, and you know, we know they trust him. So yeah, for sure. Um, but for me, I think uh, I know I spent like ten minutes sometime this spring being like, it's going to be Anthony Hill. Um, <laughs> I still think it'll be Ant, and I, I mostly just think that just because he's going to have a higher snap count than anyone else on defense. Yeah. Um, and you know, if you, it's not like you can just take the mic out or go put Ant's helmet on Jade. So like you're gonna want it being a guy who's on the field more than anyone else, and Ant just makes the most sense for me. Speaking of snap counts, we want to get to the we haven't touched on the portal news for today yet with a new yeah yeah go ahead. I saw a tweet that said like of Texas's four entries so far, they've lost zero starts, and I think it was like seven or nine total game appearances. Yeah, and I think most of those were the seven games uh, Jamon Tap played. Peyton Kirkland didn't play at all. Samaja Burrell didn't play at all. Billy Walton played in two. Yeah, he played then, in the Wyoming yeah. Baylor game. And, and I only seven, know that because I wrote games his last story. <laughs> seven games. Last. You know, it, what's funny is pulling pictures of these guys for the most yeah. part, like game like game photos. It's all like Wyoming and Baylor pretty much. Uh, some of them, like Jamon Taps, I think was from Houston. But no, Jamon Taps in the portal. Uh, he only got 98 snaps. And, and I know – I think Paxton or maybe Rex, somebody said in the chat that they were surprised. The other is from Paxton that they were surprised Tap left. I'm not, and it's got very little to do with how good of a player Jamon Tap may or may not be. He just couldn't get on the field last year. He was playing behind Burke and Sorrell. As a matter of fact, I mentioned it in the story uh, that's up at Horse 24 7 right now. By the way, I, I, my apologies for not mentioning it earlier. Today's our last day at Horse 24 7 to take advantage of our 60% off. VIP sale or transfer portal special. So get over to the site and check it out right now. A year at Horns 24 7, 60% off the normal price. Uh, but I was looking at snap counts, Jordan, from last year, and I'll, I'll actually credit Chip for uh, for getting me, making it click in my brain to go check snap counts. Uh, Jamon Tapp only played 98 snaps last year. Here's the guys that were ahead of him Baron Sorrell, the 587. Ethan Burke, 434. Justice Finkley, 284. Jet Bush, 273. Bush is gone, but you bring in Colin Simmons. You bring in Trey Moore. Finkley's back. He's still there. Colton Vossett coming off the back injury. You've got Zeno Mazzulla out as a red, as a true freshman, and I don't know how much Zeno's going to play, but that freaking edge room is incredibly crowded. And yeah. even, even with 
you know, year over year turnover. And I, I don't fault Jamon Tap for because he's got some game film. Uh, I don't fault him for, hey, I really, maybe he really likes it there and just wanted to see kind of where he's at during the spring, realizes where he's at now. And it's like, all right, if I want to play, I, I got to go somewhere else. So it had, I liked him too as a prospect just because it had been a minute since I'd seen Texas recruit kind of twitchy guys like that on the edge. And it kind of, kind of gave you an idea of the kind of guys PK was looking for. But I mean, it just kind of shows you, you know, Jordan, one thing that I, I don't think people took into account with, players having freedom of movement was coaches kind of have freedom of roster selection too. And I'm not saying this happened to tap, but man, if you're not cutting the mustard, dude, they will uh, in, in no uncertain terms, let it be known that your best opportunity to see the field might not be in their program. So freedom of movement. I love it for the players, but it, it cuts both ways, man. Oh yeah, man. Where is this video? I need this video so bad by the way do you want to uh do you want to can we now say that who the recruit was that we are the unnamed recruit that we always talk about that when we talk about recruits going to schools to recruit for other schools can we now yeah can we say it now yeah so that that's what i'm getting to but i'm trying to find this video of his that's like my favorite um yeah just so while jordan's looking for that video we we drop hints all the time. <laughs> Jamon Tap got sent home from a visit to LSU because he was recruiting for Texas. Cool. He so it was during the LSU spring game, whatever year this was. It probably would have been spring of twenty one. Yeah, because he was class class of twenty two. Uh, and not only was he kicked out of. <laughs> Go ahead. We just might as well lay it all out there now. <laughs> he, he got he got kicked out of the LSU spring game for re- recruit trying to recruit people to Texas, but also because he was fighting other recruits in the in the in the visitors section, um, and apparently was forcibly removed from the stadium, uh, according to uh, multiple different people I talked to. You ever been you ever been forcibly removed from anywhere, Jordan? No. Um, especially not when I have a visitor's badge on, but <laughs> hey, we, we've always loved ourselves some, uh, some Jamon tap. Um, uh, here it is. I found it. This is what I'm talking about. Live. Texas is the place. That's where you won't be. If you won't be at Texas and you won't be living. And that's facts. I love this video. Cause it starts by him and Larry Turner Gooden, just like awkwardly standing there. Yeah. Texas is live. Texas is the place. That's where you won't be. If you won't be at Texas, then you won't be living. And that's facts. Man. Also, fun fact about uh, Jamon Tapp. Gonna miss his gold grills, too. Um, and I remember there was this photo of him coming on Bevo Boulevard or he's like that. Uh, I think that was versus the, uh, the Bama home game last year. But, but no, another fun fact about Jamon's, Jamon Tapp's recruitment. Um, committed to Texas while in a club, so. <laughs> yeah um or silently committed yeah yeah so he's, he's gonna be one of those guys Jamont. oh <laughs> another fun thing about his recruitment since he was a uh, louisiana kid he got like five crystal balls as soon as lsu offered him or whatnot um but i remember after and this is like nick and mike who told me this story because they were who were on the site when it was happening with him um, or when, when Jamon Tapp was going through his recruiting process. But uh, <laughs> apparently also after all these LSU crystal balls went in, he went on Twitter and it's like, I don't know what a crystal ball is, but Austin, Texas is a place. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, get, gonna, gonna miss, gonna miss Tap, man. Like I, I love the vibes. Um, the love the vibes and it, it was funny. It, it's, it's not a, I can't tell the story on this show just because that all the details, but also because I don't remember the full story. It wasn't mine. It was told to me. But Nick Harris is a really funny story from when he went and saw Jamon Tap playing Donaldsonville, Louisiana, because that, that's where he's from, the Bayou. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he's not that like there, there's a, you know, we don't talk about people from Louisiana that much. There's a difference of people from the Bayou and people from Louisiana. Jamon Tap is from the Bayou. 
Um, yeah. And yeah, I'm I'm gonna miss him. Brought brought great vibes, and, and I, I always loved him. Um, so yeah, but yeah, that's Jamon Tapp, the living legend. Um, so yeah, I was trying to find. Uh, I thought I had it bookmarked somewhere, but I don't. Uh, there, Jamon Tapp is gonna go down as uh, <clears throat> right along with a guy like Rufus Harris from back in the day. Jordan, I, I don't know. You you don't have any idea who Rufus Harris is. As a matter of fact, I think Rufus Harris got to Texas before you were born. But uh, Rufus Harris once had a quote. Uh, he was talking about, uh, and I'm paraphrasing here because I don't have it in front of me, but he was famous for saying, uh, you know, I don't have anything nice to say about the Sooners, so or but I just plan on leaving them uh, in misery. He said, and I won't say anything about the Aggies because they couldn't read it anyway. Or maybe it was the other way around, but it's something like that. Yes, Rex, Rufus Harris played DB. He said that DB stood for destructive back. That's the position he played. Yeah. I'm um, sorry. I'm tweeting uh, out this Jamon Tap video. You guys, uh, we want to, do we want to pull up? Yeah. Jordan, if you could pull up Jake's quote here, um, I don't, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to discuss that, but we'll just I'll just let it I'll just let it marinate. No pun intended. This Jake I'm not gonna lie, I don't even know that I don't even know what he's referencing. Um I wasn't super into recruiting then. If you just want me to Wikipedia it, I can do that. Uh yeah. Man, how can I say this? Um man. Yeah, don't put it on the screen for everybody. But allegedly, <laughs> allegedly, allegedly, there was a coach on Tom Herman's staff who went to visit a very, very uh, prominent offensive line recruit in the state of Texas. Mm -hmm. As one does. And allegedly had to go pot pot and had to fire off a mud missile, <laughs> pinch off a mud snake and allegedly clogged the family toilet. How does that story even like get out <laughs> recruit uh, said recruit committed elsewhere, like the next day or the day after. <laughs> And, I don't. I, I think that was. Uh, I think a family member that was present in the house let that out. Yeah, it's alleged. It's alleged. I don't have. I was not there. I don't have proof. Look, Tom yeah. Herman's a bad guy. But if you're if you're choosing where you're going to school based off who's clogging your toilets, <laughs> if it was if it's a if it's a close battle, man, the the, the little things matter. Man, I can. <laughs> Look, Matt, man, if if you if somebody comes in my house and I don't have a prize, bro, can you a prize what Ed Orgeron would do? Like if he came and home visited my no, kids man, come, getting recruited, go. be like, oh, you're going to the bathroom? Yeah, go in that bathroom and you, you're going number one. <laughs> like, you gotta that, you gotta treat you gotta treat your bathroom when you have guests over, you gotta treat your bathroom like my brother treats his bathroom, my brother Joe, whenever I go over to his house. If I'm like, uh, I'm like, uh, I get up from the table. He's like, where are you going? I was like, I gotta go to the bathroom. He's like, you better be going number one. He's like, what? I can't, I can't poop in your house. Like, no, you can't. I'm like, well, all right, I'll remember that. So, yeah, man, it was. Uh, I, man, I've just heard of coaches doing wild stuff, like coaches that, uh, you know, you don't know, like you don't know a family's preference, so you got to keep everything above board. You, you can't walk in just like with a spit cup. With, with a spittoon and put a dip in like you don't know wait and do that afterward it'll be that's the kind of stuff jordan you can do uh in, like in the field house when you're bsing with the coaches yeah because i'm i'm sure i'm sure uh, you don't have to you don't need to name names but i'm sure there were many a coaches at lake travis that on the practice field or in the weight room had the snuff can and had a dip in while y'all were doing whatever oh yeah yeah, shit. The middle school coaches, dog. <laughs> you gotta, uh, you, you you gotta have. See, coaches like the way you can thank the apparel companies because coaches have like better, you know, better shorts and you no know, dry fit shirts and whatnot. 
but the old school, my my like ideal old school offensive line coaches uniform. You got to get like the bike, like almost they're almost like baseball pants shorts that they're like kind of that polyester material that like hugs the skin. Cotton polo shirt with unbuttoned so your taco meats hanging out. A uh, trucker hat and a skull can in the back pocket. That is like the ultimate offensive line coaches uniform. Yeah, no. Um, I'm trying to think of my craziest recruiting story or, or whatnot. Um, hey, by the way, you you go to way more high schools than I do now. I might go to like one or two a year. You go to one or two a day now. When you go to practice fields, man, is anybody using the seven man sled anymore? I've had multiple coaches tell me they don't use it anymore. It's kind of like nobody uses the seven man sled anymore. Mm-hmm. I don't know. To be, I think probably some schools got it. It's to be not- honest with you, like if I'm at a school for an offensive line recruit, like I always just kind of think like this is always the way I think about it too. Like if I'm going to a high school game to see an old lineman, I'm not posting shit. I like it's a you want to watch him take three steps. You know what I mean. So usually when I'm at a high school for like an O-line target, then I'm not paying a ton of attention. I'll mostly just try to shoot the shit with the coaches or something. Um, Look, man, but but yeah, had, so no. I've had Coach Carter has told me they don't use a seven-man sled. Drew Sanders at Vandegrift has told me they have one, but it just kind of sits off to the side. Coach Dodge has told me when he was at Westlake, they don't use a seven-man sled. Nobody uses a damn seven-man sled anymore. And I feel like we would be in a better place as a society if yes, in high school that, football. That's, that's what it is. If in high school football, we brought back the seven man sled because nothing builds camaraderie and teamwork and teaches you perseverance, like pushing that damn seven man sled up and down the field. So, high school coaches, if you catch wind of this, make the seven man sled great again. That's going to be my mission for football. I, there's one place where I guarantee you they got a seven man sled. I could almost guarantee you. In Liberty Hill, Texas, they're on that damn seven-man sled. Backs, receivers, everybody's on that damn seven-man sled. Yeah, I pray Liberty Hill never produces an actual recruitable athlete. <laughs> um, or at least one that would get recruited by Texas. Because, like, I might kill myself having to go you out know, of my way to go see Liberty Hill play football. As fast I as that area is growing, you know one day you're going to be at the All-America Combine check-in and Man, I'm gonna be like, God damn it! He's six foot lineman runs. from Liberty Hill rolled in there. He's like six five, two hundred eighty five pounds, a rising 30, junior, thirty six yeah. inch arms, and I'm just like, you motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I'm craziest recruiting stories. I don't know. Like, I've actually, I, the only one I talk about is the Micah Hudson Ohio State visit because I mean that's public. But I, I've been on a, a bunch of different visits with different kids. But like, I'm not gonna go screw myself there um but uh i don't know i've i've been with recruits when they're on the phone with people from schools and like i've heard like high profile position coaches like on the phone be like hey like whatever that school is gonna give you you need to tell us because we will do more like things like that but i mean that's not really crazy that's kind of Normal. Um, haven't got, Taylor hammed it yet? Um, uh, two old school Ross L- Rocks Lussing, Rocks uh, Ross Luxinger, who's one of my mentors back in Inside Texas when I was there back in the day, told me two good Mike Stoops recruiting stories. You want to hear them? Yeah, Rock, can Mark, you, Bob Mike Stoops? Yeah, give me one second now. So, <laughs> JV and Martin, I just want to talk about him real quick because I'm actually who found him. Um, Is I he mean, Pflugerville Flug- High. Yeah, Flugerville, Ohio. Well, All right. For now. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I, I got the ear to the streets. Come on now. But, this kid's uh, going to be a Weiss next next fall, isn't he? Whoa, relax, relax. But uh, JV and Martin, 2026 tight end at Flugerville. Uh, I believe he's 6'4". Not sure what he lists himself at, but uh, power five tight end prospect in my eyes. Um, his only offer is UNT. Um I sent his stuff to a bunch of different staffs and has he uh, been to see, has he been to see UNT? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, okay. But, but they offered him, but I sent him to a bunch of different colleges, like his stuff. Um, and a lot of schools are interested in him, but he didn't have any verifieds um, until he got an Under Armour uh, Houston invite. Um, and he, he was pretty good there. Just the, the thing with him, he, 
he's really athletic and he has a, a basketball background. He started uh, for Pflugerville in basketball this year as a sophomore. He also had like 600 or 800 receiving yards as a tight end as a sophomore in Pflugerville, who most people know, you know, plays 6A. Um, and then this, the, the, here, here's the thing why I don't think he has more offers. Um, he needs to lose weight. Like he, he's really good where he's at right now, but like, it's clear he's got some baby fat on him. Where if he was to cut down, like he would be a monster, like a serious monster. Mm -hmm. And I've talked to him about that. He's working on cutting it. Um, but yeah, I really like him. Texas has had him on campus a bunch. To be honest, I really don't like whenever they do that with local kids. Like, I think from Texas' point of view, it's like, hey, the kid knows, you know, we like him. We're still recruiting him, not ready to offer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're just keeping him warm. But like, recruits and kids, and their families take it as like, why aren't they offering? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so could he be a guy Texas eventually offers? Yes. I think he has the potential to potentially one day play at Texas. Um, right now, is he a guy worthy of an offer? I wouldn't think so. Uh, I'd like to see some more stuff from him. I think that's why a lot, a lot of schools haven't offered yet, but um, yeah, pretty much it for uh, JV and Martin. Been a and, minute uh, since Peville well, High had a, a recruitable prospect like that. Yeah, their last one, the last one that went power five that I can think of is actually in the portal right now, Sydney and Banasaur, um, who's also a Jewish kid like uh, Mr. Martin. And, Sydney and Banasaur, um, he was Pflugerville High? Yeah, was I was he not Pflugerville High? I thought he was Hendrickson. Let me double check. Well, he's in the portal right now. I know that. Um, Maybe I'm thinking about Nelson and PJ because they were both Hendrickson kids. Let's see. Yeah, went to high, uh, yeah, Pflugerville High School. Okay. Nice. So, um, yeah, well, he was this as a receiver. His ass is a tight end. Storm um, Woods, Storm Woods might have been the last uh notable guy from Pflugerville High, unless I'm just Stor weird. Storm Woods is still in Austin. He actually he trains a lot of the running backs in Austin. Oh, like does he the, really? Yeah, pretty much every outside of outside of Quentin Joyner. Um, he's worked with like pretty much every running back I think that's come through to, uh, Austin like the last five years. I know he had he had said Alexander and he's got DJ Dugar right now. Unless unless I'm just totally misremembering, I want to say that Pflugerville team in 07 that played Katie for the state championship that was a loaded team. That was Alex Okafor, Xavier Gooden. Uh, I want to say it was Greg Nwoko on that team. I think Storm Woods was on that team too. Uh, yeah, that was a really that was like the last really talented. Fluorville had a bunch of years where they would have multiple D1 prospects. Eric Hardeman was one of those guys. Man, I, I, I talk about Eric Hardeman, dude. Two, two of the most talented dudes I ever saw in Austin area. One was Eric Hardeman, both Fluorville guys. One was Eric Hardeman. The other was Reggie Madu, who was a safety at Fluorville. Was just, you could tell when he was a sophomore. Like you, Jordan, you know when you see sophomores and you're like, yeah, that dude's going to be a top 100 type kid in the country. Reggie Madu was one of those type of kids, but got, got, got in trouble and never, never panned out. Yeah. So before we bring the boys in here, I want you to finish your Mike Stoops. Oh, yeah. That's so just real quick. So, yeah. And Mike this Stoops one, a double check. Sorry for showing my age slash ass here. Stoops is Bob and Mark's dad, right? Or Mike Stoops is Bob and Mark's father, correct? Brother. A brother, brother. Right. Got it. So was, was he the one who was receivers coach or some shit for Bob? Most of no. the time, right? Or my no, Mike was the defensive coordinator for Bob. Okay. And, and, for, Link, and for Lincoln Riley, who got fired after the Texas game in 18. And is he just retired now? Or well, Mike he... Mike actually almost got hired at Texas when Sark got the job and then ended up not, not – it didn't pan out. And then he ended up – I want to say, was he the D.C. at maybe Florida Atlantic, I think, at the D.C. job at FAU? Because they, they were – Mike Stoops and Mike Stoops was an analyst at Bama when Sark was the OC. That's how that's how they so, got connected. So now Mike Stoops is Tom Herman's DC. No, I think this was this was pre. Uh, got it. Got it. This got was it. pre pre Herman. Got it. Uh, well, sorry, sorry for cutting you off. Go ahead and tell no, us about. So when Mr. Mike Stoops. was the head coach at Arizona, uh, two incidents that I was told about from Ross Luxinger. One was Texas was recruiting a kid out of Houston named Russell Carter. Uh, Russell Carter was a DN, played at Texas a little bit, wasn't a, a huge prospect, wasn't a huge player at Texas, was a good prospect. Uh, at the high school, 
Mike Stoops is in a meeting with Russell Carter and Oscar Giles. And I want to say there was another uh, so Oscar Giles and another system were coming in and the high school coach is like uh, coach Stoops. I got co- Texas coaches coming in. Like, That's all right. I'll just wait here. Mike Stoops allegedly hid in a locker while the Texas coaches were in there talking to Russell Carter. And it was just really awkward. Like didn't know, like it was kind of weird. And so, at some point, the high school coach called Oscar Giles and was like, hey, yeah, you might want to come back because Coach Stoops was hanging out in a locker in the office while you were in here. That was allegedly what I heard. The other one was Texas was recruiting Jermichael Finley. Jermichael Finley and Javorski Lane were cousins and were thinking about going to the same school together. The only school really that they had in common, because there, there was like a one-week period, if I remember right, where Javorski Lane was like half ass considering Texas, but not really. The only school they had in common where they wanted to go was Arizona. So the Texas coaches were going to come over for an in-home. Mike Stoops was there. This was a night, I think, I don't know if this is the same night or different nights. The Texas coaches come in. Mike Stoops hides behind the couch, wants to stay in in the house for his in-home, hides behind the couch. And at some point, like, allegedly what i was told was jermichael finley like sneaks out of his bedroom window because at that point he's just over the whole recruiting thing like doesn't want to deal with it anymore so like i think jermichael wanted to go to texas javorski wanted to go to a&m they both kind of agreed that if they went to the same school it's going to be arizona but they ended up staying in state and J. mike went to texas javorski went to a&m but yeah mike stoops hit by trying to hide behind the couch to Sabotage the Texas coaches in home. That's what I heard. You want to hear a funny story that was actually confirmed about in home visits from just a couple months ago? So, uh, mo- I assume most people who saw the show saw how Nebraska, not that they necessarily pulled a rab out of their ass because it was a buildup for a long time, but Nebraska ended up with Dylan Rayola, the number yeah. one ranked quarterback in the, in the 2024 class. Um, and, you know, most people know it, but Dylan's father uh, played offensive line at Nebraska before going on to uh, the Lions in the NFL. His dad's numbers retired at Nebraska. Yeah, Dominic then, Rayola play, played at Nebraska when that meant something. Yeah. And then his uh, brother, Dylan's uncle, is currently the offensive line coach at Nebraska. And his, his brother – or his uncle, sorry, uh, who I believe is uh, Donovan Rayola is his name, it was the only coach retained by Matt Rule from the old Scott Frost staff. And it was because of his ties to the number one quarterback in the country, right? That's his nephew. Mm-hmm. So whenever Nebraska flips Rayola from Georgia with – or no, no. He – because I don't think he straight up flipped. I think he just decommitted at first. I might be getting that wrong. But it was about a, a week, week and a half, two weeks before signing day when home visits are going on. Mm-hmm. What's also around signing day? The holidays. Christmas, yeah. So guess who went home to go live with his – or spend time with his brother's family during the holidays? Donovan Arola. Yeah. And he stayed at their house for three weeks. It didn't count as a home visit because yeah. he has blood relations to them. And no one else was Ugh. able to home visit. It's good stuff, uh, man. Apparently, schools kept pulling up, and they'd see his truck, and he'd be like, "Fuck, he's still here on the home visit." Yeah, that's uh, the only <laughs> but thing they, heard- they finessed the whole system so no other schools could. I mean, Nebraska kind of had it no matter what. Yeah, but they purposely did that so no one else could make any last minute runs. Uh, BK Bucky's told me this story. The only thing like that was the night before Leonard Davis signed with Texas back in the day. Randy Rogers was the recruiting coordinator. And him and Bucky were together at Illinois and then with John Makovic at Texas. And Leonard telling Randy Rogers, he's like, I, I don't, you know, AM's calling me and I, I just I want to be done. And Randy's like, Well, I'll tell you how you do that. He goes, What? He goes, take the phone, take it off the receiver, and just stick it in the dresser drawer. So that's what Leonard did. Took the phone off the receiver, stuck it in the dresser drawer. No phone call, signed with Texas the next day. Thank God for that. That yeah. is it, awesome. That's <laughs> it recruits do that nowadays too. Yeah. Like Hey, if I if I've got to go uh, fight a bunch of Nebraska offensive linemen, I might take Leonard Davis with me. Mm. If I've got to go into the mouth of hell to fight the devil, I'll probably take Leonard Davis with me. But you know who else I'm taking with me? BK, I'm gonna take Tom McKay with me. That's for damn sure. Yeah, 
<laughs> well, that's a fight um, we're winning if Tom's with us. There's no um, doubt about that. If you, if you want to know one thing about Tom McKay, that I, Tom, the one thing I can unequivocally say about you, you get shit done. I try. <laughs> I try. Yeah. You doing all right, Tom? Some light. Doing good. Doing good. How, how are you guys doing? Wonderful. I'm always amazed that there's so many recruiting stories for football and there's almost zero for any other sport. You know, um, I'll be a thousand percent honest and BK can back me up on this. Basketball has just been so seedy. The seedy underbelly of college basketball recruiting has just been uh, an unsavory cesspool that I've tried to avoid for as long as possible. And if I've got to go, if I've got to dip my toe in it, it's in and out as fast as possible. Because there's, I tell, I tell people with basketball specifically, Tom, like, hey, do you want to know how cool X got such and such a recruit? I'm like, I don't want to know. I'm going to use my imagination. I don't want to know. Well, no, I could know. Hmm. I, I don't want to know. I don't want to I, know. I think it's funny that everybody acts like it's such a horrendous thing when they do something. I was at SMU. Well, I already kicked out before the hassle started, but <laughs> running a running a beer joint right there off the campus. So I got to get, you know, you know all the football players because yeah. you got to hand them money. And it was funny is all the all the Texas guys who would come up to party on the weekends. Yeah. And that was back in the days. Uh, uh, what? Mc, McMichaels? Steve McMichael, Steve, yeah, he he was a t- Texas defenseman, yeah, yeah. That's he used to come up party party in the beer joint all the time with the SMU offensive lineman. Hmm. How the hell did you have enough beer to to for Steve McMichael? I ma- I imagine it uh, probably ran out most nights when he was up there. No, I ran the Knox Street Ice House, dude. We had stacks of long nights. <laughs> it was good. It was fun. That was that was the good old days though. Back before the uh, when they did that death penalty thing, I absolutely died laughing. I thought that was the most ridiculous. Like every single school is coming here doing the same. They were getting money from everybody everywhere. Every guy, yeah, everybody was doing it, uh, and they still yeah. Are. But it, it but no 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 nil ncaa they're on top of it. Come on now, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah they, they've legitimized about one third of it. There we go. Tom, oh, that's yeah. where that's where everybody learned the term. The SMU scandal taught everybody the term selective enforcement. There you go. Mm. No, yeah. no, Texas was running the Southwest Conference, tidy, innocent, doing clean. it the right way. Yeah, so my school, clean. my school clean is innocent. Hell. Your schools are cheating. That's how it. No, all it, 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 it is. It is funny. It it is funny because like, um, like I, I don't have an um, I, I, like I'm kind of transparency here. I don't have an amazing relationship with my stepfather. We don't talk a ton. The few times we talk, usually it's about Texas football because we don't have a ton of common. Last year, I was just filling them in on what all is going on in recruiting nowadays, more so the stuff we don't really talk about on the show because we can't. And he literally was just like, no, that's wrong. Texas doesn't do that. <laughs> and I was just like, dude, like, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> like, this is only what I do to make a living. <laughs> like. Yeah. Hey, none of the major league baseball teams were cheating like the Astros were either. None of them. Yeah, yeah, this Jake Bayless message, this Jake Bayless comment in the chat. How come SMU got slammed for sanctions, but nobody, uh, nobody ever uncovered that. Nobody bothered to investigate that. Mm. It's a mystery that remains. I don't remember him killing five hookers at campus, and I was there. (laughs) (laughs) You would have known. Craig James, he was even an ass when he was at SMU, though. Uh, hey, real quick before I go, my uh, since you brought him up, Tom, my favorite Steve McMichael story, and I was on a radio interview with him. He had he a weird heard, nickname. What was his nickname? He had two Mongo and Bam Bam. Mongo, that's what yeah. he used to come in all the time. Yep. He uh, when he was at Freer High School in South Texas, down in the valley, there was a rattlesnake on the football field, and instead of having somebody get a gun or a rake or whatever, Steve McMichael. Walks off the practice field, takes his helmet off, kills the rattlesnake with his helmet, and then goes back to practice. <laughs> I can see that. God. Yeah. Good. We need more guys like him on the team. Steve McMichael played at Texas when grown ass men played at Texas. Kenny Sims. Oh. Yeah. Johnny Johnson. There was that was that was back BK when Texas had no problems winning games like 10 to 3. Yeah, 
Now we just have problems winning games. Although last year, notwithstanding. Last year was fun. Last year was fun. Good. Baseball, good. on the other hand. Uh... Hey, 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 hey. Leave him alone. Yeah. But, I mean, that one thing I do really enjoy about, like, Texas actually being good is, like, this program is actually fun to watch. Like, the Sark offense is fun. Like, yeah. I would 1,000% take, um, I don't know, the the – the Tom Herman years, the Charlie Strong years over being like a current active Iowa fan just because having to watch yeah. their games every week, no, can't do it. So Yeah, I would have switched teams, and I am as loyal as it comes when it comes to sports, but I, I couldn't do Iowa football for that long under Kirk Ferentz. There's no way. Well, BK, we had, you remember we had the uh, – Rodney and I had an interview. It was one of the Iowa radio guys does a show in Des Moines, and – we were talking to him, and I'm like, oh, I'm like, I said there's some poor sap that had the unfortunate duty. Like, they were obligated to watch Iowa and Rutgers. I'm like, you're that guy. Yeah. You, your job required you to watch Iowa and Rutgers, and I'm sorry that you had the equivalent of bleach poured in your eyes for three hours. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd rather be a janitor than have to cover Iowa football, honestly. Like, whatever the worst job you could think of, like, I'd rather do that than – have to cover Iowa football the way y'all cover Texas. Cleaning out, cleaning out like the rattlesnake pit at the snake farm. Sure, I'll do it. I I, I don't get how Iowa like gets receivers like recruited. I don't get, <laughs> like committed. I don't get how they it, get like, an offense. Like why why does anybody on offense want to go? Have they ever scored over fifteen points in the last eight years? <laughs> Uh, in a season no, 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 or in a game? I'm, I'm in not a sure. Game. If, 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 if they probably had a pick six and a kick return if they did. Uh. Well, guys, I'll let uh, I'll let you, BK, and Tom get on with the oh. midday program. Looking forward to uh, Tom's HSOs on his hot sports opinions on on Tom Herman and uh, <laughs> some old stories and uh. definitely some NHL picks. So, Tom, I said I said my uh, my Stanley Cup Finals was the Hartford Whalers and the Quebec Nordiques. You think I'm that far off? Uh, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> You're 1990, the age. 1991 called and wants their Stanley Cup predictions back. All right, you, you guys take the, care. We'll be back to do it tomorrow. Have a great one. For sure. Yeah, th this is the last thing I'm going to say. NHL, the only player I can think of, I'm not even sure if he's in the league, but is Alex Ovechkin still in the league? Yes, unfortunately. Okay. Well, that, I don't know why you said unfortunately, but that's the only yes, name. He, I can he needs of. to go away so that the Capitals have a chance at something so Wags can actually brag about something. Yeah. yeah well, the only, the only reason I know about him is because um, my aunt, my, my dad's sister's family, they all live in D.C. And uh, I got a, a cousin who plays hockey. He's playing somewhere in college, I'm pretty sure. But he uh, he actually went to – the same like prep academy. It's called Gonzaga that uh, Caleb Williams went to. That's supposed to be like the number one sports school or something in DC. Hmm. So, and they always talk about hockey in the Capitals. That's how I know Ovechkin. So, but he is the he's trying to catch Wayne Gretzky as the top goal scorer of all time. How far away is he? Like a thousand? He's very close, unfortunately. Yeah. Damn. Damn. If he if he can make it another year or two, he might catch him. Damn. So we're hoping. Well. Personally, I don't even care. I'm hoping he just gets hurt or gets retired. Either <laughs> Damn right. Hey, I, I, I fuck with this guy, dude. I'm, I'm a fan of uh, praying on some downfalls. I mean, you can't, <laughs> you you can't actually take away the records of the great one. His name is the great one. Yeah. yeah. Ovechkin, go away. Your name is the Mad Russian. Go away. <laughs> Shoot. Yeah. All right, well, Jordan. I'll get out of here. Y'all have a good one. I'll see y'all tomorrow. You too, man. There he goes. And here we go. The uh -oh. old man. The old man. What's, what's up, old man of AV Consultations fame? I'm official now as of Sunday when I, I turned 60 on Sunday. Congratulations. Happy yeah. belated. I know we talked uh, on your birthday and we've talked a couple of times since then, but uh, congrats on 60 years, my friend. 60, 60 years. I have to ask like the shitty motherly question. How do you feel? Does it feel different? No. It Same. Perfect. Good. Dude, I feel good. I got a, I got a 20-year-old daughter who keeps me so freaking young, it's not even funny. She keeps me running. Yeah, she does. Yeah. And It's all good. She's a stud. and She's also competitive as hell, so 
she keeps me where I have to stay physically fit so that she doesn't run over me somewhere. Well, y'all are doing a little contest, right? On who can be in better shape. Oh, she's shape. insisting that that's not really a contest. I'm insisting, yeah, bull, you called it a contest. Oh, so, so that means that means she's slacking a little bit. She's getting a little nervous that you're going to beat her. I think, I think she's just getting so ripped that she's going to make so much fun of me that she doesn't want to call it a contest. Oh, man. Yeah, that's uh that's great well thanks for coming on always love chopping it up on the air off the air and uh I gotta start with your background man bunch of bunch of hockey sticks to your left are those uh all game okay. used yeah actually i've got a couple of the big boys still uh brendan Dillon is still in the league joel hanley still in the league ottinger's stick is up there there you go bunch of the guys whenever they uh whenever they head away from from here they all start here, and then whenever they head up to the NHL, I get like a stick or a puck or a jersey or something from them. That's awesome. Yeah, and it's working. You look at the Dallas Stars. I, re- I wish you could actually see the two pictures because I'm actually in those two team pictures. Are those uh, are those just annual team photos? That's, or is that- that's the Calder Cup team photo. Yeah. And that was the second place. That's the year they took second place. They lost the Calder Cup. Okay, that's awesome. That is awesome. Uh, Texas Stars this year, before we get to the NHL, and I know that people always love hearing your picks, and, well, you've gotten, what, six of the last ten Stanley Cup winners, right? Preseason. With with your preseason, right? Not pre-playoffs, which is what we're going to get from Tom today because the playoffs are about to start. But preseason picks, Tom and his computer have gotten six of the last ten Stanley Cup winners correct. So we'll uh, we'll check in on the preseason picks and – see how things are doing as we approach the final couple of days of the regular season. But Texas Stars hockey, still in good position, still going to make the playoffs this year? They've made the playoffs, and they got two games left this weekend against Manitoba, who's won. They're currently five points behind them, meaning they can't catch them to take the third spot. What's funny, though, is Manitoba's playing the number one team in the league tonight for their one game in hand. So if they lose tonight – They just basically have to stay here for five games because Texas gets the home ice advantage for the first round starting on Monday. That'd be huge. And that's a best of three in the first round. Yeah. So the Manitoba would have to play here Friday, Saturday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Okay. And that's what we're looking for. That's what we want. Goodbye, Manitoba. Do they, uh, do the Texas stars have enough players left to make a run at the Calder Cup? Yeah, they actually did some good moves the last month, brought in some new guys, even got a backup. uh, So they're, one deep, three deep, one extra goalie. Okay. Uh, called up another guy who just graduated. And so they've been moving the guys around and getting the offense right. And as long as they don't, we'll see who Dallas moves. Dallas usually will call up two or three guys for reserve. And I think as long as they don't call up Bork, um, if they leave the offense alone, mm-hmm. uh, Texas Stars will be fine. Okay. And Bork still the leading scorer in the AHL. Yeah, uh, yeah. Only, only because uh, and he, he would have been second probably if they didn't take Stankoven. But yeah, that's fine. I mean, everybody knew those those two were going. We just didn't know when. And Bork went up for a game. He he played very well too. So I have a feeling they might just call him up, let him be there for the reserve. And uh, there's no reason not to. I mean, give the guy some some money and all that. He's got a better contract with the NHL. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll see what happens, yeah. but. They've still got plenty of other guys. They got they got they're very talented. Tech Dallas is deep. Deep, 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 deep. The organization is incredibly well run. And uh they've done a great job stockpiling talent both at the NHL level and the AHL level. And uh they made a pretty massive upgrade in coach at the AHL level, I would argue, that has uh, contributed to a lot of the recent success of the Texas Stars here at Cedar Park. Oh, oh over the last one? Oh yeah. Oh my god. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, massive, massive upgrade. And well, anything uh, is an upgrade from Lax, though. So I'm not. Even, you're not <laughs> even giving these guys the credit they're due. They have three great coaches now. Yeah, yeah. And you had, they had one awful coach. Yeah. So things are going well for the Dallas Stars now. As we go up to the NHL, uh, I know you went on with Wags on the Wagner Wire before the season started. So these picks are documented. This is not you changing things up just because oh, no. the regular season is almost over, but. Uh, We'll ask for our midday crowd. What was you slash your computer's preseason Stanley Cup final prediction? For the first time ever, my team, the Dallas Stars, were the pick to win it all. And they're supposed to be playing against the Carolina Hurricanes. Okay. And that looks pretty pretty possible at this point. 
Oh, it looks more than possible. I mean, the Dallas Stars have the best record in the Western Conference. They're going to be the one seed, more than likely, in the West. And, yeah, Carolina uh, has 111 points. They've got the second most points in the Eastern Conference. So, yeah, you're talking about two of the best teams in hockey during the regular season. They both have a legit shot to get there. And, hell, and as you teams. know, because you looked at the odds the day I talked to you about that, Yeah, neither one of those was the favorite at all. Yeah, you're right. And you, uh, you know, the cousin put some money on both teams to win the cup before the season started. And you're right. I mean, they're still not the favorites right now. You got to go a little bit down the list to find the stars or the hurricanes as your Stanley cup favorites. But obviously the odds before the year were even worse or better, depending mm -hmm. on how you want to describe them than they I'm are. I'm kind now. of amazed that everybody's still putting so much credit towards Colorado. That one's, that one's kind of odd to me. I haven't figured that one out yet. Yeah, they've been really struggling too in the last month or so. Yeah. Like they're they're yeah. the three seed in the central right now. They're, they're gonna have to go on the road against Lusapeg uh and win that series to even get a chance to play Dallas in round two. Yeah, un unfor uh, unfortunate for everybody is that Winnipeg is such a just offensive minded team. Um they they got bones as the coach up there, the old Dallas coach. Mm -hmm. he, he, I, I think the word defense for him starts with an O. And they, they, he doesn't know how to – they don't play any. And so, yeah, I don't think – I don't think that's going to work out well for them. I think Colorado will probably win that series. Okay. The interesting yeah. thing is that this thing is still working because even though there was decided who's in the playoffs last night finally, two days to go in the whole regular season, you still don't know who's playing who other than like that series. Right. Like, like we don't know if the Vegas Knights or – the LA Kings are going to be playing Dallas. Right. I, I, I know, I know your answer. Flop. I know your answer because I know you and we've had conversations like this before. We want the LA Kings. Okay. All right. I was, I was going to ask because I figured you were saying, well, yeah, 100% we want the LA Kings. Yep. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Like you got to beat everybody, I, I guess, to make but it. You to like the, the first series to be the easiest series. You would. And yeah, I think LA is the worst team that's going to make the playoffs in the Western Conference. So, plus, if, if Vegas has to play Edmonton, then at least one of those two is gone. Mm -hmm. And both of those, even though they're not as good, in my opinion, are threatening. Sure. Well, Vegas is mean, very physical. They're the defending champs, of course. They're not nearly as good this year as they were last year. Um, hell, they, they just clinched a playoff spot a couple of days ago. But they've had the Stars number this year. Like, even in a down year, and even though the Stars have been one of the best teams in the league all season long, like, Vegas has seemingly had Dallas's number, and, of course, they beat them in the playoffs last year in the conference finals. So, I'm with you, man. Like, I, That was I the game anymore. you were at with me, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, and I hope I get invited back to a playoff game this year because of the way that one went down. Oh, that's got nothing to do with it. You're, yeah, if we're going, you're coming. No, the, um, no it was just uh, – yeah, we got to wait for Texas Stars to get uh, finished first, I guess, because I'm supposed to support my foundation boys, you know. You gotta, Always. Always. Got to do that. The um, it's it's really wild though, is the 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 way that those two those two teams both play against Dallas, so ridiculously physical. I mean, it, I I love physical hockey. I'm not trying to say you know play like basketball where you act like a puss all day long, but the um, but it's just it's it's astounding to me that. Vegas can actually play physical enough to get under Dallas's skin. Mm -hmm. They actually make Dallas play worse by playing so physical. And yeah. That's the only thing about it. There isn't any other reason that Dallas does as badly as they do against Vegas. And it happens every time they play. I feel like that's the only way to stop Dallas, right? Because the stars have so much speed and skill, especially up front, that like if you try to match speed with them, you're going to have a bad time. You've got to try to muck it up against them and just be as physical as you possibly can. And see, what's wild, though, is Dallas has built their lines. Now, the first four offensive lines, or the four offensive lines, all have basically an enforcer on them. Yeah. I mean, if you look at it, because you've got Duchesne or Marchman, whichever one you want to have, they both want to fight everybody. And that's the top line, really. And then you got Jamie Benn in there with the two kids. He's He'll beat anybody up. He doesn't care. He loves to fight. Uh -huh. and, and and then you get to the, uh, I mean, Fox is going to, Fox will take anybody out. Oh, yeah. He doesn't care at all. And he's been doing that since he was here in the AHL. He's awesome. Can't remember who the, who the third line tough man is. Uh, darn it. That's really terrible. Oh, now you got me thinking too. I mean, the whole, that actually line. might be the line that doesn't have one. Cause that's the Pavelski 
uh, hints Robertson line, but of course the other team is throwing out their number one line against them every time because yeah. those guys, nobody can stop them from scoring. Yeah, exactly. And they don't mind getting hit. They're just going to run around you. Yes, Jack. Hockey still has enforcers. Thank a God. A lot of that. them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And Rob says Vegas is going to be a tough out. Yeah. Like it depends on goaltending, right? Like that's that's what your computer's all about, Tom. And that's what your predictions are always all about. Like you you cannot win in the Stanley Cup playoffs unless you have a really good goaltender who's also playing his best hockey. Vegas last year, Aiden Hill came out of nowhere. And that guy was incredible, and he's the biggest reason why the Knights won it all. That guy has not been the same player this year, and that's why Vegas hasn't been the same team, and it feels like they shouldn't be considered as serious of a threat as they were a season ago. You know what's funny is every time you and I go up there to a playoff game, it seems like the other team brings up that year some freaking guy out of the AHL from nowhere, obscurity that nobody's ever heard of, and they play the greatest year in the history of mankind, knock Dallas out in seven, yeah. and then – totally fall apart. St. Louis, remember? Yeah. Well, it's, uh, been it's a great been. year. Mm-hmm. And then Aiden Hill last year. It's, it's just, it's, it's like, guys, you're not that good. Don't, quit thinking you are, you know? Yeah. They, they don't start thinking that way until after they beat Dallas. That's the worst part. It's annoying. Well, let me ask you this, Tom. I mean, which, maybe it is Vegas, but which team in the Western Conference scares you the most for a potential Stars matchup in these playoffs? In the in the out of the whole west? In the in the west, yeah, whole west. Uh probably the Oilers. Okay. Yeah. McKinnon and them are. I mean McDavid. McDavid, Dry Seidel, all yeah, those guys. Their power is as long as you don't get into penalty trouble against them, I think you're fine. Their power play can destroy anybody. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's done it all year long. That's how they make I mean, I, I would be willing to bet. And they give up a lot of goals, too. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're pretty much equal to Dallas. In fact, they're the only ones that are even close to Dallas. They're one ahead of Dallas in the in the differential, goal differential. They're plus 64. Dallas is plus 63. That, that's the team that – but all their – I think they've probably got the best – are they number one power play? I'm not positive, but I would guess they are. They they have been the last couple of years, so – Every time I watch them play, they get two freaking power play goals. And you, so just – Stay out of trouble. They instigate a lot. McKinnon's famous for it. I mean, McDavid's famous for it. McKinnon's in Colorado. I keep bringing him up just because he's right. an annoying old man like me. But the um, yeah, McDavid loves to uh, likes to go in. Him and Ben, amazingly, I don't think have ever fought. Yeah. And ben has fought almost every main guy in the league. And considering how many times the Stars and Avs have played, of course, being in the same division, but also a couple of playoff series against one another, it is it is pretty bizarre that that has not happened. Yeah. Huh. And I, I mean, it's always funny. He seems to get – he'll get in fights with people from every team, and it doesn't matter who it is. I mean, he didn't – now, he didn't get in a fight with Marsh. I mean, uh, Marshawn, when we were up in Boston, that was hilarious. They had Joel Hanley go and get in a fight with Marshawn on Marshawn's 1,000th game. It was like, dude – Really? And then they trade Hanley away like a week later. Yeah. Dicks. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Looking at McDavid's stats, only 32 goals this year, but he just hit a hundred. He got a hundred assists. assists or something though. Yeah. hundred assists. I think only the fourth player ever to get there with the great one. I think Lemieux and I think Bobby Orr, like yeah. you're in the company of those three. Then and they're almost all power play assists too. That's the weird part. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, Zach Hyman, Hilarious name has uh, emerged into a star for Edmonton plus dry saddle plus Nugent Hopkins plus McDavid. Yeah. That's a scary offense right there for sure. Uh, I'm, I'm not too concerned. I think when they get to Vegas this year, if, if Jamie Ben would have done what he did in game three in game one, I think they would have won the series. Oh, I think waiting till the third game to get into the fight and cause all the problems. Um, it brought the team alive for two games. If he would have done that in game one, I think they would have won the series. I don't think they had time to come back from it. On you know, They can't win them all. Yeah, I'm with you. And you're not going to in the play. I mean, you're not supposed to sweep in the playoffs. These guys are the best teams in the league. And they're this tight all year long. You don't. You can't imagine they're going to sweep a bunch. Mm-hmm. So you're not going to win three in a row usually. But if you do it in the first game, if you do happen to get in trouble, it's cool. You're back by game three. You still got plenty of time to win it because that was a seven-game series. Sure. And look, Vegas was the better team last year, as much as it pains me to say. Uh, They were healthier also going into that series. And 
Uh, I think that made a difference for sure, but they were they were better than Dallas. Like this year's going to hurt if Dallas loses to anybody in the West. It's it's going to hurt because I, I feel like the Stars are legitimately the best team in this conference, and I didn't feel that last year. So uh, I think Dallas has got a bigger leg up on this conference than anybody has in the East. I I can't figure out the East at all. If you have any clue, like obviously your computer has the Canes. That was the preseason pick, but they could win it. Boston could obviously win it. Uh, Florida could win it. They won it last year. The sad and, fact, I'll tell you what the picks are ready for the playoffs. Yeah. The Rangers. Oh, no. Yeah. The curse of the president's trophy, though. I know. That's We'll see. The computer doesn't take that into account. Oh, right. right. Now, if I'm, doing, if I'm doing a bracket or something, I would probably pick them in one and then not in the other because I'd pick it with the computer on one. Um, which is what I did last year, and that ended up costing me on the bracket challenges because Florida came out of nowhere. Yeah, and they were the of eight course seed. they got their goal. Bob was out most of the season, and then he gets back for the playoffs. Nobody expects any of those things to happen. It's kind of like what happened with Carolina. Their goalie almost died. Yeah, Anderson. They said he'll probably never play again, and then he decides like forty games ago, screw it, I'm coming back. They haven't barely lost since. That's the beauty of and hockey. So, I mean, I still think Carolina can win the win the East. I do too. Yeah, I mean, I I think there's like a couple of tiers in the East, like the Rangers, Carolina, Florida, and Boston. I think like those four teams are all neck and neck and neck and neck as the four top teams. But I mean, Toronto's got talent. They always choke in the playoffs, so I'm not going to pick him to go very far. Uh, the Islanders. Toronto's going to be playing Boston. They're done. Yeah, you're right. And whenever those two teams meet in the playoffs, we know exactly how it always goes. Yeah. So. Yeah, it'll be a short-lived stay for them. Uh, like you don't want to count anybody out, right? Florida was the eight seed, and they were going up against the best regular season team ever last year in the first round, and they well, rode the, the momentum. Seed this year is done. The Caps, they got no chance against the Rangers. Yeah, well, that That'll was. Be, I would predict a sweep there. Okay. Did you watch the uh, the Caps Flyers game last night by yeah, chance? It was freaking depressing. Yeah, and how about the the goalie pull by John Tortorella with three minutes left? You okay with that? I put it to Wags. Wags asked me about the Flyers because he really thought they were going to make playoffs. I said, no, they're not. This was mm. three weeks ago when they were still in pretty good position. And I said, they will lose. Their coach is a freaking idiot. He has no right to be a coach in the NHL. I don't know why people keep hiring him. And they hire him, and look at what he freaking does to – he had it now. Granted, Detroit Red Wings would have stayed, would have been the next one. Yeah. But I mean, he had a chance to take over three teams in one night. And he does that. Brilliant. Yeah. yeah. I don't, I'm with you. I don't that understand. He needs to be fired immediately. He hadn't been yet. I've been watching NHL. Why, why does he keep getting jobs? I mean, it, he gets fired everywhere he goes after like two years, and then for some reason other teams are like, oh, we'll give him a chance now, and it, it never works. Well, look who's coaching at the Devils. It's the same thing. These guys keep getting jobs when they get fired. from. A, it's like if you get fired from a job in the real world, not this fantasy of sports where you, the numbers don't even make any sense whatsoever to what is real in to the rest of us, but it's, it's funny as these guys get fired – because they didn't do their job and somebody else will pick them up the next day. Oh, I need you. I'll give you $5 million a year. Well, could you imagine that? I mean, if mm -hmm. you're making a million dollars a year, somebody hire you for 1.5 the next day. Right. Unbelievable. Because yeah, be you nice. suck. <laughs> yeah. You're falling up. It's uh, bizarre. Yeah. The NH the NFL is doing a better job of not doing that, but the NHL is like, it's just a good old boys club. Like they just hire retreads left and right. And it's like, give somebody new a chance. Like, Jim Montgomery, when the Stars gave him a chance, like he was new. They called him up from college. He was great. Obviously, he, he lost his job due to all five circumstances, but look at what he's doing in Boston. Like he's a great coach. Instead of hiring well, Dallas, him, would have loved to have never lost him. Oh, we all sure. know that. Yeah. If yeah. He, he was a if great he could have hire. controlled himself, things would have been wonderful. And we still love Jim. Seriously. 100%. I mean, that's, when I was up there, I just wanted, I wanted to go up. You almost want to go hug the guy. It's like, oh, poor Jim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, uh, well, he, he, he does, he, everywhere he coaches is awesome. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, take a chance on a guy like that instead. Of, you know what you're getting from Tortorella. You know what you're getting from Bo uh, Bruce Boudreaux, as our guy Jake says. You know what you're getting from Lindy Ruff, who you referenced a moment ago. Like, stop giving those guys. The game has passed them up. Try somebody new. And Mine is like work. The coach, the coach of, let's say, the uh, 
I don't like him, but I'm going to say it anyhow. The because I just don't like him. The Milwaukee Admirals coach in the mm. AHL, the Hershey Bears coach in the AHL, the Texas Stars coach in the AHL, who's done nothing but for perfection almost for four years. Uh, I mean, why are these guys not getting called up? That's the freaky part. Yeah, I don't know. And, but what do they call up to the NHL? Laxtall, the guy that we were praying to get rid of at the Texas Stars, they call him up to the Dallas Stars. Now, granted, he only made it a year before they said, get the hell out of here. You are <laughs> awful. But it's just astounding. They'll call up these guys, give them all this money. It, call up the winners. Pick yeah. a winner. Just a win. If you have a 500 record, you don't deserve a head job. Right. That's simple. I don't care who your players were. 500 is not good enough. Get out. Yeah. I agree 100%. And that's most of those guys, if you look at their records, are very close to 500. Almost every guy we just talked about. How about this text, Tom, on the uh, Coda text line? By the way, Tom McKay, a.k.a. Old Man of AV Consultations, joining Texas Sports Unfiltered. Oh, wow. I did, sorry, I didn't have the text line up. I could see it now. No, there you go. Uh, Burnt Orange Yeti asks if we could talk about Houston potentially getting an NHL team. Any Any mm. strong thoughts on that? There was a lot of talk about it there for a while. Unfortunately, that's uh, all cooled down, and they kind of just brushed it aside. They were actually going to build the arena. I think they're still building it, actually, a, a nice arena in Pasadena. Okay. Uh, is that where all the oil refineries are? Uh-huh. Wherever Some the smelly them. place is, that's where they were going to um, Ooh, build Texas the – City? Maybe Texas City is pretty damn smelly. No, it was, it was Pasadena. It was started okay. with a P. That's all they the were. Yeah, they yeah. were working with it with a city, and they were actually getting it close. It looks like what might happen though is they might do an AHL team for one of the southern teams. Might go there. Okay. Um, just because Chicago Wolves are still an unaffiliated team, and Carolina Hurricanes doesn't have an affiliation. One of the top teams in the NHL doesn't have an AHL affiliation. So they exactly. could bring one in which would be kind of cool. Um, unfortunately, there's also a big ice arena up in Oklahoma where the um, Barons used to play. And I think they're trying to get a team as well. So okay. it'll be interesting, but I, I don't know. The NHL is it's pretty loaded up. I don't, I don't, I don't think they're looking to expand real fast. Yeah. I mean, they're at 32, right? Adding Vegas and Seattle within a few years, got them from 30 to 32, which feels like a nice, solid normal number i think a lot of houston fans were hoping that arizona would end up in houston yeah. now there's all sorts that, of talk that was about, the talk for a while yeah all sorts of talk about salt lake now like apparently the coyotes players have already been informed that the team is moving to utah this off season so nothing nothing official yet from the league about that happening but yeah the yotes have been struggling they've been playing in a college arena for the last couple of years, which has been kind of fun, but also kind of pathetic that a pro sports team is having to do that. Um, I will say this for my time in Houston, like Tillman Fertitta, like the richest man in the city, the billionaire who owns the Rockets and he owns the Toyota center where the Rockets play, which like could convert to a, a an NHL stadium, just like American airlines in Dallas, right? They play the stars and the Mavs both play there. Uh, Fertitta has always publicly said he wants hockey in Houston. But behind closed doors, he he just he does not want it. He does not. The want problem it. with anything down in and I, I'm going to agree with uh, Jake on this. And Jake, I'm going to get into a couple of your little texts here. Real, not your little your text in just a second on the Dallas games. Sure. Um, because they're you're absolutely correct on the Hakapa thing. Um, but it's a it's 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 kind of funny. Is the Houston area like you know? I mean, the Astros. Yeah, they win the World Series. They get filled up. They don't win the World Series one year. They can't get a sellout. Mm. Well, you put an NHL team there, which is already uh, – hell, you were at ESPN down there. You know. You're not even allowed to talk about hockey down there. And, hell, you you aren't even allowed to talk about hockey on your own station except for when I tell you, dude, I'm coming on to talk about hockey because I'm getting <laughs> tired of not hearing it. Yeah. But it's, it's funny is these guys will have no say whatsoever in it, but – they they want a team, but there's unfortunately there's only a group of about ten thousand people that want a team, and that barely sells out an AHL arena. So you're going to get an AHL team. You have to have fifty thousand fans every night for an NHL team. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, part of me I think it'd be cool if Houston got a team, but I I am worried about that. Right? Like, uh, I think for the first couple of years, right? It's a new team. It's the new thing. I don't think they'd have any problem selling out, even if the team wasn't that good. But five years, ten years, fifteen years down the road. 
if they they'd struggle. have to put it in a kind of a really nice part of town like Dallas did yeah. and make sure that it's a highfalutin thing with big hair and all the other crap like Dallas does. Because you go to a Dallas game and it's an impressive it's an impressive game. I mean, and Dallas is a great team, I think, but mm-hmm. the crowd is hilarious when you go to other arenas and see their crowds. Because I, as everybody knows, I spend a lot of time in Boston. I go to Boston games. Oh my God. It's just, there is not one person there that would fit into the Dallas crowd. Hmm. I mean, it's all longshoremen looking sons of bitches, even the women. It's, it's hilarious. It's, I mean, you just, they don't have their Dallas and Houston are all this highfalutin stuff. And that's the only way you're going to get the money out because yeah. NHL games are expensive as hell. And there's a lot of them. It's not like football where you only have to worry about six home or seven home games a year. These guys are buying tickets for 40 games. Mm-hmm. Well, at 200 bucks a pop, that adds up. It does. You're right. It does. Yeah. So I don't think it- get the rich people, not the poor people. I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. If Houston got an AHL team again, that'd be cool. I mean, the arrows were very popular down there for a while. Give us such a great rivalry here too. Yeah. Yeah, it would. It absolutely would. So uh, we'll see, but I don't think an NHL franchise is going to Houston anytime soon. feels like the Yotes are moving up to Utah and it just, I'm I'm sure at some point the NHL will expand and add a couple of more teams because that's what every league does. You don't take away teams, you add teams. So at some point they might get to 34, but even if they do get to 34, I don't know if Houston's like at the top of the list. I could see, you know, Quebec city getting a team. Once again, I could see Kansas city getting a team. I could see Portland getting it. Like there've been a number of other cities that maybe have passed Houston up on that short list of spots where the NHL could expand if they decide to do that. Oh, Rob, I wasn't saying the Dallas fans aren't great. I'm saying they're, they're way higher class than the other. I mean, like looking mm. like uh highfalutin <laughs> high yeah. end, the, yeah. uh, the Boston fans and the other, like you go to Chicago, Boston, hell, even LA, the LA hockey fans aren't the usual hockey fans that you would see in Dallas. They're hockey fans and hockey is a Canadian thing where, you know, dental care isn't the top priority and stuff like that. No. The, um, so it, it is, it's a kind of, it's, it's just different. It's funny in Boston. You go there; they've been champions forever. You yeah. Sit, I sit next to Boston fans every single time I go, and it's the most hilarious thing. It never fails. The dude sitting next to me is going to go, "God, we suck." Every single time, I'm like, "Dude, you have been in first place for five straight years. Shut yeah. up." That whole city, like you said, they're so used to winning in every sport too. It's not just hockey. Every sport they've won so much that they. Anytime there's an ounce of struggle, it's like, oh, we suck. We got to fire somebody. This is horrible. It's like, yeah, shut up, please. Please. The other, other fan bases suffer a hell of a lot. Rob's a Bruins fan. Do you see that? Uh, there you go. Rob, you go, brother. Yeah, I know. I know that's become your your second team in recent years. You've got a good I'm reason. Still, to. I'm, I'm, you know, it's funny. I went to the Bruins Carolina game the other night and – up and up there to see uh I would obviously moving the kid into a new apartment but I wanted to see the um that game cuz I was hoping you know Carolina was going to look really strong and we were walking out of there my daughter looks over me she goes good bet old man dipshit <laughs> <laughs> oh that is great oh it hurts so bad uh the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree uh does it that is awesome couple of texts Tom I'm not sure if you've seen these yet but someone in 817 number asked for Potential sleeper team or two for these playoffs. From which, so, from which bracket? From I get, it's, it sounds like you could pick if you want to go west or east. In in the east, the sleeper team is Tampa Bay Lightning, without a question, because they're coming in as a wild card and they could win the whole thing. Okay. They always could. It's going to depend 100% on their goalie being on fire. They've got, They've got uh, the top scoring guys already. They're fine. Their goalie has had a very off year. And it's going to totally depend on if he and if, well, people have figured out, which I've been telling everybody now for three years is, is it's upper left corner with him and you score. And for some reason, nobody this year, they've been doing it. And it's kind of funny is he still hasn't fixed it. And the teams will that do it will win. But yeah. when it comes to playoffs, like we saw Toronto do last year, they just give up on that and they quit and they keep shooting right at him, which doesn't make any sense. And you lose. Because he'll stop everything other than that one. He gives about a five-inch gap up in the upper left corner almost every single shot. 
Yeah, Vasilevsky, who's won a couple of cups with Tampa. I mean, he, uh, one of the best goalies in the world, no question. Sure. Yeah, they, uh, they'll they play Florida in round one. So Florida, the defending Eastern You're Conference hoping champs. hoping they take Florida out. That would be nice. And yeah, Tampa won the East three years in a row before that, right? Two cups, and they lost yep. the final to Colorado right after that. So Tampa's got tons of playoff experience. Not the same team they were, but I'm with you, man. That's not a team you can ever count out in the playoffs. What about the West? Any uh, any sleepers for you out there? I think wild card sleeper, because I think they're going to take out the Canucks in the first round. Mm. I think the Predators are the sleeper in the West. The, uh, They've the been sl- on fire. They yeah. came from nowhere. They were they were freaking fifteen points out just at the trade deadline. Yeah, they didn't they lose. Been, didn't they win like fifteen in a row at one point? Something like that. I think they won eleven in a row. Okay. I know it was their record. I don't know if it was the league record. I know it was this season record. And yeah, they're just playing awesome. And luckily they're going to take out the Canucks because the Canucks, once again, everybody keeps saying how the Canucks are the top defensive team in the league, blah, 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 blah. blah. I don't understand where that's coming from. And points don't show that at all, but it's a, it'll be interesting to see if the, if the uh, predators can just go ahead and get them out of the way. Yeah. I think I'm going to join you on that upset pick. Like I, I got to watch Vancouver in person a couple of weeks ago when the stars played up there. And I, I wasn't that impressed. I know they've had a they're great not year. A thrill. Yeah, they're not. They're not. They've had a great year out of nowhere too. Like they've been, you know, missing the playoffs seemingly year in and year out for the last half decade, and uh, they turned it on and they've been great this season. But yeah, Nashville's playing incredibly well, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go with that upset too. I like that pick there, Tom. Oh man! All right, well, keep the text coming. Somebody asked about the Maple Leafs. We're not too high on Toronto. Uh, right? I'll tell you about the Maple Leafs. The Maple Leafs are offensively stacked as hard as Dallas. Dallas is, and if you follow hockey closely, everybody has told you by now, Dallas is the most stacked team offensively in the league. They have four legitimate lines. Yeah. And no other team has four legitimate lines. And it's it's pretty wild. But Toronto is close. And they are going to, and Austin Matthews, no matter how much you hate him, is a wizard. And they're good. Problem is, is their defense crumbles like a freaking dry leaf when it comes time for the playoffs. Hmm. It uh, They have no shot of getting through the playoffs. And they didn't do anything to enhance it this year. They just bought more offense. They're like, okay, we'll just outscore. Defense wins playoffs. Defense definitely wins cups. Mm-hmm. They're not the team. I'm with you. All right. I'm going to ask you for some help on some advertisements, Tom, because I know you're a big supporter of a lot of our advertisers. So, You've texted me a bunch about how much you love Olipop and how you keep drinking that stuff. I, I just, don't have one with me either. Can you believe that? That's all right. That's all right. But I just I, I want the people to know that you uh, you are now a believer in Olipop too. The Dr. Pepper. Oh, it's not called Dr. Pepper. It's called Dr. Good. Oh, I can't remember what it's called. You're you're on the right track, Dr. Good Good, good Wrench. <laughs> good win. Good win. There we go. <laughs> Um, love that one. Love the vintage cola. Love the cherry cola. Uh, all the ones that are supposed to be like the Coke, Dr. Pepper kind of combo stuff. Awesome. The orange soda is also really good. Mm-hmm. That reminds me of an orange Fanta. Yeah, it does. I, I In was the old like, days. I hadn't yeah. tried that until a couple of weeks ago. And I'm like, oh man, this is one of my favorites right now. Yeah. And I've been trying, I've been, uh, almost cut out caffeine completely on everything about a year ago. And uh, I'm already wired enough, as everybody knows, so I really don't need caffeine, mm-hmm. and that just kind of gets me going even more. The so I don't. I love the fact that most of theirs don't have caffeine. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, a couple of them do, but most of them don't. So as far uh, as the healthy stuff part of it, that's just a given. I mean, I I'm one of the. I take fiber, dude. I'm I'm old. So yeah, anything that's yeah. going to help is good. Let's go. Very, very good. The, um, yeah, uh, Olipop, hundred percent. Go get it. HEB, they got the big old stack. In fact, they got an end cap at the new one up here in Georgetown. Beautiful. They got a whole end cap, refrigerated. You can buy them cold, every flavor. You can you can drink it in the store and then pay for it on your way out, just I like that. that. Protein drinks, believe it or not. Uh, I I believe it. I definitely. But I do eat about half the grapes and don't pay for those. That's good. First thing you do, you go to produce, grab a bag of grapes, then you go shopping. Yeah, uh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, by the time you stick it on the scale, it's like, oh, hey, it's only half a pound of grapes. Not bad. Uh, also, I know you're a big fan of 7-Eleven. 
as well, oh, Tom. Yeah. My weakness. My weakness. <laughs> they should not have so many of them. That's oh. the, the, the only thing that's keeping me from staying in shape these days is 7-Eleven. And I'm not even going to put that as a negative. They got the best pizza, uh, unless you order some good New York style pizza someplace. But if you're going to get a pizza, 7 Eleven, um, the fried burritos, freaking A, awesome at 7 Eleven. The, uh, oh, they got all that junk just sitting there. And you're, ah, oh, I've never been to the one down by your house. Mm, it's you're awesome. Way south. Oh, yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. I mean, I, I got to go there. I'm making a drive down to the coast. It's my mom's birthday today. So I'll be doing a couple of shows uh, down there tomorrow and Friday. But on my way out, need some gas for the car. I need some rollers. I need some Olipop. I mean, I'm going to just stock up. At What's your favorite roller? Oh, man. I, probably steak and cheese or the buffalo <sighs> chicken. Those are my top two. I like the taco meat one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. and you can't go wrong with any of them. And they got like I got the app, the 7 Eleven app, and right now they've got a three rollers for three dollars deal. I'm like, where where can you find like a full meal for three bucks these days? Nowhere. Except for 7 Eleven. That's it. Sugar alcohol. What is sugar alcohols? Uh oh, this comment from Jack. Yeah, I don't know. Jack, tell us what sugar alcohol is. A lot of comments coming in. By the way, if you if you want to talk to Tom, 512-255-8678, that's the phone number for AV consultations. Uh, yeah, of course, he's going to hook you up with the TV setup you've always dreamed of, but he'll also talk hockey and life and everything with you the way he's talking to us today. So make the call. Y'all see the TVs behind me. Y'all know about the four TV setup that I've got. Tom has hooked me up at about 15 different places because I have commitment issues and can't stay in the same spot for more than one year at a time. Uh, the best, the best AV consultations. They've been around since 1988. Tom's been spearheading the whole thing. And once again, nobody does better work than AV consultations. Don't go to the store, buy the TVs and then call Tom. Just call Tom first. He's going to get the best prices. He's going to hook everything up for you. He's going to show you how to use everything. And it's just a seamless, easy experience every time you go with AV consultations. Once again, 512-255-8678. Never had any of that. I'm sorry. Sugar free candy. I'm not into sugar free candy. Appreciate it though, Jack. I don't know. They had sugar. If I get candy, candy, it's gonna be a chocolate bar. It's gonna be some real deep, 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 deep. What's the what's the point of sugar free candy? Like that, that's that's why you eat candy, right? For the that's sugar. Kind of weird. I don't Make know, sure that the even... toilet's nearby too. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Thank you. All right. All right. All right. If y'all have any hey, questions, yeah, go ahead. I got one for you though, because you sure. I've been listening a little bit and you know, I'm a hockey's almost over. So, you know, I go full force into baseball. Those are my two sports. Oh, yeah. And I'm a Longhorn baseball fan, somewhat, um, as much as you can be with not being a Longhorn. But the, um, you guys are making it sound like they're like death this year. <laughs> and just, I mean, if they, if they were to win, not sweet, win their last three series, they'd win the Big 12. Yeah, they've got a shot. They've won a lot of series. I mean, they're only two games out of first place, really. They are. They are. Yeah. So why is everybody calling for – I'm really curious. Why does everybody think David Pierce is so god-awful when he has one bad year? And this isn't even a bad year. Most teams, this is a great year. And I'm sure there's people out there who are going to tell me something about it. Guys, if you you really have insight in it, tell me, because I've really been puzzled because I think he's doing a pretty spectacular – granted, it's not what we all thought the pitching would be. And I know he became the pitching coach, which he's going to hire a pitching coach next year. Problem for me, but the offense has to score football numbers. Uh, agreed. 100% Rob. That's mm-hmm. what I'm saying. The pitching is off. He'll hire a pitching. He should not have tried to do this. It was his mistake. And I think he realizes it. I, I know he does. Otherwise he wouldn't be playing the games he is right now. Yeah. And, but it's, it's interesting is they're about to go into the sec, which I sure as hell wouldn't want to take over it. Who are they going to get, even if they did get rid of Because SEC is the powerhouse of all things baseball. They're going to – I mean, Alabama, Mississippi State, LSU, Tennessee, those teams are freaking awesome. They have like six in the top 20. Yeah. Seven. I think, uh, yeah, eight in the top 25 right now. So they're rolling. Correct, that, Double D. That conference is uh, is loaded. Yeah, it's, it's wicked. It's – I mean, I'm seeing you going, okay, they're leaving one. Yeah, you had Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. That's it. All these other teams, 
Shut up. Texas Tech, maybe sometimes. And it's funny is if you look at the teams that are – I dip snuff, do that kind of thing. But you look at the teams that are good at baseball, it's mm-hmm. rednecks. It's the redneck schools. That's the teams that are good at baseball. It's a fact. Mm. I mean, go through all of them from the, all the history. Even when you go – Pepperdine, you don't think those guys are the – even though it's a smart school, you don't think those guys are the rednecks in California? Please, give me a break. Yes, they are. And you go to the College World Series, if if you see three guys not spitting on the ground, you've set a record. So you're, mean, saying, you're saying we're not redneck enough anymore. I think we're tr- – they're trying to not be here. I mm. think they should go back. They used to be 100%. And – I think the the whole I don't want to tell everybody get away from diversity and inclusion and all this other crap that they just fired all the professors for trying, which is bravo UT way to go. Mm. Um, But that's what they need to do. They need to quit it. I mean, you're not going to see that at Oklahoma or Oklahoma State, who are ahead of them in the rankings. Of course, you're not going to see Mississippi State. Yeah, okay, sure. Yeah, they got a diversity coach. Um, you gotta, I'm not saying you gotta be a white or black or, or gay or straight. It doesn't matter. Just stop talking about it all the time and making that the tops, the topic. Cause mm. that's what they do here. Yeah. It does tend to happen. Yeah. Look for David Pierce. I mean, there, there are a number of different factors into the David Pierce discussion for some folks, Tom, and you know this, cause you've followed this program for a long time. There are a lot of people who never wanted David Pierce to be this team's head coach, right? Like they knew he wasn't the first choice when they did their coaching search after Augie Garrido and they're like, well, we didn't get our first guy. So we're not going to root for or support whoever else isn't the first guy. So there've been some folks who are like from day one have always kind of had it out for David Pierce. And I just think a lot of it has to do with that move to the sec, right? Like Steve Sarkeesian had a great year going into the sec. So people are confident that it's going to work. This is David Pierce's sort of last chance to prove that Texas is ready for the sec and if they can't compete, and they are competing, but if they if they can't really stand out in the Big 12, I think there are a lot of folks who are like, well, if it looks like this now, and it's not horrible. You're right. It's not death. But if it looks like this now. They still have Oklahoma and Oklahoma State left. They do. Yep. Yeah. And they, okay. They let, back. Let, let's, let's see if they can win. If they can win those two series, yeah. he's proven he's got some ideas. As, as bad as it is right now and as embarrassing as last night was, and there, there's no way around it, like that that can't happen. He should not get fired today. If anyone's saying that, that's ridiculous. Like the guy has done enough at Texas to at least get the rest of this season, right? Part of me thinks that he should at least get one more season to turn things around too because of what he's done in the past, but he should at least get the rest of this year to see if he can do what you're talking about, win those series, win the Big 12, and, and find a way to get Texas back on track. It's not impossible. I don't have much faith in it, but it's not impossible. His comments are pretty good here. I agree. Which one? Which one you got? They're they're talking about how he needs. Yeah, and I think what they ought to do with all the money that Texas has, and that Texas has a ton, and no matter what anybody wants to believe and when they talk about these buyouts or anything, none of that matters at all. Texas has billions of dollars. Billions, not millions, billions. Go out and buy the best damn pitching coach there is. You're supposed to be the best school at all these sports. Every other sport is showing you up on your top sport. Baseball, basketball, football are the only three sports not winning freaking national titles. Yeah. Go out and buy the best crap. You've got the money. Just go do it and stop acting like, oh, we're trying to play within the guidelines. No, you're not. (laughs) Just go buy whatever the hell you want. You don't think Alabama and everybody else is paying anything they want for these guys? Please. You lost one of the greatest pitchers in in Austin area from Lake Travis to go to Alabama. You really? Why? Mm-hmm. You know, go yeah. get them. You're right. You're right. And that's uh, baseball so far behind also- in the NIL. Agreed. 100%. Chris, yeah. they need to start putting up some damn money. It's just stupid. Yeah. I, I see it. I know a bunch of the booster guys. I'm not a booster. I'm not going to act like I am. I don't have anything to do with UT. Uh, but it, I mean, I know a bunch of those guys put the damn money where it needs to be and just get it going. Cause this is, it gets to a point where it's almost depressing to walk around this town and watch people in all their burnt orange sitting here telling everybody, Oh, we're the greatest. No, you're not. And you haven't been in a long damn time. Yeah. So it's- spend some money and become the greatest. It takes money to make money. Well, that's what you got to do right now. They got to spend some damn money. I like it. I agree. All I right. I hope the guy they start really hard too. I do too. I do too. Cause like you said, they've got the money. So use it.
Use it. Use it. We got Chip Brown. Chip we, Brown. We've got Zay Look at Collins. That. Collins. Tom McKay. How are you guys doing? How you doing? Today's looking at me like, would you get off my show, you piece oh, of crap? I, hey, there talk you your, are. I see that in your I'm eyes. Not, I ain't talk your <laughs> shit, Tom. I was enjoying it. Talk your <laughs> shit. Uh, preaching, man. I was enjoying it. I love oh, hey, Zay, I got, I got one for you here. This is, And you're just because you're younger, not because you ever used your pronouns. This is my share to every person who wants to tell me their pronouns. Here we go. I understand. I just don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I feel the same way. That is, that is you go you go up to the East Coast, you get a few pronouns thrown at you. It's pretty rough. <laughs> Woo! Uh, hey, there's nothing like the saltiness of Tom McKay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling you, it is it is legend. Mm. So guys, yeah. I'm gonna have I'm gonna bow out if that's cool. And gotta get going here. Yeah. Tom, I'll great you job. Have a great show. Talk to you soon. Um, Zay, be good. Great job, Tom. See you, man. (laughs) Thanks, Tom. You guys be good. All right, fellas. I'll uh, I got one question though before before I uh, bid y'all adieu. Zay, the warrior shirt after you gotta rock it. Oh, you gotta rock it today. It's only fitting. This is the end. That's why I'm wearing it. (laughs) This is the end. He's saying goodbye. Saying goodbye. I'm just paying my respects. Okay. It's just like a funeral. Instead of wearing black, I'm going to support what's left of the Warriors. The big three is Dunzo, old Clay Thompson, Donut, oh. 0 for 10. It's tough. Can't come back from that. Yeah. You're you're not a Warriors fan, so you, you get a pass. Like, I, I never understand the sports fan who wears their team's shirt or jersey the day after a loss. It's like, dude, I'm always a fan. No, you're supposed to be depressed. You're supposed to not even want to look at anything to do with your team until, like, the next time they play a game. I never – like, Texas, every fan base does it. I see someone wearing a Longhorn shirt the Sunday after a loss, and it's like, what are you doing? How are you proud of this right now? But you're not a Warriors fan, so you're off the hook. You've got your different reasons for rocking the Steph jersey today. Yeah, some people might call me Zaymon Green. That's fine. We're both dark <laughs> complected. I get it. But hey, this is it for those guys. And he almost took somebody out too. He didn't get, you know, Trey Lyles. He held them up. Mm. But you know, they let it ride. They said this team's getting their ass whooped. This is it for them. Good run. Good, Good run. run. Great run. All right, gentlemen, I will uh, I'll part ways. You guys have a great show. It's y'all and Fire the Cannon, so keep it locked in to TSU all day long, and uh, I'll see you all tomorrow. Appreciate you, BK. BK, you're the man. Appreciate you. Hey, in the immortal words of Judy Brown, happiness is a choice. We're happy you're spending some time with us, Chip and Zay, holding it down on the midday. Texas Sports Unfiltered. Um, special thanks to all these incredible sponsors. If you're on the YouTube channel, all the incredible sponsors around our, our heads, making it possible like Tom McKay, audio visual consultations, um, give them their, give them your love, uh, because they make it possible for us to broadcast here on Texas sports unfiltered say, um, let's start with your t-shirt. And what we saw last night, Clay Thompson, really? This is how he's going to go down? Over? It's tough, tough, man. That is so sad. It was depressing. I'm not going to lie. I know a lot of the Spurs fans are probably very happy. A lot of Mavs fans, Rockets fans, teams that the Warriors just used to beat the crap out of these last eight to 10 years and to see it go down like that, the plan being a 10th seed, it was tough. It was tough, but yeah, it was tough. I feel bad for those guys. Like I love winning. I know people hate the Patriots and they hate the Yankees and some people hate the Bulls, even though they had Jordan and stuff, all these dynasties that we've seen in sports It's easy to hate because we like change. We want to see somebody different hoist that trophy, and then that means our team isn't winning it if this other team always is. So the Warriors, they're a part of that, 
And I, I, I get why people hate them, but if we go back and just watch basketball, it's some of the greatest basketball I've ever seen. Oh, in yeah. My life. No, I'm just talking about 0 for 10, zero points for Clay Thompson. It's, yeah. it's like, you know, he's a free agent after this season. And for that to be the way that it ends, possibly for his time with the Warriors was just like, Oh my God. Yeah. He's, like he's washed, man. It's sad. And he's he a was, Hall of Famer. He's a Hall of Famer. Like yeah. he's one of the top five greatest shooters to ever hoist them up. So he deserves the flowers that, you know, he talks a lot of shit and he always talks about him having the four rings. I know it hurts him that he had that ACL and Achilles injury. I mean, he was rehabbing from the ACL injury and end up tearing his Achilles in that process. So he ended up missing two more years and father time also caught up with him. So where him and Steph are is not even close. Like Steph hasn't had those types of injuries. He used to have ankle problems his first few years in the league, but he got a good ankle brace and he's over that now. So Steph could play till he's 40 with his stamina and it's just, you know, adrenaline that he plays with. He could play until he's 40 clay, He's going to get paid somewhere else, but that team is going to take a gamble. Like, I wouldn't pay him over 20 mil a year, not even close, not even close. And I know with the NBA packages and stuff with the TV and you see it on Max and, you know, HBO Max or whatever the hell you see it on, all these different outlets to where these guys are getting paid buku bucks, I still wouldn't give Clay over 20 mil a year. That's ridiculous. With what you saw last night, you're going to get a lot more of that than what we used to see when the Warriors were winning championships. So, yeah, it was a tough watch, but you got to give the Kings their credit. They handled their business. When your third option goes for 32 like Keegan Murray did, it's hard to win. It's hard to win. That's, you know, that's, you're trying to stop De'Aaron Fox. You're trying to stop Sabonis and Keegan Murray gives you 32. Keon Ellis, who did a great job guarding Steph Curry, forced them to over five turnovers. He had a good game shooting the ball and just making it tough for the Warriors defenders. And yeah, it just seemed like a team that was a lot younger and just had a lot more life and a team that just had so many problems. I mean, think about Draymond, all the stuff that he's caused that team. You know, like that's toxic. That's a lot. Like Steph Curry was crying. They played Orlando a couple of weeks ago and Draymond got booted again. And Steph Curry was crying on the sideline, Chip. Yeah, because like, he's like, we're going to have to win this game. Like they were trying yeah. to get into the playoffs basically without him. And yeah, now it's kind of Steph seeing, you know, foreshadowing to now like, yo, we're not going to make it. We could have done something. Like, they have good players. Pajinski, that was a good pick at 19 from Santa Clara. The lefty looking like Jack Harlow, that was a solid pick. He's nice. Chris Paul, that wasn't good. Chris Paul was their IT Horton chip. <laughs> Chris, Paul, Chris Paul was the Golden State Warriors IT Horton. He gave them nothing, nothing. He was just out there getting cardio all season long. For for 20 million? Is that what it cost him? Gosh. I yo, Chris Paul again. Love you, Hall of Famer. You're ring chasing. But bruh, this is this is it. You're gonna be like Stockton. You're gonna be like Barkley. Malone. You're gonna be one of those greats that just ran 30 point eight million. It's tough. Chris man. Paul made this year. It's tough. It's tough. <laughs> Grip them. Man. Completely grip them. So Kaminga, I'll take him. Andrew Wiggins, there's some off of Andrew Wiggins. Like this was the second year in a row he disappeared from the team because of family issues. And again, take care of your family. Family comes first. Absolutely. But the first time, okay, cool. That it had to happen to anybody. The second time, you have to miss time. Right before the playoffs, do the family issues. Now it becomes a little suspicious. What do you have going on? You know, like what's – I get mental health's a very important thing, but you're getting paid way too much money for you to just be sitting out at the end of the day. 
So there, there's that balance, and it's tough. And I might sound foul for saying this, but you're getting paid a lot of money. So now, and they're keeping it pretty closed off. Like, they're not really saying why he left both times. It's just, you know, personal issues. But with what he's giving you on the court, which ain't much, he was really good in 2022 when they won the championship. Really good. He might have been the second best player after Steph. But now, 2024, and that's crazy how things could just shift like that. Like, you're two years away from winning the championship. Now, you're on rebuild mode. Like, I seriously think about trading Draymond off. And Draymond said, you know, something yesterday in the presser about, ah, oh, well, what they've done for Steph and what they've done for me, they're going to protect us because what we've done for them. So I expect them to give Clay what he's due. No, nah, Draymond, that's that that's you're, you're delusional there. You know, like this team, Mike Dunleavy, who took over Bob Myers, it, it's time to rebuild. You could keep Steph, but after that, Draymond, you're too toxic. What you have going on, it's not worth it anymore for what you're bringing to the table. And Clay, whatever you're doing on the court, it's not worth it either. Everybody moves on. Pippen went on to the Rockets in Portland. You know what I'm saying? Like Dennis Rodman left the bad boy Pistons and went off to the Spurs. You know, like teams leave, players leave. That's just the business. So, hey, Warriors, I think they should rebuild. It's been a fun run. Let's see what happens with uh, the Pelicans and the Kings for that eighth spot. Well, who had a worse night, Clay Thompson or Texas baseball? Yikes. Texas baseball, so they're playing UT Rio Grande Valley, and we mentioned yesterday that they were putting Jared Thomas, their leadoff hitting first baseman on the mound. This used to be Pan American, right? Yeah. Yeah, UT Pan American, they changed it? Okay. <laughs> yeah, Texas has like a 41-6 and six record against UT – Pan Am, UT, Rio Grande Valley. And Texas last night gave up 20 free passes, 11 walks, and nine hit batters. And Texas had what? They either had nine or 10 pitchers in this game. And 10 pitchers and nine, nine of the pitchers had 11 walks. So all but one pitcher gave up at least one free pass. It was a nightmare and it just kept going. They were down uh, 13 to one. Uh, they battled back with six runs and and ended up losing 17 to 9 but this was this was a disaster it's got everybody questioning everything about Texas baseball and um 20 free passes like i reached out god bless kevin rodriguez the texas baseball sid i said 20 free passes, is that a record? Is nine hit batters a record? And he said, we don't have those records. Like, the program has been so good, they've never kept futility records like that. So we don't know if it's a school record, nine hit batters in one game. But that uh, Texas is ERA is now 5.12, which is the highest it's been since 1999. And, of course, David Pierce took over the pitching from Woody Williams. He fired Woody Williams. Woody Williams didn't leave. David Pierce fired Woody Williams to take over the pitching. And it has been one of those seasons that uh, it's going to test everyone's patience and we got to see if this team will continue to to battle moving forward cuz like we said they're they're 
in fourth place in the in the Big Twelve. Um, I I don't know. I'm. I think Jeff uh, Jeff Howe is is doing a a deeper dive into what's gone on with LeBaron Johnson and. You know, he was the preseason Big 12 pitcher of the year. And right now he's got an ERA over five and a losing record. So um I I yeah yeah is is what I've got. Yeah, I mean, and that's kind of the thing, like the fact that you're not even keeping records for bad play, that's kind of why you see an overreaction from the fan base. Because this is kind of uncharted territory for Texas Longhorns baseball. When a team like UT Rio Grande Valley, like, you know it's not good if you change names of the school within a 10-year span. That's not good. That, that means the team you're not playing is not very good. You know, like what UT Dallas was or whatever, the UT Baptist or Houston Baptist is now Houston Christian. You should always beat the crap out of Houston Christian. You know, that's just what it is. I don't care if they have all those El Paso kids on this team, whatever, like you're the University of Texas. If you lose this game, cool, but getting blown out in the fashion that they did last night, that that was pretty embarrassing. And, yeah, David Pierce is, no pun intended, wearing a lot of hats this year. You know, that was the big move. Like you said, oh, firing old Woody, which I like Woody. You know, let Woody get his feet wet. You know what I'm saying? Let Woody, you know, get used to just get acclimated to the culture and everything. He gave Woody no chance and then said he wanted to take over. Okay, then no pressure on your back, bro. And now it's not looking good at all. And the pitching has gone completely AWOL. And that's the thing that Coach Pierce is supposed to be taking over and fixing. So, yeah, he took it upon himself to blame himself for the loss and where this team is at. But, yeah, you could turn it around. Her Tom McKay preaching, like, you could easily turn it around. It's just for a Tuesday night game to have the opposing team, no offense to Rio Grande Valley, but they should not be playing up 17 on the horns at the dish. Those things yeah. should never be happening. And that's just point blank, period. David Pierce, he owns it. Do I think he needs to get can? No. Let's not let's not wild out here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like let's this is still a new era of college uh sports with baseball too. Like those guys, there's some 24, 23 year old dudes on these teams. You know what I'm saying? Like these guys have seen a lot of pitches. So they have certain patience that other guys might not that are younger in the game. That's why you see a lot of walks, even though it's still unacceptable, but guys are willing to sit in that box and be patient for the right pitch. And if you're going to keep throwing it outside that box, then, hey, we're just going to take our base and win this game ugly and slow. So we saw that last night. They got to get it together. TCU ain't no punk. They're not playing up to their standard, and we'll see what happens. But you win this series, you're back feeling yourself again. But yeah, there's some things like LBJ that need to be figured out. Yeah, yeah, that uh, that's uh, that's the mystery because you're the Big Twelve preseason pitcher of the year. Yeah. You were you were dealing last year. He's got that great tilt on his fastball, guys. Uh, He's got the he's got the makeup or well, excuse me. He's got the physical tools to be a a big league pitcher. It's the question with LeBaron has always been between the ears. Can he just go out there confident and deal? And I don't know what's going on in there now cuz it was clear last year and now it's getting cloudy. Um Come on, yeah. CB. Come on. Well, here's the deal. And I know CB asked earlier, what do I remember about the coaching search that that led to Pierce getting hired? That was when Mike Perrin was the athletic director. And it was it was a mess. I mean, they they talked to UCLA. They they you know, they they got about five coaches raises. 
including Jim Schlossnagel at TCU, who's now, he was Chris Del Conte's baseball coach at TCU. Now Schloss is at A&M and has the Aggies at number two in the country. Um, and about five coaches got raises, UCLA, Oregon State, LSU, uh, TCU, and, and then Texas hired David Pierce. And I thought, you know, David Pierce is a grinder. He's won everywhere he's been. He's been in the postseason everywhere he's been. He's been to three College World Series in the six complete seasons he's been at Texas. The 20 season, he was off to a 14 and three start. It got canceled because of COVID. So it just, it's not good when you fire the pitching coach and take over the pitching and the pitching is where it is right now, because this is where you've got to start to do this or the end of the season and they can still get hot and they've only dropped one big 12 series to BYU of all people. Um, I blame the schedule, man. They ain't used to playing Thursday, Friday, Saturday, blame the schedule. Come on. That's BS. Yeah. I mean, I've, I, I love the way David Pierce's teams fight. And even last night, you know, they put up six runs late. I mean, they were still scrapping and clawing, but they just miss, they miss having that tip of the spear pitcher. They've had a go-to guy who sets the tone for the rest of the staff. It was supposed to be LeBaron Johnson. Yeah. It's not happening. And Ace Whitehead has been the best pitcher on this team. And and then, you know, Gage Bame is a closer. But, yeah, this uh, – yeah. Yo, Jack, I'm with you, man. Bring in Brad Pitt and Jonah Hill. We need something. <laughs> they need something like them old Oakland A squads back in the day. But – yeah, I hear you, Chip, and it's frustrating. Like, David Pierce is such a good guy, and he's had some really good teams. I know it's felt like a really long time since 2005, and that's just kind of it. Like, with Texas baseball, it seemed like you were always winning national championships, and to go on an almost 20-year drought, that's different. That's different. So, again, it's a little bit of entitlement, <laughs> Longhorn fans are a little bit entitled. It's okay. You know, I, I get it. I am too. I'm a part of that too. But I can also see myself being entitled and understand why. And that's due to the history and the success that has came with it. You know, I've been seeing Augie's clips go around. You know, when the baseball team's struggling, you see Augie clips going around where he's cussing out the team and stuff and this, that, and the third. That always shows up. And R.I.P. Love him, but he ain't walking through that door anytime soon. So right now you just got like game by game, series by series, and see what happens. Hopefully some of these guys, because David Pierce talked about it, you know, he said some of these guys just aren't very confident. That's not, you're the coach. Let's put some confidence in them. You know, let's get them on that All-State dude on Major League who had the voodoo stuff, whatever it takes. You remember my man, the All-State dude on a uh, Major League? What was uh, – God, what's his name? God, I just know him from the All-State commercials. Black dude, Major League, he had the voodoo stuff. Oh, uh, Jabu? <laughs> yeah, I don't know his real name. He's not that good of an actor for me to know his real name. But something, like you, you need to put some confidence in these guys. Like take a day off, take them to the boat that Roddy Terry's been taking all these transfer portal recruits on and stuff that goes around Lake Austin. Do something, something. You know, all the resources you have here, you got to change it up. You got to change it up because right now it seems like everybody's just vibe is not very positive. And if you're not having fun playing baseball, then shit. Come on now. It's, it's already a mentally taxing game as it is. Like, that's why all these dudes used to do tobacco back in the day. You know what I'm saying? Like, you drink beer on their off days, pitchers and shit. So, 
Yeah, man. Dennis Haysbert? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't name one movie that Dennis has been the man in. You know, he's a good side role guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was in um Black Classic, well, Way Into Excel, Whitney Houston. She yeah. was on the pipe, but she still looked good. That was her love interest and in that. But, yeah, Dennis has never been the man in anything. All stack commercials, funny. No. Pretty good. This is my favorite Augie rant of all time. And this is what I would be channeling right now if I was David Pierce. That sounds horrible. This might be too bootleg, even for us. <laughs> I mean, that guy, there's like no other. There's not, if this was a fight or a gang fight, something you all know nothing about, we would be dead. Damn. Yeah. And I'll just come visit you in the hospital when your jaws wired shut. And you're drinking through a straw because you've been punched in the gut 55 times. I'm like, where does he come up with this stuff just on the fly? Yeah, that's freestyling right there. But his team's always responded. I mean, the, the most famous rant is the one where he comes in the locker room and he's like, if I tell you to take, you take. And he's like, who you think you're fucking with here? This isn't a game. This is life. And then the team wins 11 in a row and wins the conference after that. Mm. Like, that dude knew when to go volcano. And you can't talk that way to these kids no more, man. I don't want to be old guy getting off my lawn, you know, with the shoddy, but you can't talk to them that way. They go hit that portal so quick, man. Like Dion's cornerback. You remember uh, Dion's cornerback that hit the portal? That was the big five-star. Whatever his name was, Dion ate him alive at the press conference earlier this year. I saw y'all put it out on 24-7 Sports. When they asked Dion, it was about September. Why isn't my man five star getting any playing time? And Dion just straight up told the media, Well, you gotta be held accountable. You know, you can't be missing class, you can't be missing meetings. You gotta know what your assignment is, you gotta know what your role is. He just went off on dude, and it was just about I was thinking at that moment, oh, this dude hitting the portal soon. That's not how you go about it, Dion. Maybe for some of these guys, but not for everybody. Oh, five star, he's gonna find another place. Sure enough, that portal opened yesterday. My man gone. Gone. No. Gone. I would you say don't. start take a look at him, but shoots. With what I'm hearing with the secondary, I think they might be good. I think they might be comfortable with where they're at. Because yeah, man, Terry Joseph and Blake Gideon, they got some on their hands. Are oh, you back year. to calling him Terry Joseph now? Oh, oh that, Terrence ain't no disrespect. Okay. okay. Terrence ain't no disrespect. Again, okay. the brothers ain't they on they're not on the hot seat. We established that they're not on the hot seat, but we got a close eye on them. We got a close eye on those two, Kenny Baker, which Kenny Baker. Doesn't necessarily deserve, but it is what it is. You wanted this, Kenny. You wanted this, bro. You could have been in Miami. 
Like, you left Miami. You left South Beach. That's how I know you want this. Because my wife, when we were in South Beach, I was like, yo, do we got any more money to spend on the hotel here? She was like, no, we need to get back home. And I'm like, you sure? She was like, yes, I got work. And I'm like, well, they'll be fine, right? The kids will be fine, right? For a couple of days. You let them know. She's like, no, we got to get back home. It's Miami. So to leave that, to come here, oh, yeah, Kenny Baker, yeah, he definitely wants this. So what comes with that is a lot of expectation. And I like what I'm hearing from Aaron Bryant. I like what I'm hearing from Jare Bledsoe. That's good. We need more of that. Spring game Saturday, what's a lot of people going to be looking at? That interior line, how they look. Because the defense is always a little bit better than the offense in the spring game. That's a given. They're always just a little bit better, and everybody wants to see the points and stuff. But, yeah, why, guys, not on the hot seat, but let's just got an extra eye on them, Cyclops. I love it. I love it when you start riffing like you're talking to the team or talking to the coaches. <laughs> hey, it's a beautiful thing when my man – Zay starts coaching and they should listen. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Um, see, see, Jack, I'm with you. I the kids ain't tell those kids that Gen Z, it's a different generation. Y'all saw Caleb Williams with the painted nails and stuff. Nothing wrong with that, but it's a generation. Peyton Manning didn't have painted nails when he was coming out of the draft. Tom Brady didn't have painted nails. I'm just saying it's a different generation. you got to talk to these kids differently. Some of them can take that. I'm sure Ant Hill, he could take that old school Augie Garrido flow. But some guys, nah, man, they piss in their diaper. Some guys can't handle that no more. And it's just their upbringing and how they were raised. And it's just what it is. You got to be, got to adapt. Well, We'll be talking to uh, Reese Atwood, the sophomore catcher for the number one ranked Texas softball team. She leads the team and is on the verge of all kinds of records, including RBI for a season. She's over 60 RBI. She batted uh, 636, 7 of 11 at the plate with a home run in the sweep of Baylor last weekend. And um, we'll... We'll talk to Reese Atwood coming up here at 145. Yeah, I might have to ask Reese. Can she talk to the baseball team? Let's get a little pep talk. <laughs> Let's get a little pep talk. Maybe talk about, you know, the things that she does on a daily basis that those dudes can apply to their life. You know what I'm saying? Because whatever Reese is doing, working. For real. Number one working. team in the nation. It's working. I've listened to what Reese talking about. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just... 61 RBIs, she is raking. She is raking. Raking. Like, yeah, man. And, uh, yeah, she's from uh, from Sandia. Sandia, Texas. Where is that? Sandia is... See, you gotta look it up. That's how you know. <laughs> I'm looking. It's a population of three three hundred seventy nine. Ah, man, three seventy nine. It's down in South Texas. How south? Down in South Texas. How south? Are we talking here? Like just barely north of Brownsville. Okay, that's real south. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, so that's all she know is softball. That's all she had. Yeah. They ain't got they ain't much to do right down there, those parts. Like the next biggest city is Corpus Christi. So I'm sure she played her uh, select ball, club team ball down in that area. But, yeah, it kind of goes to show you if you're good enough, they'll find you. Oh, yeah. And you know she's probably on uh well those select teams she was on, let's see here. Travel ball, three-time national champion for Premier Girls Fast Pitch. 
with Hot Shots premiere. So, yeah, she was the number five overall recruit in the country. Yeah. And the number one catcher. Yeah. Yeah. So, good get. Good get. <laughs> yeah. Only a sophomore. Yeah. As Keith Jackson would say, only a sophomore. Um, okay, Zay. Um, let's get a couple mentions in here for our incredible sponsors like uh, Apple Leasing, getting you into the car you really want to be driving. And they lease every make and model of car. So they don't care what car you pick. You, you're picking whatever you want. They just want you to be happy. And you're going to be, um, you know, you're getting into a better car than you thought you could afford because you're not paying for the future trade-in value of that car, which is the single biggest markup in a new or used car. And let's be honest, cars are not a good investment because they are a depreciating asset. They drop in value every single day. So you don't want to buy that. You want to lease it. And when you're leasing from Apple leasing, you're not paying for the future trade in value of that car. And you're getting the part that is under warranty, brand new, new car smell. And whether you want to keep your payments in the $400 range or get a Range Rover, they've got you taken care of. Apple leasing, they make it so easy. You want to change, make and model of car two, three years into your lease? No problem. The easy lease. Everything about Apple leasing is easy. So give them a call today, 346-9977 or visit appleleasing.com. Tell them Chip Brown sent you. Um, Zay, we are T minus four days to the orange white Texas spring game. Here's the deal. They're playing it rain or shine. Now in According to the uh, latest forecast, the weather is supposed to hold off till like three o'clock, which would be great. So don't uh, don't change your plans, kids. Don't change your plans to go out and check out these Longhorns. In the orange-white game, it will be on LHN, but of course, players would love to have you, you know, out there with them, giving them some uh, hooping and hollering. And here's the deal. It's a three-day event, this orange-white game. So you're, you're going to have, um, on Friday, you've got Texas baseball against TCU, 6.30. Um, Saturday, you got Bevo Boulevard starting at 9 a.m., then you've got the Texas football autograph session on Bevo Boulevard. Uh, they will give you a poster to have signed by the players. And you've got um, Longhorn City Limits going. You've got the team shops open. You've got uh, the Sentimental Family Band live at Longhorn City Limits at 10 a.m. And then the Bevo Parade at 10.30, stadium gates open at 11, Reckless Kelly live at Longhorn City Limits at 11.30. Of course, Bevo Boulevard's rocking. And then uh, the Orange-White game at 1, and Texas baseball against TCU at Dish Fog, 6 o'clock Saturday night. Okay. Yeah, it should be a good day. You've been down to Bevo Boulevard? Oh, yeah. It's a good yeah. atmosphere now. Oh, yeah. CDC's done a hell of a job of getting that on and popping and had good artists come in. Big Boy from Outcast. He's been there performing. Uh, Ludacris, Nelly, CDC. Yeah, he's put out some old school OG hip hop. Halo Black. Who? Alo Black. Oh, Alo Black. Yeah, yeah. I thought you were calling mm. me something crazy. I don't know what to say. They give that. they give you the they give you the country, you know. But they 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 mix it up. It's not they give you a little little uh, everything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. A little hip hop, a little country. <clears throat> 
whatever you need. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Does country have beefs like hip hop? Because right now we got the whole Drake, Kendrick Lamar beef. No, no one has beefs like hip hop where people oh, yeah. end up dead. <laughs> All right. Let's. <laughs> that was in the 90s, man. Things have changed. Nobody ends up dead anymore. That was in the 90s. After Biggie and Pac, everybody's like, after, okay. after Suge Knight went to prison? Yeah. Yeah, Suge and Diddy's fall. And both of them Shug. will be in prison very soon. Suge showed up at the BET Awards and it it all went to hell. <laughs> all right, let's uh let's get to the Coda hotline here. Let's bring in the star catcher for the number one ranked Texas softball team. She has over 60 RBIs for the season. She batted 636 over the weekend in sweeping Baylor with a home run. Uh, the one and only Reese Atwood. Reese, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I mean, we're uh, we're happy to be talking to someone on a number one ranked team, Reese. You're only a sophomore, um, yeah. and you're from Sandia, Texas, down in South Texas. Yes, sir. How far is that from Brownsville or Harlingen? Um, I'm not sure. I think it's like three hours. I'm close to Corpus Christi. Okay. Closer to Corpus Christi. All right. But you were like on this three-time national championship select team. I mean, how does a girl from Sandia end up on the national champion select team? Uh, I think just like, uh, I played for a team out of Houston. So being able to be flexible with my travels and um, go up there and make the practices and games like that. So when Mike White is recruiting you, who were you choosing? You know, who, what were your other schools? And did you pick Texas because of his cool accent? <laughs> no, uh, I was recruited by a couple other schools um, out of like Texas and other states. I won't really mention them, but uh, I definitely chose Texas because I like being close to home and I love the atmosphere here, the culture, everything that Coach Y and the other coaching staff has to offer uh, definitely fit in with my values and standards. So I definitely knew right away that Texas was my home. Yeah, Reese, when did you get into softball? Like, when did, you know, somebody put a softball in your hand? And when did you decide to be a catcher? I'm sure you went through multiple positions, but when did you settle in on, okay, being a catcher is going to be best for me for the rest of my career? Yeah, so I started playing, like, t-ball, like most, like, baseball, like little t-ball. And then I think after that, I got, like, picked up by a little travel ball team and started playing softball after that. So uh, going from there, it was like a local team. And then I kind of just worked my way up until I made it to one of the national teams that traveled all over uh, the country to be able to get the exposure. I think catching wise, I started maybe like sixth grade. Uh, we were all like lined up on the sideline and whoever could throw the ball hardest was the catcher. So that's how I got to <laughs> Well, it's, it's been, um, you know, it's been a, a fun year so far. I mean, take us through it. You all, and you've got a lot of young players. I mean, you're a young player for crying out loud. Um, but take us through the the win over Oklahoma and especially the way that the game two ended with the relay from the outfield to you. Uh, that was a heck of a collision there at home plate, but you hang on to the ball and end the game with a play at the plate. Has that, have you ever been in that situation before? I don't think I've been in a situation like that. It was definitely like a really cool experience for this team, especially being so young to play two uh, really tight games, actually three. The first game was pretty tight too towards the end, but the two games um, Saturday and Sunday were definitely special. Having the crowd there and all the energy, uh, our fans were great. They provided us with the energy to get us through those uh, long hard games. And I think this young team, it's really like, a testament to like our talent and our standards and culture here at Texas to be able to make those big plays, even though uh, we might not be as experienced as the Oklahoma staff with all their like older players. I think that it's really like special for us to come out here and like make a show like we did. Yeah. 
Talk about the relationship you have with the pitchers. I mean, you and Sitlali and, you know, the rest of the girls, like, y'all have really great chemistry. Estelle, Tegan, all y'all just have really good chemistry, and it seems like, you know, really good communication. Where does that come from? Just repetition with, you know, practice? Or does Coach White make an emphasis of that? Or is there something that just y'all go about yourselves on leading? Yeah, I definitely think like the chemistry, uh, the chemistry of the whole team is something special and it's something we've worked on all season. Uh, coming in at the beginning of the year in the fall, we spent like a whole like two weeks on just like team culture, working on the standards of the team and like what we are expected as a to represent like the University of Texas. We did uh, different uh, other sports like we played basketball, we played beach volleyball, we even went and did like swim things. And it was like really cool as like a team to come together and just like have fun and create the relationships with uh, I think five freshmen coming in a transfer like it was really cool for us to create that bond going into the fall and preseason to be able to uh, know your teammates a little better and have your back in certain situations and always be there for each other. Well, talk about um, your pitching staff because um, let's start with Tegan Kavan, the freshman. Uh, because, you know, she got put in a tight, tough situation early in the season at UCLA, and she totally answered the bell. What what have you seen from her? What impresses you about uh, Tegan Kavan? Yeah, Tegan's a great, uh, great athlete. I mean, she comes out here and she gives everything she has. She's extremely competitive. And I think like her mental side of the game is just so strong being as being a freshman. I mean, you could throw her in against Oklahoma, UCLA or any of the top teams in the country and she's going to uh, perform like no other. Uh, I think that's really special, like being a freshman because uh, a couple of us freshmen last year, I think like we struggled in big situations like that. Um, and for her to come in and show that she can handle any type of pressure situation is really huge for her and this team. Yeah. yeah and then sit Lolly and Estelle check and, um, you know, um, Mac Morgan. I mean, just talk about, cause y'all have the ERA and the hitting, um, you know, the confidence of this team right now. Yes, sir. Just I think the, the pitching staff in general, it's just every pitcher has like their own specialty. And I think that's what's helping us a lot right now on each one of them. Uh, I see their work in the bullpens, like um, each practice, it's extremely focused. They know what their plan is. They're working on what they need to like get better at. And I think that's really being like shown on the field is uh, having all pitchers being able to like have the others back, like a stealth check coming in with a different look uh, from the left hand side and shutting down Oklahoma was extremely special for her and for this team. Uh, Sit Lolly Gutierrez is just outperforming and doing her thing on the field. It's really cool to see. So, yeah. Yeah, Reese, what keeps y'all so even killed? Because, again, you're the number one team in the nation. A lot comes with that. A lot more publicity. A lot more people want to talk to you. Heck, you're interviewing with us right now because y'all are doing so well. But at the end of the day, how do you handle that and stay composed and not get a big head and just stick to softball? Yeah, I think it's like really uh, special for this team to like understand. I think we were placed uh, at number one previously and we kind of went behind that. And I guess like the nerves got to us and we lost uh, a couple games after that. And just being able to learn from that and come in this weekend after um, getting the number one spot again, being able to prove that like we deserve it, beating Texas State and sweeping Baylor was really important for us. Uh, I think just treating every game like it's our own, like we're not going to go and uh, look at the opponent. We're going to play our game. If we play our game, we're going to give it the best we have to be able to win the game. Yeah, and now you're uh, <clears throat> you're going to be heading off to Kansas um, this weekend. But talk about, you know, some of these young players like Katie Stewart and Caden Henry um, and what you're seeing from them because – that's a lot. I mean, you have some young players in some key spots. Yeah, our young talent is definitely like outmatched. I think uh, Katie Stewart and Caden Henry have definitely pulled through for us in multiple situations throughout the year. I mean, they're great athletes. They're here for a reason, and they're proving uh, their spot and representing Texas like really well, especially being so young. I think it's really key for us to be so young because I think we have 
like the idea of, okay, we don't have like as much to lose. So we can go out there and fight like as hard as we can. And it's not going to like affect us as much. So I really think like, it's cool seeing uh, this young team be able to like compete with uh, some of the top teams in the country. Yeah. And Katie Stewart hit the the home run that beat OU in, in game three, um, big spot for her, but Reese talk about your, you know, you're, you, you're getting it done everywhere. I mean, at the plate, it's been a phenomenal year. Uh, did you make any adjustments coming into your sophomore season? Um, because it's, it's been a great year for you at the plate. Yeah, I think growing from my freshman year was definitely working on more uh, having like an approach at the plate, game plans. Uh, I think as a freshman, I kind of was just out there swinging and uh, I kind of caught myself back into that uh, like habit uh, in the middle of the season right now. And I'm kind of working my way out of it. But just like learning to like trust your hands, trust yourself and being able to go out there and like perform under pressure, uh, pressure situations was key for me to like learn uh, coming from my freshman year. And it's definitely a lot easier when you have like a great team that's right next to you, being able to compete in the same way. It's just, they're always picking you up, always on your side and being vulnerable in those situations is really something that has helped me uh, be able to perform the way I'm doing. Reese, what's it like playing for Coach Mike White? I mean, obviously the accent sticks out, but he's a genuine, nice person. We had him on the show a couple of weeks ago, and he's just a great interview, and he raves about you girls, but he just seems like a joy to play for. Yeah, Coach White's great, especially uh, with his like knowledge and experience in the game. It's always really cool like learning from someone who is so great at the sport that you're playing. Uh, hearing him talk about the game is sometimes like unmatched. I think he's just all around a great coach, great person. He really inspires us to be better, pushes us to be our best. And it's definitely a great experience for me to be playing for Coach White. Reese, what did the win over Oklahoma, the series win over Oklahoma do for this team's belief? I mean, you know, Mike White, when he took the job in 2018, he said, we got to close the gap on Oklahoma. Obviously, they're the three-time defending national champion. But, you know, talk about your belief. If you face them again, you know, in the postseason, um, your, you know, your belief and confidence that you can compete with them. Yeah, it definitely gave us all the confidence so we can do it. Um, I think all along we've known we had the talent. It's just being able to like put it together like on the field. I think definitely like in those pressure situations like I was talking about earlier, there's been times throughout the season where we've kind of uh, had a little fear in our eyes and didn't uh, necessarily step up to the occasion. And I think now like knowing that we have Katie Stewart who can, you know, hit a two run home run in a big situation and win the game for us and just like seeing that and knowing, like like I said earlier, how young we are, I think it gives us the best chance like this year to go like make a run and um, do it, like win the whole thing. I think that's our goal, like as a whole team is to win the World Series and we'll definitely see Oklahoma somewhere throughout that process. So uh, it's gonna be another battle just like every game. Well, you are clearly one of the leaders of this team and um, you're also involved in uh, the Military Warriors Support Foundation which yes. is a fantastic cause. Tell us about that. Yeah, so my family, um, they do like fundraisers and stuff at uh, one of our family ranches and being able to like meet some of these people is like really impacted me like as a person and a player and knowing like their strength has really inspired me to uh, start to like work with uh, wounded uh veterans and things like that. So it's something I'm definitely gonna start getting into more and being able to show my support for that. It's awesome. Well, I love that Mike White, as soon as y'all beat OU, was talking about, hey, we need a new stadium. <laughs> uh, you know, good timing. But talk about that atmosphere and what, what fans need to, you know, they all need to get out and experience getting out to McCombs Field. Yeah, our fans uh, against OU series and all series have been really like unmatched. I have never played for like an atmosphere like that. And it was like really important to have them there against like those big teams. Uh, I don't think they understand like how much that affected us. It carries our energy over going into those long seven innings. Like it can get a little tiring and just having that energy continuing throughout the entire game was really key to our win. Uh, a new stadium would definitely be nice. I think the thing right now in like women's sports is if you build it, like they will come. I think it's really being shown in basketball, volleyball, and just 
being able to get that out here to softball and it's coming. Like I have a feeling like the sport's growing so much that it's true. Like if you build it, like they will come. All right. So who's got the, who's the, who are the big personalities on this Texas softball team? Who's, who's going to be cracking jokes and keeping everyone light uh, I think Caden Henry is like a big <laughs> jokester on the team. Mia Scott, and there's a lot of girls on this team. This team is like full of uh, energy, like funny, everything. Everyone's pretty much like their own. It's really like special to play for. Yeah. Reese, what's your game day preparation? Like, do you have a routine? Do you, you know, put on a special pair of socks or do you have to eat the same meal before every game? What is the day in the life for, for game day for you? I'm not very, like, superstitious, so I kind of just keep it simple, have my meals prep my way, but I'm not very superstitious, so I don't have, like, a necessarily, like, everyday, like, game plan for, like, the day. That's okay. good because so many baseball players are. Yeah, like, I call it stupid, stupid stitious. It's so <laughs> crazy, but that's refreshing to hear that uh, that you're just like, let's go, let's let's get after it. Um, was there a turning point moment you think for this team that kind of you walked away from it, saying, "All right, we just we just showed ourselves something." Yeah, I think after our loss to Houston at LSU, it really like opened up our eyes. Like, okay, like we have all the talent in the world, but like that talent can't necessarily like win a game. So being able to like use that talent in the right way, like we're not just gonna be given anything just because we have it. Uh, being able to like work through like the tough spots, and I think these Oklahoma or the Oklahoma series was definitely like special for us to see. Like, okay, like yeah, we have all the talent in the world, but we gotta like put it in use like in the certain situations they're gonna like make the game winning plays the game winning hits and things like that well uh zay you got one more because i know we gotta i'm gonna let jack ask a question reese what's your favorite cereal this is from Ooh, our listener favorite. my favorite cereal would be captain crunch ah oh, yeah with berries or just like the og uh just the original no berries original? okay yeah. Solid. Yeah, you got to be careful. You got to be careful because you don't want it to rip up the roof of your mouth. You just got to <laughs> chew carefully. But that is, that is money. That yeah. is money. Reese, listen, we appreciate your time so much. It's great to get to, to meet you and uh, continued success. Uh, it's been a record setting year for you and obviously for the Texas softball program. Continued success. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thank you, Reese. Reese Atwood, star sophomore catcher for the number one ranked Texas softball team. Hey, Zay, that's what I'm talking about right there. Yeah. That's, I mean, sophomore. And she's got that kind of men, you know, mentality approach. You can tell she's a leader on that team. Yeah, you can tell she's locked in. Like you could tell she's all about her business. You could tell this team is all about their business. And yeah, just asking her about, you know, not letting things get to their head because they're number one. And she said they went through that, you know, yeah. they went through that being number one earlier and everybody got a little tight and then they lost that they realized, okay, we could be beating. Let's just play our type of uh, softball and let, where the chips fall, fall, and that's what they're doing. And she's leading this team, especially with her hitting. Yeah, it's probably good that that happened before they played OU. So um, we talked about how the softball team went to number one after OU lost to Louisiana. Well, then Texas ends up um, losing – a game to Houston and then they go to LSU and lose no shame in that LSU is a top 10 team. You're playing them at their place, but that that was the turning point that that was the wake up call. Uh, that's impressive because, you know, I was thinking it might've been the play at the plate, right? You know, game two win over OU or Katie Stewart hitting that two run bomb to win game three against OU. And, and she's, taking us back to one of those tough moments, one of those, you know, tough learning moments 
for this team. And that builds resolve that that starts that kind of stuff lets you know we can get through it. We can we can bounce back. We've got some resilience, uh -huh. uh, resiliency and got to have that. Got to have that. Yeah. I didn't have enough of that in my uh, my semifinal singles match in the club championship, and I went Ooh. down in the third set. Ah man, gotta you gotta use that syringe, man. Come on, come on. <laughs> really? Come on. You just, you just immediately Nobody got Nobody's watching. Nobody's looking. Nobody will know. Man, this chip. God, why is he a little quicker? That first step's a little quicker, huh? I've been in the lab. <laughs> I've been training. I'm lighter. I'm not God, eating bread. I'm, I'm done eating bread. <laughs> now you got me thinking. Yeah, Jack. Jack. Oh, Reese Atwood. Man. He says she's awesome. Yeah, she is. Yeah. That was really fun. That yeah. was a that was a fun interview. You, you never can know. Tell a lot about a person on their favorite cereal, Captain Crunch. Super solid, super solid pick. You're right. It could mess up the roof of your mouth a little bit, but if you let it sit in the milk and soak for about a couple minutes, it's still crunchy, but it lost some of its toughness. Some of its That's, razor's edge. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because those first couple spoonfuls, you got to make sure. Yeah, it's yeah a you got to. That's one of those. Got a little bite. Mm -hmm. Don't don't pile up that spoon because that's when it's going to hit the roof of your mouth and uh, shred it. Yeah, but it's gonna turn your so yeah polished professional. Yeah, Mike yeah. White's doing a lot of great things for the softball team. Yeah. All right, let's talk a little uh, Texas spring football. Let me give a quick shout to uh, Tom McKay, the old man who was doing the show with BK <laughs> right before <laughs> us. I love that his I love that his little uh, uh, identifier box said old man, uh, but Tom McKay he's salty when it comes to his sports opinions but he is the pro when it comes to anything audio or visual in your home the big screen of your dreams he's the man i mean he's going to give you that media room you've always wanted um he's got all the latest technology the sono surround sound um but whether it's the big screen of your dreams the surround sound electronic uh shades new lighting surveillance Tom and his crew bring everything to you. All you have to do is, is call 255-8678. And Tom is going to bring you uh, the best price on big screens and, and handle everything. You don't need to be lugging 80-inch TVs around, punching holes near drywall. avconsultations.com. Uh, write this number down, 255-8678. All right, Zay. Um we are counting down to the spring football game. And I want to start off with special teams here uh, because that's something that we don't really know. Like Xavier Worthy was your punt returner last year. Jordan Whittington was your other punt returner. Um, Keelan Robinson was your kick returner. Those guys are all gone. So we're going to hopefully get a little bit of a look. Sometimes in the spring game, they don't go live with that stuff. But I just want to see the order of who's out there on punt return. And is Trey Wisner out there on kick return? Um, because, look, special teams, you hire Jeff Banks to be your tight end special teams coach and you pay him over a million dollars. There's a reason it's because his special teams are typically the best in the nation. And they have been since he's been at Texas. No one's complaining about Texas special teams with Jeff Banks running the show. And even uh, Bert Auburn, I mean, they got him right. He had five misses through four games and then he made 20 of his last 21 field goal attempts to finish the season. Okay, don't mean to cut you off, partner. I love you. Complaining just a tad bit. I, I'm still confused. Oh, you on, yeah, I'm still confused oh, yeah, on why Keelan Robinson was returning kicks with the club fans. I'm still confused on that. Besides that, though, I'm good. Yeah. yeah <laughs> weird that was, moment. Weird moment. In the biggest game moment. of the year, weird moment. I think uh, 
I think Keelan Robinson slipped uh, someone at 20 and ran out on the field without the coaches knowing it. Um, Because, yeah, he had a broken hand, and he was struggling to pick up the ball twice. Um, Okay. So other than that, um, special teams, I mean, think of the guys who've been running down on special teams, making those plays and helping to make sure that those punts that are down inside the 10 stay down inside the 10 because you've got guys like Jelani McDonald and Warren Roberson and Leonga LaFowle last year who were running down there making plays. Trey Wisner as well. He's kind of the Roshan Johnson. He's like on four of the five special teams units because the guy loves football. He loves contact. He loves it all. And yeah, he ain't all there. Trey Wisner in the best way. I say that in the most, in the best way possible, but Trey Wisner, just seeing the videos of him like freestyling and just cutting up and being kind of the class clown of the team, which you need guys like that. He ain't all there. Like, he don't care about his body. He'll throw it anywhere he needs to be for him to be a productive football player. And, yeah, he loves the game. I love me some Trey's, uh, Trey Wisner. The Soto, baby. Quintravion. Quintravion. Oh. I mean. Pinky up. Quintravion. You know what I'm saying? Quintravion. We call him Trey. So, so what – a Looking at what the roster is now, who would you want returning punts and kick returns? I mean, I kind of want to see my man Aaron Butler back I there. I knew it. I knew it. I, I knew get. you were going to say Aaron Butler. I want to see it. I knew you were going to say Aaron Butler. And I'm not sure where he is in the pecking order. Something tells me he's down in the pecking order a little bit. He's a freshman. I know. Matt Golden and Isaiah Bond. Isaiah Bond may may get the first look on punt returns. DeAndre Moore's back there. Um, Matt Golden, the transfer from Houston. And and then on kick return, I've heard Trey Wisner's name. So um, I'm interested to see if they put a speed guy. I mean, Trey Wisner is fast, but I'm interested to see if they put a speed guy uh, back there on on kick returns because one thing we know, Keelan Robinson, pretty fast. Yeah. Now, he wasn't A.D. Mitchell fast. He wasn't Xavier Worthy fast, but who is? Yeah, Xavier Worthy just set the record at the combine. 4-2. Oh, okay, now this is just, you know, it's the internet. Got to take it with a grain of salt. A lot of fictional people throwing around a lot of random stories out there. But the BS that's going around today is that Adonai Mitchell has diabetes, which means his blood level, blood sugar level, if it's not at the right spot, he could be a little hostile. He could be a little not the best teammate, a little angry, and yeah, that's that's kind of what's going around social media, i.e. Twitter X today. I saw our guy Eric Henry retweet it, which Eric Henry, he took up for AD and was saying, yo, we covered AD all year long. All we saw was a classy, you know, great human being that loves his daughter and came back to play close to his daughter. I haven't heard anything. Again, we cover the team here. We've never heard anything about A.D. Mitchell's attitude or his character. We know that a lot of fake stuff's going to go out there and people are going to try to dig up whatever the hell they need to dig up to crucify the man in order to push him back when it comes to being drafted. But... I didn't believe this story for one minute, and it's very odd that it's going around right now. Yeah. Um, it's it's interesting because I've reached out to uh, people in 80s camp to see if, if they want to talk about this. Um, 
And so we'll see. I was hoping to maybe hear something before the show, but um, yeah, I mean, this is like, really? Come on. Um, yeah. Like, so, uh, so who's Bob McK um, again? I don't know. Because it said some unsourced scout told Bob McKen what I just told you about AD Mitchell having diabetes. Does he have diabetes? That's what I'm trying to. <laughs> like, that's like, I mean, uh, has that ever been a thing? If he does, it's been real hush hush, obviously, especially if you don't know it. Right. Without you slither your way in to everybody business. But yeah, that's come on, man. Uh, I don't get why this would come out. It might be an AM guy, OU guy, who knows? But that's just kind of where we are in 2024. You got to just, if it's not coming from a reliable source, you know, who knows? People could put out anything. But yeah, Adonai Mitchell. I would say no, hell no on this story. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah. Well, what uh, special teams wise, what are you looking for? Um, I mean, I think everybody should get a sniff at punt and kick return. If it's not working one week, try somebody else out. I think you'd have enough guys. We haven't mentioned Silas Bolden coming in. I expect him to, with his you know background coming from Oregon State and all the reps that he had and the speed that he's bringing to the 40 acres, I expect him to be able to do something special teams-wise. It's just a matter of when he gets down here and how acclimated he gets to this uh, playbook. But, yeah, Isaiah Bond, he's in the mix. Matthew Golden in the mix. Aaron Butler, as you mentioned. Ryan Wingo. I even throw him in there like that guy. He might be a bigger wide receiver, but hey, if he could take it to the house and has that breakaway speed and good vision, let the freshman get out there and get a piece of it. But Jonte Cook, DeAndre Moore, you got a lot of guys, you know, it's just a matter of who's going to be the most consistent and who's not going to muff that thing. Because you could be the fastest dude in the world. You could have the best vision in the world. If you can't catch it, if you're a liability because you hear them footsteps and then you soak your draws because you get a little nervous and you muff that thing, like even Xavier Worthy muffed it this year. Him and Jordan Winnington going back to that Baylor game. That Baylor game should have been like a 40, 50 point win, but it wasn't because they were muffing the ball. So as good as Xavier Worthy was, the best in the nation this past season, he even had his troubles with muffing it at times. And that's going to happen to everyone. You're human. But it can't happen a lot. It can't be consistent. So that person that you're comfortable with just catching the ball, because a lot of those opportunities are going to be fair catches anyway, I'm good with. Like, yeah. protect that ball. Let's let Quinn Ewers get out there. I know you might want to make a play, but at the end of the day, it's just about getting possession of that thing. So find somebody that can do that where you're comfortable putting back there, Jeff Banks, Steve Sarkeesian, and then we'll go from there. Then the vision and the speed, all that stuff will come to play. But, um, yeah, Trey Wisner, like him on kickoff, I'm good with that. He's the winner. He's a dog. Let's do it. Yeah, I mean – Let's do it. All right, offensively, you got a you get a player that you're excited to see. Yeah, I want to see where Amari Nye Black is. You know, um, just been hearing really good things about Gunnar Helm and Juan Davis, but Amari Nye Black, he was a big time sought after dude coming in the transfer portal. I mean, he was the number one tight end in the transfer portal. So, yes, he has to get used to this very thick playbook that Steve Sarkeesian is throwing at him. And I know it's coming at him fast, but 
yeah, I think he could be a huge part of this offense. I mean, one thing about, you know, Quinn Ewers, Quinn Ewers sometimes is going to have to be smart, which he's learning this game by game, but use those check downs, that long, deep shot. I know you want to improve with that this year. And, you know, Xavier Worthy, he was better. Adonai Mitchell was good on the deep shot, but it, it, it still could be better. And it's due to what these defensive coordinators are doing. They're not allowing that to happen. They know what Steve Sarkeesian likes. They know how good Quinn Ewer's arm is. So they're not letting those deep shots really happen. So that intermediate game, that's going to be huge. And guys like Amari Nyblack that could catch it and make things happen and is a matchup nightmare due to his size and athleticism, he should be a huge focal point for the Steve Sarkeesian offense. And yeah, I love Juan Davis. I love Gunnar Helm. Absolutely. But they don't have the athletic gift that Amari Nyblack does to change the game and really cause havoc for these linebackers and these safeties trying to check them in the SEC. So I want to see where he's at and I want to see his chemistry with Quinn Ewers and how that looks on Saturday. Amari Nyblack, number eight. In your program, number fire one number. in Zay's heart. That's a fire number for a tight end. Oh, Kyle Pitts was rocking eight, or still rocks eight, I want to say, with the Atlanta Falcons. He didn't give that number to Kirk Cousins because the NFL wouldn't allow it due to how many Amar or, um, Kyle Pitts jerseys they've made already. But, yeah, that's a cool number for a tight end. And I expect him to have that agility that a number eight would. Like, when you have a single-digit number, that means you're different, you know? That means you got something in that bag, you know? So let's see what I'm – we'll see what uh, he's talking about coming from Alabama. Yeah. I want to see the – I want to see Jaden Blue. Okay. A.K.A. Jameer Gibbs. Um, and – I want to see the. I want to see the whole receiving core. Yeah. So you really could see Jaden Blue separating himself from C.J. Baxter this year. Yeah. I mean, I think Jaden Blue. He averaged six point one a carry last year. Um, C.J. averaged four point eight, and they both should have gotten a lot better in this off season and should be a lot better by the time they hit the field um, in late August against Colorado state. I just get the sense that Jaden blue. It's a contract year for him. He's NFL draft eligible after this season. And he said it, I asked him and he said it. Yeah, that's the plan. And he's approaching everything that way. And I think Tavondre sweat, and Byron Murphy approached it that way last year. And, and I just think Jaden Blue has the tools because he's put together physically. I mean, he's he's one of the fastest guys on the team. Yeah. And and he's I mean, they list him at you know six feet, 198 pounds. And I mean, he's not. I thought he put on. Doesn't he want to be two hundred five? Didn't he say that? Or yeah, he, he the, wants to be. He wants to be two hundred five yeah. come the season. So, um, because he he said that he was right around one ninety three last year, and he wants to be about two hundred five this year. Yeah, because you're gonna get more reps. You're getting hit more. Yeah, and now, I, that's I love. What I'm worried about. Um, can he? When it comes to week seven, especially in this conference, week eight, where's he going to be? How's his body going to be? Because I thought that's what set Cedric Baxter Jr. up last year, like the injuries. Like he didn't get off to that start that he may have thought he was going to have or that we all thought he was going to have due to him just having those nagging injuries. So now with a bigger workload for Jaden Blue – is he going to be durable enough to take that? I think he can. It's just the dude did sit out his senior year to, you know, keep his body healthy. You know, I don't know if that's because 
Well, that is because he was hurt in middle school. He even said it. He was hurt in middle school. He was hurt in, you know, high school maybe a little bit, nagging injuries. So now you're getting those reps back again on the college level, on the SEC level. Will he be good? You know, like that's that's what I'm going to have to keep my eye on, with, you know, with him because, yeah, he has the talent. He has that home run ability every time he gets the rock. And I love the Jameer Gibbs comparison too. You know, that dude could absolutely fly and was a big part of what your Lions did this year in 2023. So if he could get anything of what Jameer Gibbs did for the Lions, for this Horns team, hey, man, sky's the limit. Yeah. Yeah, and this this is a – with this offensive line – this should be a team that can run the ball. Agree. And and be ground and pound. Yeah. Maybe even a little more than Steve Sarkeesian's used to. 10 mil, you better be used to it. What do you mean used to? 10 mil should change everything. Uh, 10, no money has you acting different. It should. You should go against the grain. Yes, whatever the defense gives you, take it. Don't get greedy. Please don't get greedy. Take it. Trey Wisner, get Jarrett Gibson along, Christian Clark, whatever. Whatever you need, get those guys going. Run the football. J.J. McCarthy threw the ball 10 times in the national championship game. Yeah, to the point where NFL teams are like, or whatever, the analysts are like, do we know he can throw it in the NFL? <laughs> That's what I want. If it, if that means if we have to question if Quinn Ewers could throw it and it means that comes with a national championship, so be it. Quinn, you better have a good pro day. Quinn, you better have a good combine. Sorry. Sorry, bro. Hey, if, he, that, if it has to be at Quinn Ewers' expense on how he gets drafted, which Quinn, he's mature enough to say, hey, I'll take that. Quinn's that well, type of person. And he already had a good pro day throwing yeah. to exactly. Mitchell and Worthy. Hell, half the scouts were like, damn, exactly. look at Quinn Ewers. Exactly. He's spinning it. Yeah. So, Sark, we don't need to prove anything. Quinn's worth. These wide receivers, they're going to get to eat. But, man, let these running backs eat. They, want, they know you love the pass. Everybody in the nation, when Steve Sarkeesian's name comes up, and they're like, hey, how would you prep for Sark on your game plan? Well, Loves to pass. He, he runs some crazy stuff, but he likes to put the ball in the air and he'll test you deep. He's going to test you deep. You just better be ready for it. Everybody knows. Everybody named Mama knows. So, Sark, use that to your advantage, man. Use that to your dink and dunk. Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid, they just won this last championship, dinking their dunk in their way to the Super Bowl. Everybody was taking away the deep shot for Patrick Mahomes because he's made a living off it the first few years in the league. So now teams are like, okay, we're going to keep them safeties back there, and we're not going to allow this dude to have them home run hitters. Patrick Mahomes is just so damn good. He's fine with Deacon and Duncan his way up the field now. He's that mature. That's why he's arguably the greatest of all time right there with Brady. My opinion, like he's adjusted to how teams are playing up. He's like, okay, I'm just going to use 87 the whole way up the field. That dude's going to find them spots in the zone, them soft spots, and we have the chemistry to where he could change routes mid-snap. Anything could happen because we've been playing yeah. here so long. So take Brock what Purdy. give you. Brock Purdy dinked and dunked my Lions. See? Exactly. Brock like, Purdy's like, legs beat my Lions. And, and Quintavious is coming back. We're coming back this year. We're putting on that weight. We're eating Chick-fil-A again. Yes, sir. Spicy chicken sandwich deluxe. Side of nuggets. What's wrong with you? Large he's waffle just, fry. He's just, hitting the, he's just hitting the weights a little harder. A peach milkshake. Oreo milkshake. We doing it. <laughs> hey. He, he can do both. He can hit the weights and have his Chick-fil-A back. Chick-fil-A's got some good milkshakes. They got some good milkshakes, man. Their ice cream, very underrated. Very under. I know some people are a little off about Chick-fil-A. I, I get it. They they do some things that, you know, but hey, man. <laughs> That's some good chicken. I'm sorry. What you going to do? Sue me? That's some good chicken. 
I can't hey, help it. Here's can't something help. to here's something to put in your mouth that will protect you. How about the Brain Vault mouth guard? I mean, developed by Austin's dentist, Dr. Greg Eckert, Dr. U E C K E R T. Um, and if you need a, a teeth cleaning or any dental procedure from a staff that is uh, the best at what they do and has the great personality and bedside manner, Dr. Greg Eckert. Um, but the BrainBot mouth guard is changing the game. I mean, if you've got a competitor in your household, whether it's flag football or cheerleading, lacrosse, soccer, the brain vault mouth guard proven patented to reduce the effects of concussion. So forget going to the sports store and getting a piece of rubber and boiling it in a pan and then stick it in your mouth. Let a dental practitioner fit you for the brain vault mouth guard, which is already in the NFL all over college football and should be in your mouth or your young competitor's mouth. Uh, when it comes game time, because you want to play hard, but you want to play safe. Brainvault.com to set up a fitting and uh, cover three, cover three on Anderson Lane, um, cover two at 183 in Lake Creek. Uh, the ultimate place to get high end food and hang out with your friends and watch your favorite teams. Um, the Sean Adams Prime Rib Sandwich. Come on. I mean, you gotta you gotta have the prime rib sandwich. Uh, grab a friend, go to lunch, get those Parmesan fries. Your life will be changed. But they've got great salads. They got great steak. They've got ruby trout. I mean, it's it's high end food and a great vibe. A great vibe because it's a sports restaurant. Um, and of course, Salt Traders Coastal cooking. I mean. Zay and Jesse will tell you the scallops are to die for. This is um, the seafood restaurant of Jack Gilmore, who started Jack Allen's Kitchen. So you know the food is primo. And of course, happy hour every day from 3.30 to 6.30. Dollar raw oysters and the best selection of oysters in Austin. Oh, yeah. There's reason enough to get into Salt Traders Coastal cooking for happy hour, 3.30 to 6.30 every day, 3.30 to close on Monday. So make your plans now. All right, Zay. Um, it's It's been a wild and, and wooly day. Um, one of the other newsier nuggets uh, is the fact that um, – Arizona has another defensive tackle who um, Bill Norton, who has set a visit to Texas for this weekend for the orange white game. Uh, this is uh, a guy who had 32 tackles, two and a half tackles for loss, five quarterback hurries, three pass breakups, two forced fumbles. And he was originally planning on returning um, to Arizona for his final year of eligibility, but he is now in the portal. And of course, he played for Johnny Nansen, who was the defensive coordinator at Arizona last year. And this, um, as you heard from our man Hank South yesterday, recruiting guru over horns 24 seven. And don't forget, I mean, the 60% off annual membership to horns 24 seven is coming to an end. Kids don't, don't regret missing out. Just go sign up and see for yourself, everything we're talking about, but Bill Norton, there's already a crystal ball for Bill Norton to Texas. Say they're trying to fortify the, the interior defensive line, I'm still waiting to see if any of these Michigan DTs jump in the portal. Yeah, and we'll see how it goes. I mean, 
Obviously, Johnny Nansen being in the building is a big reason why this guy will probably come to Texas. But, hey, you got to be able to fit in the scheme that Pete Kukowski is giving you. Kenny Baker is going to have to adapt to the new guy coming in and making sure that he understands what this team is all about and what Steve, Sarke Steve, Steve Sarkeesian expects from everybody. So, yeah, you know, it's – Solid, solid. You want these things. You know when it comes to the interior the defensive line, this is what is needed. But, again, like I said yesterday, guys like Aaron Bryant are starting to get the attention of these coaches on maybe deserving more playing time. Dre Bledsoe had a great Saturday in that second scrimmage. So these guys coming along that might be backups to Vernon Broughton and Alfred Collins, I think they still are going to make a name for themselves. And Tia Savea, not to mention him, like there's guys here that want to prove that – you know, you don't have to go to the transfer portal. You don't need this extra guy. I'm him. Like, I'm going to step up to the plate. Just let's get ready. And once August comes around, hey, we'll be able to lock in. So, hey, we know that this team has needed more guys on the defensive line. But I think that doesn't take away from the fact that guys are still improving that are already on the roster currently. Yeah. Yeah. Jure Bledsoe is an interesting guy because – that scrimmage on Saturday, that that was an eye opener. And now, you know, I've been hearing that Texas might take two interior defensive linemen from the portal. And now maybe do you rethink that and say one, um, especially if you have Bill Norton who played with Tia Savea. So if you have Alfred Collins and Vernon Broughton as your front line guys, and then you bring in Norton and Savea as your second rotation and then Jare Bledsoe and either Aaron Bryant or Sadir Mitchell, depending on what kind of shape Sadir Mitchell's in come late August, that's a pretty good six man rotation. You want a six man rotation and, and especially at the nose position, because that's typically the guy who's taking on all the double teams. You might want, to rotate four guys in there if you can. And Texas would be in position, but I get it. It's a tricky balance, right? And a guy that could be affected by it is Jare Bledsoe because he's a third year sophomore. So he's starting to feel like it's my time. He's now showing the coaches that he might be ready to play um that it really could be his time on the field and this is going to be interesting to see what texas decides to do because um as i've written as you and i've talked about that's the top priority in the portal outside of maybe a punter but um texas has, has not relied on a true freshman punter since Michael Dixon, who was pretty darn good. I mean, he yeah, ended up he winning was Ray, Ray Guy. Yeah. <laughs> he was a high, huh? <laughs> he was good night, yeah, he was part of that Australia kick program. Punter. Yeah. The punter. I mean, so, and punter, you I mean, Ryan Sanborn was outstanding last year. Mm -hmm. He averaged 47.5 yards per punt. He was pinning people like that that stuff is you take it for granted until until it's not there yeah good point uh talk about jamon tap obviously yeah. him going in the transfer portal i guess he saw the writing on the wall with guys like colin simmons and trey moore and the rest of the edge rushers that are ahead of them or were ahead of them yeah i mean jamon tap um i like jamon tap he's a he's a good edge setter in the run game um and you know had a couple flashes as a pass rusher um 
he just found himself behind Ethan Burke and Baron Sorrell, and then they bring in Trey Moore and Colin Simmons, and it starts to look like, you know, it's a long road. I think Jamon Tapp would have been in the rotation. Um, but you've got, you got, I mean, you got 10 guys at that position. Um, and <clears throat> he probably had an NIL opportunity. Let's see if he, he's from Louisiana. Let's see if he ends up, you know, somewhere in Louisiana, maybe with a D line coach who knows what he can do, but, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's one that, you know, we have to see if Colin Simmons and Trey Moore and Ethan Burke and Baron Sorrell have the seasons that they want to have. No one will be talking about Jamon Tapp come the season, but I thought he was a guy who was headed in the right direction. Like, you know, Justice Finkley, like Jamon Tapp to me has made more plays or has had better flash than Justice Finkley. And and Justice Finkley is still on this roster. So, um, you know, that's a, that's a position where it's loaded. I know everyone's like, oh, there's going to be other guys that leaving Texas. And you look where there's a ton of players in a position group and receiver, defensive end, um yeah those are those are the position rooms that have you know 10 10 guys and offensive line i mean obviously there's some guys who feel like they they've just waited too long and they want their turn and whether it's the right call or not uh you're seeing some of those guys uh, get in the portal so, you know, Peyton Kirkland, Jaden um, Chapman, but. Yeah. So what's that? 87 scholarships. Yeah, I think we're at 87. 87. Yeah. Jermon Tapp, he had some flashes last year and you thought he would be a part of the process and just understanding that his time isn't now, but it's coming. And when you bring in guys like Trey Moore out of UTSA that lit up that conference and had 14 plus sacks, like if that dude's coming in and bringing in that heat. Well, Jermon Tapp, you're behind him. And then you bring in a freshman who everybody's been talking about of being like the next big thing. And you've been hearing this freshman getting compared to Von Miller and stuff and Colin Simmons. So if he's bringing any of that to spring and you're Jermon Tapp and you've been scrapping and clawing, you know, trying to do these last few years, that's tough to swallow. That's tough. When a guy 18 years old should be in high school, probably not even going to his prom or coming in and beating you out. That's a very hard uh, pill to swallow. We've been hearing a lot of good things from Colin Simmons, and I haven't heard much from Tap until today. And that's because he's entering the transfer portal. So, again, sometimes you just understand that, hey, this ain't me. The transfer portal and those opportunities are going to give him something to look forward to down the road. And I hope he ends up at a good place where he's comfortable and he could get that clock and showcase his talent. But that's not at Texas, unfortunately. And yeah, it just means they're really high on the guys that must be ahead of them. Like I'm still high on Colton Vosick. Like again, a lot of that comes from his background and his pops being the coach at Westlake and him winning state titles and stuff like just with Colton Vosick, it's always been about him getting that college weight to where, you know, Pete Kwiatkowski and Steve Sarkeesian feel comfortable throwing them out there. Cause that's another guy that could be fighting for scraps, you know, fighting for that third, fourth spot. And this is an Austin native. So I expect Colton Vosick to, stay the course a little longer than somebody like uh, Jermon Tapp, who's from the Louisiana area. So, yeah, this is a part of the business. Now they're down to 87, and Tapp won't be the last. Yeah, I mean, Billy Walton, you know, 
he's an edge guy and it's you know you'd like to see these guys stick around develop because you never know i mean if colin simmons well, first of all, if Ethan Burke goes after this year, if he has the kind of year he wants to, Baron Sorrell's going to leave after this year. So your two guys, your two frontline guys could both leave. We know one is leaving and Trey Moore's draft eligible after this year. Colin Simmons is going to stick around. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's going to be opportunity and that's, that's where you have to have, um, the vision the you have to be able to see what the coaches have in mind and, and the coaches have to do a good job of telling them, look, we see you taking over when these guys leave, if that's how they really feel so that they have incentive to stay. But, um, all right, Zay, let's get to the, the chip shot. I'm going to talk about this 80 Mitchell situation because, um, obviously there's a tweet that, uh, went out today. Um, I don't even know what, uh, this what from Bob, ML, Bob football. McG- ML football, um, at underscore ML football report, Texas wide receiver eight, you know, Adnan Mitchell is almost uncoachable and his issue is his blood sugar. A scout tells, Bob McGinn. Um, and I just heard back from a couple sources who uh who say this is like ridiculous. Um, one source is a Georgia source who said the kid had great character here. Um he's such a bleep, you know, why did Georgia tries so hard to keep him. Um, the coaches at Texas love him and his work ethic. I mean, he was a go-to guy all year for um, Steve Sarkeesian, including the third and 12 play late in the season at TCU, the 35 yard reception that allowed Texas to run out the clock. Um, and, Look, he's a dog. I mean, that's what he is. He's a dog. He wants to he wants to be the reason that you lose. And if that's going to rub some people the wrong way, then um you know, this is this is I hope this doesn't get uh I I hope everyone does their homework. Let's just put it that way. I hope everyone does their homework. Yeah. The NFL has private investigators who look into these kids. And if you really want to know something, I mean, that's the dirtiest little secret. The owners, the owners basically employ private investigators to do background checks on the highest picks or the projected highest picks so that they don't invest tens of millions of dollars in a guy who's a time bomb. Yo, oh. David Stern had to tell Carmelo Anthony right after Melo beat the hell out of Texas and dropped 33 and end up winning the national championship at Syracuse coming out of 03 draft. David Stern, then commissioner, God bless his soul, had to tell Carmelo Anthony, yo, these thug ass friends you got, cut them off. You ha- you better cut them off because they are going to mess all your money up. And these GMs and front office people, they're not going to invest in you. Cut these thug ass dudes off. And Carmelo Anthony did and ended up having a Hall of Fame career. So, yeah, you're right. They do their due diligence on figuring out who you are as a person. That's why I always joke about, you know, talking to your second grade teacher and your YMCA coach and your, you know, lifeguard that taught you how to swim when you were four years old. Like, yeah, they're going to do their background check on you because they're paying you millions of dollars. You're too big of an investment to take lightly. Yeah. And I mean, what more do you want on the field? Like this is a guy who caught, you know, um, 10 plus touchdowns, including a 
touchdown catch in his fifth straight college football playoff game. Like this is a guy who came through at every turn. He caught the game winning touchdown for Georgia against Ohio state in the semifinal with less than a minute left. He caught the go ahead touchdown in the championship win over Alabama, the national championship win over Alabama in 21. I mean, as a freshman, like this dude has delivered on the biggest stage and he goes to the combine and runs a four, three, four and nails all the measurables there. So this is, you know, this is pre-draft, pre-draft stuff. Yeah. And, you know, he's a, he's a dad. He, you know, I, I've gotten to know his parents and I reached out to his dad who I've, we've talked about. He's a guy who's, you can see on YouTube with uh, Arsenault and Mitchell as a comedy team in the nineties that were on, you he was know, on comic uh, view. Yeah. Def jam. Or, yeah. Def jam. That's what he was on. Night at the <laughs> Apollo. And you know, his dad is awesome. And I just texted with his dad and his dad's like, you know, we don't know where this is coming from, but the rumor mill is obviously hard at work. We'll let the, you know, the interviews that AD does with the teams and the people closest to him, you know, tell his story for him. And I'll, I'll say this. I asked, Brock Bowers at SEC Media Days about A.D. Mitchell. He loved A.D. Mitchell. Like, he was like, that dude is a big guy who plays, like, small. Like, he's he's that fast. And he's like, the guy just, you know, made play after play. He's like, love playing with A.D. Mitchell. So, if Brock Bowers didn't like playing with A.D. Mitchell, he would have just said, I wish him the best. Yeah. He went on and on. Dude, if he didn't have a daughter, he probably wouldn't have been at Texas. To right. be honest, he probably would have stayed with Kirby Smart and went for that third national championship. Right. He didn't he didn't like the fact that every time he got with his daughter, she didn't know who he was. Yeah, that's sad. He was she was Iceland was being raised by his parents in, you know, outside of Houston and AD wanted to have her in his life and have her know who he is. Yeah. And he, she looks just like him, yeah. like just like him. Yeah. And he's, you know, he's a guy I think who's no, that the U of H game where he got to see her and the Horn social media team did a good job of capturing that. That was a good moment. And that kind of showed the type of guy he is. Like, he's about family. He's about football. It doesn't seem like he's about all the other distractions that come with playing the game. Like, for this story to come out, absolute trash. Absolute yeah. trash. Come out literally. He would have heard something. Like, for the draft. yeah, he's been a Longhorn for over a year now. Like, we would have heard something. Oh, yeah. Yeah, trust me. Yeah, we would have heard something. We would have heard something. So, but. and he's a, uh, you know, I don't know. He, his family's great. Like his mom, you know, they're. I hate it for them that this is happening. But look, Ad Mitchell is a big boy. He's going to get asked questions, and you know. Yo, it'll be mucked up if the dude didn't even have diabetes. Like, come on. <laughs> right, right. And you I don't know. You heard about that. Yeah. Right? I mean. Like, that's a big deal. It depends on, I mean, the insulin, um, you know, treatment programs are so good now that you can have insulin, um, you know, basically pumped into your body once it recognizes that your body needs sugar. It used to be you'd have to give yourself a shot or you'd have to, you yeah, know, like take some sugar. And all that right. Stuff. Yeah. You'd have to prick yourself to see where your blood was. Um, and that that's gotten so much better that, you know, you can kind of 
go undetectable on that. So, um, yeah, I haven't, I haven't, uh, asked anyone specifically about the diabetes, but, you know, even if he does have it, there are more and more players playing with that situation, um, and managing it just fine. So, but I, there's no doubt that AD Mitchell's a dog. Like he, he wants the ball in the pressure situations. And if that's a crime, forget it. Like, forget it. Cause I'll take AD Mitchell. I'll take him over Xavier worthy, honestly. You know? Yeah. Cause yeah. he's a big bodied guy who can fly. He's got huge catch radius and he wants, he's not afraid. He wants the ball on the big stage. So um, yeah, th this one is, you know, I'd heard that there was a rumor out there about AD and I'm like, okay, what do we got here? And look, someone, someone's going to fall in love. I know the ESPN mock draft did not have Tavondre Sweat being selected in the first hundred picks, which obviously would be a reflection of the of the arrest um you know that was bad timing that was bad timing i mean there's no two ways around it and um the fact that it was a teammate rear-ending him that caused him to you know get out of his car and blah 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 um i mean if look if they were driving when they shouldn't have been driving then that's on them and they're gonna have to answer for it um but Let's uh, just watch the mock drafts over this week because A.D. Mitchell is seen as a guy who, you know, would go late first, early second. It's a loaded receiver draft. We know that. And the quarterbacks, the quarterback heaviness of this draft is going to push entire positions down, which means there's going to be great value probably for like the Cowboys. Like Jonathan Brooks might be there at 56 because entire position groups are going to get pushed down by the number of quarterbacks who are in uh, demand. I mean, yeah. we're talking about, you know, five, maybe seven quarterbacks, but either way, A.D. Mitchell, that dude is uh, the real deal. The real deal. I mean, is there a is there a game this season where he struggled, mucked it, mucked it up? No, 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 no. If anything, you know I he mean, didn't get the ball enough. Well, and you throw a back shoulder on that last touchdown pass instead of throwing it high, and maybe it's Texas playing in the national championship. So, um. And they were trying to get him the ball. Like they were trying to throw it to A.D. Mitchell because he's been so good in the red zone. I mean, he had 18 red zone targets, more than double anyone else for the Texas team this past season. So that's why um, Amari Nyblack so important this year. Because I don't know if you have that A.D. Mitchell with that catch radius in the red zone where you have to be better at. Amari Nyblack could be that guy that has the athleticism to do those things. But all right, Chip, before the right call, we got about four minutes left until Fire the Cannon jumps on. But shout out to Covert BK, Covert Automotive Dealership, been doing it for the greater Austin area for over a hundred years. Seven terrific brands to choose from G, Chrysler, Dodge, Ram, Cadillac, GMC, and Buick. They provide the customer of a high quality selection of new and pre owned vehicles. Go to covertbk.com for all your latest specials and inventory. Nobody beats a covert deal. Not now, not ever. All right, Chip. Well, last night, the New Orleans Pelicans lost to the Lakers in the play in game for the seventh seed, which means the Lakers will play the Nuggets in the first round. I got the Nuggets in five. But Zion Williamson got hurt again. God so bless. Sad. So sad. He was going for 40. He was dominating. He was Catching dominating. Bob Duncan, getting to his left hand, finishing, jumping. Blocking LeBron. Blocking Bron. He was on one. 
And sure enough, right when the game is tied and close in the fourth quarter, three minutes to left, uh, three minutes left, he has a nice hook over Anthony Davis and just comes down on that knee, seems uncomfortable. They have to take him out, and we don't see him for the rest of the game, and the Lakers end up going on a run and winning it. So Pelicans got to play the Kings on Friday night for the eighth seed in order to play the Oklahoma City Thunder. But a lot of us feel bad for Zion Williamson and his knee issues, not his ex-girlfriend or ex Sneaky fling, as the kids say, porn star, or excuse me, she's retired, former porn star, Mariah Mills, who went off on Zion and made fun of him, Chip, for getting hurt and made a video. Like, look, there's nothing like a scorned woman. Nothing. I've never had to deal with it, but I'm sure there's women out there that we're in love and are scorned and feel done bad and completely lose it. There's men that do it too. Completely lose it. She's not handling it well at all. What's and her I name? Mariah Mills? Mariah Mills. Are you don't look up her videos now? Come on. Let me give you away for that. But I got her, I got her on bootleg with yeah. the video I'm she made. For your bootleg. Yeah, here we go. The video that she made clowning Zion for getting hurt and losing the playing game yesterday. Check it out. This is just a message. You'll never be LeBron James, ever. I don't know, just, that just came in my head just now. I don't know why. But yeah, you'll never be LeBron James. Sorry, sit this one out tonight. I told y'all last year, this person is a disgrace to the NBA. He has no morals or morality. What makes you think he's gonna be the face? <laughs> that man knows he's playing on a bad knee like literally when we were together his his knee was messed up when we were together when we were sleeping together he literally couldn't do certain moves all freaking night honestly and truly i really hope they keep that man zion williamson bench so the pelicans can actually make it to the playoffs this year <laughs> Sorry, hold up, man. Hold up. The knee's getting in the way of the sex game now. It's one thing on the court, but in the bedroom, too. He couldn't do certain moves. He couldn't do certain moves, man. This is a former porn star. She's I love all. that a porn star is talking about morality. <laughs> Stop it. Come on. This man has Don't no do morality. That. Don't do that. Don't Wait, do that. What? She was getting she was getting her money in a different way. That's all. She was just getting her money. Entrepreneur. Come on. Come on now. It's Zion. He's in the wrong. Come on. Okay. Zion, if Zion, Zion out here catching cramps in the bed and stuff. That's not a good look. That's not a good look, man. If Zion doesn't get hurt, CB wants to know. Yeah. They win that game. Yeah. The Lakers were imploding. LeBron looked a little winded. You know, LeBron's still amazing, but he'll have spurts of showing his age. And that's why it's Nuggets in five. But I will tell you, before Megan and Rocky come on, I will tell you this. Going up against the Nuggets, Michael Porter Jr., if he plays well, he ain't got no heart. Because his brother, Jonte Porter, he just got banned from the league. You remember when we talked about that betting scandal with the Toronto player? That was betting on the unders and stuff. Yeah, they just found out all this stuff. They banned him from the league. So that's Michael Porter Jr.'s brother. If he plays well, he has like Kobe mentality, like no heart, like no care. He better not. If he if he shoots badly, we get it. You're a normal human being. Like your brother just got banned from the NBA. You got family problems. But that plays the Lakers' favor. If I'm somebody on the Lakers team, I'm talking to Michael Porter Jr. Like, were you betting too? I'm talking all type of shit to just get them off their game in any way because you need everything you can get going up against Joker in them. So keep an eye for that. You know me. I'm messy. I'm petty. But Mariah Mills, she wrong. Hey, that's why we love you. Per se Hilton, baby. Always right. a little extra right there at the end. All right. Let's, uh, let's bring in Megan and Rocky. What's up, ladies? Uh-oh. Okay, no, here we go. Mute. 
Y'all on mute? Nope. Oh, there's the mute. We're back. No, yes. We can hear. Can you hear us? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we're back. See, all we we're did back. was look at the microphone. Look at that. It decides to work. But I'm glad the music played. Okay. Hey, guys. Hey. Yeah, that woman was bitter. I love it. Uh, that's really love it. All you needed was the fire the cannon music. That's it. That's it. Just needed a little jump. And your microphone was like, oh, yeah, we got to work. Got a little I was like, up. okay, it's time to work. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, listen, We, without further ado. Oh, Chip, I have something off. to show you real quick, though. Oh. I enjoyed your episode of the flagship yesterday. I listened to it on my evening walk. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it was really good. You and Eric, Henry. Yeah, Appreciate it, really it. Yeah, it was good. I like the, there was some good stuff in there. So go check it out. People who haven't Appreciate checked it out. that. All yeah, right. Erica is actually going to sit in with Zay on Monday. Um, so there you go. Yeah, we were lucky to have him a couple weeks ago. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. Great. yeah, yeah. Great. it was a good episode. Thanks. You got it. Well, <laughs> y'all have a great show. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. We don't need to play the music again. But right. hey, you want to hear what we have to play? All right, ready? <laughs> go. Got it. Oh, got to give a little shout out. Selena's birthday. Selena's birthday was yesterday. Yeah. And I mean, that's greatness. He had a jam. Got a jam. <laughs> so get your inner Selena ready. Yes. Right. Welcome. Welcome. Yep. Happy birthday, Selena. Yeah. Forever and ever. She would have been 53. Oh. Yeah, 53. She's okay. born in 71. Oh, look at that little bit of knowledge nice. that I do with I don't I can't do math right now. <laughs> yes. She's, yes, she is um three years old, three and a half years older than me. Yeah. And she's my, my, my sister's age. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. That's amazing. Oh no. My sister's younger. Okay. <laughs> Welcome back to fire the cannon. How are you? Yeah. You know, hanging in, it's been a, my heart is still heavy and we're going to talk about it. We got a oh, lot to talk what about. Happened? I know it's almost <laughs> like something weird happened with Texas, uh, Texas, Texas sports. Baseball. Anything for Selena. Yeah. 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 There you go. I love it. Um, Thanks, CB. Yeah. So that was drama last night. Um, there we'll talk about it. Yeah. We'll get into hot it. seat, hot seat, like burning hot flaming seat. Yes. Yes. Um, uh, so yeah, we'll talk about baseball. We'll talk about softball. We'll talk about Texas football camp, spring game, all yes. the things happening with spring game. It's like, the rain's going to hold off just for us. That's fine. Um, and then, of course, we'll talk sports stories. There's so many sports stories and a couple that we didn't even get to last week that right. we, have, we have so much. Okay. Right. No, yes. I love it. I love it. Well, before we jump into all that, though, we're definitely, I mean, you're back. We're happy to have you back. Thanks. What what what, what, what have you had going on in your life recently? Um, I turned in a dissertation. It's a pretty big deal. I should have brought it up. It's a massive have. book. The thing's heavy. It's like, heavy. It's damage. 201 pages. It will, be, it will be about 250. Five two hundred and seven by tomorrow because I'm I so this is amazing I sent it to my chair he's incredible sent it to my chair and I was expecting okay a week week and a half off just to let him read it and then he'll get back to me no he was ready to go he sent nice. it back to me the next day which means I have to get back to work which is good because <laughs> I can hurry up and finish sure so that was amazing I so now I just have a little bit of stuff to pump up some things to touch on and and um, a couple of sections to add and love when do I get to call you Dr. Rocky that's what hopefully I in know. June that's hopefully in June. June. All right. Hopefully in June. If all goes well, all hopefully right. in June. Right. So I'm wearing my Texas State shirt today because I am proudly repping Texas State today. It's still, yeah. So still I turned in my dissertation and I'm almost done and I'm so close. That's awesome. And I'm day 52 of 75 hard. You're killing it. Going great. Love it. Yep. I love it. And yeah. you? Uh, I don't know, man. Life's just been kind of crazy running around. I've, we've recently launched, launched a new product at the, at where I work. Mm -hmm. Um, and I've basically taken on all the customer service stuff. I gotta tell you, man, like people are insane. They only ask the most intelligent questions oh, yeah. in the most patient way. Oh yeah. You know, when you, in, in, when you're working with all of humanity, yeah, you only get the best of the best, right? The yeah. cream of the crop. Yeah. But yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a lot, you know, 10, 12, 16 hour days dealing with humans and dealing with responses and dealing with stuff. So it's a, uh, I don't know, I'm a little on edge, a little on edge, perhaps. And, you know, I was hoping I could look forward to Texas baseball for a nice relaxing game against UTRGV. Oh, it should be a cakewalk. Came right? into Austin. Mark the W column. Right. Came into Austin. Uh, who, and they haven't went, like, let's be clear, UTRGV hasn't beat Austin, uh, Texas in Austin. In my lifetime. And mine either, yeah. yeah. Since, since 1968. 
Yeah. Well, restart that count. Restart that count. So, yeah. And we were there last year at the gate. Was it last year we went there no, like or the year before? Ago. It wasn't that three long ago. ago. Was. Trey Feltini was there. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe two years ago. Because we didn't have to wear masks. I remember that. So yeah. it must have been maybe two years yeah, ago. Yeah, I guess it was two years ago. Um, yeah, we went to UTRGV and to, there was a big event at the stadium. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the, it was a long lines. And yeah, we went with uh, Edith Faltini. This was back in the Valley a couple years back, ago. Yeah, at right. UTRGV, like right. at their campus. And that was a fun, great night, except no tailgating allowed. Remember <laughs> yeah. that? You set up all this tailgate stuff and then they come by and they're like, nope, no Ooh. fun here. Yeah, they're like, oh, take your chairs down. No fun here. Put you couldn't even up. put chairs yeah. out in the lot. Yeah. Anyway, but yeah, that was that was fun. Um, and yeah, they came here and it was it was over early for Texas. <laughs> well, listen, and and CB, thank you for bringing this up. I actually have notes to talk about how much I, I got the same vibes too. You said CB said that you got big 2016 Kansas vibes. Uh, yeah, I've got to say we've talked about Texas baseball obviously pretty consistently. Mm -hmm. um, and something I said, you know, maybe a month ago is that there are a lot of parallels between when Texas football was going through you know, about to need the regime change and going through the Tom Herman years and, mm -hmm. you know, the struggles that we had there and where Texas baseball is now. Right. And I feel like, you know, CB, you bringing up that, that Kansas game. I, I have to agree wholeheartedly last night's loss uh, to UTRGV really felt like that, that miserable moment of when Texas lost at Kansas in 20. I, I have to say it, it feels like not, I mean, I, I don't want to overstate things here, but I can't recall in my lifetime, that was probably one of the worst performances from a Texas team that I've seen. And I was at Kansas, right? It, I put it up there with that kind of performance. Wow. I, you know, it was. And it, it's not that they're not the higher rated athletes. What, I mean, what went wrong so quickly, so badly? <laughs> How much time do you got? L listen, I think, you know, again, just to recap. UTRGV beat Texas 17 to 9. 17 runs. 17 runs. When was the yeah. last time Texas gave up 17 runs at home to anyone? Yeah, it's, it's much less uh, a smaller yeah. school. It's been a minute. Again, school. again, the last time UTRGV beat Texas was in 71. Um, but the last time they won in Austin was back in 58. So we're talking, I mean, it's been a long time. Again, 58. we'll reckon back to a couple weeks ago, these midweek games uh, where Texas dropped the game against uh, Texas A&M Corpus Christi. <laughs> and that felt pretty rough, right? This, this feels worse. And every time we feel like they got some momentum, like the way they fought back this this past weekend in the Sunday game, the way they fought back was at Houston, right? Mm -hmm. The way they fought back with, you know, to get those eighth and ninth innings to get all those runs and make it exciting. And like, okay, every time we feel like this is going to be something that gives them momentum, mm -hmm. then they just trip on their face again. Yeah. Yeah. I, so it's, I don't want to, it's like, oh, they're not quitters. They're, they fight back. They finish. They came back and they won those games. Oh, I'm not calling them quitters. I'm saying, oh, they lay an egg in a game. Listen, I, we've talked about consistency all year. Yeah. That, that consistency is has been our, you know, Pee Wee's Playhouse word of the, the month, basically, <laughs> this whole time. The, uh -huh. But I've really got to say, you're right. I mean, we've talked about this. Baseball has been so wildly up and down. We know the talent is there. Mm -hmm. we, we know that's going on. But this, to me, you have to put squarely on the coaching. Mm -hmm. There's just no excuse for it. Um, there were a lot of questions before this game started. Uh, it was announced just before it that Jared Thomas was going to be starting as a pitcher. Jared Thomas is one of the best hitters on our team and is our first baseman. So that raised a lot of eyebrows. Just that he was starting at pitching, right? And, and this is the first time he has pitched in a college game, right? And gave up fifteen runs. Right no, away. no, no. It wasn't. No, I mean. Oh. No, let me be really clear. Like, oh. we'll we'll go through kind of the story of, of this. Thank you for stepping up, being willing to do yeah. that. But also, why are you putting him in that situation? Right. And I'm going to give yeah. JT credit for this, right? Like, the dude is a five-tool player. He is an incredible athlete. He's an incredible baseball player. And, you know, his coach came on and said, his former high school coach came on and said, listen, it's not so, like, I don't question why he was put in at pitching, right? Why he was put in at pitcher on the bump. I question why it didn't happen sooner. So, okay, so so JT's got some skill. But, again, the timing of this all seems really suspect. The timing of it just feels... Like just grasping for straws and now? That's what it felt like, okay. right? And and the hope, I guess, would be that, that JT would come in and kind of quiet the doubters and quiet the questions. But all this performance really did, and I'm not putting this square on JT, but all, all Texas's performance really did is just fuel that fire uh, heating up under uh. Coach Pierce's seat. 
Um, JT came in. So let me just go through some pitching stats. I mean, the story of this game certainly was just the utter failure of the pitching, right? Which Coach Pierce has taken under his personal little wing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so last night, Texas had 10 pitchers total in. Did, nope. you, did you get to pitch last night? <laughs> you know, I was thinking about it. I was warming up, getting that alarm ready. Listen, so so that does include JT, who started. How nope. many do they have? Yeah, I, we pretty much went through our entire – there are a few guys that didn't get in, but our, our – So anyone who's ever pitched in their life got, to, got a shot last night. They got called up, for sure. Listen, so Texas went through 10 pitchers. No pitcher pitched more than 1.2 innings for Texas. So – we were cycling through them fast. That is just panic mode. It it feels like it. I mean, again, you is that got, why the game lasted so long because they had to warm up pitchers every inning, right. half, every third of an inning, right? And UTRG or was every inning. scoring quite a bit. Yeah, so they couldn't me, get off. The, yeah, let me get through some stats here. Okay. So, so yeah, no pitcher pitch more than uh one point two innings. We had Texas this, last night was almost a historical. It was a historical night for Texas, but almost for the NCAA. Texas this game Texas was one hit by pitch short. So we hit. <laughs> their guys so much we were one short of the ncaa d1 record oh my the word. game itself the including ut and rgb was one hit by pitch short of the ncaa d1 record so uh, again i mean these numbers are just insane texas gave away 20 free passes so there were nine nine hit by like they hit nine batters texas hit nine batters and gave up 11 walks seven of the of rgb's runs that were scored were walked in yeah, we're walking, setting them up. Yeah, I mean, in, and it was, you know, I am all for letting a guy work out the kinks, right? If he's in a tough spot, you want to hold him up. You want to get that mentality there. He's got to be able to work himself out of pickle. Mm -hmm. But there were really no indicators last night that our guys, once they started not performing, there were no indicators that we had the ability to dig ourselves out of that hole. But can you do that with 1.2 innings right. per pitcher? Right. And that's, I mean, that, that tells the story of how, I mean, how rough the pitching was last night. Right. And, but also the panic mode. I mean, that this, this, this kind of mindset happens before you throw a kid onto the mound, right? This kind of mindset is in the coaching, the practice, all the things. Um, so if, if he's rushing through pitchers, that just spirals on the low confidence that they don't, especially on a Tuesday night, that's the opportunity to take a few lumps and get some experience. Sure. But if you have 10 pitchers in one game, <laughs> sure. Yeah. It's getting real experience. Yeah. And look, I agree with that on, on a certain level. I, I certainly, we talked about the, at the beginning of the season, right? Mm -hmm. You want your guys to work through some stuff. And I thought at the beginning of the season, man, it seems like he's cycling through our guys pretty quick, maybe not giving them enough of an opportunity to work through their shit, mm -hmm. quite frankly. Um, but we're more than halfway through the season at this point. It's, yeah, it's to me, the, the, the biggest concern is that you don't have an identity or that your identity on the bump is, is one that you're just not, you're not very good at pitching. Right. Mm -hmm. So is it a desperation move? I would say on the surface by itself, maybe not. But when you compile all the data points, when you look at all of the pieces leading up to this game, you know, again, maybe pulling JT to start yeah, it starts to feel like there's a lot of grasping at straws here for, for coach Pierce. Uh, um, again, you know, double D you, you bring up how many fans around us at the game were yelling about Pierce a lot. Um, a couple, couple weeks ago, there was a, there was a fan that after the loss to, to Texas A&M Corpus Christi was yelling from the top of the stands at coach Pierce. Right. We, we talked about this a little bit, recapped yeah. a little bit. You might not have seen it covered, but it did happen. I was literally right next to this guy when it happened was yelling at Coach Pierce about, hey, Pierce, I mean, you used some expletives here, but why don't you F and quit? You know, and, that's and again. Not, that's not how you handle it. Right. Well, <laughs> while a lot of us might share the sentiment, you know, yeah. that's, that's certainly not how you handle it. And fans were coming to Coach Pierce's defense. Something I thought was pretty telling in that moment is Coach Pierce comes flying out of our dugout. This is after the game, after the loss, comes flying out of the dugout to respond to this guy and kind of chirp back at him, which, again, I, I get it. Emotions are high. You've got mm -hmm. feelings about things. but to me, that showed just how tense things are in the locker room, just how tense and, and how much pressure Coach Pierce is under um, and shows some of the cracks in the foundation, right? Right. Um, I would say if that happened last night, if a fan had gotten up and said that, while it's still not the way to handle things, like I'm certainly not encouraging people to go yell at our players, yell at our coaches. Mm -hmm. um, there might have been less resistance from the people, the, the three of us that were left in the stands after the game uh, against a fan that was that was fussing like that. So, 
yeah, I mean, I think there's certainly, while there were some rumblings at the beginning of the season, is Coach Pierce's seat getting warm? There's no question about it now. It's hot. That thing is hot to the touch. That's um, all I'm seeing on Twitter now, too. Sure. People are like, oh, give him time. Oh, this and that. You know, and, and you know, the guys, the, the actual players, send them love, send them support, give them. But the adults making, you know, that are in charge, and those are the ones that, you, those ones who should be held accountable for their performance and not that we want to be ugly or mean, but I see a lot of people now calling for his job. Yeah. You know? Again, I mean, we're, we're certainly getting to the point. And, and like I mentioned a little bit earlier, this does have those feelings of, you know, the Tom Herman era kind of coming to an end with Texas football. Mm -hmm. It feels like that with Texas baseball right now, right? Like a, a program that should be dominant. That is truly a blue blood by all accounts mm -hmm. uh, in the baseball world. With a coach that that's coming in after, you know, Herman was after Charlie Strong, but that's after Mac Brown, right? David Pierce has the, you never want to be the guy after the guy, right? right? And he, you know, Coach Pierce got hired by Perrin. Again, let's let's remind people, this is not a CDC hire. Um, so Pierce comes in after Perrin hires him, after Coach Augie Garrido mm -hmm. was let go. So, uh, yeah, but again, we, we're talking, we're now far enough into his tenure. A lot of folks have posed the question, does he deserve more time or should he be fired? The patience has run out. Yeah, this is this been his, this we have been his fifth year, right? This fifth, is no, sixth. we're in seventh year now. Seventh year. Yeah, he's been oh my around goodness, time flies so yeah, much. Because he was he was hired in uh 2017, right before CDC was is this, this oh, was like one of the last right. moves it's, that it's that been a while. Made. right. He's he's been around. Granted, you you give him the COVID year that was shut down, yeah. the season was shut down early. And and there are some good points, right? Coach Pierce has made postseason. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, there's I think there's only one season that he missed regionals or supers or Omaha since he's been here. Okay, give him some credit for that. I think that bought him time up to now. Oh, yeah. Right. But we're looking at a team that it's a question if Texas is even going to make the regionals this year. And, and that's not that's not a question that should ever be posed for this program, for the University right. of Texas. Right. So, yeah, I mean, this is something that thank you, CB. Yeah, seventh full season. So. This is, we are too far into his tenure and too far into the season, in my opinion. To not know what. To not know who we are. To they, not who, what, who they are, yeah. And I think the biggest black mark on, on Coach Pierce right now is that at every position, almost everybody on the team has regressed this year. Almost every single player. It's not like these kids have forgotten how to play baseball. We still have ball players. We still have talent. It's not like Texas doesn't have talent on this team or on the field. With the exception, again, I will give the exception of Ace Whitehead and Jared Thomas with his hitting. Like both of those guys have have improved their their stats, improved their careers. They've done well this year. But I would argue that everybody else on the team has taken a step or several steps back. And again, ultimately. That falls on Coach Pierce. Oh, it, he's running the program. At this at this point in the season, you're starting to see again those cracks in the foundation. You have the signs were there, but now they're starting to all come together. Where even the casual viewer, the casual fan, is going, "Wait, what the hell is going on here?" Right? You have coaches, Philip Miller, who who resigned, took a leave of absence, mm -hmm. quit midway through the season. Right mm -hmm. on a Wednesday, I think it was, and, and that's Coach Pierce's brother-in-law. Like that, that should, that should raise some red flags and questions hey, like what's going on yeah. here. Right. We've got like Cam Constantine has been working first base for a majority of the season. There's just these little clues here and there, right. Coach Pierce flying out of the, the dugout to respond to angry fans kind of flying off the handle, That's a little hint, like how things are going, you know, you hear rumblings here and there, you hear these rumors, but it's really getting to be too much to ignore and too much to pretend like there isn't a deep seated issue here. And yeah, like it, it hurts even more. Like CB says, when other teams nearby, your rivals are doing well, right. Texas A&M is winning and that does hurt. It makes, it always hurts because Texas is a blue blood and Texas should be good at baseball, Com you know, competing for Omaha or in Omaha every year. Right. And so when they're, the postseason is not e might not even be an option for Texas, and then you see your rivals doing really well. That does put an extra stinger sure. on on um, on Texas struggling. Yeah, right absolutely. Now. I mean, again, Texas dropping a game to UTRGV in the same week that Texas A and M baseball is ranked number one, consensus number one, and yeah. they're flying through and rolled through Vanderbilt. Like, right. Yeah. I mean, that's that is certainly not helping Coach Pierce's case. Right. And again, I've mentioned this before. 
it has been said that CDC was maybe not so hot on Coach Pierce for a few years now, right? Mm-hmm. I don't want to say looking for an excuse, but he's he's, he's had a shorter leash. Time. He, I think he's ready when it's he's time. He's had a shorter leash. And you know he has his short list yeah. of who he's ready to call right away. Yeah, and look, right. I, I want to bring this up. So, yeah, there. Who who's on this? I'd love to hear from y'all out that our listeners right oh, now. I saw some who up. do you put on? Who's on your short list? I really like uh, co- the coach from Clemson. Uh, you know, Katie, Kevin Dunn, and I talked about this, and he put it put him on my radar. I was like, yeah, you know what? That really that makes sense to me. I I like that. I don't know. There there are some short lists here. I do want to address this though. I've heard so many Texas fans and so many people out there. Oh, call Coach Loss. That has to be the first call that you make that Texas makes, y'all. That is absolutely not going to happen. That is absolutely not something that that bridge was burned a long time ago. That ship yeah. has sailed. And I will say this again: Congratulations to Texas. Sam. Coach Sloss is a is a great coach, whether you love him or hate him. But he's had a complicated relationship with the University of Texas, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, certainly, fans remember uh, when he was at TCU. TCU dogpiling in the middle of the dish. It felt disrespectful. It felt kind of like a yeah. smear, right? Now, some would argue, if you don't want that to happen, win. Win. Right? But I will say this about a and Love them or hate them. Support them or don't. a and is one of the few schools that Texas is not going to be able to money with. Right? Yeah. This it, Texas is an elite job. The Texas head coach for, for Texas baseball, that is an elite job in the nation. But where Coach Loss has brought a and to, he's got the support of the fans. He's got the support of the boosters. Mm-hmm. The money is there. Why would he leave? And he's, he's not even the work in. And he's recruiting. Like, right. why would he leave? In a short amount of time, he's brought that program up from kind of irrelevancy, right, mm-hmm. to the number one ranked program. Why would you leave all that for a school that is going to pay you a boatload of money, is paying you a boatload That's of money? That's a rebuild right now. Why would you come to yeah. a different school Arguably, you know, on the Where same. Where you've had tension, right? Yeah. It, it, I just, I want to reiterate that. That is not going to happen. Coach Lost, I swear. I I mean, I suppose in the world, you never say never, right? But goodness gracious. I mean, you can have your guy ask their guy. Is it even. I don't even I, think. I, they won't, That won't happen, though. No, I don't think it will. I, again, we know that college athletics has some egos involved, perhaps, on a lot of levels. AD yeah. levels, coach levels. I don't think either side. I don't think the egos on either side would allow for that call to be made or to be received. Uh, I just don't. I I can see that. Yeah. All right. Here's a good list. So at Texas Hookham 22 gave a list of who he thinks the coach, the short list would probably be Mm -hmm. ECU, Eastern Carolina, their coach, Clint, Cliff Godwin, TCU's coach, um, DBU. Oh, that's um, Baptist, Dallas Mm -hmm. Baptist, right? They're always good at baseball. Wake Forest. Yes, but RPI. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, Oregon State's coach, uh, Georgetown, like these are the people that he's he's listed would be coaches that he, this at Texas Hook'em 22 would go after. Yeah, I get it. look, I get it. But also throw in the call, Tim Corbin, Tim, you know, Jim Slosh. I, again, I, I want to take, Slosh is not going to happen. It's not an option. That, yeah. That's something that would be insane to me. I, I, yeah, let's start with what's realistic. Right, right. <laughs> but again, I, I think you do have to consider, you know, Eric Bok- uh, Bocic. I can never say his last name at Clemson. He's done a great mm-hmm. job. He was at, uh, had some success at U of M. So he knows what it's like to coach at a big blue blood mm-hmm. to, to, that has a rabid fan base. He knows how to work with the donors, knows how to work with the fans and with the AD. Because you got to know all that. Right. I mean, to Texas. navigate at a place like Texas, right? Now, I've I've heard some other names that have been floated that, man, it, it would be surprising. I, I've heard some fans say, oh, man, bring on Tulo, bring on Tulo. And while I love Tulo, I think he is an amazing coach. I think he's done a lot of really good things at Texas. I just got, you got to feel like this would be his first head coaching position. Yeah, I think head coaching experience is a minimum requirement. And right? it, to me, yes, the University of Texas is not a place that you cut your teeth as a head coach. Yeah, and not not in baseball, at least, where they're expecting championships. Right. I mean, I just don't feel like that. I mean, I would argue any sport. The University of Texas is right. not where you get your first head coaching job. It's just not. That's not the way it works. But, again, you know, we we know that CBC likes big, splashy hires, big names. Is it within the realm of possibility? Sure. Um, I would say it's a lot more likely than Schloss ever coming to Texas. <laughs> yeah, right? it's more likely than that. Yeah, but – but again, I mean, this brings up quite a bit of questions. Where does Texas baseball go from now? We've been talking about, I mean, this was a rough game. There's no way to cut it. Mm-hmm. Texas barely escaped. You know, you mentioned a little bit earlier, the, the weekend before, 
the series in Houston against U of H, who is not a good baseball program right now. They were in the bottom, like, third of the conference. Right, right. right. Texas struggled in that series. They struggled. They took it. They won it, you know, won two games to one. But it took some late, late inning heroics mm -hmm. and a crazy comeback for Texas to take that third game on Sunday. Once they put it on, they put it on them. <laughs> right. But where did that go to? Like, how does it not keep rolling? Right. Well, again, listen, baseball, we, we talk about momentum in sports all the time, right? And I would argue that baseball is one that momentum matters mm -hmm. more than a lot of other sports. It is hitting is contagious. You know, winning is contagious, all that. But in baseball, it's so much of a mental game. If if the if the team and the coaches aren't in the right mental headspace, it is hard to pull yourself out of that. Hitting is contagious. You feel good. Yeah, I mean, we saw this. Now, I'll bring this up. Is there any good from the game? Sure. I can highlight a few things. Um, you know, we saw Texas go on a bit of a run in the sixth inning. Mm -hmm. Six runs scored. Cool. We brought in a lot of young guys. It changed up the vibe, right? So we're talking about that mentality. First up, uh, you know, I love me. So Nick Sanders was was first at bat. Uh, which again, true freshman, then Gumbo came up. Listen, those guys both got walked. One got hit, one got walked. And then Oliver Service, my Detroit guy, my, my, my Detroit freshman comes in and and brings home. He has a, a double and brings scores too. Then all of a sudden we start seeing some hits as these young guys are getting in. It's almost like Coach Pierce in the sixth inning said, F it, scrap the whole team and brought on the freshman. We're down by this much already. I you know, know, we were down. I think at that point it was 15 to one, right, in the sixth inning. So Coach Pierce brings in all the young guys. So am I going to try to find the silver lining or the burn orange lining here? If I'm going to do that. I'm going to say our young guys that haven't seen the field a lot got some playing time. That's great. But there were still some questionable calls in that, right? Seth Warchan, one of the faster guys on the team and one of the more senior guys on the team, the transfer from Penn. He's an Austin native, transfer from Penn, has some really good D1 experience, leadership experience, never got the call up. You're, you took everybody else out. Why isn't he coming in, right? In the middle of the seventh, in the middle of the inning, Coach Pierce pulls our second baseman again, swaps them out. I've never seen anything like that. I just It just sounds like all panic mode. Right. And again, if, if we're talking about one data point, if we're talking about one thing happening in a game, pulling your pitchers too fast, and that's the only thing, right? That's one thing. But when you've got all of these decisions that you're like, Jesus, is the house really on fire? Yeah. Look at the context clues here. It, it doesn't feel great. It doesn't build a pretty story. So, you know, Texas has TCU coming up. Now, TCU also in more of a slump. It was expected at the beginning of this year that TCU was going to be in contention for the Big 12. Texas was going to be in the contention for the Big 12. TCU just dropped a game against, uh, oh, why is it ACU, right? So, I, or yeah. It, it It is possible that Texas can win this and still go on a run in the Big 12, despite everything. I mean, I hope they do. Right. It would be crazy, but that's baseball, right? So, yes, I would say that this series coming up is a huge series. Can Texas pull it out? I mean, at this point, every game is mattering. Every game is going to matter in the Big 12, and it would do Texas a lot of good to sweep, right? At this point, I don't know that Texas they can, need some confidence. They can't keep getting away, right, with with winning the series but not sweeping. You've really got to build up those wins. And like you said, you've got to build up that confidence. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's going to be really interesting to see what Coach Pierce does from here on out. Does he start some of those freshmen, you know, that that had a good run in the sixth? Does he get some new guys in? Where do we go with pitching? One of the things that Coach Pierce said in his post-game interview was, you know, ultimately this is on him. Yeah, coach, no shit. Like, I mean, he said yeah, we got to get our pitching. Coach. Yeah, we got to get our pitching under control, or this can get out of hand fast. It's out of hand. It's out of hand. It's yeah. the marble. What is it? The Coach Royal quote: "The BBs are out of the box. Yeah, and they're real hard to put back in." So, yeah. you know, we'll see how Texas does. Um, are regions regional still a possibility? Sure, <laughs> but I I wouldn't bet on it, right? And that that's a crappy thing to feel and a crappy thing to say as a Texas fan and as yeah. a, a fan of the sport, man. It's uh, it's great. We'd like to hear from you guys. What how, baseball fans out there, even if you're not baseball fans, what are your thoughts on Coach Pierce? Where are you at? Where, where how are you feeling about him? Do you think this is something? Does he need more time? Can he pull it out? Can Texas turn this around? I mean, it's. Oh no, I want to say they can. Horns are always up. I'll be there, but yeah. loady loat, loady loat. It's a, it is definitely a tough run right now. So, all right, we're well, moving on. Okay, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> baseball.
<laughs> All right. Um, so Longhorn Laundry, we have to talk about our friend, oh, Boss. You know him as Burnt Orange Man. He has, um, he's a great sponsor of our show, Longhorn Laundry. And if you would like your laundry, they pick, pick it up, get it clean, bring it right back to you. He has a lightning fast service and he knows that um, not everyone wants to do their own laundry and he's happy to help. That's Megan. She does not like to do her own laundry. So you can go to longhornlaundry.com. And if you use FTC as in fire the cannon, FTC 20, you can get $20 off your first order and you can even call him directly. He gives his own phone number out 512-470-1005. And you can speak to Avos, the longhorn. Everyone knows him all dressed up burnt orange man, but you can, um, have it set it up and he can come and hook you up with doing your laundry and good job Thank i love you. it i love it all right also fun fact if you guys plan on being at the spring game uh, a boss is going to be there it's gonna of be course he, is. He, he got permission from cdc to bring he's actually he's a dude he's got a skateboard that he, he uh -huh. likes to, to ride around on so got permission from cdc to bring that down to spring game and skateboard on the streets just don't bring it into the stadium so you got yeah. your chance to meet him and check I'm out i'll be out there yeah it'd be kind of fun. let's talk about spring let's game talk about spring game this saturday and i'm checking again the weather <laughs> by the minute it as of now at one o'clock there is zero percent chance of rain so it's been pushed back yes two percent at two o'clock zero percent chance of rain the rain chances don't come till three o'clock so there is a chance it could hold off hold off just enough for us to get through this game because it's a full day event like it starts early morning with the fire sale nine right? o'clock yep okay let's go through the schedule so the fire sale 9 a.m have you ever been to one of these fire sales i have i've I run have through to. they're they're cool you can get a you can find some hidden gems. Man. I found it a real uh, volleyball jersey. That's awesome. And I found a real track jersey. They're pretty cool, but when I gonna wear it, they're cut like <laughs> they're cut like you're about to play, like not like you're gonna work out and have sure. a casual shirt. But usually, like even the cool shoes, I don't wear a size 14 men, <laughs> so it doesn't More do me yeah. it doesn't do me any good. But if, if the kids like a big like real jersey or something, they have some cool stuff. Yeah, they've got a lot of cool stuff, and it. Too like keep in mind they have it's not just like the jerseys and the plate like game worn stuff yeah. that's that's very cool and it's hard to get your hands on yeah but they also have like the jackets and the gear that you mm -hmm. know some of that goes on sale too which is you which have to is be in line cool. early so you can yeah. choose if you want to go wait in line for the fire <laughs> sale or if you want to wait in autographs. line for autographs of the players and we know with all the restrictions you can't bring your own gear to have them sign and yeah, then go hand sell it posters. and then go sell it on <laughs> eBay or whatever all the well, whatever these new apps people use to sell yeah. autograph stuff you can't do that anymore they'll give you a poster and you go down the line that you could meet the players if, if so you can choose are you going to wait in line at the fire sale or are you going to wait in line at the yeah. Gotta, they're, they're just about the same time, but really you have to be in line for one or the other. Yeah, you got to pick. It's a choose your own adventure for sure. Yeah. And you pretty much commit, like depending on which one you want to do, you're committed that way, right? You got to yeah. wait in line. If you want the good stuff at the fire sale, you, you know, need to be in you line. You got to get in line. You yeah. want the autographs and where you have the opportunity to get to as many players as possible get in line early, right? Yeah, so. sometimes they split them with two different tables and two different lines, right? And mm -hmm. so when you get up, you just, it, I mean, they'll probably put Quinn on one side and Arch on the <laughs> other and then count who got the most line. The yeah. <laughs> and say. then there'll be a tweet about Arch's. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, well, listen, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not the person to go and, and stand in line for the autographs there. No, like, that's either. usually not my jams, but I will say I have heard from, from the past. I did it a long, long time ago. That splitting the line, I understand why they do it, but if you're not enforcing those rules of like, you can't jump the line, you have to stay in this line, you have to stay in that, mm -hmm. which that, that would help the flow of things. In the past, Texas is not. It's been just kind of like uncontrolled chaos and stuff. I sometimes. haven't been there in forever. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how it's done anymore. I don't I, know if the process has gotten better, but but yeah, it's exciting. You bring the family. Um, it is it is a free spring game. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Oh yeah, talk about free. that in a little bit. Free spring game. So bring the bring the family. Of course, we're going to get an idea of what Texas football looks like, who we are, maybe who we're shaping into a being. A very watered, watered, watered down <laughs> version. Sure. Especially if there's any weather that, you know, right. would make this field too slippery or whatever. We'll get a very, hopefully not literally watered down, <laughs> figuratively watered down version of the, um, of what's coming this this fall. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and keep in mind too, I mean, this was going to be a busy day. I was going to set up my baseball tailgate super early in the morning or even mm -hmm. Friday night for because i'll be at the game the baseball game friday right and then have that tailgate set up early over at dishville field then run over to spring game and then back to baseball because there is a baseball game again the tcu series is unless this it's rained out because all the rain's coming saturday night well and that's what they've been talking about so there was 
you know, yesterday it started off that there was like an 80% chance of rain mm-hmm. and severe thunderstorms and perhaps lightning right smack dab in the middle of when spring game is going to be. And like we've just said, it's been pushed back, pushed back, but that still doesn't answer the question for the baseball game. Right. So there is some potential that Texas baseball moves to a double header on Friday, right. doesn't play on Saturday. Spring game plays out Ooh, on its own and then that plays would on have Sunday. Been late Friday night. Yeah, it would. Well, they'll put that first doubleheader earlier, yeah, a lot earlier on Friday. Five, but still, earlier yeah. than that. So uh, yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting to see. Definitely keep an eye out there. But uh yeah, it's gonna be a lot of running, a lot going on in the, the 40 acres, that's for sure. That's for sure. What are you most excited to see about at that spring game? What are you looking for from a fan perspective? Um, I'm, I'm, well, one, I want to know like, how many people show up. Mm-hmm. I know if, if the weather looks really bad and hopefully it's just cloudy and overcast and going to rain later, mm-hmm. that doesn't deter people from coming. Are you going to sit in the rain? If it's so, if it's raining, are you going to sit in the rain? Would I personally? Yeah. Yeah. I don't care. I don't care, either. I don't care. I'll sit in the rain. I can put on a rain coat. I'm fine. I, but it will change. I don't know, but it will change how many people come. Sure. So let's say it, it holds off and it looks good enough. Like, Oh, people are going to come out. How many people do you think are coming? I think it's going to be a busy season. I think there's still a ton of hype from the fans. We want to know what this team looks like. We know there was some attrition, Mm -hmm. right? But also, holy crap, we gained a lot more. So 30 to 40,000? Yeah, I mean, I would say. That would be a lot more than the last. Yeah, but remember, last (laughs) year they reported close to 40,000, and there weren't that many butts in the seats, no question. But, yeah, I mean, I think this is going to be one of the more, if the weather holds off, yeah. Is is the threat of weather going to keep some people away? Probably, Probably. but I still think you're going to see a really heavily attended event. I mean, this is something it's going to be televised, right? But yeah, there's so much hype with his, which with as much excitement as there is around this team with where Texas ended up last year. You know, again, you're one, maybe two plays shy of going Mm -hmm. to the national championship. Yeah, hell yeah. I mean, I think the fans are still going to be hyped. I think they're going to be excited. We're going to see some of that like rabid fan base come out. People are are stoked for this. Yeah, you mentioned that it's also it is on LHN. Mm -hmm. They'll be playing it because that's why we have our own network and things like this. (laughs) But do you think because it is, and I love LHN, and I'm excited to record it and go back and watch it later on. You know, where you can actually see the plays because live you don't see as much. Um, are you, do you think that's also going to get people from playing like, Oh, it's kind of rainy outside yeah, I could. and I can just watch it at home on LHN. Yeah. But I, I don't think that's a reason to not broadcast it. Right. Like, no, 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 not, not to not broadcast it, but to, that will keep some yeah. people from coming. I think if the weather is questionable, right. Like it's not definitely not going to rain or mm-hmm. def- yeah, I think that's going to, eh, maybe I'll just stay home. Cause I know I can catch it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. But again, not everybody has LHN either. Right. So, well, the good thing is they're making that a whole festival day, right? You have mm-hmm. the, the Bevo, the Midway, Bevo all that Bevo Boulevard. Mm-hmm. I don't know how much of the full game day Midway is coming up, but I'm sure some of it will be up. And then, like you said, the fire cell and the autographs, like there's enough things to draw people down sure. there. So that'll be good. And then, um, so what am I looking forward to? Yeah. yeah. Um, there's so many players I want to see. Yeah, I, th- I know one of the big, of course, we want to see the quarterbacks. I'm sure Quinn will be limited. We'll get to see lots of Arch, and then we'll get to see uh, Trey Owens. Mm-hmm. And so that will be, I think we'll get to see a lot of Trey Owens. So that will be fun. But I, I really want to see the the question marks, which is the defensive line rotation. I'm going to c- try to make some notes about, you know, who's in and how long they're in and who's coming up. And I want to see, do are we developing some kind of pass rush? I know they can't of course, dare touch the quarterback in this game. But are they getting to that red jersey and, hey, man, I would have had you. I want, yeah, I, that's what I want to know. Yeah. Like, And then also because the running back, they, you know, is kind of slow coming, but now they're getting some pace with the running backs. I want to see that rotation, especially the younger guys like Christian Clark and Jarrett Gibson, the guys that we've been hearing are coming. Mm-hmm. Um, just to know that that depth is building behind, you know, the Blues and the Baxters and – Trey Wisner. And we'll talk about Sark's press conference in a minute. Yeah, I mean, but let, yeah. let's bring that up with the running backs. I mean, that's okay. something because I agree. I'm excited to see that, right? Mm-hmm. We we know we lost some production there, but everything we're hearing out of camp, everything we're seeing out of camp, it it seems like you know, Baxter and Blue are definitely getting the majority of snaps. But Sarkeesian brought up it that I mean, he has made it a point. Trey Wisner's name has popped up time and time and time every again. Every press conference. Every press conference, you know, not just with the coaches, but also with the players, player availability, mm-hmm. Trey Wisner putting in the work, the, kind of that all utility player. Yes. His versatility. Right. Yeah. Stark mentioned that uh, recently about how Wisner can play any position really. And he's got good hands. He's, he's catching the ball. So yes, it's right now Baxter and blue are the one and twos and they're getting a lot of reps, but Wisner mm-hmm. has worked his way into that starting rotation. So yeah, I think it's going to be really cool to see how, how he 
plays. I, I'm excited to see yes see him come up. Uh, like you said, yeah, of course, you always want to see the young guys. And it's a balance of are we looking at, you know, we want to see the young guys. We want to get them some time, some real in-stadium with fan experience. But you're also trying to figure out who your team is, right? Mm -hmm. And exactly where everybody fits. And also not give away too much. Right. Like it's, you can't give away the playbook at the spring, spring game. It, it's yeah. a tough balance. It's a tough mm -hmm. balance. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think I'm really excited. I want to see Coach Baker in action, mm -hmm. right? Like, I think we all fell in love with Bo Davis when we heard – you know, he's dropped on that. And they put out Nansen's audio too. Like, Oh, I'm so excited about these new coaches. Right. And seeing yeah. these, these new the, the audio clips, right. Mm -hmm. I, I want to see that in action. How are mm -hmm. the guys like, do you get the feel that the guys are, are responding to him? Well, again, all accounts are saying, hell yeah, mm -hmm. they love him. Right. Mm -hmm. He's intense. You see, you see that on those. Well, the Anthony Hill has talked about how he's gotten so much better since he's got, since he's in gone. a short amount of time. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. So, and again, Anthony Hill, he's another one that I'm excited to see this. This to me is his year to step up. Is he taking that leadership role? Is mm -hmm. he in this? Is he taking that opportunity, even in the spring game? Like you said, practice hard. You got to go all out. You don't half ass anything. I'm also going to be looking over at those recruits <laughs> that are, because there's going to be a lot of four and five star recruits on, on campus. I'm going to be looking over to see their reactions to some of the plays, you know, some of the play calling or the coaching or what they're looking at. Mm -hmm. That's always good too to see what they're, how they're feeling. Yeah, absolutely. So again, with the, the practice standouts, of course, we want to see. We've heard that yours is is on his game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Sark has mentioned this. Like, it's always great to have a third-year quarterback leading your team. The experience uh, is yes. there. The kinks are worked out. We do know that that we've got some some transfer guys in. We've got a lot of new faces uh, at that wideout position. But, again, like, I'm really looking for is the timing right, right? Mm -hmm. Like, that was a big complaint last year. I think more of the complaint, oh, you know, Quinn can't throw the deep ball. I don't know that it was so much can't throw the deep ball. It just felt like the timing wasn't always right there. So is that timing with the new faces coming in, with the guys, the younger guys coming up, is the timing there? Is he able to be accurate? Are they on the same page? Do they know where they're going? Does does Quinn know where his guys are going to be? Do the wideouts know exactly where to be? And, and you know, Quinn's throwing the ball before they get there. I think that's going to be – that is going to be hugely telling for Texas offense and where they're at. Um, what are your thoughts? Of course, Arch Manning, we all want to see him, right? Yes. So he <laughs> talked about last week, the week before when they were in at Der, Der, Denius uh, Field, and then when they moved to DKR for mm -hmm. this last scrimmage, um, he talked about the, like, you know, the, the, the word out of the move to DKR was the wide receivers were inconsistent. Some balls were mm -hmm. on the ground. Like they weren't bringing everything in. And then Sark mentioned, well, when you switch venues, it can be disorienting or that they needed time to get into the new venue. And then I remembered when, um, like the final four, like the NCAA basketball final four, when they moved to these huge arenas with massive stadiums, with Definitely. elevated stages, and they're all the depth perception of the, where the basket it is with lines around you know mm -hmm. lines around you um that it can be really challenging for people to move from you know their little court you mm -hmm. know their little gym to this massive arena that that can throw off shooting too so that, that's what made me think like that makes sense when you go from Denny's field you know the bubble or whatever that wherever they're at inside outside and then they go to dkr and then the just the the space around it changes so much mm -hmm. so it's good that you know he talked about they're going to get them used to the news mm -hmm. so they'll practice i guess in when they come back on Saturday at DKR, they'll have a little of that under their belt, like throwing and catching in that space because it does change their perception of things. Um, so that would be good. But then also he talked about red zone offense having mm -hmm. more success. But at the goal, goal, goal line stand, defense, you know, showing up. defense showed up too. So, yay, that's great. Oh, man. Well, let me ask like, you that. Let, so, me, let me ask you. I mean, that's always the question in these, these scrimmages, right? Like in uh -huh. these spring games. Is it that our offense is so good or is it, oh, no, our defense isn't great? And, hey, our defense is great. Oh, no, our offense might not be. So There's no winning or losing balance? with that, right? Yeah. Like, it, no matter what happens good, you're going to be like, oh, but, but wait, what was it? One versus right. twos? Was it so-and-so in or who just got moved around? So th there's no – you can't – unless just the offense – unless it ends up like – the offense just never scores a point in the entire game. <laughs> if that happens, then okay, that's what crisis. I was gonna say. Like, panic there's time. <laughs> everything that happens. Like, do you praise it? Do you just pause or do you panic? Yeah. So, like, like so, like if Arch Manning goes out there and you know 
moves the ball down the field with, you know, DeAndre Moore and Amari Nyblack or someone who just, if he just goes down the field, do we say, okay, he just put them practicing with them. Do we just say, okay, that's good. Or do you panic because like, well, where's John Zink? Where is it? Right. <laughs> where's Isaiah Bond? Where's what, like, what, what should happen and what <laughs> will happen are usually two different things. Yeah. Listen, we, we know will happen for sure. CB brings up. We know that the national media is going to overreact no matter what Arch does, yeah. good or bad. Exactly. If but. Arch does really great, he's transferring because yeah. he can go start somewhere else. If he does really bad, he's transferring. <laughs> Can't win. I know. I know. Yeah. I mean. Don't I, click into it. Yeah. Don't, anything that says Arch and the word transfer, don't click in. Don't do it. Temptation is that's strong, but don't want. do it. They want the engagement. Yeah. Click in. Look, I, I, I think that's a valid point. We're going to overreact no matter what. The media is going to overreact no matter what. But I think what I'm looking for the most is – is the consistency, the timing, like, again, this is a spring game. It's not, we're not in a real game situation, but you want to know that your guys are on the same page mm -hmm. and that they're they're They know where their assignments are, that they know what each other they're anticipating what each other is going to do. You really want to see that, the, that, that cohesiveness from the team. So I think that's really important. Like, am I going to be pissed if there's a bunch of like miss ball? No, not necessarily. You just want to understand why you got to look at more than just like, the black and white of it, right? Mm -hmm. Just the X's and O's. I think that's really important to look at. Um, yeah, there's a lot of big names coming out too. Uh, is there a player in specific that you're excited to see? If you had to pick let's, let, let me get one on uh, your side. Starting safety, Michael Taft. <laughs> <laughs> your guy, your guy. <laughs> no, apparently he was one of the two starting safeties last weekend. Um, yeah, so hopefully he's hanging on, doing his job, stays up there. <laughs> yeah. Why I just think he's the coolest player. Well, um, yeah, uh, and then that's defense. I, well, of course, Manny Muhammad, who's also is getting love every after every uh, practice mm -hmm. or you know scrimmage or media availability. People are raving about um, his performance, and you know he had an interception during the game of Arch Manning. He's transferring. I'm just kidding. Well, <laughs> yeah. well let me ask this. So, I mean, we we've heard Manny Muhammad's name come up. He, he stepped up a lot at the end of last mm -hmm. year, um, again, playing in the Sugar Bowl quite a bit. I mean, he got a lot of time. That has been a position that's been a little bit they of questionable need, they for Texas. They and DBs, is, and, and it's here. I is think. this a time, do you think the spring game is, does that give a good indicator on the progress of, you know, the LBs, the secondary? Like, does that give a good feel for what our DBs are going to be doing? You know, or is this a, you know, uh, it's, a, it's a taste, but don't buy too much into it one way or the other. I think I'm going to go with the way Sark says, like, that effort. I want to see, of course, like Sark said, they're not a finished project right, right. now. It's only 15 practices and this will be the 15th practice of spring, right? So they're not finished projects. But still, if they have that intensity, that effort, then I, if they get there in their physical and they get they get there with going with speed and intention, that to me is going to matter more than if they made the exact right play right so if you have that mentality mentality that you're going to be physical you're going to be intentional and you're going to you know go full speed then that the, the rest will come so those kind of things either they have it or they don't right? right and so we know that we've seen already from the young guys even like Derek Williams and mm -hmm. then we'll get to see it from the other guys coming in like Xavier Phillips me these younger ones coming in like these young DBs we get to see how this new men mentality of them coming together but I'm not going to we, we also hope that the wide receivers make some plays, right? So that doesn't mean that the DB wasn't in position and was right, wasn't right there or wasn't physical too. That's the problem when you're scrimmaging your own team. <laughs> yeah. No, it's tough. Again, yeah, I think that's a good point. I, I love your take on it. I'm not going to be as concerned, like we said, with the X's and O's, the exact perfect pass. Like, mm -hmm. are the plays being made, but is the effort there? Mm -hmm. Because again, we, we I want to see the leaders step up, be leaders, really lead the team take take control of that mm -hmm. and and with the younger guys yeah grant them a little bit more a little bit more leeway but i want to see every player out there going hard i want to see him i want to see the other play the older players getting in if there's a younger guy like i want to see our guys coaching him up mm -hmm. right we know the coaches can coach obviously right but I, I really i think that again can be a huge indicator of the team mentality how they're getting along and and are they buying in are they taking this team as their own i you're always going to see a more successful team if everybody's bought in and taking, you know, and accountable for each other. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a really important thing to look for too. Now, definitely some news coming out of, you know, 
the, the portal giveth and the portal taketh away. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there'll be a few extra spaces on the bench this Saturday. Well, and and to be clear, like, again, don't hit the panic button. No, it happens. We had some scholarship positions that we had to kind of clear out. We were over scholarship limit at this and, point. And they still have positions that, that they need to fill this summer or spring, at the right. end of spring or summer. And the portal opened again yesterday, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, yeah, there's people coming. Give it and take it the way. <laughs> yeah. So again, uh, in the portal, recent news, uh, the D lineman, Jamon Tapp, uh, Sam J. Burrell, who we know was yeah. in that incident with T Sweat. Uh, again, everything that we understand, he was already planning on transferring out. That incident just kind of made it easier for everybody on all sides to, right. to go ahead and go forward with it. Uh, Edge, Billy Walton. From Florida. Mm -hmm, IOL, Peyton Kirkland. That one surprised me a little bit, but. Oh, yeah, Kirkland. Kirkland, yeah. yeah uh, and then Darian Brown, who was the one that, the, the kid that came to Texas. He's actually graduated now. Yeah. He's got, um, but he came to Texas, the one that had the stroke. And right. of course we wish everybody And hasn't well. he taken on like a coaching role, like helping, like he's, he's going he's he's to do fantastic things. Yeah. He's grown a lot, but he definitely, he wants to kind of find a place that he can show his potential and, and get on the field. Mm -hmm. uh, and he even acknowledged. He had to work really hard to get to a position where he can play again. He did. Uh, he even acknowledged in his announcement that he knows that some teams might have some hesitation because of his medical history. But he's stronger than ever. He's ready. He's, mm. you know, I think Wish that's him the best. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, again, I think we're going to see a few names pop up. Is are, are there any that are on your radar that you really are wanting to come in? There's an Arizona D lineman who is familiar with the coaching staff, and he's going to be at the spring game this Saturday. And I yep. need to look up his name. Oh, I had it in my <laughs> brain a few minutes ago. He will be at the um, game on Saturday. Oh, mm -hmm. here it is. Arizona, Bill Norton, mm -hmm. defensive line. Um, Bill Norton sounds like an old man's name to me. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> Get off my lawn. William Norton. Hopefully like... he, he's mad when he plays. <laughs> right. But he'll be at the spring game. So I don't know if when he went into because, you know, when they go into the portal, they can say, like, do not contact because they already know where they're going. Um, not that there would ever be like tampering involved. They just already, Ever. They just Ever already know where they're going. Sure. Because they, they could have talked to other players on another team. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so, th so I don't know if he has do not contact or not, but he went into the portal on Tuesday and he will be in Austin on Saturday. And apparently he's the, he plays a position of need in, in the inside. So that would be good. And I don't, I mean, they keep saying if any Michigan D linemen go into the portal after this, in the next week or so mm -hmm. we'll see but they're you know they're i guess it depends like they also have to wrap up their spring games i don't know if michigan had their game oh they did have their game last saturday mm -hmm. right so we'll find we'll see if anyone pops in there yeah 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 and again i think that's another thing to to point out texas and you you brought up the longhorn network in our spring game being broadcast mm -hmm. on longhorn network several other spring games going on same day. Mm -hmm. uh, we know Oklahoma has theirs. We'll talk about that in a little <laughs> bit. Um, USC, I think has theirs. A&M. A&M. Yeah. A and the question is, while there are a ton of benefits of Longhorn Network, I'm not here to bash Longhorn Network. There is the question, it's more nationally available. You know, USC, anybody can watch it. Mm -hmm. You got to have Longhorn Network. Not, it, there's well, there's replay, not as much of it. It's still part of the ESPN network. So just like I saw them replaying bits and pieces of Michigan and Georgia Tech and all these this morning when I was at brunch, they also um, or do that with Texas highlights or, you know, bits and pieces of the way they show other people's. Because people care about what happens, at, especially Arch Manning. How did he do? You know, they're. That's going to get agree. people to watch. But do you think it hurts not having a broader availability right now? Right. No, Does because that take how am I going to watch USC's live? I'm not. <laughs> how am I going to watch AM's live? They don't have their own network. I'm not. I have to watch bits and pieces later right. or whatever they put on social media, right? Sure. So, I mean, we. I will, I'm happy that we have an option for people to watch it. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk. Uh, again, we've got a little bit. We're going to bring our happy hour up in just a second at the 4 o'clock hour and switch gears a little bit. But before we get to that point, uh, let's talk about some guys that we've, we've been hearing the names, you know, mm -hmm. that are having really good Mondays. Um, the Monday practice standouts we brought up Arch Manning again. I, again, we know this is Quinn Year's team. Zero yeah. question. It's his team. There's not a quarterback controversy. But uh, Sark did bring up the point that this was one of Manning's best practices that he's had mm -hmm. in Texas. He's looking really good, um, you know, delivering the ball with accuracy, stepping into the pocket. One of the things that he mentioned, too, that I think people kind of forget because you get caught up in the name, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's Arch Manning. And I will say, when you think of the family, when you think of Eli, when you think of Peyton, you don't necessarily think of the most graceful humans, right? You don't necessarily mm -hmm. think of the most, like, the fastest guys <laughs> out there. No. But people forget, last year in the spring game, Arch Manning, 
had the burners on. Like he yeah, was out running people. Fast. He is fast. Yeah. And so that was something that came up. Like he is a all out athlete and, and he's doing well with his throwing and accuracy, but that speed is something too mm-hmm. that I think is kind of a sleeper talent for him that, that people don't always look at. Um, Isaiah Bond was another name that, that mm-hmm. popped up. Are you excited about him? Or are you thinking about Bond? Oh, I wanted to say something about Manning oh, yeah. first. Okay, yeah. so when you you talk about, you know, the, Sark mentioned he's stepping up into the pocket. And then I was when I was talked to, we talked to Chip Brown before he got off, he, him and Eric Henry were talking about that stepping up into the pocket when you are somebody whose footwork is good and you're fast, yeah. it's a hard thing to do yeah. because you ha- you know you can get around people. You know you can move outside or ma- do things with your feet. So it is a challenge to teach them that, you no, know, in this game, you're going to, if you're preparing for the NFL, you need to learn to move up in that pocket and make decisions and keep your eyes downfield and all the things it takes to be an NFL quarterback. Right. So, cause when you do start running out the pocket, Johnny Manziel, Cal, Cal, um, Kellen, Kel, not Kellen Moore, Kel, uh, the OU one, the little one that ran around. Kyler Murray. Murray. Kyler Murray. Yeah. Why is it Kellen Moore, that old quarterback? No idea. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but you know, or other quarterbacks who they it works in college, it works in high school, but if you want to have a longevity, uh, it doesn't work that way, right? So that takes the time to develop that that intention to stand up in the pocket. And for for Sark to say Arch is getting that when he does have the wheels to take off running, that's that's huge. Yeah, I I think that's something where you're kind of looking at you have to reprogram that fight or flight, mm-hmm. right? That's like a natural instinct. If you know you're fast as hell and you know you can, Mm -hmm. you want to run, right? So yeah, reprogramming that and rewiring your brain to go, nope, check down, look, I love that. Mm -hmm. I will argue one point you said a little bit is that, and I would agree in the past, the quarterbacks that that run first and that's all they're really there for, yes, you need to be more than one dimensional. No question, Mm -hmm. to be successful in the NFL, you've got to be more than one dimensional. But I do think we are seeing the shift Right. You look at CJ Stroud, you look at, you know, but I, they, mobile. Yes. Running for your life. No, no, there's a difference. Yeah. But they're I like people like Stroud or Lamar Jackson or other quarterbacks that are looking still to throw. Sure. They may be coming out of the pocket, but their eyes are always downfield and they're looking for somewhere to throw. And I, as opposed to panic, panic, panic and get hit. Right. So those are two different. That's things. what I'm saying. Yeah. Though. Like that to me is what that differentiator to put the fine point on it. Yeah, you're fast. And we're not saying don't ever run, but it's more about finding that balance and understanding, like taking your game to the next level, understanding when are the appropriate times to throw, Uh check down or F it, go, right? I think that's something that's going to be really important, um, especially for a player. Again, we're talking Arch Manning. It's not like the kid has never played football before. If anybody's prepared to make those adaptations quickly, it's going to be him, right? But yes, um, yeah, I mean, I think that's something that you've got to look at. It's That's an issue we had with Quinn too, right? Being able to make those in-game adjustments, mm-hmm. making the smart plays, being able to check down, not just going to your, your comfort zone, right? But looking for the, the right option at the right time. And we saw him develop from year one to year two, Absolutely. taking those check downs. Absolutely. And people would be like, why are you throwing it off to the running back? Because <laughs> he just got 18 yards, 20 yards. Like, <laughs> yeah. yes, that, that's a good read. Like, not everything needs to be throw away or take a sack, you know? So when the options are there and when you have talented running backs like we do who can catch the pass, and, you know, Stark mentioned Baxter and Blue, but he also mentioned – Trey Wisner, someone who can catch the ball. When you have all those options too that are available checkdowns and they got wheels and speed and power, why wouldn't you look down to them if you know your receivers are getting tied up and those options aren't there? Um, so he talked about another name he mentions. He mentions every time Manny Muhammad. He mentions every time uh, Trey Wisner. But the other name he's been mentioning every time, which is kind of crazy, is Juan Davis. The tight end, now he's a senior. So he was behind Jatavian Sanders and Gunnar Helm. And then we have, you know, transfer coming in. So it's it's kind of interesting. What are you looking, like, do you, he mentions him every time that he's working hard, he's impacting. I'm going to look for Juan Davis on Saturday. I like it. No, I think that's, that's a great point. Again, it's a name that not all Texas fans are familiar with. Right. He's been with the team for a while, but you're right. He's got, he's had that next man up mentality and he's in the system. And it, mm-hmm. it sure seems there's a lot of indicators that this could be his year to step up. Mm-hmm. We know that Sark likes to use tight ends, obviously like that's, right. that's nice. It's good to have that back at the university right. of Texas again. So yeah, I think that's, that's a really excellent point. Look for him is the productivity there. Is the call the are the play calls there mixing in that tight end, mm-hmm. using him, really relying on him, and is the trust there with our quarterbacks to really pull into him and have those check down options? Right. You know, so Stark talks about the, the tight end being the second most important 
you know, in his scheme behind quarterback, right? And because they need to be able to pass protect, run protect, catch balls, like they have to do, they have to know what everyone's doing all the time. And they have to be able to execute like physically and the finesse and the hands and, you know, like they have to do it all. So not everyone comes in, like even Jatavian Sanders, he needed a year to learn the system, year to learn tight end, right? And now look, he's going to be drafted in the NFL. Gunnar Helm, he's he's really developed. And when Jatavian Sanders was, you know, hurt last year, he stepped up. So to hear him talk about Juan Davis, it's really good to know that even though Gunnar Helm is probably tight end one, that and he does a lot of stuff with two tight ends on the mm -hmm. field. There's Don't forget that. That's, there's, yeah, there's a lot of options, yeah. and one might block, one might slip out to catch pass. So there's, I, I'm excited. I want to see how they use Juan Davis on Saturday because he mentions him every time now yeah. that he must be really coming along. There's a hundred kids practicing, and he mentions two or three every time. Juan Davis must really be standing out. Yeah, and again, that development. We've harped on this for for years now, mm -hmm. right? The University of Texas and in our dark ages <laughs> that, that we feel like two we're getting out of. Yeah, <laughs> two years walking ago. three years ago. <laughs> 2022. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> this this came up in the media availability, though. You uh -huh. know, Sarkeesian brought this up. Their first year here, zero players were taken from Texas. And that's that's not a standard. By the NFL draft. Yeah, correct. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. So that player development, zero players were taken. And that, again, that just Record-breakingly bad. Dirty to say. Yeah. Um, and it's not Someone like. Someone in free agency, but they weren't drafted. Right. And yeah. and. We had we had the discussions then. We, we still talk about it now. At that time, there was still talent. There, a lot of teams stole some really mm -hmm. good players and didn't have to pay them. And and, and perhaps they developed. They had really good NFL careers. You know, we brought up Puna Ford, right? He's mm -hmm. one of them. Oh yeah. Listen, Texas. There's a, there's a good amount of Texas players in the NFL, but for a long time, teams were stealing guys, oh, right? Yeah. Because that development wasn't there. Sark brings up the next year, it was five players, right? And and Bijan going. That was a huge deal going in the first round. Five total players taken. This year, 11 are invited. And, you know, of course, Sark mentioned, we, of course, want to see them all go. But the fact that we're even having these conversations about 11 players, where they're going to fit in the mm -hmm. NF draft, you know, a lot of mock drafts and things like that. Um, yeah, I mean, to me, that's that's a huge again, marker, indicator of where this program is, where we're going, and the development that gets there, which is why it's a long way of bringing the point back. Mm -hmm. You know, Davis has been in this program for a while, right. and he didn't leave. He didn't transfer out. He's not, you know, it was that next man up mentality. And seeing the result going from zero players to potentially 11 uh, players getting drafted, that's a short amount of time where the players are truly getting developed. Right. And I think we're going to start to see that more with, with Texas players they stay a little bit longer, even if they're not getting getting those snaps that they would hope for early mm -hmm. on. They know that if they stay here under the system, they're getting developed and they have a better potential of being drafted and ending up in the NFL. I right. think that's huge. That's huge. Right. And you can tell that, like he said, he mentioned with the team success comes individual successes like awards or being drafted. And when you look at the teams who have the most players coming to be drafted this year, Michigan, Georgia, yeah. you know, and, and so yes, the team successes, but of course you have higher when you have better quality players, you win more, but also yeah, they have to be developing them and they have to, when you're on national stages, you get, seen more and invested in and then they come you know coaches for these nfl teams or scouts for these nfl teams are at your big games because you're a winning good team like who's helping this team win so it's a cycle right yeah. like uh so he he talked about that like um that they that they all that the, the individual awards will come with when the team wins yeah, yeah yeah no and i love that too again that's something i love that mentality and i love to start calling that out saying look it works in the way that you've got, like you said, he, he mentioned, it's not the good teams that play. Sorry, we've got Richard Thank coming you. in for happy hour here. And of course, my brain gets distracted. I like Thank it. You. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. We appreciate you. Mine is just <laughs> juice. Yes. Thank you, baby. Appreciate you. Thank you, Richard. He got home last <laughs> night. He's ready to make us. I told him to fly home on Tuesday so he could make us drinks on Wednesday. <laughs> I love it. But yeah, to the point, you know, Thank you. Sark brings up that it's it's when teams start to have success win their conference, win playoff games, win bowl mm -hmm. games. When the teams start to have success, the player success and the higher ranking they go in the NFL, it's not the other way around, which I think for a hot minute, we saw that it, you know, the saying is I'm playing for the name on my chest, mm -hmm. right. For Texas and not the name on my back. That mentality might've been a little bit different previously, but once again, I think we've seen in a short time, players are seeing the results. 
recruits mm-hmm. are seeing the results. Players that are here are seeing the results. It's turned back into the playing for Texas, not at Texas. Right. And, and you're seeing the success after that. So, yeah, I mean, again, exciting times. Looking forward to it. Spring game is going to be freaking awesome. Lots to go. So, you guys, if y'all are going to spring game, let's 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 get a little meetup. It'd be fun to meet some folks. And yeah, and are we? So you're doing your tailgate before? If it's not raining, yeah. If it, it shouldn't be in the morning. It mm-hmm. shouldn't be raining in the morning. But either way, you'll be over in that area because you have tents. So mm-hmm. if it's a little drizzle. That's fine. Yeah. Um. So I'll meet you there at yeah. your tents in the morning. And then also our other friend Tanisha, she's. Um, been she's she watches the show sometimes, messages sometimes that she we were actually in the PhD program together the first time I started it. Um, and she's amazing and she is a big Longhorn fan, and so she wants to meet us too and yeah. come, to the, come to watch with us and watch the game with us. So that'll be fun. So we'll you'll get, get to meet my friend Tanisha, yeah. Dr. Tanisha, Doctor, love it. Um, yeah, so she's awesome, and um, so anyway, that that's we'll do that Saturday morning, so we'll meet around your baseball tailgate, which yep. is the third baseline, yeah, right. And then we'll be on the east side too. So yeah, just yeah, the east side up. of the stadium. We'll tell you where we're at, but we'd love to love to meet y'all. I love interacting with folks. Yeah, it'll be fun. Love meeting people, oh, let's but... have a quick happy hour real yes. quick. What? So mine because I'm still doing. Watch you're gonna spill yeah, your iPad. Fine. Um, because I'm still doing 75 heart cheers. I'm not cheers. Uh, I, yeah, yours is alcohol. Mine is juice. <laughs> I like it. All right. He always makes really good drinks. Yeah. yeah Richard can shake good drinks. <laughs> Want to give a quick shout out. Mine before... is mango juice. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Want to give a quick shout out to another one of our awesome sponsors yes. at Covert V Cave. Uh, Covert Auto Group is a part of a family owned group of automotive dealerships that has served the greater Austin area for over 100 years. That's a long ass time. 100, 100 years. years. Incredible. Yeah, we'll, we'll since, we'll in, that long. Yeah, since inception, uh, the team at Covert Auto Group has been committed to providing customers with a high quality selection of new and pre-owned vehicles, as well as outstanding service and customer satisfaction. So nestled on 42 acres in the beautiful hill country located in Bee Cave, Texas, Covert Bee Cave has three new state-of-the-art dealerships carrying seven brands, Buick, GMC, Cadillac, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. In addition to our seven brands, Covert also has Ford and Chevy and Hutto and Ford Lincoln and Austin. So give them a shout out. If you guys are looking for a new or awesome pre-owned vehicle, check them out, covertbcave.com for the latest specials and for their inventory, or just stop by and see them. I actually passed one of the coverts out on the way to check on the Longhorns. Oh, nice. This Sunday. Yeah. Did you pull in good. and say, um, waved pro- promo gave, for you? Gave a little beep as we went it's by. It's actually passion fruit, my drink, not oh, mango. There you go. Maracuya. <laughs> okay. So let's cut, touch on a couple more things before we move on to basketball. All right. Okay. So also in the Sarks press conference, he mentioned Jade Barron. And there's been reports that he's working second or third team or not always. And he wasn't in the last scrimmage, I think, or mm-hmm. something like that. Or he was limited. Is this an injury related thing? So or? this has been the same now nagging stuff that he had last year and the way Sark put it was they're letting him get healthy and fresh they know we know we got in Johnny like he was one of the best defenders on the team last year him we're not worried about him he's he's probably (laughs) taking more mental reps right now than maybe physical reps so that he can get healthy and fresh and take care of his body I think that's so genius because there's no need to wear his body out we know Mm -hmm. like if anybody like when the season was on the line at Houston when they blew a 20 not 20 something point lead right yeah yeah. Who came in and played off the injured, like was just on the sideline, please, don't, we shouldn't have to play your day, but here we go. And he'll come, he comes in and makes a game-saving play yeah. in a different position than he normally plays, right? So athlete. Just, yes, athlete and so smart. Like there's no reason to push him right now when other youngins could use reps and get in time mm-hmm. so i think that was really uh, i think it was important to say that he's to getting his body right because they need him for this season yeah so it's not that oh johnny has lost <laughs> skills or all of a sudden johnny baron is like he's 13 now no he's getting healthy and they need him to get healthy but he can still be get the mental reps coach on the field a bit but not wear his body down right now yeah and look i want to point that out we've also seen a shift it, again talking about the overall success of a team where they're going look at the context clues, look at the little things and piece Mm -hmm. them together. We mentioned that earlier with our Texas baseball conversation, the clues were there, but now they're becoming all the pieces built a story and all the pieces together. Right. I think that's something you've got to look at with, with Texas football right now is that all these little pieces that we've seen little nuggets are coming together and you're like, Holy crap, this is a really good team. Obviously Mm -hmm. we know the college making the college football playoffs. Right. But one of the things that stood out to me in particular in this off season is the lack of injury reports. Which I'm, I'm here for it. You better knock on. I'm excited wood. for it. Yeah, listen, knock on everything. But we got to talk about that again. Okay. We we've we've talked about the change in 
Texas's strength and conditioning, right? The different shifts. We you, and I think you're really starting to see that. We we hear Baron, you know, Baron's getting rehabbed. They're giving him some time off, getting him right. some time to rest. But I do want to point out with our coaching staff, like this has been a really nice, refreshing change of pace. That it's not every other week you're hearing about. Oh, we've got this injury here. We've got this injury here. And I think that's that's going to show up in the season too. Again, yes, don't jinx it. Don't be an idiot. But but it is worth pointing out. Mm-hmm. Texas has made a lot of a lot of leaps and bounds in that that case. We're not seeing those soft injury tissues quite as often. We're not seeing just our guys being totally banged up quite as All often. All the um, pectoral yeah. tears, <laughs> right? That are common with certain things. Those yeah. are not there. <laughs> right. Right. So yeah, I mean, I think again. We say this all the time, but it's, I'm going to, after going so hard on Texas baseball earlier, I've got to, let's mm-hmm. get the sunshine back up. Like I'm yeah. excited. I'm, I'm, I'm and being four deep at every position <laughs> does help which is nuts. in case there are unfortunate, right. you know, right. in case someone needs to take a minute to fix their shoelaces. There you go. Then we know we're, they, Sark says they're four deep. Yep. All right. Any other thoughts about spring game before we move on? No, but I'm going to put, pose a totally ridiculous question to you. Okay. Who wins orange or white? White. All right, I'll go with orange. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> All right. <laughs> he said, well, we need to have a bet on it. We do. Okay, What's what are bet? we going to bet? Um, okay, I don't know. We'll think of something. <laughs> we'll, we'll put it out there. You guys, give us a ridiculous thing to bet. Don't be gross. Uh, um, what do we need to do? I'm taking orange team. You're taking white I'm team. I'm taking white. I don't All know right. why. I just... Hey, that was your first reaction. Stick with it. Trust yeah, your gut. I, I trust my gut. Okay. I'm going to, what's the over under? No, I'm just kidding. Right. <laughs> what's the spread? I'm going to say white by eight. Okay. I mean, but the, the thing is, you know, in the scoring of these scrimmages, the, the scoring is so weird. Yeah. You know, it's like three points for this, two points for that. If you start, they start you here and you get, there's like, no, it's not like real football scoring. So I'm going to say white by eight. Okay. <laughs> And our completely means nothing. very valid, yeah. high stakes bet of orange versus the white. You're taking white by eight. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm going to say orange by five. Okay. I don't know. Why not? 13 points. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Okay. All right. I love it. All right. Well, we do want to touch base on basketball. There's, there's been some, uh, again, of course, in the off season, uh, women's basketball. We talked about transfer portal earlier for, uh, uh, for Texas football, uh, women's basketball kind of a question again coming off of that elite eight appearance mm-hmm. um with the the court the misshapen court mm-hmm. <laughs> the size being all off this but, yeah um we know that from from producers for women's basketball we know that shaley gonzalez is going to the wnba draft okay um Faye hit the transfer portal one uh taylor jones staying at texas oh good uh yeah she's uh, but diana gaston this was one that i think of, of the names that were announced, this is one that Texas is going to feel a little bit more. Uh, she's hitting the transfer portal. Now, Gaston was an all big 12, six player. Like she, she won that award for Texas. Yeah. She's come in and been consistent and really been, she's gotten a lot of minutes off the bench uh, in that supporting role. So I think that's one that's going to be, that's going to hurt Texas a little bit, mm-hmm. you know, and in, in, in Schaefer, we trust for sure. There's still some question about Shay Holly too. Um, she, I mean, she's a lifetime longhorn. She is a starter for Texas. So we're thinking she's probably going to stay, but that's something you never know. Keep you never keep know. an eye out on. So um, I got to say this. Is your optimism level high for women's basketball next year? Well, I, I would listen to an interview with Dick Schaefer the other morning, and he was very high on his three freshmen and how well they played and then the talent they have coming in. So if he's high on him, I'll be high <laughs> on him. And if, if they get Roy Harmon back next year, right? So – and Madison Booker another year and doesn't have to take on such right. a huge role. I mean, amazing the way she stood up as a freshman and right. le- learned all the things she did and just directed the team the way she did. But for her to not have to have that load and we then we can, I mean, she was amazing this year, but then you can really see her without having to carry all that load. Right. And so Roy Harmon will come back, which will be really amazing because we saw Roy Harmon with the clipboard a lot or notes a lot. Like she was, part of the staff this year. Like she didn't sit back and solve. She learned. Can you imagine how much more she learned about the game with, from the coaching, like being part of the, like not that she was a real coach, but she was part of the staff, you know, and she was very engaged with the team. So can you imagine how much she's going to come back with that mental part of the game to add to her being physically ready to go back? So this team has, I mean, they would have been final four, maybe even the championship opportunity if they had kept Roy Harmon because they made it to the elite eight and, Oh, I struggled that last game, but 
I think I think that if, if Vic Schaefer's all in with his roster and the the physicality to play with, the defense that he wants them to to play with, then I'm in. Like I'm, it's going to be exciting to watch again next year. Yeah, I think something that Coach Schaefer really excels at and isn't always called out enough or recognized enough is not only does he find incredibly talented players, mm -hmm. he finds players that bond well with each other. Mm -hmm. He builds a team in that sense, not just listen, we're going to get the best team, best talent. We don't give a shit. Put them all together. Mm -hmm. We'll make it work. It's truly about getting those highly talented players, but also players that fit in the scheme, that fit right. the mentality. that The culture? The culture, <laughs> right. Um, yeah, so I think that's uh -huh. something I, I would agree with you. Do I? Am I high on next year, next season for, for the women? Yeah, I am. I'm excited, but reserved, right? Like, But if Coach is saying we're good, we're good. I, he's yeah. earned that at this point. I, I do want to say it is going to be interesting to me if and when we get Rory Harmon back, does she decide to leave? Does she stay at Texas? There's still no. I mean, we may only have it for one year. And hopefully she does so well that the WNBA wants her. That would be great. Um, but, yeah, even if we only have her for this next coming year, that would be amazing. It, would just... it will be interesting to me to see. I mean, you mentioned Booker, how much she stepped up. Again, being thrown in that role to be the leader as a true freshman, mm -hmm. she really answered that call. She stepped up. She was absolutely incredible. She led in scoring. She was, you know, she really – Put it on her shoulders, took the team. And we know that Rory was coaching her up mm -hmm. throughout the season. The question I have is, it'll be interesting to see, to me, if Rory comes back, how how do those two gel? Can you have two rock stars, two bright superstars leading the I team together? If they really, if they've developed a real, real relationship and real team bonding or and the cultures there yes i think and it's going to be up to Schaefer to manage and sure. it's communication like this is now your role this is now your role or which evolves throughout the season as you know as players get better as you know injuries happen or things that evolve throughout the season their roles may be modified or changed throughout the season evolved throughout the season but at the end of the day i think i think Schaefer has a handle on the culture of his team and would communicate with them pretty effectively about what their roles are and then they know what they have yeah yeah all right well well that uh did get some news uh on, on the men's side of basketball coach rodney terry he ain't, he ain't messing around did you see them partying out on the the barge on a uh, lake i think it was travis was it lake no travis? i didn't see a party yeah the team was out there together you didn't, you didn't roll up in your <laughs> in a boat like, on well, a jet ski and <laughs> listen I'm trying to avoid, you remember a few years back that made world international news when uh, in Austin when the party barge rolled because there were too many people oh, on the top yeah. level checking out Hippie Hollow? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> remember that? I'm, yeah. I'm trying to avoid an incident like that. Oh, okay. okay. No, but uh, listen, Coach Terry definitely picked up some, some big names, uh, all committed kind of right at once. They all announced within a few hours of each other. All so the transfers. Yeah. Transfer yeah, portals. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, so Jason Kent from Indiana State. Uh, and Julian Larry from Indiana State. So two players from the same. Maybe he must have liked what he saw in that program. Maybe they had some conversations together, mm -hmm. right? Um, but yeah, he committed, uh, Kent committed while he was on his official visit uh, just this past weekend. And he, he's going to bring some experience, which we know that Texas right. can really benefit from. Texas losing a lot of players, both through graduation, uh, a couple through the portal. Right. Um, and then also Traymond Mark from Arkansas coming in. You don't often see players from Arkansas coming to that Texas. That surprised me when yeah. they thought, yeah, when they yeah, that surprised me when I saw somebody was coming from Arkansas. <laughs> Are you a little little don't quite trust them yet? Is no, he... I just um, one they got their <laughs> coach fired. Yeah. Two, oh, there's that. There's not that. that it's this, not that it's this guy's fault. I'm sure he's the one elite talent who was trying really hard to. I'm sure they love. No, we're happy he's at Texas. He made I know, of course, I'm happy he's at If he chooses, if if uh, Coach Terry thinks he's going to fit and help Texas get more physical and defend better than I'm in. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we also know that um, just recently Dylan Mitchell announced that he's hitting the transfer portal and we knew about Tyrese Hunter as well. So yeah. Uh, Hunter, nice. Yeah. No, listen, best of luck to everybody in the transfer portal. No, no ill will. Of course, Dylan Mitchell is one that I definitely am sad about what, you know, he was a guy that showed a lot of potential and same with Tyrese. Listen, there was that consistency wasn't moments. quite there. Yeah. They had that, the moments. I would argue that Tyrese Hunter didn't quite live up to the expectations, whether they were fair expectations or not. His numbers mm -hmm. were always solid, but he didn't quite live up. And again, we saw him kind of fade away a little this past year, this past season. Um, so that one, not quite as surprising, but Dylan Mitchell to me was, oh man, he's just, he's a fan favorite, good uh -huh. fan. So it'll be sad to see him go, but hope they both land in places that they're happy at and have a lot of success.
So we'll see it. We'll see it. All right. Well, moving on from that, we we got, we got a few crazy stories in sports. A few crazy stories. You ready for that? Okay. Well, right. you got some thoughts. You want to close it out before the basketball? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just because you made a note that All right. Jane Black from the Austin American Statesman yeah. says this roster could be a final four team. Yeah. Listen, and way too early predictions, way mm -hmm. too early. I, I'm all for that optimism. I uh, mean, if we had 12, 20 Kendall Weavers, I'm in. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's going to be my jersey next year. Number two, Kendall Weaver. Uh, I'm in. So I posed this question about women's basketball last year as a, as a fan watching on, knowing that Schaefer has made the Elite Eight three years now mm -hmm. at Texas, um, but hasn't always had the success getting past that Elite Eight roadblock. Mm -hmm. We asked the question, what do you view as success? What is a successful season? Uh, you answered that. I, I liked your answer. You, you wanna, no, what did I say? Mind? Really? You I don't remember? No. Yeah, you said, listen, it's not necessarily about if they don't make it to the, the Final Four, it doesn't necessarily mean it's not successful. It's it's how do they play? Are they playing? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. close. Oh, okay, yes, I remember saying that. Yeah. That was a great answer. No, I like, yeah, good job <laughs> that you don't remember. I love it. I would, yeah, that makes sense, yeah. So, so let me ask this. We know that there's, I shouldn't say we know. It seems like, take the pieces that we keep talking about, mm -hmm. making the whole cohesive story. On the women's side of the ball, they're playing as a team. We talked about this with Eric Henry, who was on with us a few right. weeks ago. That's something that he noted in the locker room. The girls are talking to each other. They're interacting. They're they're working together as a team. That isn't necessarily as evident in the same way as mm -hmm. it was on the men's side. Um, we know that that cohesion and that like playing together as a team, especially on a small team of five players, right? Right. It matters. It makes a difference. So let me pose this question, just like I asked with the women's side. What do you consider a success next year for men's basketball? What where do you think the bar is for you? What what I think what they line need to get is to the success? Sweet 16? Okay. So I think I'm gonna say the men need to get to a sweet 16. They were close this year. Um and I mean making the Elite Eight last year, close this year. I yeah, did I did the Elite Eight run with Coach Terry, did that buy him more patience with Texas fans, do you think? He, well, that was just such a funky, weird year, and he stepped up and did a great job in a funky time. Yeah, but it's still going to take him time. This so at the end of the day, it wasn't his roster. He knew the players. He was there from the beginning. Um, he had relationships with the players, but that wasn't his roster. He's still going to have his own style of the way. If I had a team, this is how I would run it, right? So now he's got time to build his roster, bring in his players. Um, so let's. I would say next year should be a more this was kind of a transition year still. I would say next year should be an idea of what he is as a coach with his roster. Mm -hmm. So I would hope that he's a sweet 16 level coach. Yeah. No, I, I think that's a and, good point. But going into the SEC, we don't know what the conference play is going to look right. like yet. Right. Well, I think that's a really good point. Like you, you want to give the coach time to build his own team, but I would also argue basketball, it's a lot more difficult to build your own team mm -hmm. with, with the transfer portals, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the one and dones, the the back and forth, like it is harder to get longevity out of a team. Right. So for me, success looks like at Texas long term. Mm -hmm. Again, players wanting to play for Texas and being a little more patient, right? Building that team, that culture, that mentality. I understand that basketball is different than a lot of other sports, and that the one and done is easy to do. The, the transfer portal it plays a huge role in it, and it is difficult to do. But for me, yeah, I, I would have to agree with you. Just making the tournament. And, and winning the first round, that's not enough. No. The, 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 we've established that, listen, we know how it is. We know the women do really well at Texas. Mm -hmm. For a long time, they carried the athletic program. We're starting to see success again in football, baseball of the big three, right? Baseball right. dropping off a little. There's going to be some rebuilding there. Yeah. In my mind, as a fan overall, you got to think that you, you want to see the men's basketball side pick up, show some more consistency, and get farther into that tournament. I agree with you. I think Sweet 16 is kind of the minimum. It will feel like a letdown, like we're not living up to the potential that we should have. Right. And I will fully acknowledge that that may be too lofty of expectations. Like, why would I have those expectations when Texas basketball hasn't historically performed? But that's the point, right? You can't just be comfortable settling where you're at. We are the University yeah. of Texas, damn it. They and have we the resources to, to right. be great, so go be great. Right. Right. It, right. Smaller schools without all the resources can be great. So can Texas. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Yeah. All right. So good. Yes. We, thank we, you. We've established our 
our levels yeah. we're hold each other to sports that. Sports stories. Yeah. All right. Let's get into some crazy There's sports stories. There's so many stories. sports stories. We do. Listen, I, so the most recent one that came out that I immediately had to send to you, your favorite person, Deion Sanders, his Colorado team in the news again. A lot of transfer portals going out from him. A lot of transfer requests uh, hitting the portal from. After embarrassing themselves <laughs> with the professor who said he hadn't had students that disrespectful. Right. The football players hadn't had, had students that disrespectful in his teaching career. Yeah. Yeah. So what did they do now? Pretty, pretty quickly after that, uh, we see Shiloh Sanders on his Instagram mm. uh, made a post saying, defensive transfers DM me, offense DM Shadur. And then in parentheses, it was, this is not last chance you. Okay. Which means it's last chance you. Yeah, I got to ask you how you feel about that. I'm totally not desperate. Yeah, yes. Does this feel weird to you? Does this seem like a normal? Yes, because we know that they can't, maybe if, if they're not in the portal yet, or if they, for whatever reason, can't contact the coaches yet. This is just, bullet, which is fine because it all happens. Everyone's like, hey, ma'am, hit me up if you want info on the team. Right. Because you can't yet, which is so dumb. You can't yet talk to my coach, but you can talk to me and I'll give him the message and then I'll come right. I'll be, my dad's across the room on the phone while we, you're on speaker, on speaker, but you're talking to me. But you didn't talk to my dad, the coach. <laughs> I mean, it's obvious, right? But also it's reeks of desperation that, Doesn't hey, man, hit me up because we need players. So, so that, that yeah, that, I mean, that's what I want to ask. And again, to be clear, we understand that is kind of the workaround. And every team does yeah, it. Yeah, every team does it. Every team. There's a reason the Arizona Arizona line, D lineman is in the portal on Tuesday and here on Saturday. Right. Because it's in the works already. Well, and again, I mean, every every team uses the ability. Like, it's why we have host players. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they get paired up. You're talking to the player. To they give all you know each other. Yeah, yeah. Idea, right? Like, that certainly plays into it. That is the, the back door that every program uses. Mm -hmm. I don't know though that I have seen just the the outright openness about like, hey, I'm gonna put this on Insta. I, I would defensive I, transfers, yeah. DM me. DM me, slide into my DMs. Let's get that. Like, I don't know that it it gives your program validity when you sound like you're trying to hook up with people, like just out in the public like that, slide into my DMs, right? Like I I don't know. Is this a genius move? Maybe if they it get the tension, it but does. people who, sorry, people no, who wanted to go to Colorado and deal with Dion as their coach, <laughs> they didn't need this, um, DM tra transfers, DM defensive transfers. They didn't need that. They could have, they could have said, oh man, Dion and the Colorado program with their four and eight win. That's where I want to be where the professors can't stand the players. That's where I want to be. <laughs> okay. Your bias is coming out a little bit. I'm here. just saying if people wanted to be there, they would have been, they didn't need them to be on. I don't know. Instagram. I, I do think that there is going to be a draw on some level, right? Yeah. Wrong oh, there or will be. You're right. I do feel like this is, this feels like a, a move to say, Oh, look at me I, again. I don't know him. I, I, we are more familiar with Dion than we are as kids, but certainly primetime has been about the show, putting oh, on the show, yeah. doing things for that. Uh, this feels in that vein. This feels in that vein. It's hard to say like, yeah. oh, for sure he's doing it. I don't know what the kid's really thinking, but it feels like a performance. It feels performative to me. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but also could this backfire in the sense that like, Jesus, are you really that desperate that, that you need to start asking for people to come to Colorado on your Instagram reel? Like that to me, it just doesn't feel like you've How got many your collective. Kids have gone out. That's what I mean, a lot. I think Colorado is leading. I don't have the exact yeah. numbers, but looking at it this morning, it looks like Colorado current. I think they had, last year they booted half the team anyway. Well, and then they had two more announced this morning. I like. Oh, I'll go look and see. How it's it's that. quite a few. So. Yeah. Again, we're talking about context clues and putting together the larger story, mm -hmm. reading between the lines. This to me does feel like a desperation move when you couple it with the fact that, you know, there's a lot of guys coming out of the portal. They're also coming off a four and eight season. They're also talking, like you said, the culture issues that might be happening within you. Right. It was reported, you know, recently that Dion, I mean, Dion said this. Yeah, I just let them fight. If they have an issue, I let them fight in practice. Don't teach them to think or I communicate mean, with like adults. And that is, again, that's a culture that's being built. Is it is a good culture or bad culture? You be the judge of that, but. I'll judge it. It's not a good culture. It's, it's, it's certainly a culture <laughs> that's being built. But put all those pieces together. Is Colorado in trouble? Is this something that 
can they come back from it's or is what it they more about absolutely asked for so Colorado you, you think they're in trouble but I don't know they're, if they're, they're in laying trouble. in the bed that they made I don't know if they're in trouble because if they can piece together enough showy guys to flash another four and eight season they'll give Dion an extension because because they care about what they bragged about they didn't brag about wins this past year they bragged about how much uh viewership. how many viewerships mm -hmm. on tv and that made them money which is great because at the end of the day this is all about money there are teams That's who who won more games who didn't make as much money this year as colorado is that sustainable no because eventually when you put a crap project on the pitch it's going <laughs> to it's, people are going to be tired of you know sniffing your stink but the at the same time for now it Long short -term people success. short term it got people excited and buying colorado gear and turning on the tv to see what was happening with dion and that team it's not sustainable but i fell for that i watched, we all watched, more we than all I watched it because we wanted to see what is this about and it was a carnival it was a show which is fine but that's not at the end of the day you go four and eight and then maybe next year you go five and seven and then you go four and eight or five and seven again people are not going to watch that well and again i think you start to get into a situation in reverse that Texas is in right before we just talked about, you know, coach Sark during his media availability talked about when the team has success, the individual success comes after that, that mm -hmm. follows, it doesn't work in reverse. So having individual success, which a lot of players may have, mm -hmm. right. For you, you're going to get the attention individually as a player right. coming to, to Colorado. We know that Dion's about that individual attention for sure. Um, but that doesn't necessarily translate to yeah, team, team success. success. I guess the follow-up question to that would be, does he care? Right. Is this, is we, we know that again, four and eight, that's your starting point and we'll allow every first year coach to say, to, to have a bad season, right? right? You got to rebuild, you got to see the progress, but does, do you think this is a thing that Dion's going to show some improvement? Do you even think he's going to stay? Like how, what do you think well, is his timeline? We know, for? The quarterback son, uh, Shador Sanders, is eligible for the draft next year, right? I don't know how old Shiloh is, and I'm not going to look it up, but he might be gone or have another year there. I don't um, – so is Dion even coaching in college That's, next year? Do I think? don't know. I Do you think he stays for, for his kids to get through and then – I mean, travel maybe he goes to coach the Cowboys. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. Wouldn't you be super happy about that? Uh, I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. I love it. All right. Well, it's definitely, I mean, it's a story. It's something to look at. Again, you and I are pretty open about our feelings. We're not the most unbiased of sources no. when it comes to Deion Sanders, but uh, no. yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Um, we brought up, so speaking again, in the, uh, the vein of football, our favorite uh, neighbors to the North. Hmm. The OU Sooners. Po poverty school? Poverty school anymore. All right. Charging. This isn't the first time. Oh no, they've done it before. But it's back yeah. in the news cycle. Charging for spring game. I want your thoughts on that. Are you how poor? <laughs> is this a poverty move or is it genius? It's poverty. <laughs> this is the one. This is the one chance. Like give a, a practice, a glorified practice, and you're charging people $15. Would I pay $15 if my school was charging? Absolutely. Should my school charge me $15 to go watch a practice? No. <laughs> I know it costs money to put on a spring game. It you does. need security. You need cleaning bathrooms. You have to pay, you know, to construct, not construction, but concession people sure. and all the things that, you know, all the security around the building, parking people, whatever. It costs money. Do you not have money? Because I mean, DKR, so <laughs> DKR is free on Saturday, and they're shelling out big bucks to put on a show. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Listen, I when put next to each other, when you're talking about you know <laughs> OU's spring game and Texas happening on the same day, big rivals, right? You look at the production that goes around Texas's orange and white game, the spring game. Yeah, I mean it's the full thing. Full Beaver Boulevard, you know, uh, Smokey's Midway is going on, mm -hmm. all these just different events, and you don't charge. So I would agree with you. I feel it feels gross. <laughs> it feels icky to charge for a practice, for it's, access to a practice. When it, it, it's like it, charging someone to go to a birthday party. Yeah, right. Like, hey, it's my birthday. Um, like, it's my kid's birthday. Each parent needs to donate twenty dollars. To be in a way, it's like when, it feels like that when people are like, "Oh, I have a destination wedding. Yeah, you only have to drop a thousand dollars to come watch me get married." Yeah. This feels yeah. like that to me. It's, yeah. And so yeah, and, and I will <laughs> I will bring this. In. So maybe that's OU. Maybe they're maybe they're the spoiled bride that wants everybody to pay to come see their their day, but. 
what this feels like to me too, just like strip all that away, poverty school, all that kind of stuff, strip that away. It just feels gross. Like this is the thing, especially the school that is as big as OU. You've got uh-huh. a huge fan base. Not everybody, like with the costs of everything getting wildly out of control, right? It's You can't take a family of four to a football game for under $500 anymore. No. There's just no way. It feels gross to me that you're going to say the one, the one to time get them free to see the team right practice the one time you could come to see your team they're going to charge people to get in like it, i don't know man okay, it just here's feels... the way i see it okay say we were saying texas is going to have 30 40 000. say we say te- say oh you gets 40 000. that's a good great number they will they and people show up oh i know let and me they show, sometimes people show up even more when you charge them Jeez. so let's say they get forty thousand. that is six hundred thousand dollars to me and you, that's a lot of money. To big programs, football programs, massive university programs, 600000 is nothing when you're making hundreds of millions, right? So for them to have, for them to do all this and make six hundred grand, just give it to them for free. Yeah, look, so I again, I'm going to give the OU props here. Last year, in, so 2023, their spring game attendance was 54,400. And they can count that because they charge people. <laughs> right, right. They probably have a more accurate, you know, Texas said it was 40,000 last year for yeah. us. It did not look like that in the stands. I'll be the yeah. first person to say, or maybe they said up to 60. I don't know. Whatever number Texas came out with. Yeah. It yeah. wasn't in the stands. You can tell by how many, like oh, looking you down at the stadium, yeah. how many empty seats there are. Oh, you definitely has. You're right. Their, their ability to be very precise about their numbers. Because they know how many people bought tickets. <laughs> we know they're accurate there. But yeah, man, I again, at 54000 you're making money. You're bringing it in. But mm-hmm. I don't know. Is it worth selling your soul? It just feels like <laughs> I, I get it. OU has struggled. We, we call them poverty. We've had to, you know, this deal where Texas is taking, you know, OU and Texas are going to the SEC together. We know that. Yes. You know, we like to, Texas makes money. Whether we're having a good season or not, Texas makes money. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I don't know. It just it just feels gross. It just feels gross. Like you're selling your soul. Like you don't care about the fans. It's what can we squeeze? We know that college football is the big money, and we know that they're squeezing fans no matter what. Texas does it too. Like it's it's a business at the end of the day. But this just feels like they're putting it in your face. Like we don't care that you know that we're doing this. We don't give a shit. You're not a you're not a fan. You're a number, and you're a dollar sign to us. Yeah, I don't like just it. Just putting it right out there. I know. It, it seems <laughs> tacky. It does. It's, right. it's gross. Feels yeah, like it feels yeah, yeah icky. It's an ick. Agreed. Like the kids say. Agreed. It's an ick. It's an okay. Ick. Also, um, an ick for the OU football right now is their first game got moved to Friday night. Mm-hmm. Okay, and this is months away. Months away. Their first game. Friday, August 30th against, is that Temple or yeah. that T? Okay. Um, isn't Temple like in Philly? Something like that? That Temple? Yeah. yeah. There's plenty of Temples. I know. There's like 400 <laughs> Temples. Um, so this Temple is coming to play them in, you know, in Norman to start. This is their big welcome to the SEC <laughs> schedule. They got bumped to Friday night. So I understand it is a bummer for like maybe recruits that because they play Friday night. There's some plenty more opportunities all season long to come to Norman if you want to see the Sooners, if you're thinking about playing for them. But the, the way that the fans cry about being moved to a Friday night, what if we have to work? You can't get off your job four months from now. Not if you're having to pay $15 to go to a spring game. No, how are you ever going to come straight <laughs> together the money? April, May, June, July, <laughs> August. It's four and a half months away. You can't take the day off. I mean, the, all yeah, Norman look, will be shut down anyway. A lot of people, again, I'm I'm not going to sit here and get As into that. As opposed to going Saturday morning. Yeah, I mean, not everybody has the ability to take the time off, right? Not everybody does. I know, but for I, Friday night, you, can, you can't get to this game. What I would be upset about if I'm an OU fan is, okay, you move it to Friday. Texas has played Thursday games. Yeah. We played Thursday games. Tell me Tuesday at 10 a.m. I'll be there. But I'll tell you. We're also very fortunate to be able to do that. Yeah. Even being able to do that, it is a pain in the ass to fly to Ames, Iowa on a Thursday, right? That's a raging pain in the ass. Not everybody can do that. We, well, yeah. Right? That's what you get for going to a school in Norman, Oklahoma, where it's hard to get to. I get it. But what I'm, what I'm offering is I can understand being frustrated you know, you plan your you Saturday. Four down. and a half months to get move it. the game up to the I night get it. before. Where I'd be more upset as 
understanding it is a burden, it's a pain in the butt, whatever, where I'd be more upset too, is that you are, while you might get more eyeballs watching, like your entire team is made up of Texans. You are now going up against people. Texas as a state is rabid about their high school football, Mm -hmm. right? So you're losing a lot of your core, the people that you want to see your program, not even just on visits. Like you're taking, you're on a night that the state that you recruit the most heavily, like is not going to watch your game. Uh, they got to love more games. I'm just saying that that's where I'd be upset uh, about it. That, that it seems short-sighted a little bit, but they have 11 more games. I appreciate again. Would this be different if it was, if the game was on a Thursday night to me, that feels a little better. It's even somehow. harder to get all the way to Norman on a Thursday night, because then you have to miss work Friday too. If you work regular, Maybe. Schedule, Monday through Friday, whatever. I mean, Oklahoma is very drivable. It is. For, it, it is for a lot of people all around, and you can get there on Friday if you can. If you're so, if you're so wrapped up that you have to get on social media and cry and cry and cry <laughs> about the game being moved the night before, then you are obviously passionate enough to just <laughs> drive up the afternoon early well, or drive down or however you get to Norman. We know from history that OU fans are notoriously level-headed. So yeah, is a I bit just of a didn't understand all the. <laughs> the emotional wreck people became because their game got moved to a Friday. Yeah. Welcome to the SEC. It just means more. <laughs> it just means more. You better care more, it too. It means more Friday night. It means more Friday. Listen, last year the big stink was that OU didn't have a night game. They didn't have enough night yeah, games. Yeah, they're getting a night game. They're getting a night game. Come on. Be happy with what you get. <laughs> yeah. You get a night game, but it's on Tuesday. <laughs> All right. So At least it's a Friday night. I'm, I'm going to keep the topics on Texas Rivals for just yes. a minute. Okay. Uh, and I would love some feedback from those listening on this, what, or your opinion on this. Uh, A&M, Texas A&M, it has surfaced that the Aggies, and this was something that came up last week and kind of the, the late week news dump. Mm. It, it flowed in. Uh, a is thinking about bringing back Bonfire. Mm. Their regents have reached out to the families of the victims uh, to get their thoughts and their input on it. No decisions have been made. No decisions right. have been made. And to be clear, there is currently a Bonfire, um, but it is an off-campus event. a as a school, is not so tied to someone, that event. They're not involved. Someone else is running this Somebody bonfire. else is running it. It is A&M as a school is not involved. Right. Good idea, bad idea. How do you feel? About- I love that they reach to the families, the victims, the families, the vic- the families of the victims. Yeah. I like that they reached out to them because that is, of course, trauma um, and out of respect. But what do they do if all of them say yes, but one's family says no? Do they it's majority rule? Yeah. Yeah. Is I, it democracy? And okay, well, the majority won. Or do they respect all families equally and say, well, if one says that that's not right or not you know, appropriate or respectful or however they feel, then and you're in off? a sticky situation. Is it off? Uh, yeah. I mean, that's a good question. Does it have to be a hundred percent buy-in from the families or mm-hmm. nothing at all? Is it, is it majority wins on this? But let me ask you this just overall, how do you feel about, how do you feel about just the idea of bonfire coming back? Do you think it's, is it a good idea? Because again, keep in mind, when A&M was involved, it was on campus, A&M mm-hmm. organized everything, but it was the students building the bonfire. Which is why. Which is part of unfortunately why. Unfortunately, why it wasn't as stable as it should right. have been. So just on the surface, do you feel, no matter what happens, do you feel it's a, it would be a good idea to bring it back or not? I think there's a way to really, really hate Texas without <laughs> putting people's lives in danger. And at some point that structure did get so ridiculous because the hate was so much they had to make their hate as big as they could make it to the detriment of the you know unfortunate students who were under there so there's a way to say how much you hate texas without putting people's lives you don't think it's a good idea to bring it back i think if they do it like if it's been happening safely off um campus somewhere and some private organization running it if they bring it back as an official a and m thing i don't think i don't know why they need to if there's a bonfire option already happening yeah and I don't. And if they if they do, well, man, the liability right. and the engine, the real engineers that need to come and manage something. Yeah, I I think that's a valid point. So, you know, and it's all about their traditions mm-hmm. for sure. Uh, and and, and bonfire traditions. <laughs> the, yeah. And again, I will say this as as a Texas fan. Like I remember '99. It was mm-hmm. it was a moment that we stopped. And I'm going to get emotional. It was a moment we stopped being rivals. I had a friend that was on the, the bonfire staff 
and she left 15 minutes before the bonfire came down uh, in 99. And it was, man, it was crazy. It was, her phone had died. Her family couldn't get a hold of her, you know, her phone, the battery was gone. Family couldn't get a hold of her for hours after hearing that the bonfire had collapsed, knowing that she was on it, building it. And it was an emotional time. You know, the, in that game where, it, I mean, it was at A&M that year, mm -hmm. the, the band, the Longhorn band, when the bonfire came down, they scrapped their whole halftime show and just played taps. Yeah. And put all their flags down. And it was just AM flags up. Like it was emotional, man. Look at look at me. I, I'm not an Aggie, clearly, but like we stopped caring about like we were all Texans in that day. It wasn't about AM versus Texas. Like it was, it was an emotional thing. And I get it. I love our traditions, but and you're right, you're 100 percent right. If the bonfire comes back, you've got to have oversight. It can't, mm -hmm. it's never, ever going to be a student built project again. And to me, does that take away from what bonfire was in the first place? Right. It was the student activity bonding together, building this huge thing, having this event. If you have an option that's already happening, right? Like what is the upside for a as a university to be involved again? There isn't one. I, I would agree with that. I don't think it makes sense. And I do think it's, I mean, if I'm a, a family member of, of one of the victims, I, I, I don't, I think I would be worried that be well, this is going, this could happen to someone else's child. So let's, what, what's the it's, point? It's always lingering. What's the point? Right. The, I don't, I don't understand right. the point. Right. I, yeah, man. I just, like I said, I'm an emotional train wreck. Who, who There's knew, some right? traditions that they have their time. Yeah. And it was a great tradition. I'm not taking away from that. Bonfire was cool. I'm, I'm a, I'm a longhorn. I, I do not care about A&M. But it was neat. Like, I can appreciate how cool that was. It just from got to be a monster that they created. Yeah, I mean. And unfortunately, they suffered the consequences. And, and, of, I, and I think the, the steps that they would have to take to help cover those liabilities and to ensure that that wouldn't happen again mm -hmm. takes away from what made Bonfire special in the first right. place. So, yeah, man, right. I think, I don't know. I'm curious to what y'all think about it. I, I, it surprised me, but I think it's a, a tradition that you can look back on fondly they were glad we had it, but there's no need to bring it back. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, AM's got 500 other traditions to choose from. Like, you, like you've got a big like bag. No to choose women from. cheerleaders. <laughs> yeah. The uh, Richard does have a bonfire, but regulate the height and make sure it's approved by an engineer. Right. I think there need to be, if they do it, there need to be 50 engineers standing yeah. every two feet. Well, and that becomes a question is the, are the, how involved are the students, right? Like, at any point, do this or do you have a, an engineering firm oversee it but the students are building it with people that are with them i don't know it just again to me that feels like it takes away from what made bonfire special and cool mm -hmm. right when the students were involved but you're right it, there absolutely would have to be some kind of oversight and regulation i can't imagine that any university would want to even think about opening themselves up to that kind of liability i don't i, I, I don't, just, I don't crazy. see the point crazy to me yeah i don't see the point all right, so back on Texas. Let's let's All get right, back on Texas, Texas here. Yeah, uh, you have some stories. Yeah, coming uh, up. Uh, which one? The Longhorns, the Sports Hall of Fame. Yeah, yeah. So Longhorns, there are um, four Longhorns who are going into the Texas Sports Hall of Fame: Bubba Thornton, Jamal Charles, Colt McCoy, and Krista Williams. So a pitcher, two football players, and coach. Yeah. What do you think? I think it's awesome. Listen, have you been to the Texas Sports Hall of Fame nope. in Waco? Nope. Oh, really? I don't. I try not to stop in Waco well, for that's any fair. reason. I've been. I drive right there. I've been a couple times. Uh, first time was when I was in middle school. It was a class <laughs> trip. It was a class trip up there. Uh -huh. So we did. The, I'm sure it's really cool. It's neat. Uh, we did the Texas Sports Hall of Fame, the Texas Ranger Museum, and the Dr. Pepper Museum. Like that was our mm -hmm. field trip. Oh, yeah. That's school. very Waco. Now cool. you got to go to the. Well, Magnolia. Yeah, Magnolia. And you pay $14 for a cupcake. <laughs> yeah. I, I would say more than that. You pay seventy three dollars for a candle, and yeah, no, yeah, thank you. Crazy, but um, and then the second time I was there, uh, the Texas X's Waco chapter were actually hosting a, a tailgate for one of the Texas games at Baylor. And they asked fun. me to come up, bring Clyde, and put the bubble up and everything. So we got to go inside, and I, again, it was cool. It's it's neat, but yeah, I mean, I think that's a huge honor. Yeah, so, that's huge. Big shout out, to Longhorns yeah. being represented, and also Jackson Jeffcoat into the Plano Hall of Honor. So good, congrats to. Another Longhorn. Very cool. Yeah, he yeah. seems super excited about that, too. Yeah. All right. Uh, we've got a little bit of time left. We've got about 10 minutes left. Um, <laughs> Let's talk about 
Oscar Pistorius. Ooh. Do you remember the story of the South African, Ooh. the the Blade, Blade Runner. Runner? They called him Blade yeah. Runner. And about, I guess, 10 years or so ago, he was convicted of killing his girlfriend. Murdering and his Yeah, girlfriend. murdering his girlfriend. And we all watched the trial. And I remember something about him, like, shooting her through the bathroom yeah. door. Yeah, saying he was worried about his, like, his he safety. Felt somebody's breaking in, worried about his safety, but she was shot. Through, multiple times through, through the, bathroom the bathroom door where she was locked into the bathroom. She had yes. locked herself into the bathroom. Bullets went through the bathroom door yeah. and killed her. And he was talking something about like the, the, the prosecutors were like, well, when did you put your legs on? You're like, he's like, <laughs> Oh, I woke up in the night and I was panicked by something in the ba bathroom or I thought somebody broke in or whatever. So how did you get up and walk yeah, over? So how did you get over there? If you were asleep at night without your prosthetic legs on, how did you like it? None of it made sense. Right. And it's, it's almost it the, equi the South African equivalent of if the glove, if don't the glove fit. doesn't fit, right. Yeah. You must quit. Okay. Well, he was found guilty. He's now out. He served nine of his 13 years. I guess he's out on whatever they consider parole in South Africa. But he um, says, oh, he can't get a job. Aw. He <laughs> you murder your girlfriend. You can't get a job. That's unfortunate. He said he's struggling to find post-prison employment as members of his church see him as a shadow of a man. He was and members of his church. Are they hiring him? Right. Anyway, he looks like he, he would have good work there. Yeah. <laughs> People are saying he's too toxic to work with now. Yeah, when you shoot your girlfriend through the bathroom door. And then don't repent about anything, and you're still playing and the you victim. Still, yeah, you still yeah. won't admit that you did it. Anyway, nobody will hire him. Oh, oh no. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, listen, it's interesting to see his name come back up. And I do want to point this out. CB, you're right. You still get chills from the Longhorn Band's tribute to AM. Me too. I literally am talking about it, and I'm tearing up talking about it. It was, it was a really emotional moving moment um yeah a special rivalry I'm, I'm glad it's back I'm, I'm, glad it's back. I'm glad it's back and also cb you're right when the that big friday night ou game to kick off the season it's Dan Drayton. it is That's dan right. drayton's team and i hope they're good <laughs> that would be fun yeah it's gonna be interesting to see ou this year with with the attrition that they had on the o-line can they protect everywhere anybody? and new oc new dc yeah. new everything oh, man i hope temple uh, goodness gracious i i would be happy okay let I'm me pose this question Drayton and the fighting temple what are they <laughs> would you rather mm. oh you lose the temple their opening weekend mm -hmm. but beat texas and texas still makes it to the playoffs farther than ou that mm -hmm. year or would you rather beat the absolute tar out of ou but be questionable for the playoffs oh beat the tar out of OU okay. because Sark is one and two against OU. Right. Two of them he blew leads. Yeah. So yeah, no, there's there's no there's <laughs> no, no love. It's not really love enjoying Texas, their misery. Sark needs to at least get to 500 against OU, just like Michigan, Ohio State, just like you know, all the rivalries. You have to beat your rival. You have to beat them. And the fact that Texas Sark is one and two against them. It doesn't sit right with me. And when you you made a note, like, what game do we matter most? To me, this year, it's OU. That matters more. If, if Georgia comes in, I mean, they went 37, whatever, games in a row without <laughs> losing, 27 games. If if going to Michigan, okay, that's fine. We're on the road against the defending champions. Losing to your rival again and putting your coach one and three against them? No. I think the team, this game, Texas has to win next year more than any other for lots of reasons is OU. Okay. All right. You can't lose to them again. Well, uh, noted. Got yes. that. All right. Well, uh, quick shout out. We're going to do a little bit of get it off our chest. So okay. Maybe you just did. I no, don't know. No, I have some else to <laughs> <laughs> But we do want to give a quick shout out to one of our great, great sponsors, yes, AV please. Consultation. So we know there is so much going on. Obviously, we're sitting here talking about it. So many sports to watch. Baseball, he can bear it. Uh, you know, we've got football, mm -hmm. spring game coming up. Of course, you got W or the NBA, WNBA coming up, obviously. So AV consultations, if you are looking to set up your man cave or your she shed or just a place where everybody can hang out and have a great time and mm -hmm. watch all the sports you possibly can, AV consultations are the one to call. They've been in business since 1988 and can hook you up the way they've hooked up thousands of Central Texans over the years. So home theater, uh, they even do outdoor security, which is awesome. Uh, they, they'll get you covered. So 512 Two five five eight six seven eight. Give them a call or check them out at avconsultations.com. Good job. Yeah. So, all, all right. right, we're gonna get it off our chest.
Okay, you want to go first? So there is a, this is, for those that are just tuning in, we appreciate you being here. We do a little segment towards the end. We call it Get It Off Your Chest. Get It Off Your Chest. Where we close out the show with uh, maybe some stuff that's been on our mind. All right, I'm going to set the timer. That's what I'm doing on my phone right now. We have, a, the timer. we have about, we have one minute exactly yep. to get it off our chest and talk about it. Um, yeah. Are you ready? Do you want to go first? Tell you what, Rocky. Uh, yeah, I'm going to, I'll go first. All okay, right. ready? Well, go. this, yeah. Oh, well, sorry. Gonna, we have to hand back. You can't handle the truth. Say it with your chest. I never told anybody that because I'm such a good friend. All right. That's get it off your chest music. There you go. All, All right. right. You can go first. All right. Well, here we go. Start in a minute now. I want to say in, in today's world of social media, I'm on it all the time. I'm on Twitter way more than I need to be. It would be really lovely if we could collectively, as a fan base, mm. stop supporting insane clickbait accounts and personalities. <laughs> there was a this story that came out recently about uh, Adonai Mitchell and being a diabetic, right? And there were reports that when his blood sugar was low, he was absolutely rude and awful and hard to deal with and hard to coach, which as we approach the NFL draft can affect his stuff. Yeah. Right. Uh, again, Eric Henry, who we had on the show mentioned, he goes, look, I don't know him personally, but in all of my interviews with him, all of my interactions with him, he was awesome. He was one of the easiest We've ones to do. We've only heard wonderful things We've about only him. only heard great things about him. Mm -hmm. But of course, you see these, you know, troll accounts, these fake accounts, these clickbait accounts, only taking pieces just for the shares and the likes and the, the shock mm -hmm. value. Can we stop? Just Can we just agree as a group to not support that? You know, it's fake. If it's ridiculous, don't buy into Arch it, man. transferring. Arch <laughs> transferring, right. Don't buy into it, man. Share the good stuff. Share the credible sources. Yeah. That's, that's okay, I'll do that. I'll, I'll stop clicking it. There you go. <laughs> really screenshot it and shame them. Don't, <laughs> don't give them the engagement, dang it. All right, well, that's mine. Okay. A little bit over, but there that's we are. Fine. All right, you ready to roll? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, bring okay, it. Okay, mine is the thank you. Oh. I have thank yous. Um, so I finished pretty much finished writing my dissertation and the last page I have to do is my acknowledgements, which is actually like at the very, very beginning of my dissertation, but I haven't written it yet. <laughs> and the reason I haven't written it yet is because I wanted to make wait till I was done writing, like pretty solid done before I thank all the people that helped me. So like Richard and Nadia, who is so many times I'm like, I'll be there in a minute or I can't, um, I'm writing, I can't have a decision. Um, Megan, Aww. all the people like, there's a lot of people on Twitter that are cheering for me and send me positive notes and really nice things like you got it, you can finish, good job, or that check on me. And just my friends and family that are really proud of me and excited, but have been supporting me all along the way because it's a big job. Yeah. And um, I'm so close. So just thanks. Everybody who sent me a nice message or, you know, just put a little funny gift to tell me to finish writing. Thank you. I love that. I'm almost done. Hey, well, you have a huge support group. You have a lot of people that love you. Mm -hmm. You're a badass. I'm almost done. I want to be really clear. I'm going to be so obnoxious about making You're sure. You're going to be obnoxious? Never. What? Never happened. What? I'm going to be so obnoxious about making sure that people address you as Dr. Nah, Rocky. That's not that. your damn stuff. I will. Nah, you don't have to Doing do that. it. I'm here. You don't have to do that. <laughs> no, I love it. Man. Well, you you kicked ass and I'm, I'm close. I'll say this. I'm forever impressed by you. Thanks. You are you are a force of nature, girl. Like you're you're doing this, you know, the 75 hard. You've got dedication. You've got a million things. Yeah. you got a million things going on in your life, but I am forever inspired by you and Thank how you. smart you are Thank and how you. badass you are. Thank and you. keep putting that good into the world. We I'm need trying. more of it. I'm trying. We need more of it. All yeah. right. Well, hey, y'all, we too, we very much appreciate y'all. Again, recapping, we are uh, spring game, hopefully, coming up on Saturday. It is coming up on Saturday. If and the, the, weather, rain, the rain is holding off. Rain's going to stay away. The rain is holding off. We are fine. Yep, no ab worries. Absolutely. So spring game coming up again. Catch Texas baseball. We hope they can turn it around. That's that weekend series against TCU. Mm -hmm. Friday, Saturday. Saturday is after the spring game. Plenty of time to get over there, support the team. Uh, yeah, and for forever and always, we appreciate y'all being here. We appreciate y'all listening to us, supporting us. You got questions, you got thoughts, you got ideas, shout us out on Twitter. I am Texas Fancy Boots. I'm Rocky Nose Best. And together, y'all, we are Fire the Cannon. See you next time. Yes, sir.